one of the sacred mountains of the divine continent, Mount Delulo. It is located in the far north of the Jialan Imperial Court. Getting there is not so easy. It's not that it's difficult for a person to get there. Even animals find this road difficult. At the same time, treasures are found everywhere in these places. True, the monsters and monsters there are very dangerous. And the whole area is covered with frost and fog. The trio of wary travelers carefully moved through the snowy terrain. The guy asked the old man if the blood mushrooms could really be found in this place. The strong old man said that mushrooms usually grow near the pond, and they were heading there. The old man also said that Delulo Mountain is inaccessible, not only because of the high mountains, but also because of the hotel that is located here. Rumor has it that six evil old men live in this hotel, who often do not allow travelers to return from the mountain. The guy with green hair said that apparently Mr. Tao was exaggerating and the journey was not as dangerous as he said. The guy added that Tao is the elder of their school of the divine moon and no one in their right mind would want to oppose him. And the guy with green hair told his beautiful companion that even at the risk of his own life, he would protect her. The girl Modai thought that the guy was too talkative for a real warrior. She wasn't sure that during a real threat to her life, the guy would do what he promised. Meanwhile, a panorama of a crystal lake bound in ice opened up before the travelers. The banks of the reservoir were densely strewn with bloody mushrooms. The young man lost his head at the sight of the mushrooms he was looking for. He rushed towards them as fast as he could. The guy did not pay attention to the old man's warnings and screams. He was so engrossed in the valuable find. Mr. Tao did not lose hope of bringing the young, stubborn man to his senses, but nothing worked for him. The guy grabbed handfuls of bloody mushrooms and screamed with joy and delight. The old man said that the guy had better be careful of the demonic beasts here. Indeed, in this deep lake with clear water, something was hidden in the dark depths. The young man began to realize that apparently he had gotten excited and lost his vigilance in an unfamiliar place. But it was already too late. The giant water dragon first raised its head above the water, and then his whole gigantic, writhing body appeared. The air was filled with a loud animal roar. The guy lost his last drops of composure and screamed with all his might, trying to escape from the monster. The old man told the girl to take care of the unlucky guy. And he himself was going to deal with the monster from the depths of the lake. The guy cried out for help and ran away from the monster as hard as he could, losing bloody mushrooms as he went. Mr. Tao struck the dragon with a strong blow to distract his attention from the guy. And indeed, the dragon directed his rage directly at the old man and not only rage, but also his fiery breath. With a sinking heart, Tao realized that he could cope with the dragon's fiery breath. At the cost of incredible efforts, the old man managed to hold back the first attack of the water monster. At the same time, he realized that the dragon was much stronger than him, and he urgently needed to change his battle tactics. Mr. Tao shouted with all his might for Yashan to do something, but a powerful blow from the monster cut off his cry mid-sentence. The strong, huge dragon body literally smeared the old man onto the rock. The impact shook the ground and echoed through the nearby mountains. Mr. Tao's head met the rock and apparently turned out to be stronger than the rock, since it punched a hole in it. The girl screamed, fearing for her master's life. The guy echoed her. Meanwhile, the water monster, having dealt with one enemy, again turned its attention to the young people. What could they do if this creature smeared their teacher across the rock with one blow? True, help came from unexpected places, and it turned out to be very opportune. The black-haired guy hit the dragon right between the eyes with a powerful blow from his huge fist, and this blow was enough for the water beast. She immediately became bored and stopped showing signs of life. Young people could only marvel at the unprecedented power of an unexpected savior. While the guy was holding the stand, the frozen ground was literally burning under him. He reported that he managed to overcome the level to hit the dragon. Modai and Yishan looked at their savior in silence. They seemed numb and could not utter a single word. Meanwhile, the black-haired guy casually asked who they were. While the young people were talking, Mr. Tao tried to come to his senses and unstick himself from the rock. Yishan and Modai looked warily at their savior, not knowing if he was even human, since he could defeat the dragon so easily. Yishan stood up for the girl and asked the stranger to tell him who he was first. The guy again casually nodded that he was a resident of Delulo Mountain. And he asked what they were doing in these parts. The young people, without their master, again did not know what to answer to the local inhabitant. The next moment, the girl warned the stranger that the dragon had woken up.
The guy lazily turned around and muttered that the difference in strength was so great that even his strongest blow could knock out the dragon for only a couple of minutes. Seeing how worried Yishan and Modai were, the guy hurriedly said that there was no need to worry because there was someone stronger. The guy had not yet finished saying that his grandfather could deal with such a pitiful worm with one left hand as the dragon's body was cut in half. The young people again watched what was happening with their mouths open. Meanwhile, the guy was splashed with the blue blood of a water monster. A red-haired, strong old man with a sharp long sword remained standing at the battle site. The guy complained that his grandfather splashed him with dragon blood, to which the old man replied that he would stop messing around and that he would better pull out the dragon's teeth. The red-haired old man said that it was better to get out of here before other monsters came. Then the old man saw the young people and spoke rather disparagingly about them. Then Mr. Tao arrived in time, who recognized the red-haired old man as a one-armed hotel inhabitant who kills with one blow. The master muttered to the guys to quickly get out of here, and he alone would take care of everything. Mr. Tao muttered that he would protect the young guys even if he had to give his life for it. True, the red-haired grandfather interrupted the master with one blow. He advised Mr. Tao to shut up until he was asked. The girl wanted to express her indignation at the red-haired scoundrel, but suddenly something began to squeeze her chest. The redhead muttered that one martial arts king and two half-martial artists were taking a lot of liberties. He added that they probably think they can do whatever they want on Mount Delulo. Meanwhile, Modai had already started coughing up blood. Yishan was very scared for the girl. He shouted to the red-haired evil old man to better kill him and let the girl go. The redhead muttered that he had nothing to do with the bloody vomiting. And he added that the girl has a very rare nine-yin body. The grandfather took a closer look at the girl and added that she was too weak to suppress the yin energy that was generated by her nine-yin body. The redhead continued his explanation and said that it was cold here, and the girl dared to activate her fighting spirit and received a release of cold poison. With a slight movement, the grandfather threw the semi-conscious girl into the arms of his grandson. He added that she has a rare body and is now a guy. Yishan was outraged by everything that was happening, and he turned to the red-haired old man to let the girl go. Grandfather asked Yishan what such a kid was doing in such a harsh place, to which the guy with green hair replied that he would not tell, even if he was beaten to death. The red-haired old bastard gave Yishan a good slap in the face, from which the guy laid out as if in spirit that they were from the Divine Moon Academy and came here for blood mushrooms. With a second slap, the red-haired old man identified the guy next to his teacher, commenting that he was a loud, useless bastard. Red muttered that since these three were not spies, he would not kill them. And the guy asked what he should do with the girl. The old man explained that the nine yin body is one of the ten sacred bodies that complement the Yang Kang guy's body. Therefore, it is better to take the girl with you. The guy looked thoughtfully at the half-unconscious girl. It was difficult to say what he was thinking about at this time. This guy's name was Chu Xingqin, and he was a follower of Buddhism. He had been on the Divine Continent for 18 years, and the guy wasn't really interested in hanging around on the frozen Delulo Mountain. Moreover, to be in a hotel in the company of six old psychopaths. The old men were sealed in Delulo Mountain with an inn as the guards of the place. Their imprisonment lasted for more than a hundred years. The old men found Chu Xingqian, raised him, and trained him. And now he has become their hope for breaking the seal on them. If the guy awakens his fighting spirit, he can go down the mountain and find a way to save the old people. But at the same time, the guy is still an ordinary mortal without spiritual roots. Chu Xingqin would have been a programmer in the past who was killed. Therefore, he now really likes his occupation, agriculture. No codes or programs for you. Know yourself to cultivate the land, plant the seeds, and then reap the harvest. Why not grace? True, there was one program. True, to be more precise, it called itself the strongest fighting spirit system. The system offered the guy gold, a harem, power, and also strength. But for some reason, he looked very sour. The guy would rather have a better cook or better farmer system in his second life. But not this. The system asked, looking into Chu Xingqian's eyes, if he didn't like her. The guy usually responded to this so that the system would not interfere with his life. Or better yet, just leave him alone. This infuriated the system. She told the guy that he was not able to change the system whenever he wanted. The system advised Chu Xingqian to accept it and let it connect to his body. As it turned out, the whole procedure was quite painful and unpleasant. A beam of light rushed from the guy up through the roof of the hotel. 
Even the old people playing cards became wary. They noticed the movement of energy. The beam rushed higher and higher into the heavens. In the end, Mount Delulo turned out to be a small hill. Chu Xingqin slowly came to his senses. At first, he could not understand where he was. Gradually, things began to become clearer. But the guy still didn't understand the whole picture. The caption said that the guy had completed his awakening. And in this place is the Juchong Heavenly Palace for realizing the soul of martial arts. The system added that due to the low spirit of the carrier, Chu Xingqin can only concentrate his fighting spirit in the Kui Sky for now. The system reported that there are animal, plant, and weapon martial spirits, as well as star martial spirits and special martial spirits. The system asked the guy to choose a fighting spirit. The guy became stubborn. He didn't want to make a choice now, but the system was not so simple. She automatically chose Chu Xingqin's fighting spirit and congratulated him on his successful choice. The guy became furious at such impudence of the system. Meanwhile, the program began the process of merging with the fighting spirit. This process caused sparks to come out of the guy's eyes. A message appeared that there is an eye that sees everything. But apparently Chu Xingqin has awakened. He tried to comprehend what had happened to him. Meanwhile, the old people leaned over him and asked how he was feeling. They explained that the guy had been passed out for some time. The red-haired grandfather noted that there was a strong surge of energy from the awakening of the spirit. He said he wanted to see that fighting spirit. Apparently, its level should be very high. It turned out to be a spiritual type fighting spirit, which greatly disappointed the excited old people. It was an inferior martial spirit that could only be cultivated to the level of a martial artist. The old people were in complete despair. The grandfathers began to roar that they had been waiting and hoping for 18 years, but this turned out to be an ordinary spiritual type. They moaned that God punished them undeservedly. Meanwhile, the system informed Chu Xingchen that the fusion of martial spirits was successful, and he received a new skill, Bluff. Bluff made it possible to strike a target and cause short-term dizziness in the enemy. The cooldown time of the skill decreased as the strength of its owner increased. The system also reported that the Golden Eye is a spirit-level fighting spirit, and it can be improved endlessly with all kinds of materials. Then the system suggested going to Mount Delulo to collect materials for improvement. It was necessary to collect Black Dragon Tooth and Demon Beast Spirit Blood. The guy tried to sleep in a warm, soft bed, but the system did not lag behind and kept sending him up the mountain to get raw materials. Chu Xingqin realized that he would not be able to sleep and became furious. Even the red-haired grandfather got it. The guy roared that he urgently needed to go to Mount Delulo. On the mountain, Chu Xingqin stunned the water monster with one blow. Then, he had to meet some tourists who looked in amazement at everything that was happening. The guy felt like he was in some kind of fucking game, and now this girl is snoring on his bed. Chu Xingqin had no idea what to do with her. The system asked the guy why he was refusing such a beautiful woman, to which he replied that she was too old for him. Chu Xingqin also growled that he would like a wife with normal breasts, and this is very important to him. Then the system asked him what he was going to do. The guy replied that the girl was injured and needed to be treated. The system suggested that Chu Xingqin take off the girl's clothes. The old scoundrels at this time were impatiently waiting for developments. Mo Dai opened her eyes slightly and looked around the room with a dull look. She hasn't fully come to her senses yet. Then, her eyes focused on Chu Xingqin, who was trying to pull off her clothes. Well, the girl, without hesitation, kicked the scoundrel between the legs. She growled that he was a pervert and a womanizer and that he should leave her alone. The guy growled in response so that the girl would stop floundering if she wanted to live. Mo Dai hissed that Chu Xingqin is a son of a bitch and he will pay for what he wants to do. The next moment, the girl began vomiting blood again. The guy explained to Mo Dai that the flash of cold poison sets the soul of martial arts in motion, and this is sometimes fatal. Having bitten his own finger until it bled, Chu Xingqin hissed that he was only doing this because the girl had to live. Half unconscious, Mo Dai moaned faintly and stirred. The guy grabbed the girl by the back of her head with one hand and prepared his bloody finger on the other hand. Then, Chu Xingqin, with sharp, skillful movements, wrote something between the girl's full breasts. The inscription lit up, and the girl groaned weakly and opened her clouded eyes. The guy muttered tiredly that it was good that the girl had a nine-yang body, and this blood amulet would help temporarily restrain her cold poison. But Mo Dai again fixed her gaze on the persistent suitor. 
It seemed to her that he was shamelessly staring at her bare breasts. She screamed again that he was a pervert and to get away. At this point, Chu Xingqin could no longer stand it and yelled for the girl to stop being hysterical and pull herself together. It seemed that the guy was about to burst into tears from the unfair insults he heard from the girl. Mo Dai was taken aback by what was happening. After waking up and getting sick, she still didn't quite understand what was happening. Chu Xingqin began to roar in full. He said that he had to take off her clothes to save her, and he did not deserve such insults. The guy showed the amazed girl his bloody finger and said that he did it for her own good. The girl began to apologize for her behavior, and Chu Xingqin waved his bloody finger in front of her face in a frenzy. Mo Dai also thanked the guy who turned away from her for saving her. Meanwhile, Chu Xingqin chuckled quietly, muttering to himself that the best defense is an attack. The guy also quietly muttered to himself that this busty woman couldn't do anything to him. The system looked at the guy in bewilderment, and the girl, in turn, could not understand what was happening and what Chu Xingqin was whispering, turning away from her. The guy told Mo Dai that he was a good person and didn't want to bother her. He will lead her out of here along the path. At this time, the old people asked the guy how he was doing and whether everything was working out for him. The pleased bloody beauty shouted to Chu Xingqin to try hard because it depends only on him whether they will have a grandson. Hearing this, the girl immediately frowned. And the guy muttered that the old people were completely out of their minds. Chu Xingqin suggested that the girl leave the old idiots. The guy was about to climb through the window to jump to the ground when he suddenly heard something. Chu Xingqin thought what a powerful soul aura someone had. It should be added that the old people also sensed something. Maybe they lost tact in front of women, but they still had a good sense of smell. At the foot of the mountain stood an uninvited guest. Of course, the old people didn't like this. Moreover, the stranger still dared to shout so that they would pay attention to him. Then, the visitor said that his granddaughter, Mo Dai, ran away from him and disturbed the guardians of the mountain. He apologized for her and asked to let the girl go. If the old people did not want to let her go, the visitor promised to raise the hotel to the ground along with its inhabitants. The girl unceremoniously pushed the guy out of the window and called out to her grandfather. Mo Dai and the visitor belonged to the ancient Jia family. It was one of the four families of the Jialan Imperial City. The head of this family, Sui Zhenchuan, is one of the strongest warriors in the royal court. Hardly anyone could dare to challenge him. Chu Xingqin thought that the situation was quite cool, and it would be interesting to see what would happen next. Although the system told the guy that a big problem might arise, Mo Dai said her companions informed her grandfather that she was missing. And grandfather came to save her, and with three more fighting kings. The girl warned Chu Xingqin to run away, because her grandfather would most likely kill him. The guy said that he would still see who has more strength and who will defeat whom. The dissatisfied old men looked at the uninvited guests and scratched their foreheads. The annoying tiny figures of people below pulled them away from their game. In general, the old people decided to spread the cards again, and whoever loses will have to go downstairs to meet the guests. Meanwhile, the Jia family waited for a response from the inn's residents, to no avail. They consulted among themselves what to do. The girl had to be rescued without delay, and the martial kings quickly rushed into a powerful attack. True, by that time, the one-eyed old man had lost at cards and came out to meet the uninvited guests. With a flourish, he kissed the nearest king. One of the kings turned to his brother, who had flown very far away. Meanwhile, something hovered near the face of the martial king. A few quick movements, a couple of rays in the sky, and only a one-eyed old man named Mysterious remained standing on the battlefield. The defeated martial kings were spitting blood and trying to get up. They didn't understand how this was possible. And what kind of force was it that scattered them like feathers? Grandfather Mo Dai asked the one-eyed old man who he was and where he got such strength. The Mysterious One replied that the future dead man had no need to know so much. One Eye added that in the grave, the martial king would still have no one to talk to. Grandfather Modai realized that the last moments of his life had come. Previous events began to instantly flash before his eyes. At this time, Modai jumped forward, covered the old man with herself, and shouted not to touch her grandfather. Bloody Beauty noticed that the future mother of her grandchildren was not a timid woman. The old man looked in bewilderment at the little girl who dared to challenge them. At this time, the one-eyed man noticed some sounds behind him. The next moment, a golden lasso appeared from a ball of dust and entangled the one-eyed man. Now Chu Xingqin was going to protect the relatives of the girl he had just saved. The guy shouted at the top of his lungs at Mo Dai to take her family and get out of here. The girl turned out to be not only busty, 
but also very energetic. And in a couple of moments, she took the unlucky relatives away from the dangerous place. But the most interesting events took place in the hotel on Mount Delulo. The culprit of the events and probably the main victim was Chu Xing Chen. Evil old men gathered around the guy and demanded an explanation from him for such a betrayal. It should be said that at first, the unexpected events seemed to the guy just an interesting game, and he wanted to see who would win. But then, Modai saw that the difference in strength was too great, and, apparently, her grandfather would be killed. The girl asked Chu Xingqin to save her grandfather. The system immediately turned on and said that the guy should fulfill the girl's request in order to win her favor and include her in his harem. The system warned that if Chu Xingqin refused the task, he would be shocked all day long. In a fit of rage and hatred of the system, the guy shouted to Modai that he would save her grandfather. And as a result, Chu Xingqin now had to bow down to the reproachful gazes of the old men. The guy muttered that it was all because of the crappy system and let it now get him out of trouble. Bloody Beauty directly asked why Chu Xingqin had almost released the prisoners. The guy remained silent for the most part. What could he say? That the system forced him to do this in order to add a girl to his harem. The old man named Poison Devil said that it was Chu Xingqin's mistake. When the guy has to come down from the mountain, the martial kings can take revenge on him for everything. The system announced that all morale-boosting materials had been received and the guy decided to quit right at that moment. The old men were still whining that the girl had a valuable body and was a good match for Chu Xingqin, and he shouldn't have let her go. The guy muttered something unintelligible about his fighting spirit. Then Chu Xingqin confidently said that his fighting spirit had become stronger. The amazed old men turned their gaze to the pupil. Something really happened to him. The system congratulated the guy for reaching the three-star martial arts realm. And the guy's martial soul had evolved to the Zhu'an level. The red-haired old man muttered that he had never seen a martial soul develop on its own. Here the old people began to congratulate the guy on his success and prophesied a great future for him. At the same time, they did not forget to say that he was destined from above to save them from captivity. The bloody beauty threw herself on the guy's neck and hugged him tightly, whispering that it was immediately clear that this was her grandson. Chu Xingqin at this time thought that it was a very successful diversionary maneuver. Everyone forgot about his prank, amazed at his capabilities. But the bloody beauty again asked the guy why he released the prisoners. And the other old people weren't completely senile enough to forget about Chu Xingqin's tricks. Therefore, the guy had to spend a long time on his knees to atone for his guilt. The system tried to reassure Chu Xingqin by saying that as a result of his actions, he would win Modai's heart. The system also informed that the guy should better avoid the Jia family in the future, since they are very powerful. In response to this, Chu Xingqin said that the old people seemed to have intimidated this family well, and the Jia would be afraid to touch the guy. At the same time, a military council was taking place in one of the houses of the imperial city. It was said that the three brothers were immediately cursed when these strange rays of light fell on them. Those who consulted came to the conclusion that very ancient spells and an equally ancient poison were used. This was the first time the family council of elders had encountered such a force. Tao authoritatively stated that their opponents were significantly above the level of the martial king. Yishan muttered that only the martial arts emperor was higher than the king. And the last such emperor appeared in China a hundred years ago. Those present had no idea where the martial arts emperor could have come from on the mountain. One of the martial kings seemed familiar with the fighting spirit of the old man from the mountain. He said that a hundred years ago, there was such a person from the Tianji Pavilion. Tao said that the origin of the people on the mountain is a mystery. Perhaps the origin of their poison is connected with this secret. He added that he would not discuss the matter with anyone else until he had spoken to his majesty. The kings also asked Mo Dai about the young man on the mountain who had recently awakened his fighting spirit. It was decided to monitor Delulo Mountain and immediately report any incidents there. At this point, the sad military council was over and everyone went about their business. At this time, amazing things really happened on Mount Delulo. Chu Xingqin sat for hours under the scalding cold streams of a mountain waterfall. It seemed to the guy that he had turned into ice. He was so cold. After the old people learned that the guy's morale could be improved, they did not give him a second of peace. The most grueling thing was that there were as many as six trainers. And everyone tried to give the guy the greatest possible load in order to help him quickly raise his morale. As a result, the guy turned into a draft horse, who did not have a second of peace or respite. And although Chu Xingqin was terribly dissatisfied with what was happening, 
his strength increased not by years, but by hours. Finally, to the boy's great surprise, the old people got together and called their pupil. Old man Poison Devil said that they consulted and made a difficult decision. They decided that the guy needed to go down from the mountain to the people. Chu Xingqin said that he was not yet ready for the big world, but the old men were relentless. They said that they taught the guy everything they knew and now he needs to go down the mountain. Then the grandfathers pushed Chu Xingqin out to get ready for the road. It was already clear that these were not quite ordinary old people. And they had their own ways of traveling. Because so that the guy would not wander around the mountains for a long time, it was decided to teleport him. It was immediately clear that this was a common way of transportation for old people in the past. But to Chu Xingqin it reminded him of some kind of cult ritual. The poison devil informed the guy that he would be sent straight to Jialan City. Outside the mountain, Chu Xingqin has to find six broken seal stones. One of these stones is in the possession of the Jialan royal family. Hints for finding the remaining seal stones were in the ring, given to the guy. The poison devil also warned the guy to hide his identity. This way no one will be able to know that he came from Mount Delulo. The parting words were rudely interrupted by the red-haired old man, saying that the teleportation array would not last long, and it was time to call it quits. The redhead asked Chu Xingqin if he would let them down. He is the only one who could remove the seal from the six old men imprisoned in the mountain. The guy assured that he would do everything in the best way. He assured the old people that he would definitely return and free them. The old people waved their hands goodbye. Someone even shed a stingy tear. But then the guy stood in a circle in the center of the structure, which was supposed to take him many miles from the mountain where he spent 18 years of his life. The next second there was no trace of the guy left. Only the empty circle where Chu Xingqin had previously stood was smoking. A one-eyed old man standing nearby suddenly began coughing up blood. The old men rushed to their friend, asking him what was wrong with him. He said that the teleportation array consumes a lot of energy. One Eye also said that only the Martial Emperor can open teleportation using the power of the seal, and the guy was lucky that the old man still had enough strength to teleport him. One Eye muttered to his comrades that they were already completely weak, and he still had gunpowder in his flasks. Poison Devil muttered that he hoped Chu Xingqin would return safely and break the seal to save them. The redhead muttered that maybe they shouldn't have told the guy about their past. Because of this, their pupil could have problems in the future. Then the redhead remembered that it was already the new year, and Chu Xingqin was probably already enjoying the fireworks in the Imperial City. In the Imperial City, expensive fireworks really sparkled and thundered. But it couldn't be said that Chu Xingqin was enjoying life. He looked rather lost. Local beauties surrounded the guy from all sides and literally looked into his mouth. Poor Chu Xingqin did not understand where he was and how to get out of this trouble. As a genius programmer, the guy in his past life did not taste love from birth, until his sudden death. In this life, 18 years of farming also did not help the guy develop an interest in the opposite sex. Chu Xingqin believed that even if a half-naked busty beauty was thrown into his arms, he should behave like a true monk. But something unimaginable was happening in this city, and the guy simply had no idea what to do, and he didn't want to offend the girls. He muttered something like that. He was still too young. Then the system turned up the heat and said that Chu Xingqin should take all these girls into his harem which made the guy completely freak out. He gave such a blast that only his heels flashed behind him. But the spoiled city young ladies were not going to lose their prey so easily and set off in pursuit. Chai Xingqin had to urgently hide in order to get rid of the persistent fans. Hiding, the guy babbled that he was unable to endure such sexual harassment. He growled at the system that he thought his grandfather would send him to the imperial city, but he ended up in some kind of brothel. The system said that the guy is really in the imperial city. Chu Xingqin now began to moan that the bad old men had sent him to such a shameful place. Suddenly, the guy noticed a man talking behind the wall. He had a very familiar voice. Having used his abilities, Chu Xingqin saw behind the wall the outlines of the person he had seen earlier. This was indeed the old man whom the dragon slammed into the rock on Mount Dalulo. Modai called him Tao Lao. Chu Xingqin was surprised at how small the world was, and that fate brought him together again with the same person. At this time, the young man reported to Tao that, according to his information, there was a fox in this house. He said that the fox was disguised, and he asked Mr. Tao to help him catch it. Tao told the young man that foxes are very cunning and insidious, but he will help him catch the red beast. Chu Aingchen requested information from the system regarding the beautiful foxes. 
He was promptly informed that beautiful foxes had lived in western China for almost a thousand years. These foxes were very cunning and often started big wars on the frontier a hundred years ago. Foxes were caught by immortals, and now they are extinct. Chu Xingqin did not understand why they were talking about foxes since they were extinct. Then the guy remembered that his grandmother was also a fox. One New Year's Eve, Grandma drank too much and showed her face. Then Grandfather said that she was a fox. Chu Xingqin thought that he knew nothing at all about the past of the old people. When this was brought up, they usually remained silent. Barely audible sounds pulled the guy out of the memories that came flooding back to him. It was heard that someone was approaching, someone's light steps. Then, a familiar gentle voice made Chu Xingqin shudder and press his ear even more tightly to the wall. Mo Dao entered the room accompanied by Yishan. The guy thought that the world was really too small. Just in case, Chu Xingqin covered his face with a handkerchief. It was still not enough for him to be recognized here. Mr. Tao introduced Mo Dao to the young man. Then he said that he had made a dome from which only a person with a level higher than his own could get out. Suddenly, Tao Lao drew his sparkling sword. Everyone in the room was amazed, and Mr. Tao made several circular movements with his sword in the air. Suddenly, with a sharp, precise blow, the old man cut through the thin wall separating them from the adjacent room. Everyone present in the room could see a guy hiding behind the wall, wearing a scarf tied over his face. Chu Xingqin froze in place in amazement and unexpected discovery. And Mr. Tao suggested that we first deal with this thief who liked to eavesdrop on other people's conversations. The guy swore and realized that he would have to run away, otherwise he would be completely exposed. A nice girl nearby also noticed what was happening. But she's not the only one. An older woman burst into the room shouting, What's going on? She yelled to immediately stop the fight in the room because the house of spring scents might simply collapse. Tao said that if a guy has the courage to eavesdrop, why is he afraid to fight? Chu Xingqin decided to call a bluff, to which the system cheerfully reported that the bluff was used in the battle with the dragon. Now the bluff is on recharge, which lasts 10 years. In response to the guy's dissatisfaction, the system muttered that the reload time would decrease as the level increased. So the system advised Chi Xingqin to engage in self-development. The guy decided to give in, using a cunning technique. This greatly impressed Mr. Tao. He muttered that this was the immortal step technique. In fact, this technique was given to Qi Xingqin by his grandmother so that he could escape quietly. The guy noticed that this is not at all what Tao Lao is talking about. Mr. Tao ominously remarked that in the face of absolute power, all techniques seemed like simple tricks. He jumped high and struck with devastating force. People were scattered below, although the blow itself was aimed at one single person. Chu Xingqin coughed up blood while lying on his back. A person with a fluffy red tail was moving under him. The guy thought that he shouldn't be so careless when the king of martial arts is in front of him. Then, Chu Xingqin turned to the girl whom he accidentally knocked down when he fell. The guy looked into the girl's frightened eyes. He couldn't believe his eyes. Was there really a real fox right in front of him? Tao Lao Yishan and the young man also noticed this. The exposed fox began to run. There was a commotion in the room. Mr. Tao shouted down everyone. He said they both needed to be caught. He sent Mo Dai to catch the mysterious thief. Chu Xingqin rushed to run away from the girl as fast as he could. Then a system appeared that gave the task for promotion. The guy needed to collect the fox's blood. The guy growled why the system didn't tell him this earlier, to which she replied that the tasks are generated randomly. Chu Xingqin created a cloud of fog to throw Mo Dai off the scent. The guy himself, meanwhile, took refuge in a distant, abandoned room. But it was certain that Chu Xingqin would be found sooner or later. It was only a matter of time. The guy decided to use a Ying Shi tablet that can change the body. This could throw his pursuers off the trail. As a result of using this remedy, Chu Xingqin should have turned into an ancient old man. This would allow him to leave this place without hindrance. The pill turned out to be quite nasty. The guy was cut to the very bones. Hurriedly, Chu Xingqin changed into the first clothes he found, and just in time. Because in the next moment, Mo Dai's chiseled leg knocked down the door of the room where the guy was hiding. An enraged Mo Dai burst inside and screamed for the vile rat to come out into the light. The girl added that the guy still had no chance of running away or hiding, but Mo Dai's surprise knew no bounds when she found only a little blue-eyed girl in the room. The girl hid in fear in a dark corner and did not stop trembling. Mo Dai's astonished beautiful eyes turned into two huge tea saucers. She couldn't understand where an unfamiliar little girl could come from here. 
Chu Xingqin thought that the drug helped, and Mo Dai did not recognize him. Mo Dai turned to the girl in confusion. She asked if the girl had seen a man in a blue robe running past here recently. Chu Xingqin suddenly heard that his voice had not changed, and he was afraid that Mo Dai would expose him. The beauty changed in front of the unfamiliar girl who disturbed her and got ready to leave. Chu Xingqin was about to turn into an old man that no one would pay attention to. But now, in the form of a little girl, he didn't know what to do. The guy came up with a cunning plan. He asked Mo Dai if she was a student from the Divine Moon Academy. Even more amazed, the girl asked if they knew each other. At this time, the little girl rushed to hug Mo Dai and babbled that she was also from the Academy and that on the way home she was kidnapped by evil people. The girl began to cry to Mo Dai that they ruined her voice and left her locked up and she didn't want her savior to leave. The girl began to thank Mo Dai for saving her and asked her to allow her to go with her. The girl was surprised how someone dared to kidnap a student of the Divine Academy and such a little girl at that. She said that she would definitely help the girl and do everything in her power. When asked what her name was, Modai received the answer that the girl's name was Chuchi. At this time, a loud noise was heard in the corridor. The noise was accompanied by the tramp of strong feet shod in heavy boots. Tao Lao stood in the corridor above the wounded fox. At a distance were the young man and Yishan. Mr. Tao muttered that luckily the fox was still alive. He ordered that the fox be tied up and taken to the Valley of Repentance. Modai praised Mr. Tao for successfully catching the fox. He asked the girl if she managed to catch the thief. The girl shook her head dejectedly and hung her nose. To this, Mr. Tao said that he did not blame her. The thief was quite unusual. Not only was he able to escape from the dome, but he also survived its blow. For an ordinary martial artist, this was powerful. Tao Lao asked who the girl was standing next to him. Modai told her story and how she was kidnapped. Mr. Tao was surprised that someone would dare to kidnap a student from his academy. Tao offered to take the little one with him and promised to report the incident to the academy. The fox was also taken away. She was pulled by a chain attached to her neck. It was a sad sight. The fox's face was bloodied, his hair was disheveled, and his clothes were torn. Chu Xingqin felt sorry for the fox. She was beautiful, but she was treated so cruelly. Mo Dai invited her new friend to stay in the room overnight. She brought the little one a change of clothes and said that in the morning, the master would send her back to the Divine Academy. The girl asked if Modai wouldn't stay with her. Modai replied that the girl would be completely safe with the master. She herself needs to accompany the fox to the Valley of Repentance. The little girl again rushed to hug the girl. She started screaming that she didn't want to leave Modai and that she was afraid to stay with men. Chu Xingqin understood that he would be exposed instantly at the academy. In addition, he needed to accompany the fox at all costs in order to get her blood. While Mo Dai was thinking about how to get out of the situation, the little one continued to roar on her chest. The girl thought deeply and then offered to take the little one home. She was very happy and simply did not know how to thank the kind-hearted Mo Dai. Finally, the beauty said that it was already quite late and she needed to leave. Chu Xingqin roared a little more to make it more convincing. But when Mo Dai turned around to leave, Chu Xingqin rubbed his hands in relief. He managed to bring his insidious plan to life. Modai turned around and Chu Xingqin again began to roar so as not to be discovered. The girl said that they forgot to book a room for the little one. Therefore, she will have to spend the night in Modai's room. The girl muttered that everything was fine. She'll just go and wash herself. But in reality, Chu Xingqin was terrified. He looked outwardly like a girl, but he had all the accessories that he had before. But what won't you do to avoid being discovered? The guy had to go to bed with Modai. Chu Xingqin began to pray to the gods so that the night would pass peacefully and that he would not betray himself in any way. But Modai also seemed to be unable to sleep. Indeed, if you have someone to talk to in bed, you don't immediately want to sleep. But when she spoke to the girl, she screamed in fear in a voice that was not her own. Modai asked the girl why she was so nervous, because she was not going to eat her. Chu Xingqin decided to cheat and move the conversation to other topics. He said that the fox is such a small and cute girl. It doesn't look like she did anything terrible. Modao carefully asked the girl if she felt sorry for the fox. She reminded the girl that foxes are treacherous creatures that have killed a large number of people. Therefore, Modai advised her companion not to be fooled by the beauty of foxes and not to be so kind. Modai felt very sleepy and advised the girl to also fall asleep in order to have a good night's sleep. Finally, she fell asleep peacefully and quietly plunging into the world of dreams.
It should be said that this was not without the help of someone. Chu Xingqin was glad that the drowsiness powder worked. He gently wished Mo Dai good dreams and decided that it was time to get down to business. The guy in a girl's guise quickly ran to where the fox was kept. An old acquaintance, Yishan, was guarding the valuable captive. Such guards did not cause any difficulties for Chu Xingqin. The drowsiness powder worked well this time, too. The guy jumped off the roof even before Yishan, who suddenly fell asleep, fell to the ground. Chu Xingqin thought that a bag of straw could have had the same effect protecting the prisoner. The guy thought that these city guys were of little use, but they made a lot of noise. Chu Xingqin carefully opened the door where the prisoner was kept. Inside, the demon binding formation held the prisoner better than any guard. The guy knew that such a formation causes pain and suffering, and he again felt sorry for the fox. Chu Xingqin muttered an apology to the fox and said that he just needed a few drops of her blood. The fox slowly opened one blood swollen eye. Then she suddenly grabbed Chu Xingqin's hand, causing him to retreat. The guy wasn't exactly scared, but he was unpleasantly surprised. At this time, the fox pitifully asked Chu Xingqin to help her escape as she was facing a terrible death. The guy protested and said that he only came to borrow a couple of drops of blood from her. Lisa promised that she would do anything for Chu Xingqin, if only he could get her out of this terrible place. The guy screamed and shut the fox's mouth, afraid that he would succumb to her influence. As always in such cases, the system stepped up and told Chu Xingqin to fulfill the request of the female character and include her in his harem. The guy growled that the system was somehow preoccupied, and besides, it was too difficult to save the girl. But the system was inexorable and promised to electrocute Chu Xingqin all day if he refused the task. The guy lowered his head, tired of proving something to the crazy system. Chu Xingqin roared that he would save this girl, but sooner or later he will reckon with this crappy system. And the girl's name was Ju Xi, and she really was a fox. Besides, she's been on the run lately. The fox was safe in the crowd, but when it was knocked down, they were able to find it. The fox thought that although this girl was stupid, she could be used to escape. True, she also turned out to be epileptic at times. This alarmed the fox a little. Chu Qingqin promised the fox that he would save her, no matter what happened. But removing the formation was a difficult task. Moreover, the king of martial arts will immediately notice this. The guy considered the only way out of the situation to be the creation of a fighting doll. True, Chu Xingqin did not have enough energy to control such a creation. Therefore, he had to use the highest quality soul crystal to control the doll. It was a great pity to lose the stone. The crystal mine could only produce five of them per year. Chu Xingqin estimated that the doll should be at the level of a martial king. The guy ordered the doll to immediately remove the formation that was holding the poor girl. When the fox was free, Chu Xingqin gave the command to get as far away from here as possible. When the guy already thought that he had very easily managed to steal the girl, he felt alien flows of energy. The king of martial arts watched everything that happened from above. Mr. Tao, and it was he, immediately realized that the formation had been destroyed. Only he did not understand who did it and in what way. Chu Xingqin realized that they had been discovered and needed to change tactics on the fly. He ordered the girl to hold on to the doll and he would get her out of this mess. But the fighting king, without waiting for the sly fox to run away, rushed into the attack. Several powerful blows for reconnaissance and force cleared up the situation a little for the combat king. Tao saw the creature holding the fox and began generously treating it with powerful blows. The fight ensued very fiercely, and Mr. Tao seemed to have the advantage. Chu Xingqin could not intervene openly, so as not to reveal himself. The fighting king methodically and measuredly attacked the doll. The fox lying in the doll's arms also got it. At this time, Chu Xingqin was thinking hard about how to get the fox out of the old man's tenacious hands. But it seems Mr. Tao did not leave a chance for the fox to escape. Having broken through the doll's defense, he skillfully used the grips, and it seemed that everything was over. With gestures, the fighting king skillfully controlled his grips and entangled his prey from all sides. Mr. Tao then aimed a powerful beam at the captured target. Chu Xingqin could only watch silently, his mouth open in amazement. The martial arts king gathered all the energy into his palm, and with all his might he hit the doll and the helpless fox lying in her hands. The battle king's blow created a huge explosion, and the ground began to tremble under his feet. The bloody fox itself flew into the air like a rag doll. Chu Xingqin whispered something about a little defenseless fox. Meanwhile, the fox's body crashed onto sharp stones. It was difficult to imagine that she would live after such injuries. Mr. Tao's charges ran towards the battle that had just ended. The old man said that everything was under control. It was just that someone had broken his array and was going to save the fox. 
Mr. Tao added that everything had already ended well. The fox really seemed half dead now after the fight. Tao complained that now there is no way to send the fox to the Valley of Repentance. It looks like she doesn't have much left. Mr. Tao added that at first it seemed to him that the spirit of the protector was trying to steal the fox. But later he realized that it was actually a golem. The master also said that such a complex and bizarre puppet is similar to the work of a brilliant puppeteer a hundred years ago. But the old man wisely said that this could be dealt with later. But it seems that the master's statements that everything is already behind were premature. The golem doll has not yet exhausted all its reserves. Clouds of scorching flames scattered throughout the entire block. The disciples screamed in horror. They had never seen anything like this in their lives. After some time, the golem doll was on its feet again and was capable of causing a lot more trouble. The man-made monster rushed upward. Nobody understood what it was going to do. Mr. Tao quickly rushed to pursue the tenacious golem. Chu Xingqin took advantage of the situation and told the students to help the master. The guys told Chu Xingqin, who was in the form of a girl, to stay put. They promised to return soon. Chu Xingqin had a headache because his level increased after controlling the puppet. He tried to restore his strength before, but it seemed that it was not enough. Chu Xingqin rushed towards the fox, really hoping that she was still alive. The fox muttered something, but he didn't hear anything. Chu Xingqin panicked because he did not have the elixir for the demonic beast, and the fox could die at any second. The system recommended concluding a blood contract with the fox. After this, the fox will be very tenacious, and the wound will heal by itself. There were simply no other options, and Chu Xingqin decided to try. He had to use his own blood again. Chu Xingqin was still going to ask the fox about his grandmother, because he really didn't want her to die. Soon, the power of the blood contract began to take effect. The fox took a deep breath, her eyelids fluttered, and she coughed slightly. These signs of life in the fox brought Chu Xingqin great relief. But there was another problem. The blood contract took away the rest of the guy's strength, and he could not escape with the half-dead fox. Therefore, Chu Qingqin decided to once again use the doll he created, which was just fighting with Mr. Tao. The guy gathered the remnants of his spiritual strength and forced the golem to return to save the fox. Literally losing consciousness, Chu Qingqin saw the doll take away the still weak fox. A clear, warm morning, birds singing and the usual sounds of everyday city life. There was nothing to remind us of the battle that had broken out the night before. Chu Xingqin opened his eyes slightly, struggling to get out of his deep sleep. Then he remembered the nightmare events of the night and instantly sat up in bed. Chu Xingqin did not remember how he left the battlefield or how he went to bed. Mo Dai, who brought breakfast, clarified the situation. She said that yesterday she found her charge unconscious and carried her to bed. The girl also reported that the golem managed to wound Mr. Tao in the head. But the fox eventually ran away. Modai said that it was time for her to return to the academy, since there would be a meeting of the admissions committee, and she should help. Chu Xingqin estimated that the entrance exams were starting, and the participants who distinguish themselves in the competition will have the opportunity to meet the royal family. This was just what the guy needed. But he was worried about one thing. Since Modai saw him on the battlefield, she must have known that he saved the fox. But then why didn't the girl give him up and say nothing about it? Instead, she brought delicious food. Chu Xingqin decided not to bother himself with this, because he was going to leave anyway. But the guy still saw that Mo Dai was watching him closely. Suddenly, he suddenly realized that something was going wrong. Chu Xingqin's whole body began to ache. His first thought was that Mo Dai had poisoned him. But then the guy realized that the duration of the effect of the pill that changed his appearance was ending. Chu Xingqin's plans did not include Mo Dai seeing his true masculine appearance. He hastily pushed the girl out of the room, lying to her that he had a fever and needed to rest for a couple of hours. But Chu Xingqin really felt bad. He tried to bear the pain without groaning. It looked like literally the next minute he would be back in his real form. Chu Xingqin realized that he needed to leave this place immediately, otherwise he would be discovered, and then trouble could not be avoided. The persistent Mo Dai, Realizing that something was wrong with her ward, banged on the door. In alarm, the girl opened the door and saw how strong male shoulders and tight muscles were tearing her ward's tight dress into shreds. Instantly, the doors slammed shut in front of Modai on the other side, and the obsession disappeared. Thinking she was delusional or having visual hallucinations, the girl began vigorously rubbing her eyes. Modai forced herself to open the door again and saw a completely naked guy jumping out the window. Now the girl had already slammed the door in front of herself. 
Modai was very amazed at everything she saw. It didn't take long for her to come to her senses after that. She had to think things through carefully. Meanwhile, Chu Xingchen, now with his real appearance, was running across the rooftops. The guy was angry with Modai. He yelled at her not to come in, but the persistent girl did not listen to him. Chu Xingchen decided that if this was the case, then it was her own fault. He managed to get some clothes so as not to frighten the lonely passers-by he met. A beautiful fox ran easily across a wide autumn meadow. She kept saying the same name, Xiaoxi. A fox girl caught her by the scruff of the neck and scolded her for wandering through the fields. The fox girl warned that people were coming and we had to hide. She said that she would divert people's attention to herself so that the little fox would be safe. Suddenly, our familiar fox woke up in a cold sweat. She was trembling with horror and anxiety. Gradually seeing that she was not in danger at the moment, the fox calmed down. She remembered how the old man hit her, and then her sister brought her back to life with the help of a blood contract. The fox thought that she would need to repay her savior with kindness. Suddenly they turned to her and wished her good morning. The guy said that she looks quite strong and seems to be recovering quickly. Chu Xingchen, and it was he, asked how the fox was feeling. The next moment he received a strong blow to the nose. The guy was beaten for the first time for being interested in the well-being of another person. Chu Xingchen yelled, causing the bitchy fox to attack him. Lisa said that she remembers him well, the moron. After all, thanks to him, she was discovered. The guy didn't understand why he was to blame. After all, he saved the fox from inevitable death and his own valuable blood. Chu Xingchen growled that he was her savior, and she was an ungrateful creature. The fox said that this was bullshit because her cute, stupid sister saved her. The guy yelled that he was the sister. Lisa said that he could lie as much as he wanted. She wouldn't buy such nonsense. Chu Xingchen decided to take another pill and prove to the fox her incredible stupidity. He swallowed the pill and told the fox to watch closely what was happening to him. Chu Xingchen took on the appearance of a girl and asked the fox if she believed him now. He also said that the fox could double-check his words with the help of a blood contract. The fox was simply shocked that the stupid sweet sister actually turned out to be a man. And she liked this sweet girl so much and trusted her so much. And this actually turned out to be a vile transvestite man in female guise. The fox screamed for the vile man to return her sweet, gentle sister to her. The guy was surprised and asked if the fox liked the woman, to which she so angrily replied that it was none of his business who she liked. Chu Xingchen yelled that the fox had no manners or conscience because she didn't even thank him for saving her life. The guy growled that such an ungrateful fox belonged in the Valley of Repentance, and he really regretted saving her. Chu Xingchen finally stopped. He saw the effect his harsh words had on the fox. The guy himself is a little confused about everything. His nose was still bleeding from the blow the fox gave him when they met. But on the other hand, the fox looked so pitiful and depressed that he felt ashamed of his words. Here the system added fuel to the fire. He said that Chu Xingchen doesn't know how to talk to girls. Instead of yelling at girls, they need to say something soft and gentle. The guy hesitated for a moment. He was overwhelmed by a variety of feelings, but he's not used to saying soft words, much less compliments to girls. Chu Xingchen muttered that he worked hard to save the fox and risked himself. And instead of gratitude, she yells at him and accuses him of being a man. Now it was the fox's turn to open his eyes wide and think about his own behavior. She saw that the guy burst into tears and began to calm him down and ask for forgiveness. Chu Hingchen pulled his trick on the girls again. The best way to break their resistance is to demonstrate your own vulnerability. The fox muttered that maybe she got excited and it really wasn't his fault that he was a guy. Miraculously, the tears dried from Chu Xingchen's eyes. Lisa understood everything. That the guy defeated her with the same weapons that she usually uses, tears and feigned weakness. Chu Hingchen said, since now we have figured out who is to blame for what, it's time to get down to business. The fox asked the guy what he was going to do next. The guy explained that he was going to enter the Divine Moon Academy through a competition. He told the fox that he wanted her to help him through the blood contract. In return, the guy promised to protect her and hide her identity. Lisa was pleasantly surprised. No one had ever shown her such concern before. The fox asked Chu Xingchen if he was afraid to contact her. After all, Foxes are famous for their cunning and meanness. To which the guy replied that in every race there are good and bad people. And he's not going to brand her just because she's a fox. Chu Xingchen said that they would have enough time to study each other. But he does not force the fox to go with him. Lisa agreed to the guy's proposal. 
She said that she had nowhere to go anyway, but the girl said that she had one and only request. She asked Chu Qingchen to remain in the guise of a sister. This drove the guy into an indescribable rage. Lisa went back to her old ways. Apparently, the vixen thought he was transgender and deliberately dressed like a girl. The system also stated that he should fulfill the girl's requests in order to get her. Chu Xingqin shouted that the terrible system, the terrible robot, was to blame for everything. He constantly pushed the guy to do crazy things. And in case of refusal, he promised to shock him. To this, the indignant system replied that she was not a robot, she was a human. The system explained that she used to be human. Her world collapsed overnight, but they found him and made a deal with him. He was promised to restore his world if he became the system and helped raise the strongest warrior possible. The human system said that her memory of her past life was erased. She even forgot her past name. But the human system remembered that someone very important was waiting for it, and she would do anything to get back to this man. The system complained that it would be better if she did not have to meet Chu Xingqian. The guy asked if the system would still work for him. The system said that its help is very weak. It turned out that as soon as the system enters a new world, it immediately connects to the heavenly path, to the rules of this world. The system has the ability to enhance the protagonist's aura by interfering with the heavens and providing different reward systems. The system said that she had been in this world for so long that she had ceased to feel the heavenly path. She also said that it is possible to become the strongest in this world without any special rewards. The main thing is to try your best. And then everything will work out. Chu Xingqin felt sorry for the system. Her world was destroyed, and she was stuck in another alien world without her loved one. The guy promised to complete his mission as soon as possible, so that the system could return home early and meet the person dear to it. As Chu Xingqin walked through the forest in search of the fox, one slender figure watched him from behind the thick foliage. Then the person quietly left her observation post. Soon, she returned back to the city with its constant worries and worries. Yishan met her at the house. He greeted Modai, and he began to ask her where she had gone and where her little charge had gone. Modai said that she sent the baby home so that she could recover from all her worries. Yishan noticed that she was very kind to the girl. In response, Modai muttered something like she needed to return the favor. A few days later, a strange couple arrived in the royal city of Kalan through the northern gate. Right next to the gate, there was a small street performance with acrobats. This completely delighted Chu Xingqian. The fox muttered, hasn't he ever seen acrobats before? The guy said that he really hadn't seen them before. And he asked the fox why she wrapped herself so tightly in clothes. She explained that she did not feel safe in the city and was afraid that she would be discovered. Chu Xingqian told the fox not to be afraid. He will give her a pill that will change her appearance so much that she will never be recognized. The fox began to resist and scream so that the guy would not undress her in public. Chu Xingqin said that even if someone finds out that she is a fox, she must remember that she is his blood creature. Therefore, the guy will protect the fox and will not give offense. He told the fox that from now on she could walk with her head held high and not be afraid of anyone. The fox muttered that she did not need any protection from the man. In truth, Chu Xingqin saw the registration counter and stopped listening to his companion. Behind the registration desk sat a serious man with glasses and a goatee. Behind him stood a menacing guard. The guy walked towards the counter, dragging the reluctant fox behind him, and said that they would like to register. Chu Xingqin was handed a registration form. Filling it out was not at all difficult. Moreover, he and the fox met all the requirements that the selection committee made. After filling out the forms, the guard let them inside. Walking inside was exciting for Chu Xingqin. Almost everything that had to be done for the first time evoked similar emotions. But inside, everything turned out to be not scary. It really was very unusual. The guy and the fox walked across a small bridge to a huge crowd. These were all those who wanted to enter the Divine Moon Academy. Chu Xingqin was surprised that there were so many people. Apparently, the competition will be very serious. The system explained that the square jokes at the top are mysterious zones ancient battlefields with harsh conditions and strong demons. There you will have to go through a selection process. Suddenly, they announced that everyone should be silent. Chu Xingqin became wary. A tall, slender man in a loose robe appeared from the passage. The man stated that he was their instructor from the academy and began to explain the rules of the competition. No food or pills were allowed during the competition. So I had to either eat up the excess 
or turn it in before the end of the test. In a secret place, you had to hold out for at least seven days, and you could do whatever you wanted. The fox was delighted and noted that it means you can kill. Then, it was proposed to choose one of the spirits, who would decide which secret place each participant would go to. If during the competition there is a threat to the life of a participant, the spirit will save his life and take him away from a secret place. Chu Xingqin heard that this year the secret world is very complicated. The participants agreed among themselves about help and joint actions. A handsome guy with red hair stood out from the crowd. His name was Shi Zuo Wu. Lisa said that this is the second son of the Shar family. This is one of the four great families of the country. Lisa added that when Zuo Wu awakened, his soul power was able to form a solid sword known as the Sword of Light. Chu Xingqin was surprised because he thought that something like this could only be done after a certain level of strength. Zhu Wu was now a four-star martial artist. The guy thought that this was a very strong opponent, but the system protested and said that without a doubt, Chu Xingqin is the strongest and he cannot lose to Zhu Wu. The system immediately had a task ready. She suggested breaking the historical survival record in a secret location. Chu Xingqin thought that the system had played a dirty trick on him again. No, to calmly pass the tests. The system constantly needed to complicate everything. The guy yelled for the system to leave him alone and give him the opportunity to calmly pass the test. The fox was worried that she might be discovered in a secret place. Chu Xingqin replied that then they would either run away or kill people who were too curious. In order not to be separated from each other in a secret place, the fox grabbed the guy's belt and he grabbed a strand of her hair. The instructor said that a hundred years ago, evil spirits invaded and the cultivation world was on the verge of destruction. But the ancestors managed to defeat the evil spirits so that the world could prosper today. The secret places remain as wild as they were a hundred years ago during the disaster. The instructor said that he hoped that the test subjects would continue the will of their ancestors and survive in these wild places long enough. Then the instructor concentrated the energy between his hands and told everyone to get ready. Then everything swam before my eyes, and the rectangles began to go down and at the same time expand. Lisa woke up in a strange place. It was very quiet. She was holding something in her hand. Her hair hurt. The girl was horrified to discover that she was holding Chu Xingqin's belt in her hand, but he himself was nowhere to be found. The fox began to cry realizing that she was separated from the guy. They were supposed to find themselves in a ridge of still water, in a swamp of black earth magic. Lisa overheard prospective students saying that candidates were taken to a certain part of the restricted area, and then they decided where to go next. A beautiful girl with blue hair said that for some reason everyone was separated as soon as they entered. The girl turned to the fox and said that she looked weak. She asked how she was feeling and offered to survive together. Shizuo Wu did not like this at all. It seems he had some kind of desire for a girl with blue hair. The fox was very afraid that she would be discovered. She mentally turned to Chu Xingqin to come to her aid. True, at this time Chu Xingqin stood with his bare bottom and melancholy held a tuft of fox hair in his right hand. Meanwhile, the spirit that brought the guy to this godforsaken place flew away. Chu Xingqin glanced at the piece of fox hair. Where is this girl now? Then the guy suddenly realized that he had lost his belt and his pants could no longer stay on his feet. The guy was in the middle of a swampy plain with fogs. The fox was far away in the mountains at that time, miles away from the guy. While Chu Xingqin bent down to pick up his pants that had fallen to the ground, some creature was about to attack him. The guy kicked the freak in the chin, forcing him to describe another arc. The freak's flight was short-lived and ended with a blow to the ground. And Chu Xingqin pulled on his pants safely. The guy didn't have time to get a good look at the monster's appearance, because he drove its head into the ground before getting a good look. Chu Xingqin thought that this was a very sneaky attack immediately upon arriving at a new place. The system reported that it was a swamp demon. The guy also learned that this place is called the Black Earth and the Magic Swamp. And the fog in this place is poisonous, but he is immune to it. The guy was surprised that he was separated from the fox. To this, the system responded that they had probably changed the test rules. Suddenly, the guy began to collect soil in his palms. The system was surprised why he was digging in the dirt. Chu Xingqin replied that the land here is much more fertile than in the mountains. It's just a shame not to garden on such fertile soil. The system muttered that if he decided to farm in a secret place, then he was a fucking genius. The system also added that it is better for him to leave this idea, 
since he will die of hunger a hundred times before anything grows. The system tried to keep the guy from farming. She reminded him that his duty here was to pass the exam. The sharp impact of something hard on the rocky ground was accompanied by a dull sound. The impact sent a small cloud of debris and dust into the air. The sad fox looked doubtfully at the mushrooms she had just obtained. He was engaged in obtaining provisions together with the fox Shu Zuo Wu. A girl with blue hair approached them and asked how their excavations were going. Shu Zuo Wu showed off a whole basket of dug-up mushrooms. The beauty with blue hair was surprised. She thought that such a well-born guy would be too proud. And he turned out to be not only no stranger to dirty work, but also listens to the little girl. The beauty said that they were moving towards the misty plains, where there would be even less food there. Therefore, a good supply of food will help them all survive. One guy said that he was a regular candidate for membership and knew where he could get a lot of food. Therefore, the small group moved in the direction the guide pointed, hoping to get more food for the long journey. The fox was wary of this situation and watched with suspicion where the experienced guy was leading them. The fox did not look at her feet and stuck her foot into something brown and viscous. She raised her leg higher and froze in horror. A terrible, fetid smell filled her nose. The fox screamed so loudly that her companions thought that some kind of misfortune had happened to her. Frowning in disgust, the fox told the others that she had accidentally gotten into some poop. The beauty with blue hair was alarmed by this, and she asked the guide where he had taken them. The guy said it was a good deal. It was only necessary to lead them into a trap. The travelers looked around and in the darkness saw hundreds of pairs of evil eyes sparkling red like coals of fire. The beauty muttered that this was the lair of swamp demons. She promised to get even with their vile guide after the exams. The girl muttered that Shu Zuo Wu was so popular that they wanted to dump him, to which the guy reasonably noted that the famous will always be envied. He had long been accustomed to such situations and had something in store for such cases. He began to give his signature pre-fight speech when he received a good kick to the jaw from a swamp demon. Getting poked already on the ground, Shu Zuo Wu roared that he was allowed to finish his catchphrase. Lisa was truly surprised. She wondered if this was the famous Sword of Light. At this time, the beauty with blue eyes began to do something with her hands at the level of her chest. Something like a wave spread from the girl in all directions, and the swamp demons were thrown aside. The dehydrated swamp demons grinned terribly and gathered strength for a new attack. The beauty said that it seemed like Shu Zuo Wu had read too many romance books. She added that during a fight, it is better to act than to make famous speeches. Moreover, this is not effective when meeting with swamp demons. The magic seeds fell one after another and even rose into the soil, rich with fertility. Then each seed received plenty of moisture, so that thanks to it the accumulated energy would turn into new life and later bear juicy and healthy fruits. Chu Xingqin was at the height of bliss from doing what he loved. The system told the guy that it was stupid to pour drinking water on the ground that he had obtained with such difficulty. But Chu Xingqin didn't pay attention. He was already planning the beds and wondering where he would plant cabbage, pumpkins, beets, and carrots. In response to unflattering comments from the system, the guy said that the system understands nothing about the romance of rural life. The system asked why Chu Xingqin started cutting down the tree. The guy said that he was going to build a house. The system groaned. She said that she could not stand such a ward and that she wanted to go home. Carried away by his work, the guy did not pay attention to the blackbird that was circling high in the sky. The bird was no ordinary animal. It was a patrolman who was reconnoitering the situation. After circling over Chu Xingqin, who was immersed in seething activity, the bird flew away. She was heading for a village that was located very nearby, in the same swamps. When the blackbird's claws touched the ground in the village courtyard, it turned into a man. The birdman bowed low to the king of the Black Swamp Village. The king asked the scout what the current situation was. The newcomer reported that there were 57 people who had reached the Misty Plain. But most of them are poisoned and won't last long. The lookout also reported that there was one person who did not seem to be affected by the poison. The intelligence officer said that in his opinion, this is a capable person and problems can be expected from him. In response, the king only winced in disgust. He said that this was all nonsense and told the swamp demons to clear the area of vile people. He added that in the end, their main goal, the demons muttered the name Shizuo Wu. Their red eyes sparkled with an evil shine, 
and their sharp claws began to appear as if they were tearing human flesh. The girl with blue hair was surprised at how these stupid demons knew the name of her famous companion. She stated that her spiritual field is unstable, and she can only hold back excited demons for a very short time. The fox was surprised because only a great martial master could open the spiritual field. But in appearance, this beauty did not deserve such a title. The girl with blue hair asked Shizuo Wu to clear the way for them. This time, the guy decided not to talk about military honor and virtue in front of the swamp demons. He simply pulled out his sword of light and began to skillfully swing it from side to side. Shizuo Wu's face turned into a mask, emotions frozen on it. He concentrated completely on his powerful weapon. Soon, the sword flashed at the speed of lightning. The demons were no longer even visible in the light of the sword. In the heat of battle, the guy went wild. He had not yet recovered from the fact that upon meeting, one of the swamp demons knocked him to the ground. Even his amazed companions had to dodge the sword. But having had a little enough of the colorful spectacle and the screams of the slain demons, Shizuo Wu cooled down and began to work more measuredly and methodically. He continued to strike with his sword, but now with less fury and more accurately. He looked like a walking mine, upon bumping into which the swamp demons scattered in different directions. The beauty shouted that no one should lag behind, because in this chaos among the flying demons and their limbs, one could get lost. Now the fox saw the work of the Sword of Light in all its glory. And this shocked her greatly, but I had to leave. The guys moved in single file after Shusua Wu, who cut a path through the crowd of demons with his sword. At some point, the beauty had to hold the guy back, because there were no living swamp demons left and he was waving his sword in vain. Shuzo Wu's companions breathed a sigh of relief as he sheathed his sword of light. But the girl was haunted by the fact that the demons knew the name of her famous companion. It looked like a setup. Someone put a lot of effort into getting them to pass the exam. An ordinary thatched hut on a swamp seemed completely out of place. Moreover, a small vegetable garden was laid out near the hut, around which a low fence was carefully built. This was the first time the swamp demons had seen something like this in their swamp, and we can't say that they liked it. The boulder is supported by a cane, and under it lies a small nut. The mouse wanted to eat a nut, but as you know, free cheese is only in a mouse trap, just like a nut. The mouse caught the cane with its tail, and the boulder pinned it to the ground. Chu Xingqin sang happily that he finally got fresh meat. The guy happily jumped along the road and sang that he now had a good ingredient to cook a rich and nutritious soup. Chu Xingqin told the system that sooner or later, it would also learn to enjoy the delights of rural life. The guy was also going to demonstrate to the system how quickly his plants grow, but bitter disappointment awaited him. He had uninvited guests. The guests not only trampled and spoiled the entire garden, but also sat down imposingly, as if they were at home. The swamp demons began to tell each other that it seemed that the self-taught farmer froze in fear at the sight of real warriors. The guy really froze and bitter tears rolled down his cheeks. The demon growled directly in Chu Xingqin's face that only little girls cry. And he added that the vegetables crunched loudly while the demons danced their dance in the garden. The next moment, the guy gave the overly impudent and careless demon a good blow. From the powerful blow, the demon spun like a top and howled in pain. Having recovered a little from the unexpected attack, the demon roared as the pathetic farmer dared to lay a finger on him. He ordered his subordinates to kill the insolent boy. The enraged guy spun around like a top, seething hatred for evil freaks who do not understand the delights of agriculture simply tore him apart. In a few moments, Chu Xingqin scattered the swamp demons in different directions. Then he landed in front of one of the leaders of this crowd of dirty, uncouth monsters. The demon already realized that he smelled fried and there was no longer an opportunity to retreat. Chu Hingchen looked reproachfully at the swamp creature and asked why they ruined his food. The demon muttered that the guy was a real master and that they did not expect such a rebuff from him. In order for the demon to answer his questions, the guy hit the swamp creature again. He told him to answer his questions and not try to wag. The demon immediately realized that they were sent by the king of the black swamp to kill the guy, and the vegetables just turned up at their fingertips. Chu Xingqin muttered that a stupid swamp demon skull just turned up under his foot. The swamp demon had a hard time, but he paid for his dislike of vegetables. Chu Xingqin looked at the battlefield, the scattered bodies of the swamp demons, and his trampled vegetable garden. The system tried to contact the guy, but he cut it off. He said that he was going to destroy the king of the black swamp. Chu Xingqin summoned the doll that helped him so much in saving the fox's life. 
The guy whispered that he would destroy the king of the Black Swamp no matter what the cost. He moved the created doll closer and closer to himself. It seemed that the fire engulfing the doll began to burn the clothes and Chu Xingqin himself. Then it looked as if the fire had completely engulfed his hands. The guy received part of the doll's power. His desire to get even was very great. Burning hatred sparkled in his eyes and his heart seemed to turn into ice, not giving his enemies the slightest chance of mercy. Another swamp demon gave it a good shove and its green blood flew in different directions. Shu Wu's lightsaber worked tirelessly, but the work did not become less. Demons attacked travelers in whole flocks. The guy was surprised by so many enemies. They had already made their way through the fifth wave of swamp demons. The beauty thought that such a number of demons, and rather weak ones, was very suspicious. She was afraid that they might be lured into a trap. The girl asked how much food they had left. It turned out that there were only a few mushrooms. The situation threatened to become critical. The girl said that she would try to hunt. The fox thought that it was good that she had gotten used to a hungry life earlier. Now she easily tolerated the lack of food. Moreover, the bloody treaty allowed the fox to depend even less on food and drink. Suddenly the girl felt that something unusual was happening to her. The fox's soul power began to decrease rapidly. The girl realized that this was probably the effect of the blood contract, and Chu Xingqin was apparently in serious danger. There was really energy swirling around the guy. He gathered all possible forces for the last battle. Chu Xingqin killed dozens of swamp demons, but that was not his main goal. The guy moved forward, striking left and right. The powerful blows of the guy's charged hands literally made holes in the bodies of the swamp demons. But it seemed that the number of demons was not decreasing. And Chu Xingqin was already starting to get a little tired. But the guy's goal was no longer far away. Now he could see the village of the Black Swamp. The demons showered curses on the guy and the entire human race, but this did not really help them. Out of powerlessness and despair, they even tried to gnaw Chu Xingqin with their teeth. The guy was outraged by such actions of the swamp freaks. He demonstrated to the swamp demons that he also had teeth, and even better than theirs. This plunged the swamp people into real panic. They scattered in all directions, not making out the road, but then a powerful clot of energy directed by a skillful hand, flew towards Chu Xingqin. In the excitement of the battle, the guy only managed to see the energy strike at the very last moment. He barely managed to dodge the powerful blow. He was even surprised, since he was used to low-level swamp demons. Chu Xingqin reloaded his hand, preparing for the next attack. A powerful swamp demon stood right in front of the guy and showed his crooked teeth in a bloodthirsty grin. The demon roared that he was a king and would defeat any two-star martial artist. He was still trying to say something about the pitiful people, but Chu Xingqin's powerful blow interrupted his boasting. After the blow, the leader of the swamp demons flew away like a cannonball, destroying half of his own village along the way. True, a good stone wall interrupted his rapid flight. Bloody juice began to flow from the demon. He muttered that this strength and speed were consistent with the martial arts ancestor level, but this human boy did not resemble such an experienced master. However, the leader of the swamp demons was defeated, and the formidable man towered over him. The man asked if the demon was really the king of the black swamp. When the amazed demon nodded, the guy said that he had a royal gift for the demon. He pulled his hand back well to collect every single grain of energy. And indeed, Chu Xingqin struck the swamp demon between the eyes with a blow worthy of a king. The blow was so powerful that the leader of the demons entered the stonework like a knife through butter. But the guy didn't stop there and continued to treat the demon with powerful blows, turning his sinful body into a chop. With each blow, the guy named the vegetable for which he was taking revenge on the Swamp King. The demons watched in horror as their leader turned into mints. But they did not dare to make a single extra movement. Chu Qingqin had not yet completely vented all his anger, but the demon no longer seemed to be breathing. The guy muttered that the king made him terribly angry because he ordered his food to be ruined. Chu Xingqin also added that this happens to those who disrespect vegetables. The guy threw in front of the Swamp King, beaten half to death, a bag of vegetables trampled on his order. Chu Xingqin ordered the leader of the Swamp Demons to ask for forgiveness from the remaining vegetables. The demon was surprised and, probably with his brains already spent, asked the guy if he really needed to ask for forgiveness from these scraps. Chu Xingqin growled that the demon had completely lost his fear. The guy said that the demon didn't get much along the way and he would add to his high position. The demon immediately wised up and understood what they wanted from him. 
he began banging his head on the ground and muttering apologies to every vegetable whose name he could remember. Still angry as hell, Chu Xingqin turned his attention to the rest of the swamp demons. He told the demons that they stood like idols. The guy added that the demons should stand in line and also asked the vegetables for forgiveness. The entire village of swamp demons gathered to ask the vegetables for forgiveness. Only now did Chu Xingqin feel satisfied. The vegetables were avenged and their offenders repented. The guy peacefully folded his hands together to say goodbye to the vegetables. But at that time, he felt something strange. He felt a subtle wave of spiritual energy right under the king's house. Chu Xingqin once again turned to the swamp demon king and asked what was in the dungeon. The demon with a stupid smile replied that it was nothing special, just a food warehouse. Chu Xingqin charged the king one more time, just to refresh his memory a little. The demon said that he was not lying, and the guy did not deserve to beat him. Chu Xingqin said that he still does not believe a creature capable of destroying vegetables for fun. They went down into the dungeon. The guy walked behind the leader of the demons so that he wouldn't accidentally pull a trick or try to run away. The demon below pointed around and said that he really wasn't lying. Downstairs, there really was a food warehouse and nothing more. Chu Xingqin asked the demon leader if he was hiding anything. The guy's instincts have never failed. Even now, he trusted his own instincts more than the words of the lying swamp creature. The guy made an energy strike on the concrete floor of the dungeon. The shockwave spread out in all directions and reached the opposite wall. The wall began to collapse. Small fragments and large boulders flew in all directions. It was clear from the Swamp King that he was worried. Chu Qingqin, seeing the demon's reaction, angrily rushed to the hole in the wall to see what was there. Behind her was the girl's fragile back and thin neck. Her hands were tied behind her back. Looking deeper, the guy saw the silhouette of another unfortunate captive. The ropes dug harshly into her chest. Chu Hing Chen poked his head inside and was stunned. There was a whole crowd of tied up and scared girls. The guy thought that he hadn't beaten the swamp demons enough yet. They should have their belts cut for this. Chu Xingqin asked how the girls fell into the clutches of the swamp demons. One of the girls reported that on the plane, they were poisoned by swamp gas. Then these demons appeared. They slaughtered all the men and took the girls for their amusement. As always in such cases, a system appeared with its own ideas. The guy muttered that he knew everything. He needed to save the girls from the harem of swamp monsters. But the system said that it was better for Chu Xingqin to use these girls to create his own harem. The guy was amazed at the system's concern and asked if she had really once been a person. One girl was introduced to the guy as the princess of the Jialan royal family. Her name was Bu Kui. The girl's friends reported that after being gassed on the plane, she developed a fever and never recovered. In this form, the guy saw a member of the royal family for the first time in his life. A strong rope was attached to a beam high under the ceiling of the castle of the King of the Black Swamp. The King of the Black Swamp himself was hanging from a rope. He was cunningly tied up. On the king's chest hung a sign on which it was written that the king apologized for the fact that he was a terrible leader, did not respect other people's work and other people's freedom. Due to the lack of a bed, Chu Xingqin had to put the sick princess on the table. The guy tried to use his spiritual power to treat the princess, but after a long battle, he did not have enough energy. Trying to find a way to cure the girl, Chu Xingqin analyzed the swamp poison and realized that it was formed from the poop of swamp demons. The princess's companions were amazed at such details and decided that now it was clear why their mistress was in such bad condition. Chu Xingqin continued to think that methane was released from demon poop, which was converted into methane poison in the fog in the swamps. The girls listened to the guys ranting with their mouths open. One of the girls exclaimed that this was a great shame. After all, the princess got sick from the usual crap. There's a problem. After all, even if the princess is cured, she will again be poisoned by the swamp fumes. One girl said that they needed to quickly take the princess from these terrible places. Otherwise, she would never recover. Chu Xingqin said that there is no need for this. He knows a way to rid the swamp of toxic methane. And this method is farming. This was the first time the girls had heard about such methods of healing and improving the ecology of the area. The guy reported that while farming in the secret world, he discovered that plants absorb methane and emit an aura as they grow. Chu Hingchen revealed that he had fast-growing seeds that would solve all their problems in a few weeks. The guy said that he was going to rid this area of methane and fog and return the blue sky to the secret world. He asked the girls if they would help him in this noble cause. Chu Xingqin loudly announced that with their joint efforts, they would turn the poisonous, foul-smelling swamp into a blooming garden.
the system showed up again and told the guy that she asked him to take the girls into his harem and not to plow their garden. Since Chu Xingqin showed no interest in the harem, the system decided to stimulate him by introducing rewards for increasing intimacy with girls. The guy dejectedly asked what the reward would be for this. The system promised the guy some gardening tools as a reward, and Chu Xingqin said that he would do everything in the best possible way. Meanwhile, the girls came to the guy and complained that they did not understand agriculture and in any case would not be able to plant much. Chu Xingqin invited the girls to read books on farming. The guy promised that he would soon make the girls real farmers. For a long time, he described to them all the pleasures of farming. There was also no shortage of labor. The ownerless swamp demons, having lost their leader, were free labor. Ten days have passed. Someone was approaching a small village lost among the swamps. Among the exhausted travelers were old acquaintances. The fox, the girl with blue hair, and the well-known Shizuo Wu. A village of swamp demons appeared in front of the travelers. They could not even imagine what awaited them inside. The guys exchanged surprised remarks. The village looked very strange. There was no smell of swamp poison, and the demons themselves were not visible. The travelers heard that the leader of this village was at the level of a martial arts king. Shuzo Wu remarked that this should be the most difficult part of the secret world, so you should stay alert. The walls of the village seemed gloomy and impregnable. It was scary to even think about how to get inside. Moreover, there was no shortage of bright, inviting inscriptions, and the inscription above the open gate, Welcome, clearly indicated that this was a trap for vile swamp demons. Shuzo Wu and the girl with blue hair, despite all their courage, stood indecisive and silently stared at the open gate with an inviting inscription. In a normal battle, it is always clear where the enemy is and where the friend is. In the same situations, nothing was clear, and it was painfully difficult to make any decision. Shisaka Wu gathered his courage to finally go through the wide open gates. The guy was brought out of his difficulty by a voice coming from the village. He invited the travelers to come in and eat from the road. Soon its owner appeared, a cute and neat swamp demon with glasses. Suddenly, something attracted the attention of the charming demon, and he even began to adjust his glasses in amazement. What was even more unexpected was that the demon threw himself on Shizuo Wu's neck and said that he recognized him from the photo. He said that such a dear guest should not stand at the door. The swamp demon pulled the guy into the village, saying that Instructor Chu would be very happy about his arrival. To celebrate, the demon began to drag Shu Zuo Wu inside, but the guy resisted. He was not used to receiving such a warm welcome from demons. While the demon was dragging the reluctant Shu Zuo Wu, a young girl appeared at the gate. The girl recognized the amazed beauty with blue hair and the famous Shi Zuo Wu. The girl shouted greetings to her old friends and also invited them to enter. But the beauty noticed the strange cut of her old friend Hao Geng's clothes. The girl smiled embarrassedly and said that Mr. Chu said that this was a researcher's uniform. She also said it was safe inside and they were probably tired from the journey. The fox thought to herself whether it was Chu who everyone was talking about, who was connected to her by blood. Motivational signs were posted throughout the village, glorifying agriculture and working the land. Swamp demons worked peacefully among the green, well-tended vegetables. This picture evoked emotion. The first demon he met treated both Hao Gang and those who had just arrived with respect. Suddenly, a demon with glasses attacked his comrade, who was relieving himself right next to the road. He began to read morals to him and tell him that he should pee only in a public toilet and not anywhere. The travelers opened their mouths in amazement and bulged their eyes. They had never seen such a desire for cultural behavior among demons before. Seeing the surprise of her acquaintances, Hao Geng smiled sweetly. She said that before she herself did not share the ideas of Mr. Chu, who was going to raise demons. Next, the girl already shouted that they should not discredit demons just because of their race. All races need to unite for the sake of the blue sky of the secret world. Hao Ging added that under the leadership of the intellectual and hard worker Mr. Chu, the black swamp will turn into a blooming garden, and one day, a blue sky will appear above. The girl pulled the boys towards Mr. Chu and then ran around working together to improve the village and fields. At this time, near his house, Instructor Chu was explaining something to the amazed girls. The guy explained to the girls which plants are best to use to make the color of the nails more beautiful and brighter. It was clear that the girls liked Chu Xingqin's proposals. They showed off their bright nails to each other. The girls thanked the guy for his kindness and participation in their lives. 
They said he was the best and they loved him very much. But the system was again unhappy with the guy's actions. She said his job was to take the girls into his harem, not to become their girlfriend. To which the guy rightly noted, not pointing out ratings, that progress is visible to the naked eye. The system replied that Chu Xingqin is very cunning and always finds a loophole in the rules. At this time, Hao Gung introduced the travelers to the genius and part-time owner of this place. Chu Xingqin was overjoyed to see the fox safe and sound. But then the system suddenly went crazy. This was the first time the guy had seen this happen to her. The system pointed at Shu Zuo Wu in every possible way and said that this was wrong. Chu Xingqin couldn't figure out what was wrong with this completely normal-looking guy. The system babbled that this was an advanced element of the system called key transformation. The system talked a lot, sprinkled in unfamiliar words, but it was of little use. The guy still didn't understand what the system meant and why it bothered her so much. The system said that this was an advanced item that could only be created using the heavenly Tao. It allows you to become stronger. Chu Xingqin asked if this meant that Shi Zuo Wu also had a system. The system said Chu Xingqin did not understand anything and added that Shi Zuo Wu apparently is not a qi transformation user. Finally, the system said that Shi Zuo Wu was probably being monitored by outsiders with the help of this artifact. The guy looked closely at Shi Zuo Wu and finally began to understand something. Chu Xingqin realized that Shi Zuo Wu was being followed. He also suggested that the artifact was planted in the secret world. Finally, the guys shook hands firmly and greeted each other. Shi Zuo Wu hurried to assure Chu Xingqin that his companion admired him, which made the blue-haired girl blush. Shi Zuo Wu also admired the guy's desire to save this world, improve the environment, rid the swamps of poison, and make the sky blue. Chu Xingqin modestly said that his only goal was to pass the exam. He was surprised by Shi Zuo Wu's strange behavior, but the famous guy could not be stopped. He continued to express respect and admiration for Chu Xingqin. The fox made a face and muttered that Shi Zuo Wu reads too many books. Chu Xingqin decided that his counterpart had a certain degree of idiocy and could be easily deceived. Nevertheless, he suggested that they call each other brothers, to which Shi Zuo Wu happily agreed. Chu Xingqin asked what happened to Shi Zuo Wu before he came here. The guy told the stunned travelers that he had captured the king of the Black Swamp and learned everything about his plans and goals. And it turned out that the main goal of the leader of the Swamp Demons was to capture Shi Zuo Wu. Chu Xingqin suggested that everyone sit comfortably and listen to what the Swamp Demon King had to say. The former king reported that two months before the exams began, someone entered the secret world. The blue-haired girl and Shi Zuo Wu listened anxiously to the chief demon's story. The leader of the demons noted that he could not see the man's face, but he felt the enormous power that emanated from him. The man immediately promoted the demon to Grand Marshal Artist and also promised to release the demons from the secret world upon finishing working for him. The demon added that the temptation was so great that he immediately agreed to work for an unknown benefactor. First, the demon king was tasked with capturing several noble girls and locking them in his basement. This was accomplished quite easily due to the fact that the girls were poisoned. Then the leader of the swamp demons was tasked with capturing Shu Zuo Wu. The demon's words that the mysterious man was going to make Shi's life worse than death made him feel uneasy. The demon complained that he hoped to quickly finish the job and get out of the secret world. But now he understands that he was very stupid for buying into this offer. The system explained to Chu Xingqin that the sharp jump in his level was probably the result of some kind of system or system artifact. The system was surprised where the system artifact was taken, since it is the only system in this world. To which the guy replied that this is because the system does not do its job well. Angry, the system began to tear out Chu Xingqin's hair. But he turned his attention to the words of the girl with blue hair, who said that there was a candidate who wanted to kill them. She delved into her memories, trying to remember the man's face. The girl exclaimed joyfully that she remembered that his face was covered in spots. At this time, some people complained that as soon as Shi Zuo Wu entered the village, the observer lost touch with the Qi transformation. The guy with the spots on his face thought he would let the swamp demon steal the princess and then go and save her, and then get all the fame and fortune in the world. He asked the scroll to provide him with a camouflage artifact in order to sneak inside the settlement unnoticed. The guy with spots on his face needed to get into the village at all costs and understand what was happening there. Meanwhile, the girl with blue hair drew a portrait of the suspicious guy who was going to kill them. Shi Zuo Wu praised the girl for her accurate portrait of a man with spots on his face. The girl became embarrassed 
and Chu Xingqin thought that this daub was unlikely to help them much in identifying the intruder. Meanwhile, Chu Xingqin's assistants asked him to go to the gate and talk to the new candidates who were stubborn. It was really hot at the gate. It seemed that the welcome sign not only did not help attract new people, but, on the contrary, scared them away. The swamp demons showed miracles of charm, but the girl did not give in. She screamed for the evil demons to get their paws off her. The girl screamed at the demons and said that she did not believe a single word they said because her companion was killed by the swamp demons. She also screamed that nothing would ever force her to work side by side with the swamp demons. They explained to the girl that this is a mutually beneficial cooperation. After all, the village has shelter, food, and water. And they all work for the benefit of the secret world and strive to survive in this place for as long as possible. At this time, Chu Xingqin came over and told the girl that no one was forcing her. She can leave, the demons will not touch her. And if he wants, he can stay. But he will live and work by their rules. The guy added that if there is a conflict between people and demons, he will solve it. But he was assured that friendship between the two races would last forever. The guy stepped out from behind the incredulous girl and said that he was not with her and he wanted to come in and live with everyone. The demons warmly greeted the guy, greeted him, and asked whether he wanted to eat or wanted to rest from the road. Then the girl said that she probably got carried away and that she also wanted to join the farming community. At this time, the system informed the guy that the girl who came was not the one she pretended to be. She is disguised using an artifact. After looking around the village, the girl thought that Chu Xingqin was making good money using the system. The guy decided to follow the new suspicious person to find out what she was up to. The swamp demon helpfully showed the new girl where the women's bedroom was and where she could rest. He stated that the demons would not bother her at all because instructor Chu set them on the right path and now the demons are working together with people to make the sky a better place. In parting, the swamp demon waved his hand to the girl and told her to turn to him in case of any difficulties. The girl decided for herself that everyone in this settlement was sick in the head, both demons and people, and especially their leader, Chu Xingqin. After looking around to see if anyone was watching her, the girl took out an object from the folds of her dress. She asked the scroll if he could provide some information about Chu Xingqin. But the retinue disappointed her, saying that Chu Xingqin had not been identified. Then the girl asked the scroll for charm items to gain control over this place. The girl decided that since Chu Xingqin controls everything, then once she makes him fall in love with her, she will become the rightful owner of this place. Night fell in the swamp. Fogs rose and suspicious sounds were heard from behind the village walls. And in the village itself, not everything was peaceful and calm, as one might expect. The princess was still ill, although Chu Xingqin found that the concentration of swamp poison in her blood had decreased significantly. The guy felt the girl's pulse and said that in a few days she would come to her senses. Chu Xingqin said that it was already late and he should return to his home. The guy didn't even suspect what surprise was waiting for him at home and what it would all turn into later. At first, he was alarmed by the female silhouette that was visible through the curtain. Chu Xingqin couldn't even guess who was waiting for him inside. It was a new girl. Moreover, she settled down in his house, taking off her outerwear. But a couple of minutes before this, the system warned Chu Xingqin. She said that there is a suspicious guy in his house who uses disguise as a woman, as well as means of seduction. The system said that it would give Chu Xingqin a system buff just in case. The buff eliminated the influence of the item on the guy and also allowed him to counteract it. Therefore, Chu Xingqin confidently burst into the room and shouted from the door that it was time to get acquainted. The girl made various seductive movements, trying to demonstrate her flexible figure. As a result, her breasts were exposed and she appeared naked in front of the guy. But since Chu Xingqin saw the true face of the person in front of him, the love spell had no effect on him. On the contrary, he began to vomit, to the great amazement of the seductress. The girl asked if he was okay and why he was feeling sick. But another fountain of nasty liquid from the guy's mouth was her answer. Chu Xingqin couldn't even look at this disgusting person. The girl wondered why a young guy could feel sick at the sight of a naked beauty. She decided that he was probably sick, but the seductress was not going to let her victim go so easily. She also decided to use charm. She gently pressed herself against the guy and passionately whispered in his ear. But Chu Xingqin could hardly restrain the next bouts of vomiting. The girl cried that such a reaction from instructor Chu hurt her loving heart. She asked if Chu Xingqin didn't want to enjoy her charms. But the guy saw the true face of the man-man, who made eyes at him and stuck out his nasty tongue. Seeing this, 
Chu Xingqin just wanted to tear out his eyes and never see such a nightmare again. At this time, a fox passed by. She heard strange screams in the guy's house and suspicious fuss. As the fox came closer, she heard someone inside say to stop vomiting and look into her eyes. Asking how she could help Chu Xingqin, she opened the door of his house and saw a shocking picture. The guy was vomiting, lying on his back, and a hot girl was sitting on him. Although life left the fox a lot and she saw a lot, it was too much even for her. She slammed the door sharply. Chu Xingqin rushed after her, trying to get rid of the persistent suitor. The guy grabbed the fox by the leg so that it wouldn't leave, but the fox squealed that he was a crazy perverted bastard and she didn't even want to know him. Chu Hingchen began to cry to the fox that he was a pervert and that she wanted to seduce him. On the street, other girls saw the whole dramatic scene. They didn't know what to think about this. The seductress tried to cover her bare breasts from prying eyes. The girls asked Chu Xingqin what was going on here and if he needed help. The guy began to roar that he was not guilty. This mare just wanted to rape him. The girls were outraged that a stranger dared to try to desecrate their priceless master. The seductress backed away momentarily frightened by the girl's determination. But they continued to advance, shouting that the violator of public order should be arrested and punished so that others would be discouraged. The suitor tried to wrap her hot body in her cloak, seeing that she was surrounded on all sides by angry girls. She already realized that her plans to control this place were not destined to come true, so she decided to use a backup option, saved for emergencies. What followed was an explosion, an unusual explosion, carried out by a loser seductress. Chu Xingqin covered the fox standing next to him with his body. The girls and the swamp demons who came running to the noise closed their eyes from the bright light. <laughs> the explosion spread throughout the village, spreading a soft pink glow around. Chu Qingchen was still holding the fox tightly, but it seemed like nothing had been destroyed after the explosion, and there seemed to be no casualties either. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. The guy asked the fox if she was okay. In response, he heard a slight growl. The growl turned into a menacing roar, and the fox showed Chu Xingqin its sharp teeth and large fangs. The guy immediately neutralized the foxes, saying that no matter how much she wanted to bite, she would have to roll her lip. At this time, the system explained that a sanity loss item was used, which forced the demons to show their true colors. And indeed, the mask of good nature fell from the swamp demons, like the last leaf from a tree, and they showed their true colors. Chu Hingchen, busy with the fox, gaped and let the demon jump towards him. But an intelligent demon came to the rescue and knocked out the attacker. Chu Xingqin thanked Anon for his help and was surprised why he did not succumb to the general madness. The demon said that he felt a strong manic excitement, but Chu Xingqin's words continued to ring in his brain. This allowed him to resist the will of others and remain sane. The demon stated that he is a new swamp demon who embodies modern ideas in a new era. And it would be shameful for him to fall under the power of primitive madness. Chu Xingqin almost shed tears when he saw that even magic could not destroy the fruits of his work. The distraught guy solemnly said that from now on Anon will be called the light of the swamp demons, and the future of their entire race is in his hands. At this time, the system told Chu Xingqin that it was time for him to stop fooling around since the insidious guy took advantage of the general confusion and fled to the east. The guy entrusted the fox to the faithful Anon in order to go in pursuit of the fugitive. He also told the swamp demon not to kill the fox if she had another attack of rabies. As he prepared to leave, Chu Xingqin muttered that he would repay this dirty pervert in full. Meanwhile, the attacker reached the princess's house. He muttered that if he couldn't control the black swamp village, he would simply destroy it. The man decided that if he saved the princess while the demons were rioting, he would be on horseback again. Chu Xingqin, who was running nearby, heard an explosion and saw a high column of flame. The guy asked the system if the princess's house was there. Chu Xingqin thought that the attacker would not dare to blow up the princess, but anxiety settled in his heart. High in the sky among the fiery whirlwinds, the guy noticed a slender female figure. Having looked closely, he realized that it was a princess. It seemed unlikely that this weak, sickly girl was capable of such tricks, but without a doubt it was her. High in the sky, among the roaring fire whirlwinds, the princess looked indifferently at the world around her. Even Chu Xingqin was amazed even though he had seen a lot during his time living on Mount Delulo. With joyful cries, Hao Geng rushed towards the fiery tornado, which gradually faded, losing its power. Meanwhile, the princess slowly sank to the ground, and a joyful girl was already running up to her. Hao Geng rushed to hug the princess familiarly, almost knocking her down. 
The joyful meeting was observed by a vile man who was about to destroy the village. The angry princess pointed her finger at him, and she said that he dared to touch her feet. Her majesty added that since she did not yet control her body, she had to blow up the house. Hao Ging told the princess to stay away so as not to stain her dress, and that she would deal with her offender. The determined girl drew her sharp sword, and the next moment rushed to attack. How? Geng ran so fast that her cloak and dress fluttered behind her. But the man with the spots on his face was not going to wait for death with folded hands. He started doing his tricks again. Soon, dirt began to rise around the enemy. The foul-smelling liquid poured onto Hao Geng's clean clothes, forcing her to stop. The mud also covered the princess and Chu Xingqin, who was standing next to her. The system reported that the battle soul of a person with stains is dirt. An angry Chu Xingqin punched his opponent with all his might. The guy with the spots was surprised how Instructor Chu managed to get out of the village, which was overwhelmed by a riot of demons. Chu Xingqin continued to treat the enemy with strong blows, saying that the attacker would not be able to seduce him or destroy the swamp. Hao Gung encouraged the guy, offering to destroy the man with the spots, and the princess still could not move away from the mud bath. The enemy was surprised by Chu Xingqin's enormous strength and feverishly looked for a way out of the difficult situation. The guy with the spots on his face knew that if he didn't do something soon, his life would be over. Finally, he growled at the scroll to take 20 years of his life. In return, the guy with spots on his face asked for one single thing, so that the scroll would help kill Chu Xingqin. Almost immediately, the guy felt that something began to happen. Powerful energy poured out from the scroll. Chu Xingqin fell under the influence of this unknown enormous force. Soon, he ceased to distinguish anything around except the blinding white light. When the white light reached its highest limit, the guy plunged into pitch darkness. All he could hear was his own heartbeat. Chu Xingqin gradually began to return to life. But he didn't understand where he was. At this time, Hao Gung was asking the guy with spots on his face where he had taken Mr. Chu. The enemy said with a smile that Chu Xingqin had been absorbed and would no longer be in the way. True, the guy with the spots on his face said that he paid dearly for it. But now there are no barriers between him and the princess. The princess muttered angrily so that the disgusting bastard would not dare touch her. To which the man replied that he would still play with her. And it doesn't matter whether she likes it or not. At that moment, something painfully cut the guy with spots on his face on his arm, and blood began to flow. With the phrase that knights always come at the right moment, Xu Zhuo Wu appeared on the battlefield. At this time, Chu Xingqin was in some incredible place. He had already fully come to his senses, but still could not imagine where he was. There was nothing familiar around the guy that his gaze could catch on. Moreover, in this place, there was no up or down. And all sides were also no different from each other. Chu Hingchen was surprised that even in such an unusual place, the system remained with him. The system suggested that this might be system space. But even she herself was not sure of anything in this place. A picture came to mind of a little boy weeding rice in a flooded field. The princess, along with her faithful Hao Geng, watched the battle from the side. Xu Zhou Wu swung his lightsaber tirelessly, but he faced a difficult opponent. He threw foul-smelling mud every now and then. The princess and Hao Geng also suffered. But the girls remained in place to support Xu Zhou Wu. The princess saw that a beautiful girl with blue hair was approaching them. The girl who came asked if her majesty was hurt. Then she said that the demons in the village rebelled, but Anon sent her to the east to help instructor Chu. Xu Zhou Wu continued to tirelessly press his opponent. He was ready to sacrifice his life for his princess. A hail of strong blows fell on the guy with spots on his face. The determination to win at any cost was visible in Shi Zhuo Wu's eyes. As he read, this is how a real knight should act without fear or reproach. At this time, Chu Xingqin was peacefully snoring in a place even more distant and unknown than even the secret world itself. The system began to wake the guy up and call him to action. He noticed that this was a very strange place and there was nothing that could be done to escape from here. The system informed the guy that after connecting to the heavenly path, the system forms its own space where information is stored and objects are created. But this place, it turns out to be an empty system space without a soul. It turned out that everything here is run by low-level artificial intelligence, or, in simple terms, AI. The system stated that if the AI is programmed to work, then the scroll is actually a robot that provides items, Chu Xingqin said that it turns out that they are sort of locked in someone else's house, where there is only one robot, and also they cannot leave. 
The system praised the guy for his intelligence and said that this is approximately how things are. He thought for a while. And then the guy came up with an interesting idea. Chu Qingqin then roared to the system whether they could take over this house. The system perked up and said it would do everything possible. Moreover, in this place everything is controlled by artificial intelligence, and breaking through its defenses will not be difficult. Having gained courage, the system screamed. Since they dared to let it in here, then let them get it now. The system shouted that it was time for them to learn the capabilities of the strongest system. The princess saw that Shu Zuo-Wu was starting to get tired and decided to intervene in the battle herself. The girl rushed towards the fighters faster than a bullet, leaving a trail behind her. It seemed surprising that such a fragile girl, and a princess at that, would use such a crude weapon. On the battlefield, the princess's eyes glowed red. It was a very unusual sight. Then the princess fired at the enemy with all her might, driving her into the ground. But to Her Majesty's surprise, the guy with the spots on his face was not defeated. He again used one of his tricks and light appeared on his palm. The princess barely had time to pick up the unconscious Shuzo Wu and get away. The girl wondered how to cope with such an insidious opponent. Behind her, a girl with blue hair was trying to revive Shuzuo Wu. The princess failed to come up with any plan. Meanwhile, the guy with spots on his face began to rise from the ground. He understood perfectly well that he could not cope with several opponents. Gradually, his strength will be drained, and he will become an easy prey. The guy with dark spots frantically clutched the saving scroll in his hand. The scroll allowed one to constantly increase the level, right up to the limit that the body could withstand. True, this process took a lot of effort. The guy understood that to win, he needed to raise the level above that of a great martial artist. He's tired of being a punching bag. It especially hurt his pride that he was being beaten by the princess he so desired. The guy with spots on his face decided to win at all costs. A huge surge of energy spread in circles throughout the entire area. And the dense beam rushed into the heights of the sky. Those present noted high fluctuations in spiritual power. They realized that the guy with the spots on his face was raising his level in order to become stronger and gain an advantage over them. Shiso Wu muttered that the enemy was using his magic things again. He told the girl with blue hair that something had to be done. You can't let the enemy get stronger. The girl said that we should try to finish him off before his sphere stabilizes. She began to concentrate the energy between her palms. Shaitaku gathered the remnants of his forces for the last decisive battle. He sank from above onto a dark figure, concentrating a sea of energy around himself. Shizuo Wu slashed with his lightsaber, but his weapon met only with dirt. At this time, the girl with blue hair released a stream of energy, and just in time, she managed to cover Shuzuo Wu with a protective screen from the enemy's counterattack. The guy with the spots on his face spread his palm in the shape of an open mouth, and the dirt turned into a monster. The mud monster distracted Shuzuo Wu's attention. The guy with spots on his face didn't have time to breathe more freely when his neck was powerfully squeezed by an energy lasso. Now the determined Hao Gung entered the battle with fresh forces. The girl began to tighten the energy lasso around the enemy's neck. To do this, it was like a whirlwind spinning around its axis. The princess flew up from behind with her terrible weapon. Blow followed blow. Flames flared up and lightning flashed on the battlefield. The earth heaved and heaved. The rocky surface exploded into a thousand sharp fragments. Shuzo Wu methodically slashed with his lightsaber. It seemed that the guy had a second wind. The guy with spots on his face was attacked from all directions, as well as from the air. The fragile princess menacingly swung her fiery hammer. With each turn, the girl moved faster and faster. The air cut by the hammer whistled louder and louder, and the flames roared louder around the princess. Having concentrated a huge amount of energy, the girl with a skillful movement directed it down at the enemy. The blow was so powerful that it looked like a nuclear explosion. If the girls had not been hiding behind a protective screen, they would have been blown into the air like leaves in the wind. Everyone wanted to hope that the enemy had finally been defeated. This battle was too tiring even for good fighters, but it was too early to rejoice. To the amazement of those watching, at the epicenter of the princess's energy strike, something began to move. Then, pieces of stinking slurry flew towards the guys, and finally they were simply covered with foul-smelling mud and knocked off their feet. The enemy said that the blow would be enough to kill a great martial artist at the peak of his powers, but the guy with the spots on his face managed to raise his rank even higher. To demonstrate his own capabilities, he backhanded Shuzuo Wu. Then he began to press the noble guy's head into the fetid puddle. 
The princess said that if the guy touched her with even a finger, her father would grind the enemy into powder. To which the guy with spots on his face laughed and said that he had the opportunity to erase their memory. So he can play with them a little. The enemy unrolled the scroll and began to shout that all the nobles of heaven and the sons of fate were bowing at his feet. To everyone's surprise, the guy with spots on his face received a strong and unexpected blow to the chin. The most amazing thing was that someone's hand appeared directly from the scroll. Everyone looked in amazement as a head began to appear from the scroll. The enemy dropped the scroll from his hands in surprise. Soon, to the great joy of the guys, Chu Xingqin himself appeared from the scroll and whole and unharmed. The guy looked so confident that it seemed like he went out to smoke while having dinner in an expensive restaurant. The guys looked with amazement and hope at their leader, whom they no longer expected to see alive. Chu Xingqin leisurely examined the surrounding landscape, the battlefield, and finally saw the guys. The guy asked them why they got into the puddle, or if it was some kind of performance. The guys shouted to Chu Xingqin that there was danger behind him. The guy roundhouse kicked the mud monster, and his face twisted into a grimace of disgust. Chu Xingqin felt like he had touched someone's poop. Soon the owner of this good himself appeared screaming. The guy with the spots on his face was surprised that Chu Xingqin got out of the trap he had prepared for him. The guy rushed to attack the vile enemy. Streams of mud flew towards him. Chu Xingqin set up the shield in time, and the mud met an insurmountable barrier. Something came back to the guy with the spots on his face, and the guy got a short break, which he used to prepare a new attack. From their stinking bath, the guys watched with genuine interest the battle that broke out in front of them. Chu Xingqin said that the guy with the spots on his face likes to play with mud. Chu Xingqin said that he would be happy to play with him and with his own toys. Gathering as much dirt as possible into one bundle, Chu created a huge hand with the palm clenched into a fist. And then, with this creation, he dealt a crushing blow to the enemy. The guy with spots on his face flew many meters back. Fountains of blood sprayed from his mouth and eyes. The enemy frantically reached for his saving artifact. He muttered that he needed to become even stronger. The energy of the artifact began to spread around. The system told the guy that it would become attached to his fist and would be able to deprive the enemy of the artifact. The system added that the life of the guy with the spots on his face will soon come to an end. And he continued to mutter, as if in some kind of frenzy, that he needed to become stronger. The thoughts of the guy with spots on his face went back to the past when he was hiding among the dark passages of the huge library. His family bullied him all the time, and the guy came to the library to cry. Suddenly, he heard something that offered to radically change his life. At first, the guy with spots on his face couldn't understand who was addressing him. Then he saw a glowing scroll on the bookshelf that spoke in a human voice. The scroll told the boy with the spots on his face that he was the chosen one, and the scroll was sent from heaven to guide him to the pinnacle of fame and fortune. The scroll said that it would help him become strong and get even with his offenders and enemies. As payment for its services, the scroll required a little vital energy. However, it later turned out that the scroll took much more energy than it promised. However, the fight between Chu Xingqin and the guy with the spots on his face continued. Chu Xingqin tried to use the system to capture the artifact from which the guy drew his strength and skills. Together with the system in his hand, the guy began to beat the enemy. The guy with the spots on his face turned into a punching bag. He didn't understand why he was losing, because he had become so strong. Meanwhile, Chu Xingqin was literally dragging his opponent through the mud. Suddenly, the guy saw that his opponent's artifact had shattered into small fragments. The system explained that it was in all likelihood a one-time artifact that was destroyed when power was lost with its owner. Lying on the ground, the guy with spots on his face continued to mutter that everyone was making fun of him. He began to blame Chu Xingqin for preventing him from becoming a new person. The guy told the enemy that he had committed a bunch of disgusting things, and now he was trying to pass himself off as a victim. A guy with spots on his face began to moan that the children of aristocrats receive all the blessings of life, but he was bullied all his life. The guys listened with interest to the enemy's speech, but they had no pity for him. Chu Xingqin also had no pity for the enemy. But he saw that in front of him was a lost man. He muttered that he did not have a single chance to make his way in life. The only hope for a good future was given to him by a magic scroll. Chu Xingqin countered that the hope was false and the scroll was actually a ghost that pulled the man into the abyss. The guy added that the enemy chose the wrong path to start a new life. Until his death, the enemy looked with displeasure at the cloudy sky of the secret world. Then his soul left his mortal body and rushed into an unknown world. Chu Xingqin turned to his system 
and asked if it was pumping energy out of him the same way the system of the guy with the spots on his face was doing. The system was indignant. She did not understand how a guy could accuse her of such vileness. Then the system invited Chu Xingqin to come with her. The guy was surprised to find himself in an unknown place. But the system immediately explained that this was its system space. She also said that she had collected a copy of all the knowledge that was stored in the scroll. Later, the system will study them and see what they can do. The system said that it is very rare that anyone is allowed to get inside the system. But she did it because they are the closest partners and they have no secrets from each other. She also explained that she was trying to figure out where that other system that the enemy had came from. But as soon as the system began to dig in this direction, it self-destructed. Furthermore, it turned out that the system's inability to connect to the heavenly path had something to do with that other fake system. The system also added that the guy has enough energy to increase his level. Chu Xingqin said that now the system somehow calmly and casually tells him this, as if by chance. Whereas before there were a lot of special effects and movement, the system said that she previously wanted to impress the guy and therefore accompanied such messages with various tinsel. Now they are close friends and there is no longer any need for this. The system also reported that although it cannot yet create legendary artifacts, it can conjure with these fragments and maybe something will work out. True, to synthesize complex subjects you need a lot of knowledge and the system promised that it will study a lot, especially since it has a bunch of books on all sorts of topics. The system added that she would be the smartest system and the guy would be the strongest warrior and together they would conquer this world. Chu Xingqin asked, since the system has so much literature, perhaps it has something on pig breeding. The system got angry. And the guy added that it doesn't have to be pigs. Other animals will do. He just decided to start farming. Without hesitation, the system kicked the guy out of its internal space. Chu Xingqin returned to the secret world and was immediately approached. A frightened, intelligent demon came running to the guy. Chu Xingqin said that he hoped that everyone in the village had calmed down. The demon said that everyone had calmed down, but as a result of the riot, almost all the crops were trampled. The swamp demons hung their heads sadly and said that they knew they were guilty and that they were ready to be punished. To which Chu Xingqian rightly objected that they were victims of external influence and it would be unfair to punish them. Suddenly the guy growled that he would cut his throat, return to the real world and kill the asshole who had violated the idol in their settlement. The demons began to beg Chu Xingqian not to abandon them to the will of fate. The swamp demons said that if the guy leaves, they will face starvation because all the crops are trampled and they no longer want to eat poop. Chu Xingqin promised not to leave the demons to their fate. The guy said that he had not grown many fast-growing seeds for staple food before, but he has the seeds of fast-growing corn, the fastest-growing crop of all the major crops. The guy's fantasies flew into the future, where he lived in a cozy house and there were a lot of green crops and all kinds of vegetables around. Chu Xingqin quickly woke up from his fantasies and said that there was one problem. He had never worked with this corn before. People and swamp demons began to wonder why the guy ignored such a valuable crop. Chu Xingqin said because it is not tasty. The taste does not resemble ordinary corn, but beeswax. But the guy added that this crop grows very quickly, and therefore tomorrow the whole village will plant corn to avoid hunger. While Chu Xingqin was solving food issues, the fox heard an unpleasant whisper behind her. The fox listened and realized that they were talking about her, about the fact that she is a fox. The girl realized that everything was lost. Her origin had been discovered, and now she was in great danger. People whispered about her behind her back, how she got here, and what intrigues she was up to. Lisa wondered how she gave herself away. She always tried to be careful and not reveal herself completely to anyone. But then she remembered that under the influence of the artifact of the guy with spots on his face, she showed her real face. Although Chu Xingqin had complete control over her, others saw her essence. The next morning, a new scandal broke out in the long-suffering village. The princess was furious that she was offered to take up farming on an equal basis with the others. The princess was also outraged by the meager breakfast. The demon's explanation that these were steamed sweet potatoes infuriated the girl. She grabbed her hammer and screamed that they wanted to force her to work to feed the swamp demons. If Hao Geng had not arrived in time, the demon would have had a bad time. The princess, in a rage, was capable of destroying the entire village, and all that would be left of the demon would be a wet spot. Then Chu Xingqin appeared and said that it was his idea to plow the land. 
and that the princess will plant seeds not for the demon, but for herself. The guy turned to the nearest demon and asked what they ate before he came. The swamp demon began to hesitate and mumble something incomprehensible. Finally, he said that they often had to eat poop. This left those present in complete shock. The demon said that he knew it was very terrible, but he was hungry and there was nothing to eat. The girls were even disgusted to listen to such revelations of swamp monsters. The demon added that there was normal food, but the swamp king took it all for himself. Chu Xingqin threw the princess a shoe and said that the only way to get normal food is to work. The princess objected that only farmers engage in agriculture. She also said, isn't it the people's duty to work to feed their princess? To this, Chu Xingqin said that they have a different rule in the village. Only those who work can eat. Then the guy shouted at those gathered to gawk at the capricious princess so that everyone should leave to work. Hao Gung said that she was going to do work for the princess in order to give her the opportunity to eat. The princess just snorted in response to this. And she said that she would not eat a single piece of Chu Xingqin's food even if she was dying of hunger. Hao Gung tried to reason with her mistress, but it was useless. The princess slammed the door and said that we'll see if Instructor Chu will starve the royal person to death. At this time, the system scolded Chu Xingqin for not knowing how to treat the princess. The guy made excuses that he was the boss in the swamp and justice was above all. Chu Xingqin stated that if someone gets something for nothing, then all the value of the work is lost. The system advised the guy to increase his intimacy with girls, then she would give him a valuable gift. Chu Xingqin had one ace up his sleeve to get the girls to do what he wanted. It was a pretense, and the guy was good at it. In the garden, Instructor Chu patiently explained that the manure must first be spread over the beds. Then, the seeds are planted in the garden bed. But the guy drew the attention of the listeners that the seeds need to be planted between the manure, because if you put a seed on the manure, it will be burned. Well, the last stage of sowing, <laughs> but mandatory. It was necessary to water the bed so that the seeds had enough moisture and seedlings appeared as quickly as possible. Shu Zuo Wu carefully followed the process and then said that there was nothing complicated and that he wanted to try it himself. True, the noble guy got down to business too zealously and the earth flew in all directions. But Chu Xingqin had already turned his attention to another person. It was Hao Geng who could barely move her legs from fatigue, but the girl was persistent and did not let go of the hoe. The girl asked Chu Xingqin not to cut the princess's rations and that she would do all the work for her mistress. The guy said that he didn't want to offend the princess, and he came up with a plan to solve this problem. He asked Hao Geng to support his plan and not hand him over to the princess. Meanwhile, her highness was sat at the window. She was not pleased with either the good weather or the calm, everyday life of the village where everyone worked harmoniously. The princess was very hungry. It seemed to her that she had never been so hungry in her life. Her highness harbored a grudge against Chu Xingqin and decided that after the exam, she would ask her father to punish the harmful guy. The princess was distracted from her sad thoughts by the conversation of two swamp demons. One demon invited another to dinner after a hard day of work. His opponent objected that it was not hard work, but on the contrary, it was very pleasant to work in the company of such good people. The princess also heard that the demons were talking about her. They laughed that the fat girl was lazy to work and only wanted to eat. Her highness could not bear such an insult. The princess literally began to smoke, and shouting that she would kill the creatures, climbed through the open window. Faithful Hao Gung arrived and began to calm her mistress. The girl offered the princess food, but her highness resolutely refused and said that Hao Gang was at the same time with them. The princess slammed the door in the face of her faithful assistant and shouted that she would not eat a single bite until Chu Xingqin came to her to ask for forgiveness. The next day in the evening, it seemed to the princess that her stomach began to digest itself. Her majesty could not sleep from the pangs of hunger. As soon as she closed her eyes, the tables at the magnificent banquets in her father's castle began to float before her eyes, bending with delicious dishes. The princess even thought she could smell these delicacies, but the girl sniffed again and jumped up on the bed. The smell was real, not imaginary, and the princess became very excited. Her highness simply choked on her saliva from the delicious smell. Impatiently, she ran to the door and ran out into the yard. A satisfied Chu Xingqin sat in the courtyard and fried sweet potatoes, which had a simply divine aroma. But as soon as the princess saw her tormentor, she returned to the house, loudly slamming the door. But the cunning Chu Xingqin stuck his head through the window and told the princess that he had come to apologize to her. And, as a sign of repentance, 
had prepared fried potatoes for her. The guy said that he would be very grateful if the princess accepted his treat. Her highness held back as long as she could. But she was literally choking on her saliva because she had not eaten for several days. In the end, even a princess is not alien to anything human. And the princess snatched the potatoes from the guy's hands and began to swallow them greedily. Forgetting about decency, Chu Xingqin told the princess to calm down and promised that everything would be fine now. Her highness was thinking at this time why she was so useless and ended up in such a stupid situation. The princess was even more surprised that such primitive village food suddenly turned out to be so tasty. After finishing the potatoes, her highness decided to forgive Chu Xingqin and demanded more food from him. The guy said that he did not have time to bake more and said that the princess could do it herself. Chu Xingqin explained that you need to bury the potatoes in the ashes and wait a few minutes for them to cook, to which the princess replied that it would take a long time and she had something suitable for this purpose. The girl took out her fire hammer and fried potatoes on it. Chu Xingqin began to cry that it was impossible to bake potatoes on an open fire because this way they would be burned. At this time, an intelligent demon passed nearby and drew attention to the potatoes that the princess had turned into coal. The demon said that the potatoes looked very tasty and had a crispy crust. He asked permission to try one potato. He remembered the guy's instructions to praise the princess so that she wouldn't bake. Even if it's not tasty, you have to say that everything is just great. Having tasted the princess's potatoes, the bald, intelligent demon instantly developed thick hair. The potatoes cooked by the princess looked like gold bars. The texture inside was wonderful and the sweet aroma warmed the heart as soon as it hit the lips and tongue. The demon was still admiring the amazing taste. And Chu Xingqin was amazed to see that the intelligent demon had grown thick hair. The demon put a potato in the guy's mouth and told him to try it. He won't regret it if he does this. Chu Xingqin tasted it and said that the potatoes were indeed very tasty. Another bald demon passed by, and shouting that potatoes make hair grow, he began to beg for a potato for himself. The demons began to admire the wonderful taste of potatoes and the rapid growth of hair after it. The princess looked with surprise at the results of her work. For the first time in her life, she was praised for something she actually did. Chu Hingchen also came over and said that the potatoes were simply delicious. He himself had never been able to do this. The princess was flattered and thought it was all very cool. Chu Xingqin at this time announced that this was the best food in the world and the entire village deserved to eat such great food. The guy turned to the princess and said that he had a request for her. The request was that Her Majesty bake more potatoes so that there would be enough for the whole village. Chu Xingqin respectfully addressed the princess and asked her to become the chief cook of the village. All the swamp demons and people began to ask for the same. The flattered princess could not refuse so many who wanted it and destroy their hopes for decent food. Then the cries began like, Long live the princess, the great cook. This pleased Her Majesty very much. Chu Hingchen smiled cheerfully. Apparently his cunning plan almost succeeded. The guy thought that he had managed to fool another girl and force her to do what he needed. But the system was again unhappy. She said that Chu Xingqin had the wrong approach to girls. At this time, two dissatisfied people heard the guy muttering that he had managed to deceive the princess. While exchanging words, they called Chu Xingqin a vile bastard who deceived their princess. But they couldn't come to Her Majesty and say that she wasn't a chef at all, just that Instructor Chu was deceiving her. Therefore, the evil couple decided to leave the exam and tell in the real world how the vile Chu Xingqin was bullying the princess here in the secret world. At this time, updated assessments of exam participants appeared in the real world. Crowds of people rushed to the ranking of the exam participants. Everyone was greatly surprised that Chu Xingqin was in first place in the ranking. People had no idea who he was, much less what family he came from. Examiner Lu Lian was informed that one candidate died during the exam. The spirits did not have time to save him. From time to time, such an accident happened during an exam. It was worse if a child of a noble family died. The examiner looked at the list and thought that the safety of noble Shizuo Wu and the princess were also at risk. He even thought about stopping the exam. At this time, Lu Lian was informed that two people had failed the exam. They reported that Chu Xingqin had colluded with the fox and the swamp demons and took over the black swamp. It was also reported that Chu Xingqin forced all the noble children to plow the land for the demons, and the princess was forced to bake potatoes. These were all simply unheard of things. There has never been such a scandal during exams before. It was unheard of for a person of royal blood to feed others, much less feed swamp demons. 
Examiner Lulian thought about it. He had to make a decision urgently. He ran through various options in his head and finally came to the conclusion that Chu Xingqin was probably preparing an uprising. Therefore, Lulian gave the command to immediately close the secret world and also arrest the troublemaker Chu Xingqin. Soon, the examiner was informed that the formation that was supposed to cover the magical swamp was declared inoperative. Lu Lian was surprised because he knew that the array was designed by His Majesty himself. There have been no problems with this secret world for many years. The examiner muttered that the incident be reported to the royal family and also announced a gathering of martial emperor-level practitioners from all major families. Passions also flared up in the secret world. Lisa continued to hear more and more conversations about herself behind her. The fox heard that two people had already left the secret world to report to the examiner. People said that even the fact that they left the exam without permission would not be a problem. For if they report the fox, they will receive a great reward. Lisa was very unhappy to hear such conversations behind her back. She was not only uncomfortable, she felt her life was in danger. They said that you shouldn't appear near a fox, much less talk to it so as not to have problems in the future. Chu Xingqin had truly forgotten about his fox ward. At this time, he and the princess were preparing dishes. The guy tried another concoction that the princess had prepared. The dish turned out to be simply incredibly tasty. Chu Xingqin had no idea that such a noble and proud person could cook so deliciously. The guy sincerely praised the princess and said that he admired her talent as a cook. Hao Ging was shocked by the changes that had happened to her mistress in such a short time. The princess gained confidence in herself and her abilities, as well as a sparkle in her eyes. She was so skillful in handling kitchen tools and lighting the stove that others could only envy her. How? Gung had no idea that her highness would enjoy cooking so much. The girl had never seen the princess so joyful and satisfied with life. But then Hao Ging noticed something that she really didn't like. She thought that the growing friendship between the princess and Chu Xingqin could turn into something more. They spend so much time together every day. This relationship wouldn't stand a chance. The girl imagined with what anger her father would attack her mistress if he found out about such a relationship. But what could Hao Gong do if she was a subordinate and had no say? She couldn't decide what the princess should do and what not. The princess was delighted with Chu Xingqin. She even said that he reminds her a lot of her own mother. This news made Hao Gung vomit. She saw no resemblance between the young guy and the old empress. The princess explained that she enjoyed watching her mother cook. But Her Majesty's eyes filled with tears at these memories. She said that her father did not like her mother's cooking at all. He believed that this was a disgrace to their entire family. The princess added that after the death of her mother, her father and brother spent little time with her due to their constant employment. Her Majesty said that if Chu Xingqin were a woman, she would want him to be her mother. Hao Geng was horrified by such desires of the princess, but life in the village went on as usual, and the long-awaited day finally came when the system informed Chu Xingqin that he had achieved success in relationships with all the girls and completed the mission accordingly. The guy was very happy and told the system that it had promised him something for this mission. In the field at this time, both people and swamp demons were languishing from the heat and hard work. The intelligent demon muttered that he was already on his feet, and he still had to collect corn that day. A strong rumble and rumble frightened the fox and Shizua Wu, who were working peacefully together. And all the people and swamp demons were horrified when they saw that a huge growling and rumbling monster was approaching them. The monster had sparkling eyes, made loud growling sounds, and had a strange smell. And at the same time, it was so large that both demons and people could freely pass under its belly. The astonished cries of people and swamp demons merged into a chorus of horror. But then a cheerful Chu Xingqin emerged from the insides of the monster and greeted everyone. Since Shu Zuo Wu was the most educated here, he asked the guy if this was his locomotive. Chu Xingqin replied that it was almost a steam locomotive. Or to be more precise, it was a tractor. Then the guy's gaze fell on the amazed and gape fox. Chu Xingqin saw that she had been walking around like herself lately. He caught the fox by the scruff of the neck and said that he would show her the full power of the technique. The guy started the rattling machine again, and the fox screamed in horror. Chu Xingqin laughed and said that the fox should stop yelling, because the tractor was not going to bite it, much less eat it. The fox screamed that the guy immediately released her and that she hated this thundering monster. Chu Xingqin objected that this monster would make their life much easier, relieve them of the hardest work, and they would receive a lot of delicious food in return. 
From the next jerk of the powerful tractor, the pensive fox rolled head over heels under the seat. Chu Xingchen fished the fox out from under the chair and asked it why it looked so lost. But the girl did not want to answer. The guy said that the fox apparently forgot that he could be trusted and that he will cover the fox no matter what happens. Chu Xingchen told the fox that she hadn't done anything wrong, so she shouldn't hide and be afraid of anything. The guy said that if they run around the girl, she should immediately tell him, and he will solve the problem. Chu Xingchen took the microphone in his hand and cleared his throat, checking the sound. The swamp demons were surprised to hear the voice of their beloved instructor Chu from the depths of the thundering monster. Everyone turned to the tractor in surprise and began to listen to what the guy was saying. He said that there has been a lot of gossip about the fox lately. Chu Xingchen said angrily that apparently they live too well and have nothing to do except gossip. The guy added that whoever treats the forest badly will leave the village miserably. He's not going to keep any spiteful critics here. And to consolidate everything that was said, Chu Xingchen said that he would add a competition. Whoever pleases and makes the fox laugh the most will teach him to drive a tractor. The fox attacked the guy with her fists and moaned that he had apparently lost his mind. But at that very moment, the fox's popularity began to increase. And she immediately had to wave her hands to new fans. The girl was not at all happy about her rapidly increasing popularity. The fox was used to leading a secretive lifestyle, but here, people literally climbed into the windows to express their gratitude to her or tell her that they loved her. Soon, a crowd of fox fans surrounded the tractor from all sides, and the girl simply did not know where to go. For the fox, so much attention to her person was even worse than the gossip that people used to say behind her back. The news of the new competition even reached the plantation of medicinal plants. People and demons talked among themselves and said that if you confess your love to the fox, you can easily ride a tractor. Even the girl with blue hair noticed the general excitement and the new topic of conversation. The beauty decided that this was apparently Chu Xingchen's new idea and that it's just in time. A few days ago, a girl tried to talk to the fox to help her, but she ran away in fear of causing trouble to others. Now the fox had to run from crowds of crazy fans, and Chu Xingchen had to give driving instruction to the swamp demons. In the evenings, the guy played cards with the noble Shi Zuo Wu. The system was pouring over textbooks at this time, drinking tonic drinks. The princess, with all the passion of her high birth, began to cook. And the demons, for the first time in their lives, felt what the happiness of a well-fed life was. An intelligent demon kept a diary of affairs in the village. Chu Hingchen got his own secretary because there were too many things to keep in one head. So long days turned into weeks and weeks into months. Neither people nor the swamp demons expected that a whole six months of life and work together would pass so unnoticed. Meanwhile, the exam observers were surprised that the participants had stayed in the secret world for so long. After all, 14 hours had already passed since the start of the exam and night had begun. And in 14 hours, according to the time of the secret world, a whole six months passed. It was rumored that Chu Xingchen was forcibly detaining the princess and the children of the noble families. Just at this time, an urgent council had gathered where representatives of the four great clans came. Indignant exclamations were directed at Lu Lian. They asked him where he was looking and how he could allow such disgrace during the exam. The head of the Shu family, Bai Jin, shouted that there had been no access to the exam for 14 hours, and her son was being forced to work. The woman imagined a picture of Shu Zuo Wu being used by the swamp demons as a draft horse. The examiner advised that there was no way to get inside during the exam to prevent cheating. And it was not he who personally came up with these rules. These rules were developed by the ruler of the sacred state. Lulian added that there was already a request to the ruler to help get out of a difficult situation. The examiner added that although access is currently prohibited, every 24 hours the secret world is automatically open to accept participants in the next exam. The noble parents began to shout that it was easy for Lulian to reason because his children were not there. What is it like for them to wait another 10 hours, not knowing what is happening to their children? Everyone began to grumble that their daughters remained in the secret world, and Chu Xingchen continued to mock them. A sharp sound like the crack of breaking wood stopped everyone's hysteria. The head of the Shui family, Shui Moxiang, said that it was time for everyone to calm down and wait for the ruler's answer, which should come soon. The old woman also added that she knows one way to see what is happening in the secret world. Everyone looked at her in amazement and disbelief. Those present really wanted to see what was happening to their children. At this time, the sun was shining brightly in the secret world. 
farming has borne fruit and has significantly improved the ecology of the black swamp. But spots and lines suddenly began to appear in the sun, which became more and more every minute. Gradually, these foreign things on the sun turned into a huge eye with a bright blue pupil in the middle. Demons and people were horrified by this transformation of the sun. Some people began to lament that the end of the world had come. Someone smart ordered that they sent for Chu Xingchen. All the villagers know that the guy can solve any problem. In the real world, they now saw everything that was happening in the secret world. Old lady Shui Moxiang said that the surveillance seal would not last long, but at least they would be able to see their children and assess their condition. Shuzhou Wu's mother looked into the secret world with interest and anxiety. She really wanted to see her son. Then she saw a man with red hair. She muttered that her son was really plowing. When Shuzhou Wu turned his head towards the sun, his mother recoiled from the screen in horror. She did not recognize her son in this tanned aboriginal farmer. Another mother, seeing a man with blue hair and a crowd of demons, exclaimed that her daughter was being attacked by crowds of evil monsters. Taking a closer look, the observer saw that it was indeed a girl with blue hair among the swamp demons. But someone asked to move the camera to the right in order to see some fast-moving monster. Upon closer inspection, it turned out that it was a kind of red steam locomotive. True, it seemed strange to those watching why the locomotive drove back and forth, constantly turning around. Suddenly, the observers saw that the locomotive stopped and a child got out. A cute little girl came out of the locomotive and pulled on her black glasses to look at the sun. The girl saw an eye in the sun extended her left hand up and showed the middle finger to the observers. Those present looked in amazement at the girl in black glasses, but no one could recognize her. It turned out that earlier, in order to help the fox protect itself, Chu Xingchen taught it courage. Among other things, the guy taught the fox to show the middle finger in order to stand up for himself. But either Chu Xingchen overdid it, or the fox learned too well. She became too impudent and now showed her fuck even to the sun. The intelligent demon rushed to the fox to stop her, and so that she would not cause problems for herself. But then the attention of the swamp demon and the fox was attracted by the screams of an approaching girl. The girl with blue hair explained that it was an observation seal. Her mother owns this seal. True, the beauty noted that using the observation seal is against the rules, and she does not understand why her mother does it. The girl asked where Mr. Chu was. The demon replied that the mentor was fishing in the pond. She said that she needed to go to him and consult. Observers were surprised to find that humans and demons got along well with each other. One worried mother said they needed to look for her daughter. She said that her daughter has always been an honest and stubborn child, and therefore she is afraid that Chu Xingchen is keeping her locked up. In the clear azure water, it was clearly visible how the sharply sharpened shaft, after a well-aimed throw by the hunter, pierced the fish. This dexterous and cheerful hunter turned out to be Hao Gang. The girl in the bathing suit was happy that there would be delicious fried fish for dinner. True, her father, seeing his daughter in such a revealing outfit in front of a young man, fainted. His first words when he came to his senses were the words about why his daughter was dressed so openly and shamelessly. Indeed, the girls were not only skilled fishermen, but they were also real beauties. And tight swimsuits well emphasized the dignity of their figures. True, Chu Xingqin was not in the mood. It seemed that he was not at all interested in the beauties splashing in the water. Even the system advised the guy to take advantage of the moment and enjoy the beauty of youth and enthusiasm. At this time, Chu Qingchen was thinking that perhaps he should have taken the princess and the fox with him on the fishing trip. Then the girls shouted at the guy to look at the sun. Chu Qingchen raised his head and was surprised to see a huge nasty eye in the sky instead of the sun. The guy was surprised and got up from his seat to better see the strange phenomenon. But just at that moment, the eye closed. At this time, a girl with blue hair and a fox came running. Both were out of breath and began to babble something vying with each other. Finally, the guys gathered together at a wide table to discuss this unprecedented and amazing phenomenon. The beauty said that she needed to get out of the exam as soon as possible. Something probably happened outside the secret world. The girl immediately heard a chorus of objections. The princess wanted to continue cooking. Shizua Wu wanted to continue farming. And the demon was completely afraid that after the people left, dark, vile times would come again. Chu Xingchen admitted that perhaps those two informers said something to the examiner, and something bad happened in the real world. The sad fox dejectedly took off his sunglasses. She suspected it was all about her. After all, it was discovered and apparently already brought to the real world. 
The girl with blue hair also added fuel to the fire. She said they couldn't stay here all their lives anyway. Finally, Chu Xingchen announced that it was time to stop arguing and get ready for the trip to the real world tomorrow. The guy told the demons that it was necessary to solve the problem in the real world in any case. Because the black swamp may suffer. But nothing can be resolved here. Chu Xingchen said that he taught the demons everything he knew. And then, they are able to work themselves in order to provide themselves with a good, well-fed life. The next morning, near the Swamp Fog Ridge, a farewell to the departing people took place. Over the past six months, people and swamp demons have become very close friends, and parting was quite difficult. The demons rushed to hug the girl with blue hair and patted Shizuo Wu on the shoulder in a friendly manner. The princess was worried that the demons would have good food in the future, and Chu Xingchen was thinking about whether he would still have the opportunity to engage in farming in the future. Some people hung their heads dejectedly, some simply cried, others silently looked at each other. It was also difficult for Chu Xingchen to leave the place where he had put so much effort and work. Together, they went through many trials, matured, gained strength and wisdom. The swamp demons were afraid to fall into the clutches of some tyrant again, as was the case before the guy came to their village. Finally, Chu Qingchen announced that it was time to leave. New challenges and adventures await them ahead. By the end, literally everyone was crying. Only Instructor Chu tried to console and cheer everyone up. He shouted that from now on <laughs> and forever. In this place, water would flow, the grass would turn green, and the clear sun would shine in the blue sky. The bespectacled demon's glasses were flooded with tears, and they could see almost nothing. Chu Xingchen shouted that they would see each other again in a bright future. As they moved, the guy and the fox again held each other. The guy grabbed a strand of the girl's hair, and she frantically grabbed his belt. Hao Geng's mother was indignant. She screamed that Chu Xingchen was a shameless libertine who forced her daughter to fish half-naked. The examiner said that the girl looked cheerful when she was fishing. She looked like she was having so much fun. Mo Dai, who was also on the council, thought that the guy was very stupid and he probably didn't understand that for his own safety, it was better to stay in the shadows. Just at that moment, they reported that all the children who remained there had passed the exam. Many people wanted to see what Chu Xingqin looked like. Many people have heard about him and very bad things. But no one knew what this mysterious guy looked like. Chu Hingchen appeared before those eager to see him in all his glory with his bare bottom. While moving, he and the fox were separated again, and the fox tore the belt off the guy. The rest of the exam participants looked pretty good. But their leader, Instructor Chu, stood without pants. There were shouts about what a pervert he was and why he didn't wear pants. The guy caught himself and picked up his fallen pants, mentally cursing the fox who set him up like that. Shuzo Wu and the blue-haired girl looked completely different from themselves when they entered the exam half a day ago. When the noble Shuzo Wu joyfully greeted his mother, she recoiled from him in fear. Even the guy's voice changed. He became louder and more masculine. He said that he was glad to see his mother and brought her gifts that he had grown with his own hands. Mother pulled Shuzuo Wu away. She said that he had forgotten that she taught him to keep his mouth shut in public. She asked the guy why he was wearing rags and where his earrings were. Shuzuo Wu replied that he had lost all his jewelry to instructor Chu at cards. Shizuo Wu told his mother that he wanted to introduce her to his lifelong best friend, Chu Xingchen. The guy was just being escorted past with his hands tied behind his back by two guards. But then both the princess and Shizuo Wu attacked the guards. And they said who allowed them to detain their master and brother. The guards reported that Chu Xingqin is the main suspect and that he is accused of colluding with the swamp demons and the fox. And also that he forced children of noble birth to work. The princess objected that frying potatoes was her favorite thing in her life. And instructor Chu did not force her at all. Her Highness proudly announced that she was now a two-star martial artist. Shizuo Wu said that he had also promoted his rank. The guy plowed 50 acres of land every day and developed his body to the limit of human capabilities. The examiner and well-born parents were simply shocked by such revelations from their children. The beauty reported that she had to heal crowds of swamp demons every day, constantly depleting her spiritual power. And now she has reached three stars. Haogeng also proudly stated that she was at the same level, she also managed to learn new techniques. Chu Xingchen was very pleased that the children of the country's highest families said that they had fun farming. The guy smiled wryly, seeing how offended the children's well-born parents looked. Chu Xingchen thought that they had done a lot for both the Black Swamp and themselves. 
so all the gossip should have been dispelled. The girls attacked the adults with indignation. How dare they even think about arresting their master? They said that because of two liars, a good and kind person could have suffered. But then new accusations fell on Chu Xingqin that he was in cahoots with the insidious fox. People said it was disgusting to harbor such a terrible demon. Such conversations greatly outraged the princess. She hated injustice. Suddenly, a tall, slender guy turned familiarly to the princess and said that he was glad to see her in good health. The princess was very happy to see her older brother. The guy said with a smile that it seemed like he had arrived at the right moment. <laughs> the princess rushed to hug her older brother. She said that she really missed him. The high-born brother said that he heard that the princess spent half a year in the time of the secret world. He asked if she had any problems. The princess said that everything was fine thanks to instructor Chu, who saved her from the pervert. Her majesty noticed that Chu Xingqin was still being held by the guards and became indescribably furious. She then whispered to her brother that Master Chu was definitely a useful person and that he could help them deal with Lan Feng. The prince laughed and said that this master was apparently the second brother of the princess. But the girl assured that she only has one brother. The princess's brother thought about something and then addressed the guards. He said there is currently no law against working with foxes. Moreover, he did not hear that the fox did anything bad. The prince said that there was no need to keep Chu Xingqin in custody. People whispered around in surprise. The prince added that this guy saved the princess, re-educated the demons, and taught the children many crafts. He noted that with such characteristics he could enter the academy. There were objections from the crowd that the Divine Moon Academy did not accept such students. The academy elder stated that the fox is an ancient monster and must be destroyed. He added that he could not argue with the prince to judge Chu Xingqian, but he is obliged to control the students who enter the academy. The elder added that Chu Xingqian was hiding a fox and there were a lot of bad rumors about him. With such a reputation, it is impossible to be a student at the best academy in the country. Suddenly suspecting something, the old man asked Mo Dai if she knew this Chu Xingqian. The cunning girl replied that she did not know him. The girl understood that the prince wanted to recruit Chu Xingqian. But her grandfather was a supporter of another prince, and therefore will not listen to this. The princess shouted that Master Chu was very smart and gifted, and that he did not need the academy. She said she also wouldn't go to an academy that didn't accept the brightest students. Shu Zouwu said that he would not abandon his best friend, and also refused to return to the academy. How? Gung said that she was also joining the boycott of Divine Moon Academy. At this time, Shu Zouwu's mother tried to reason with the overly determined guy. Adults tried to rein in their naughty children, but they were not very amenable to discipline. Then, one person came out and said that Chu Xingqin took first place in the exam. And since the academy did not accept him, he offered to take the gifted guy to the Wujin school. The guy promised Chu Xingqin good conditions for studying, and even said that he would allow him to bring a fox to school. But another representative invited Chu Xingqin to Qinshan school. He said that their school was the strongest in terms of pills. The guy was also invited to Siu school, where there are a lot of beautiful girls. School officials became so excited that a fight could have started. The best students always ended up in the Divine Moon Academy. Now they have the opportunity to take the best student for themselves. And the guy was literally torn apart, beckoning to them. The princess did not like this mess. She saw that her masters were about to be torn to pieces but then a single hand rose up. Its owner achieved general silence. It was a young representative from the Wuzian school. Looks like he's got something going. Then, the representative told Chu Xingqin, whose shirt had already been torn by that time, that at his school, the guy would be able to engage in farming. With such a proposal, the choice of school for Chu Xingqin was obvious. He immediately accepted the Wujin school's offer. For the guy, it was the highest bliss to engage in agriculture. He couldn't even believe that the school could give him such an opportunity. The examiner told Chu Qingqin that he should think carefully about everything and not accept hasty proposals, but the guy did not pay attention to this. The academy elder muttered that these school representatives must be crazy. But it's good that he himself did not lose his prudence. The prince stated that the best student in the exams was always rewarded by the royal family. And since the guy also saved the princess, the prince will allow Chu Qingqin to choose something from the royal treasury. Chu Xingqin was very surprised at the honor shown to him. Moreover, he was favored by a person from the imperial family. And the fox did not appear with everyone else only because she was stuck between worlds. 
she got caught on a branch with her clothes and made every effort to unhook. Finally, tired of fruitless attempts to free himself, the fox hung its paws down. Viewers were surprised that this year's candidates managed to last so long in the secret world. Finally, rumors spread that the fox had also emerged from the secret world. It was said that she even died of hunger. At this time, it was quite noisy in one of the rooms in the city. The hungry fox devoured the hot food at incredible speed. The girl with blue hair advised the fox to eat slowly, because this way satiety will come much faster. True, the fox only hummed something vaguely in response. The school representative negotiated with the guy about admission and asked him not to be late for the start of classes. The princess told Chu Xingqian that the next day she would take him to the imperial treasury. The princess said that she had a lot to do, but she promised her brother that she would take instructor Chu to the treasury so that he could choose something he liked. At this time, Shi Zuo Wu appeared at the door with his displeased mother. Shi Zuo Wu asked Chu Xingqian if there was somewhere for him to stay in the imperial city, and he offered to live with him for a while. The guy's mother wanted to object, but then a happy princess ran up and said that this was a great idea and that she will come to visit them. Therefore, Shi Zuo Wu's mother had to agree. That same night, Chu Xingqian entered Shi Zuo Wu's luxurious home. The noble guy told instructor Chu that the fox was nearby and he could position himself as he pleased. Shi Zuo Wu wished him a good rest and told him that in case of any difficulties, instructor Chu should contact him directly. Left alone, Chu Qingchen happily plopped down on the soft bed, and the system did not fail to report that the guy successfully completed the task. The guy really was not a mistake and immediately demanded a reward from the system. The system immediately gave out a gift, a charming voice. It made it possible to control the enemy's mind for three seconds. From the sour expression on Chu Xingqin's face, it was clear that he did not like such a reward. The system reported that it was able to make such a valuable reward using a bag of artifacts. The system added that the skill recharge time is one day, but it will gradually decrease as its level increases. Chu Xingqin muttered that it would be better if they gave him another tractor. It would be more useful. The system also warned the guy not to use things in public that the old people gave him, so as not to reveal himself. The system suggested that Chu Xingqian use its things. The system praised the guy that in three years he had almost become a great martial artist. The system added that all her gifts are very useful and will be useful to the guy in the future. Ayu Xingqian looked at his new skill with doubt. The system said that the guy could test it in practice to make sure of its usefulness. The quiet sunny morning did not foretell anything surprising until Chu Xingqian was about to use his new skill. In the morning, the guy met Shi Zuo Wu, who was walking with his mother. Chu Xingqian asked his comrade to come closer to him so that he could tell him something in confidence. Behind him, the guy took out a new skill card and used it. He then whispered in Shi Zuo Wu's ear that he liked to wear women's clothes. At the same moment, the noble guy turned to his mother and said that her dress was beautiful. The mother was surprised because she was wearing her usual dress. She didn't understand where her son got such an interest in her dress. The next moment, Shi Zuo Wu turned to his mother with a request that she give him her dress to wear. The woman was horrified by this statement. Shouting that he needed a tailor to make a dress for him, Shi Zuo Wu ran away. And the amazed mother set off in pursuit. Chu Xingqin checked out his new skill. But the system immediately warned him that the skill was not for making fun of his friends. The system also warned that the skill does not affect everyone, so you should not rely on it 100%. At this moment, Chu Xingqin was informed that a princess had come to see him. The princess came with her faithful assistant, Hao Geng. Her majesty was in high spirits. She rushed towards instructor Chu, whom she had already missed. Chu Xingqin even closed his eyes for a moment. The princess simply dazzled with her attractiveness. The princess cheerfully announced that she was going to take the guy to the treasury. And then she suggested going to the imperial city. Chu Hingchen couldn't help but say that the princess looked absolutely amazing. The princess was touched. The guy's compliment reminded her of her mother's. The system noticed that the princess seemed to have fallen in love with Chu Xingqin. She praised him that he managed to make the first girl fall in love with him. For most, he evoked only brotherly feelings. The weather was great. It was warm and the birds were singing. On such a day, it was simply wonderful to ride in a comfortable imperial carriage. Time passed unnoticed. And now, they are already in the square where the imperial treasury was located. They got out of the carriage and walked past the few guards. It seemed to Chu Xingqin that there weren't enough people guarding such a valuable object. 
The princess gently touched the holographic image. Then, she stuck her thin, noble fingers in there and turned her hand. Then, her majesty pressed something, and the space around them sparkled. The next moment, they began to descend down into the mysterious space of the imperial treasury. Chu Hingchen looked around in great amazement. Many floors filled with treasures of the imperial family flashed before him. But now, they were already on the right floor at the final stop. The princess busily said that the guy could only choose a treasure from the first level. She added that the treasures on this floor are of the highest quality. The princess said that she would help the guy choose what interests him. Chu Xingqin asked permission to look around for himself first. The guy used the technique that the old people gave him to find the stone that breaks the seals. Using the golden eye, the guy began to methodically examine the space around him. Chu Xingqin looked around the rows of shelves, but did not find the object he needed. Gradually, the guy searched almost the entire floor, but didn't find the stone that destroys the seals. Chu Xingqin thought that maybe he was not on this floor at all. He could have been in another place. Then the guy unexpectedly noticed an alarming red fog. Then he saw bare, bloody feet slapping on the stone floor. Chu Xingqin heard the words as if someone's people were innocent. The room was filled with fog. The guy lost sight of the princess. The woman continued to repeat that her people were not guilty, that she's the only one who's truly to blame. Then, Chu Xingqin saw the face of a woman who was crying tears of blood. The guy was surprised to discover that it was his Aunt Fox. Chu Xingqin ran after her to catch up. The princess looked after him in surprise. The guy wondered how she could get here. Perhaps it was just his hallucination. The princess asked where Chu Xingqin was running and asked him to wait for her. Aunt Fox continued to move away, moving between the shelves deeper into the imperial treasury. She continued to say that she was the only one to blame, and her people have nothing to do with it. Chu Xingqin had not yet taken off his golden eye, and strange images flashed before him. He saw many foxes screaming and crying tears of blood. Then, the shadowy figure of a mysterious woman appeared. A woman stood near a huge wall with inscriptions. On the table in front of her lay a piece of paper covered with writing. The woman clicked on one of the inscriptions and said the name Chu Xing Chen. At this time, not everything was as good on Mount Delulo as before. The old people complained that after Chu Xing Chen left, there was no one to clean the hotel. Therefore, they had to draw lots to find out who would clean up. Usually, the one-eyed one drew the unlucky lot, which greatly upset him. Things went on as usual in the city. Fortunately, the weather was always beautiful at this time of year. The examiner finally waited for the guests, who were supposed to clarify the situation with the secret world. High-ranking envoys came for this matter. Just the sight of them evoked awe. The examiner and the envoys greeted each other respectfully. Then the old man began to explain to them the essence of the matter, trying not to miss a single detail. He showed the envoys the demonic swamp formation. The old man said that it was deactivated due to a malfunction of the shut-off showers. Apparently, the formation has been changed. The envoy said that perhaps the formation had not been maintained for too long, which is why the problems arose. In response, the examiner objected that they were conducting scheduled monthly inspections of the formations. The messenger stated that he had heard rumors that the evil swamp demons of this world had turned into good farmers. The old man confirmed this fact. The envoy then declared that this secret place could no longer be used for the examination. The messenger stated that he would return the demon swamp to the real world. He also said that he was especially interested in the guy Chu Xingqin, who was able to make demons turn from evil to good and take up farming. The envoy would like to see him. At this time, the great teacher of the swamp demons was lying on the floor in the imperial treasury, and the frightened princess was fussing around him. Her majesty perked up when she saw that Chu Xingqin had opened his eyes and began to show signs of life. She told him that he ran somewhere, grabbed one stone, and then lost consciousness. Chu Xingqin realized that the ant's phantom appeared because of this stone in his hand. It turned out to be a stone that was made of grievances, and the guy lost consciousness when he touched it. The guy wondered what his Aunt Fox could have survived. She never told him about her life. The princess asked Chu Xingqin if he had chosen this stone. The guy nodded his head affirmatively. He was going to find out what happened to his Aunt Fox. Her story struck a chord with him. Chu Xingqin returned to Shi Zuo Wu's house with Her Majesty. It turned out that they arrived just in time. Very important guests wanted to see Chu Xingqin. These were the two envoys who had previously visited examiner Lu Lian. Shi Zuo Wu began to ask the guy how he liked the imperial treasury, but the mother quickly pulled her son away 
telling him to stop chatting, since there were important people in the house. Mother said that these were messengers of God, and they wanted to talk to Chu Xingchen about the exam. Shizuo Wu's mother said that they would not disturb important guests and took her son away. The system informed Chu Xingchen that there was something wrong with the two envoys. They have fake systems. The envoys reported that they had heard rumors about the guy's success in farming. They wondered why such a capable guy did not go to the academy, but went to Jilin school. The envoys reported that the academy had much better resources for students than any school. The system warned the guy not to take rash actions, since the messenger is above the level of the martial king. The envoy invited the guy to study with them, and the system was screaming for Chu Xingchen to leave because the messenger was trying to figure out whether the guy had a system. Chu Xingchen firmly stated that he considers land to be the most valuable resource. And at Jilan school, he is allowed to take up farming. The guy said that if they give him a lot of land for cultivation, he will go over to them. He said that they should understand the joy a person feels when he grows vegetables in his garden. The envoy muttered that he realized that Chu Xingchen was a genius. In parting, the envoy said that if the guy needed help, he could contact them. The envoy patted Chu Xingchen on the shoulder in a friendly manner. True, during this patting, something began to happen while the messenger was touching the guy's shoulder. Chu Xingchen pretended to be a fool, as if he didn't understand anything. He did not want to demonstrate to the envoy that he had revealed his secret. As he was leaving, the envoy informed Chu Xingchen that they would certainly meet again. The guy breathed a sigh of relief when these strange guests finally left. Chu Xingchen plainly complained to the system that this envoy had stuffed an artifact into him. The system said that she warned the guy to leave, but Chu Xingchen did not listen to her. The system added that the good news is that it now has material to work with. She also said that by introducing this artifact, the envoys would know where it was. Chu Xingchen thought about it. Who and for what purpose could need his person to monitor his movements? It seems that on this day, there was an open house at Shizuo Wu's house. The guests arrived literally one after another. Now a girl with blue hair has come to visit. Shizuo Wu asked the girl what she was doing here. The mother shouted at the guy to invite a guest into the house instead of asking stupid questions. The mother handed the guy the package that the girl had brought and said that it was a herbal bath in which he should soak for three days. Mother said that school would start three days earlier so that Shizuo Wu would not be lured to another school. The mother added that the herbal bath would return the boy's skin to its original color. The guy was indignant, shouting that it doesn't matter to a knight whether his skin is tanned or not. Tired of arguing with her son, the mother plunged his head straight into the bath to shut him up at least for a while. Wujian Academy is located in the northeast of the Jialan Imperial Country, next to the Endless Sea. The academy was located on 10 islands, and the main part of the area was covered by sea rivers. The best means of transportation to reach such a remote place was a flying ship. The landscapes during such a trip were simply fantastic. However, judging by the appearance, Chu Xingchen did not really enjoy the beautiful scenery. It also seemed strange to the fox to move high in the sky next to migratory birds. For the princess, such a trip was commonplace. She was really interested in why Shizuo Wu dressed so tightly. The guy told the exhausted princess that after the herbal bath, his skin was too sensitive and now could not stand sunlight. Then the princess noticed something strange and immediately forgot about Shizuo Wu's strange clothes. The guy wearing a floppy hat put two fingers together and tilted them. The ship suddenly began to rock violently. This was surprising because there was no strong wind. But something definitely started to happen to the ship. The ship began to lie on its side. Screams of frightened people were heard. Everyone grabbed what they could to avoid falling out. Chu Xingqin fell over the side and was supported only by his hands. The fox completely unhooked and could have fallen. True, out of old habit, the fox grabbed the guy's belt, which infuriated him. He was tired of the fox constantly leaving him with his bare bottom. He even tried to shake off the annoying fox, but he held on to the guy so tightly. Meanwhile, the ship turned over even more, and people simply began to fall down. Among this horror, the princess flew on her fiery hammer and tried to save at least someone. The princess could hardly hold such a large number of people. Chu Xingqin saw all the horror that was happening around. He changed his mind and shouted to the fox to hold on to him tightly. But then, the noble Shizuo Wu began to fall out of the flying ship. While falling, the comrade hit Chu Xingqin, who was barely holding on, right in the forehead. The fox sensed something was wrong, but what could she do in such a disadvantageous position? As a result, the whole trio rushed down like a stone. 
trying to grab each other in flight. The princess could also barely bear the strain of trying to hold several people in the air. Her Highness muttered that it was her royal business to be a draft horse. Deftly maneuvering and occasionally releasing fire from her weapon, the princess dived closer to the water. Then she quickly threw the stowaways into the water, which was already very close. Several people with noise and large splashes that doused the princess plunged headlong into the water. The princess waited until the people reappeared on the surface. Hao Geng emerged and, releasing fountains of water from her mouth and ears, shouted that Her Majesty had done a great job. The princess and the victims exchanged pleasantries and did not notice a huge shadow that floated very close under the water. The guys noticed the monster only when it opened its terrible toothed mouth. Hao Geng thought that apparently her last hour of life had come. Meanwhile, the Jin Lao Academy had no idea what had happened to their students. The Academy mentor wondered why the guys had been gone for so long. It's time to start studying. A man ran up to the mentor and, out of breath from running, reported that the air formation had been blown up. Although the ship managed to land, dozens of students crashed near Thunder Island. The mentor muttered that the Island of Thunder is a closed area, and even he rarely goes there, much less imagines what is inside the island. The man ordered an investigation into the cause of the ship accident, as well as organizing search and rescue operations, and trying to find all the students. Thanks to her keen sense of smell, the fox felt that there was someone next to her. Later, she saw the terrible eyes of a huge four-eyed animal. Lisa was very scared, but she also understood that she was not alone here. Not far away, Shizuo Wu and Chu Xingqin were still lying unconscious. The fox realized that some kind of decision urgently needed to be made, because if the monster saw her motionless and helpless comrades, they would be finished. The fox freed himself from his outerwear right in front of the surprised monster's nose. Then, she softly jumped to the ground and began to run as fast as she could. The fox began to gradually transform into its true form. It was much easier to run that way. The monster only had time to see the bright orange tail, which was quickly moving away. The fox needed to take the monster away from her insensitive friends. An even better idea was to neutralize the monster so that it would not harm anyone. The fox performed a cunning maneuver. She jumped and quickly bent down a small tree. As the monster approached, the fox jumped from the tree trunk. It straightened up and hit the monster right between the eyes. The fox remembered learning from Chu Xingchen, and looking back, gave the stunned monster the middle finger. True, the fox was too distracted and fell into a tree trunk. The stunned fox was surprised to discover that the monster's eyes had become even larger. She thought that now she would definitely be skinned alive. From the deafening roar of the monster, the fox lost all ability to resist. Helpless and pathetic, she simply closed her eyes and waited for her fate. Having closed herself, the fox did not quite understand what was happening around her. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw the monster fly back from a very strong blow. The fox realized that by some miracle she had been saved from imminent death. She looked at her savior warily, but she saw little since half of his body and head were covered by a black cloak with a hood, yellow, sun-warmed sand, and gentle waves of the azure sea. The sound of the surf seemed to lull me to sleep. Therefore, Chu Xingqin had to fight against drowsiness for quite a long time after he came to his senses. Raising his head and looking around, the guy called the fox several times, but again she was nowhere to be seen. Then, Chu Xingqin saw Shi Zuo Wu next to him. The guy noticed that the skin on his friend's face was red. Shi Zuo Wu jumped up and began to look at himself in the mirror. Then he said that he couldn't go out in the sun for a while after the herbal bath. Dejected Shi Zuo Wu thought that his mother would scream again. And Chu Xingqin looked around, trying to figure out where the fox had gone. Then the guy saw a fox's cloak hanging high on a tree. Chu Xingqin pointedly noted that since the fox's clothes were here, it meant that she herself must be somewhere nearby. Shi Zuo Wu's head rumbled loudly. The guy asked his friend if he was very hungry. Chu Xingqin said that he was also hungry and suggested that they go look for something to eat. Shi Zhou Wu noticed that they seemed to have fallen on one of the Twelve Islands. He suggested that the school would soon send out a search party to look for the castaways. Chu Xingqin left an identification mark so that those who came looking for them would know that someone was here. Shi Zhou Wu and Chu Xingqin walked along the shore of the island, trying to find something to satisfy their hunger. Soon the guys disappeared into the distance, leaving only the mark left by Chu Xingqin standing alone. True, the identification mark did not remain for long. Soon a hand with a black sleeve reached out to the mark. The identification mark was finished. After the waves and wind erased the guys' traces on the sand, 
there will be no signs of their presence here on the shore. The pest turned out to be a man already seen earlier, wearing a wide-brimmed hat. But someone was in an even worse situation than the guys in the fox. The princess continued to tow several people over the endless sea, whom she managed to save from the flying ship. The princess thought that she would soon lose consciousness from thirst. Soon she woke up to someone offering her clean water. The princess saw a girl with blue hair, although Her Majesty did not understand whether this was really happening or whether she was hallucinating. The beauty offered them water and asked if they had seen the guys. At first glance, it looked like someone was collecting coconuts, but in fact they were scattered and not for fun. And it was very strange. A man from the ship saw the guy in the hat and was very happy because he had never met anyone alive before. The victim asked the man if he was also a ship survivor. Then he asked him for one coconut because he was very thirsty. The mysterious guy in the hat didn't answer. He just looked sullenly from under the brim of his hat. Then he saw a large hole at the roots of a tree. An idea came to his mind. At this time, Chu Xingchen and Shu Zuo Wu were crunching leaves deliciously, like two ruminants. Suddenly, Chu Xingchen saw a lonely coconut lying at the foot of the tree. The thirsty guy rushed as fast as he could to the desired coconut. While Chu Xingchen greedily absorbed the refreshing liquid, Xu Zuo Wu asked him to leave him a couple of sips. But seeing that the guy was not going to stop, Xu Zuo Wu decided to take the coconut himself to get drunk. While the noble guy was trying to shake out at least a couple of drops of moisture from the selected coconut to refresh his dry throat, Chu Xingchen noticed another coconut. The system tried to detain the guy and bring him to his senses. The system brought Chu Xingchen's attention to the fact that there were a suspiciously large number of coconuts here, considering that there were no coconut trees in this place at all. The system also indicated that the coconuts were scattered in a certain order, as if to lure a careless traveler into a trap. Suddenly, Chu Xingchen heard some noise in the distance and rushed over to investigate the situation. The guy saw the butt of a man whose head was hiding in a hole. He heard footsteps and asked the guys to help him because someone was holding his head in the hole. The guys looked skeptically at the stuck man. Shu Zuo Wu thought that it was appropriate for the knights to save a beautiful girl and not an unknown man. But there was nothing to do, and I had to help the stranger. Chu Xingchen also asked the stranger why he managed to stick his head into this hole. The guy tried to pull the man towards himself, but felt that he himself was beginning to be pulled into the hole. Soon, Chu Xingchen's butt was sticking out of the hole. True, this time at least he was wearing pants, because there was no fox nearby. Already from the hole, the guy called his noble comrade for help. Now, Shu Zuo Wu had to save his careless comrade instead of the beautiful girl. And a man in a wide hat was hiding nearby and saw everything perfectly. He came up with something again. And again, it was something insidious. The man wearing the wide hat put his foot forward and kicked Shu Zuo Wu hard. Now there were already three people in the hole. It was getting a little crowded. Shu Zuo Wu heard that there was someone else near the tree and asked them to help them get out. But at that moment, something very strong powerfully pulled all three guys down the hole. But it just seemed bottomless. The guys had no idea who was dragging them, and for what purpose. Moving on your belly in such a cramped and dirty space was not at all sweet. But every journey has an end point, and any hole has a beginning and an end. So the guys soon fell out of the hole into a large tunnel. Chu Xingqin saw a terrible creature in the tunnel. The man in the hat seemed to know what was what. At least he whispered something about a bull-headed ant. Among these creatures, even worker ants were above the level of a great martial artist. The stunned guys estimated that there were about a thousand ants in this nest. At this time, the man in the hat said that he wanted to look at Chu Xingqin in action and make sure whether he really was the chosen one about whom they had been talking so much. True, the guy at this time did not feel chosen at all. However, Chu Xingqin and Shu Zuo Wu assumed fighting stances and prepared for a difficult battle. At this time, the guy whom his friends were trying to save was grabbed by one of the ants in his pincers. Chu Xingqin tried to free the guy's head, but he failed. Then, he summoned the hands of the golem. With reinforcements, everything would have happened faster. But the system said that you shouldn't show the golem's hands. She said that Shu Zuo Wu was pushed into a hole, and it could be a cunning trap. As a result, Chu Xingqin again tried to squash the ant pincers with his bare hands. At this time, Shu Zuo Wu, who was entering the battle, shouted to Chu Xingqin to be careful. Shizaku Wu took out his famous lightsaber and began to wave it around, preventing the enemy from coming closer. Together, they managed to free the guy, and Shu Zuo Wu covered everyone with his lightsaber. 
True, the noble guy did not notice one vile creature that got closer and pointed a poisonous sting. Then the ant took good aim and hit the stinger right in Shizuo Wu's soft spot. The noble guy shouted obscenities. Chu Xingqin also yelled, fearing for his comrade. The system replied that now in front of them is an ant soldier, who is most likely at the level of a martial king. The system added that the guys had better leave this place. Because even though there are so many ants, there are even more of them every minute. Chu Xingqin saw another hole in the wall of the tunnel. The guy realized that there was still hope for salvation. Without wasting another second, the guy dived into the hole. The others immediately followed Chu Xingqin, fleeing the hordes of ants pressing behind them. It was very inconvenient to move, but the guys saved their own lives. Suddenly, Chu Xingqin saw the red eyes of a battle ant ahead. Without hesitation, the guy dived into the side tunnel and began to move forward even faster. In the end, the guys ended up in a chamber where there was a queen ant. There were a great many ant eggs in this chamber. The guys decided not to linger in this amazing place and immediately climbed into the first tunnel they came across. Finally, the guys flew out into a wider space. True, Chu Xingqin hit the left side of his face painfully on the hard ground. The guys were very tired, but they were glad that they were no longer being chased. Chu Xingqin began to feel the place where he hit his face. He thought that the ground could not be so hard. The guy raked the top layer with his hands and froze in amazement. There was something unusual underground. Chu Xingqin had never seen anything like this before. Moreover, this substance was so hard that even sharp shovels did not leave the slightest trace on it. The guys were pretty exhausted trying to penetrate deep into this substance, or at least pick out a small piece. The substance was very reminiscent of ice, but in terms of strength, it was closer to diamonds. After trying every method to no avail, Chu Xingqin desperately tried to lick the hard substance. But at this time, Xu Zuo Wu came up with something. He asked Chu Xingqin to step aside and used his lightsaber. Finally, the mysterious material began to yield. Xu Zuo Wu continued to slash with his lightsaber, trying to punch a hole in the substance. Chu Xingqin saw that the cracks were getting larger. He smiled happily. Xu Zuo Wu pressed his sword a little more. The guy stood near him and shouted to encourage their friend. Finally, the material could not withstand the pressure of the powerful weapon and broke into pieces with a crunch. Shi Zuo Wu lost his footing and fell down. Behind him, Chu Xingqin and the other guy fell screaming. The guys only got more bruises. It turned out that they fell from a fairly decent height. The guys found themselves in a cave of enormous size. Red banners hung around, on which the same symbol was repeated everywhere. Chu Xingqin thought that he had seen a similar symbol somewhere before. At this time, the guy was called out by his comrades. Shi Zuo Wu happily reported that they had found water. And indeed, where the noble guy pointed with his hand, clear water glistened dimly. The boys began to drink water greedily. They had been wandering around the dungeon for many hours, and thirst and hunger were making themselves felt. Taking a closer look at the water, Chu Xingqin saw dense spiritual power and realized that it was spiritual water. Now the guy understood why the ants become so big in this place. The guys decided to take the opportunity to have a good swim. They didn't know that they were being watched by a man wearing a floppy hat. The observer failed to see Chu Xingqin's capabilities in battle, as he and his comrades simply ran away from the ants. The guy in the hat thought that he should test Chu Xingqin again. He also did not suspect that an ominous shadow hung over him. And at this time, the children enjoyed swimming in clean water. Chu Xingqin noticed that this water had healed his bruised area. Shai Zuo Wu noticed that his skin had become normal. And the butt that was stung by the battle ant stopped hurting. The guys turned to their friend, who had been wounded in the head by an ant. But bathing in spiritual water didn't seem to help him. The guys tried to cheer up their friend, but the man became very upset and said that nothing could help him. Shu Zuo Wu noticed that, because of the chase, they didn't know the guy's name. He replied that his name was Hulu. Hulu told his astonished comrades that a man had lured him into a trap, saying that there was food in the hole. And when he was captured, that man did not help him. The guys wondered where that strange ill-wisher could have come from here. Chu Xingqin suspected that perhaps that person was on the same flying ship with them. True, he didn't understand why he tried to harm others. The guy was brought out of his thoughts by an unexpected attack, which Chu Xingqin skillfully repulsed. The guy realized with amazement that his opponent was very strong. Then the face of a gray fox appeared, distorted with a grimace of hatred. From his next powerful blow, the guy was bent in half. Shu Zuo Wu screamed and rushed to help his best friend. True, 
the noble guy ran into something very hard halfway there. It turned out to be the leg of a gray fox. And her blow was very painful for Shizuo Wu. The noble guy hit his back on the stone floor with all his might. But the fact that the fox was distracted by Shizuo Wu gave Chu Xingchen the opportunity to call for help. In the next moments, the guy unleashed a series of powerful blows on the gray fox. The enemy had to dodge. Chu Xingchen was indeed also injured during the battle, but there was no time to recover. The cunning gray fox performed a cunning trick, which Chu Xingchen saw too late. The enemy hit the guy right in the nose with his heel. Chu Xingchen realized that it looked like he couldn't handle the gray fox. Moreover, the enemy took out another weapon. The gray fox threw something at the input and raised a whole fountain of splashes. Chu Qingchen at this time gathered his stunned comrades to try to escape with them. Then the gray fox's attention was diverted by another person who appeared on the battlefield. It was the fox in person. She muttered why there was so much noise here and why her energy was being sucked out again. Then the fox saw the beaten Chu Xingchen and screamed that she knew that it was he who started the fight again. The amazed guy attacked the fox, asking what he was doing here. But while Chu Xingchen was sorting things out with the fox, the insidious gray fox hit him from behind. The blow was so strong that the guy screamed through the stone floor. The gray fox let out a victorious roar and placed his large paw on the defeated guy's head. The fox asked Chu Xingchen how he knew the secret techniques of the fox people, which are passed down from generation to generation, from father to son. To make it more convincing, the gray fox growled menacingly, but he never received an answer from Chu Xingchen. The fox did not stand on ceremony with his captives. So that the guys had less chances to escape, he stripped them of their clothes. No amount of request to give them at least some clothes made the gray fox soften. While the fox was staring at the naked guys, Chu Xingchen tried to get an explanation of what the fox was doing here and why it was in league with the fox who had captured them. Soon, the gray fox brought a guy in a wide hat and asked who he was. Hulu identified him as the man who lured him into the hole, and Chu Xingchen thought that this was probably the guy who pushed Shi Zuo Wu from behind. The fox tried to intercede for Chu Xingchen and his fellow travelers. She said that she knew the guy well, and that he was not an enemy, but the old fox did not want to listen to anything. He persistently asked the guy who taught him the ancient fox fighting technique. Chu Xingchen explained that he was an orphan and had every chance of starving to death. But then a woman with a scar on the left side of her face appeared in his life. The woman told little Chu Xingchen that he was one of a kind and left him a secret book. From this book, the guy learned secret techniques, but the old sly fox did not want to believe the guy's words. Chu Xingchen rushed around the cage like a wild animal. He's not used to spending time locked up. The gray fox said that if the guy does not want to tell the truth, then he will have to remain locked up. Chu Xingqing was very angry. He wondered why all old people of any race were so stupid and conservative. The fox again began to ask for people, but the old fox only muttered that if it weren't for her, he would have killed the captives long ago. The fox reminded the fox not to forget about the blood feud between foxes and people. Finally, the old man grabbed the struggling and kicking fox under his arm and carried her away. Chu Xingqin tiredly sat down in the corner of their cage and sadly lowered his head down. But then the system decided to cheer him up, telling him that the escape mission had begun. Chu Xingchen growled as to why the system did not appear when its help was greatly needed. To change the topic of conversation, the system reported that the guy in the hat had a fake system. Chu Xingchen realized that this guy with a wide hat was their secret enemy. True, he did not yet understand what his goal was. Suddenly, the guy saw that some object was sticking out from under the clothes of the guy in the hat. Rushing through the folds of the ill-wisher's clothes, Chu Xingchen fished out a blue book. True, some kind of abracadabra was written inside the book. All three guys stared at the book, but no one could make out these strange symbols that were in the book. Here, the system spoke. She said it was a secret code. But personally, she cracked such codes like nuts. And indeed, after the system processed the book, the text became quite readable. Chu Xingchen could immediately see that it was a diary. Having read the text even more, the guy realized that it was about himself. The system sarcastically asked Chu Xingchen if he still doubted that he was the chosen one. It turned out that the guy was constantly being watched, and all the data about him was recorded in a book. And apparently, the organization that dealt with this was quite large. Chu Xingchen decided to think it over carefully. The guy understood that some kind of threat was hanging over him but so far he did not yet understand its scale. Moreover, there was more than enough time to think. 
what else can you do in a small cell other than think? True, at that moment, the guy in the wide hat came to his senses. Three comrades immediately rushed to greet him. The guy in the wide hat jumped in fright into the corner of their cell. Chu Xingchen introduced himself and his traveling companion, who had not yet fully recovered from the ant mites. Shu Wu also introduced himself and asked the stranger's name. The guy in the wide hat introduced himself as Hu Songlai. He asked where they were. Chu Xingchen explained that while they were taking bath treatments, they were attacked by a demon and captured them. It was clear that Hu Songlai, if that was indeed his name, was trying to comprehend the whole situation. Chu Xingchen, without wasting any time, invited Hu Songlai to look for a way to get out of prison together. Two rows of tall columns supported the narrow ceiling. The fox banners fluttered from the columns. The little fox looked at the ancient fox structures in awe. He muttered the name to Wutanu, and he added that it is very beautiful here. An old fox approached the little fox and said that he could live here in peace. The little fox asked why the old man wanted to leave. The old fox told the little fox that people were still killing their people, and he needed to go out and fight for their freedom. And the little fox should stay here and guard this place. Years turned into decades, which also replaced each other. And the little fox turned into an old, experienced fox. But he did not abandon his post and continued to guard this secret place. Now the gray fox was babysitting the little fox, who continued to yell for him to let Chu Xingqin go. Finally, the old man let go of the kicking fox and she fell to the ground. The old man said that if he let people go, then this place, which is the last refuge of foxes, will become known to people. The fox lowered her head and stubbornly repeated that Chu Xingqin would not give them away that he once saved her life. The old man said wearily that the foxes were brought to the brink of destruction precisely because they trusted people too much. The gray fox reminded them that people are their blood enemies. The old fox said that the conversation was over and he didn't want to hear about these guys anymore. The gray fox asked the little fox if she knew the meaning of her name, Xiao Chia. When the fox shook his head, the gray fox only grunted in disapproval. Then he told the fox that her name Xiao Xia means bringer of light, the old man added so that she would remember this fact well. Meanwhile, the search for the castaways was gaining momentum. A speaker came to the school's mentor and reported that no traces of other students had been found on Thunder Island. The princess and the girl with blue hair also heard this disappointing news and were very upset. The mentor said that the missing guys would be found without their help and added that the girls needed to rest since they themselves had only recently been found. A beauty with blue hair asked her mentor if there had been a search for the missing underground. Meanwhile, the guys were digging a tunnel from their dungeon. They worked like real moles and were already completely exhausted. Chu Xingqin was completely exhausted. He hasn't quite recovered from the fight with the gray fox yet. The other guys didn't look much better than Chu Xingqin. Hu Songlai did most of the work of digging the underground passage. He thought that Chu Xingqin was completely useless. But at that time, the guy chuckled quietly and thought that in order to re-educate Hu Songlai, it would be useful for him to work a little for the common good. As a result, Hu Songlai's efforts bore fruit. He punched a hole at the top of the tunnel, and a dim light poured from there. And this made all four guys very happy. Soon, their happy heads emerged from the hole and began to look around. However, during the way up, Chu Xingchen and Shu Zuo Wu got stuck in a hole. The place they found themselves in was truly amazing. At the top, the guys saw a spiral staircase pointing upward, supported by columns. But the fugitives themselves found themselves at the bottom of this peculiar well. Hu Sung Lai shouted where they got to and how to get out of here. Then, without thinking too much, he rushed up the stairs. The others followed him. True, Chu Qingqin lingered at the bottom of this well. Something on the stone floor caught his attention. The guy had seen these strange runes before. And here they are again in front of him. Chu Xingqin asked the system to give him the stone that he received from the imperial treasury. The stone had the exact same symbol as the one on the stone floor. Chu Xingqin put the stone aside and crawled on the stones, trying to decipher the runes. But at this very time, something happened to the stone. It looks like he triggered some kind of reaction. Aunt Hong appeared behind the guy. True, he did not notice her, directing all his attention to the runes. Chu Xingqin was so absorbed in what he was doing, that he did not immediately realize that something had started to happen around him. The entire building shook, from the base to the very top. The guys, who were already very high, were very scared. Shu Suo Wu shouted at Chu Xingqin to leave if he valued his life. But the enthusiastic guy did not hear anything. He saw that the stone began to work. 
The runes began to glow, and the whole place began to move. Chu Xingqin hoped to solve the mystery of this stone, and if he was lucky, then learn the story of Aunt Hong. Suddenly the guy saw that in the center of the circle of runes, a pillar rose up, on which the central symbol was drawn. At this time, the earthquake had not yet reached the depths of the forest, but it was not calm there either. Apparently, someone was having a training session. The out-of-breath fox was hiding behind a thick tree post, but this shelter did not save her from trouble. She was surprised to see that her location had been revealed. The fox tried to gently slip out of the trap, but her fluffy tail pinned her down. Soon, a gray fox appeared and sadly reported that today's youth are no longer the same as they were in the days of his youth. At that moment, the gray fox heard tremors. Moreover, these were tremors of a special nature, and the old fox immediately understood what caused them. The fox reported that it was the heart of the underground palace that had begun to move and began to run. On the way, the old man reported that someone had activated the mechanism. But only a princess could do this, and it seemed incredible. In reality, the troublemaker was Chu Xingqian. Moreover, the guy himself was no longer happy that he started these games with runes and stones from the imperial treasury. Chu Xingqian told the fox who ran up that he could not take his hand off the stone pillar. The guy added that the pillar was sucking out his spiritual energy. The old fox muttered quietly that it was the princess. True, there was no particular similarity between the princess and Chu Xingqian. At this time, the mentor above was scanning the ground with his spiritual energy. He told the upset girls that he had found no trace of the missing boys. The mentor added that it was better not to waste more time here and move the search to other islands. At this time, everyone present heard powerful tremors. The strange well continued to tremble, shaking the earth around. Waves of energy spread throughout the island. Shuzo Wu shouted at Chu Xingqin to go upstairs. The noble guy himself took a great risk since he could fall down from the next push. Chu Xingqin shouted from below that he was fine, and so that the guys don't wait for him, but leave on their own. The guys moved further up the stairs, dragging the reluctant Shuzuo Wu with them. The noble guy did not want to leave without his friend. But the three guys safely reached the top of the stairs. There was a border above their heads. Hu Songlai immediately checked her and said that this was the way out. The next second, the guy dived across the border. Chu Hingchen also looked up, seeing the much-desired and difficult-to-achieve exit. But the fox brought the guy back to reality, and she said that he had better solve the most urgent problem. The gray fox was still under the influence of his delusions and continued to call Chu Xingqin a princess. The guy muttered in anger which princess he was talking about. The stone sucked so much energy out of him that he turned into an old man before his eyes. The gray fox quickly pressed some button on the wall of the hall. At that same moment, Chu Xingqin felt that the force that was holding his hand began to weaken. And soon, the guy was able to break away from the stone pillar. The gray fox muttered that the guy was not a princess after all. He doesn't even have enough energy to keep the mechanism on. Chu Xingqin only looked askance at the crazy old fox. The old man did not back down. He asked the guy how he managed to start the ancient mechanism and why the guy had the scent of a princess on him. Then, Chu Xingqin himself began to understand something. He was even surprised that it took so long for him to get it. He muttered that the gray fox was probably one of Aunt Hung's people. Chu Xingqin informed the old fox that he was the princess's assistant. He showed the old man the stone and said that it was just right for saving the princess. The guy plunged into memories of the events that took place 11 years ago. He ran screaming to Aunt Hung. The boy is missing something. As soon as he opened the door, the boy screamed that his reed flower was missing. The drunken aunt lazily asked what kind of reed flower this was. Or this guy gave that name to his chicken. The boy shouted for Aunt Hung to immediately return the chicken to him because he wanted eggs from her. Aunt Hung hugged the boy to her and said that unfortunately, the chicken was no longer alive. She invited the boy to meet the chicken. A one-eyed old man passed by and he heard the desperate cries of a boy. The old man burst into the room and saw that the drunken aunt had embraced the struggling boy. The one-eyed old man released little Chu and hugged him tightly. The old man muttered that the aunt is usually good, but when she drinks, she begins to torment the child. The one-eyed old man shouted that he would like her former subordinates to see her aunt. Little Chu heard Aunt Hung's confession with a sinking heart. She said that there was no way for her to meet them now. Little Chu Xingqin's story with the chicken made a great impression on the gray fox. For some time, there was silence. The old fox digested the information he heard from the guy. Then, Chu Xingqin told the fox that his aunt gave him this stone to save the other foxes. The gray fox asked if the princess was okay now. 
The guy said that Aunt Hung disappeared several years ago, and now no one knows where she might be. The gray fox muttered that if the princess did not trust people, the foxes would now have a normal life. True, the fox added that thanks to cooperation with people, the princess gained time. Without this, they wouldn't even be able to build this shelter. Suddenly, everyone heard a strange noise upstairs. Someone tried to break in. Chu Hingchen said that this is not like his guys. It could be more like a rescue team. To understand what happened above, you need to go back to the time when Chu Xingchen's comrades got out of the underground well. On the shore, the guys met a search group. Shu Zhou Wu reported that there was an underground palace at the bottom of the lake. He added that Chu Xingchen was still there and needed to be rescued urgently. But it turned out that the school mentor had already gone to the bottom of the lake and found a seal closing the entrance down. The seal was very strong, and the mentor could not break it the first time. But at this time, Chu Xingchen and the fox began to break through the border. The mentor helped the two rise from the depths using their own strength. Then, with a gentle movement, the mentor directed the energy towards the shore of the lake, and in the blink of an eye the guys found themselves on the shore safe and sound. The princess immediately threw herself at Chu Xingchen's neck. It cannot be said that the guy was too happy about this and Xu Zhuo Wu decided to cuddle up and also hug the princess and his friend. Chu Xingchen hastened to declare that the underground palace had collapsed and the demon remained buried inside. The guy didn't want other people to know about the fox's secret place. The mentor said that it was good that everything ended well, and now it was time to return to school. Because of all these worries and misadventures, the children completely forgot about school. Chu Xingchen exchanged glances with the fox, but no one understood what these looks meant. Previously underground, a gray fox handed a medallion to the fox. He said it was a fox communication and storage device. The old man said that they urgently needed to get out of here before other people entered this place. Guiding the guy on his way, the gray fox told him to collect 10,000 spiritual stones. Chu Xingchen let out a cry of surprise. He couldn't collect so many spiritual stones in his entire life. The old fox said that this mechanism requires a lot of spiritual energy to work. Since they don't have much of it, they will have to use spiritual stones. The gray fox bared his teeth mysteriously and fell silent for a few seconds. Then he solemnly said that this old mechanism could bring the whole island back to life. The guys left the island, tired but happy. Although there was little pleasant on the island, they were glad that everyone remained safe and sound. Chu Xingchen was surprised that Aunt Hung was a princess and especially since she created an underground palace with this powerful mechanism. But the guy had no idea how he could collect 10 new spiritual stones. The system happily informed the guy that he had successfully completed the escape mission. She added that his morale has been raised to ground level. The system asked Chu Xingqin what he was going to do with this bad guy. Chu Xingqin laughed in a friendly manner and waved his hand at the guy. He didn't want to show that he had revealed it, because they could have sent him someone else instead. And so, at least the guy was visible, and much less harm could be expected from him than if his existence was not suspected. The delighted princess practically did not leave her master almost the entire way. But soon the flying ship landed at the airport of the main island, where the school was located. The princess sang cheerfully that she had the opportunity to go to school with her master. Shizou Wu stated that he was going to set aside time every day to practice with the sword, and Chu Xingqin, of course, was going to engage in farming and he was incredibly happy about it. Although the school was not big, it looked quite nice. A crowd of students gathered at its entrance to greet the newly arrived. The princess expressed a desire to inspect the school as soon as possible. The mentor offered the children his assistant Wang Ming as a guide. The princess told the new guide that she was primarily interested in the hostel. She wants to see the life of ordinary people. The houses where the students lived looked very unpresentable. The guys stared in amazement at the huts in which they were to live. But Chu Xingqin laughed and said that appearance is not the main thing, but the main thing is the content. The truth is that everything turned out to be even worse inside. Bare walls and a row of mats with cheap pillows where students slept. The princess flew into an indescribable rage when she saw a cockroach running out of the room. Xu Zhou Wu asked Wang Ming to show him the training hall, since the guy was eager to train with the sword. The guide explained that the training hall was over 200 years old. He added that the equipment inside is not much newer so it must be used with caution so as not to injure yourself. The beauty saw that the princess and Shizuo Wu wanted to quit school. But for the girl, the main thing was not convenience, but the library. She was soon answered there, and she gasped. 
The library turned out to be a dark closet with half-empty shelves, on which were several dirty and torn books. Now there were already three people who wanted to leave this strange school. Chu Xingxin judiciously stated that there is no need to be so demanding, because the main thing is that there is good land. True, the guy suffered the same disappointment as the rest of the guys. Wang Ming said that they really couldn't grow anything on this land, but they don't have the same experience as Chu Xingqin. The guy knelt down and cried bitterly. This land turned out to be even worse than the Black Swamp. At least there was demon dung there. Now, Chu Xingqin joined the group of people who wanted to leave the school. Lunch in the school canteen did not improve the children's mood at all. The princess became completely furious. She said that for such food, the cook should be marked to death right away. Her Majesty immediately rushed to carry out her threat. Chu Xingqin heard the princess's wild screams and thought that she was flaying the cook alive. But the cook was saved from the righteous wrath of the princess by cockroaches that densely occupied the kitchen. Her Majesty had to get away from these mustachioed monsters herself. Wang Ming muttered an apology and said that their school was quite poor. He added that aristocratic families do not support their school. Therefore, they can only hope for help from the imperial court. Wang Ming added that their financial situation would be improved by the valuable prizes that the top five schools receive. But unfortunately, their school is at the bottom of the ranking. The guys were in complete despair about the school where they ended up. Wang Ming hastened to assure the children that they had a very kind mentor and were trying to study well in order to meet his expectations. Chu Xingqin thought for a moment. The situation turned out to be quite bad. But the guy was not used to despair much less giving up. At this time, a conversation took place in the school administration building. The uncle of the school mentor called him to his place for a serious conversation. He informed the astonished teacher that this year they could not count on help from the imperial court. The old man added that the crash of the flying ship was used as an excuse to refuse help. The uncle told the mentor that he was a three-star martial king and the son of the Liu family, and he was wasting his time in a useless school teaching poor children. The uncle said that the guy deserves a great future. And at this time, he is doing nonsense, teaching children whose families cannot even pay for education. The mentor was very unpleasant to hear such things, but he was not going to leave school. When leaving, my uncle told his mentor to think it over again and make a worthy decision. The mentor was left alone and plunged into sad thoughts. He muttered to himself that he could not give up his business at least until the schools were tested. Chu Xingqin appeared then. The mentor asked how he liked the school. The guy said that the situation is very poor. Mentor Lu apologized for the poor conditions at school. But Chu Xingqin added that he found the school's atmosphere to be excellent and the students to be friendly and motivated. And this is wealth in itself. Chu Xingqin whispered in Master Lu's ear that he had a good idea to make money. At this very time, poor students were grumbling that there would be no help for the school this year. Some students came to study at school only to receive help from the emperor. Then a guy came running and said that they were teaching farming nearby. And the mentor said that in the future, the school will be able to provide for itself. The guy added that they also pay money for good work. Everyone's eyes lit up with a sparkle of excitement. Chu Hingchen actually taught poor students how to cultivate the land. He showed them the shit of swamp demons and told them that it was a valuable fertilizer that could improve the quality of the soil. Shuzo Wu was surprised that Chu Hingchen had been carrying around the magical shit of the swamp demons for so long. The guy said that it was really magical. In his eyes, it is as valuable as gold. Chu Xingqin announced that he had a whole ring of swamp demon shit. Shu Zuo Wu was surprised at his friend's foresight and thriftiness. The self-taught farmer explained that shit should be used sparingly. He also revealed that they would grow spiritual herbs on the cultivated land. Then the guy called over to his old comrades, whom he knew from the days of farming in the Black Swamp. Chu Xingqin told his comrades that he knew that they were very dissatisfied with the bad rooms and everything but he added that poor conditions are not a reason to relax. Chu Xingqin said that the situation in the Black Swamp was not much better, but the guys rolled up their sleeves, got to work, and got a decent result. The guy handed his friends the school development plan that they had drawn up together with their mentor. Chu Xingqin stated that he intends to promote agricultural practices and economic development among students. The guy decisively declared that if they managed to turn the Black Swamp into a flowering valley with a blue sky, then they could pull this school out of poverty. Chu Xingqin then shouted that they could rewrite the history of the school if they all got down to business together. Inspired other school students also supported the guy's endeavors. 
they already saw a well-fed life in the near future. The princess liked how Chu Xingchen managed to infect people with his ideas, and she wanted to be like him. Inspired and encouraged, the guys started dancing to celebrate making important decisions. But not all school children shared the general fun. Some people didn't like Chu Xingchen's idea of plowing the garden instead of studying. Some thought that the rich kids came to them just to play at being farmers. Then they will return to their luxurious mansions, and the students will again be left with nothing. Some even wanted to turn to the deputy for an explanation. Soon, Chu Qingchen assembled the school's student council, which included his closest assistants. The first and most important task identified by the head of the council was making money. Chu Qingchen stated that they would sell the grown spiritual herbs. The guy added that Mentor Lu went to the capital to accept more than 100 tasks. This will also help improve the financial health of the school. The guys listened to Chu Xingchen's plans with different feelings, but everyone wanted to get out of poverty as quickly as possible. Hao Ging suggested borrowing money from her family. They have a lot of extra money. Chu Xingchen discarded this plan. He said that if her family invested money in their business, she would automatically oppose the Mu family. The princess added that all their parents would prefer that this school close in order to transfer their children to a better place. Chu Xingchen stated that Wujin School has poor saline and alkaline soils. They need to solve this problem. Hu Songlai spied on the guy all this time and wrote down literally every word he uttered in his diary. But he was also surprised that Chu Xingchen was thinking about farming 24 hours a day. He remembered the instructions about checking Chu Xingchen. He is strong, women fall in love with him, and he has a system. The guy hasn't noticed Chu Xingchen's strength yet. Women actually showed great interest in Chu. All these characteristics should mean that Chu Xingchen is the chosen one. True, at a critical moment in the dungeon, Hu Songlai did not notice that Chu Xingchen was using the system. The spy decided to put aside his thoughts and continue to observe Chu Xingchen and wait for further instructions from the Lord. Hu Songlai tirelessly followed the object of observation. The spy didn't leave Chu Xingchen alone even in the toilet, and this made the guy very nervous because he knew all the time when Hu was approaching him. At such moments, the system appeared and always informed Chu Xingchen that he was being watched. And such statements were very unpleasant to hear when you were sitting on the toilet. Chu Xingchen decided to deal with Hu and free himself from his constant presence. At the table in front of the girls, Chu dropped the phrase that he had too much to do and he simply couldn't cope without a secretary. The blonde immediately offered her services to the guy. She said that she and her two friends would sort out all his current affairs. Hu Songlai thought that being a secretary was the best opportunity to spy on Chu Xingchen. The guy thought that then he would know every single one of Chu's plans. This was very tempting, and Hu Songlai asked to become Chu Xingchen's secretary. Chu immediately agreed, which led the girls into real indignation. The girls took their anger out on Hu. They said that they would make sure that he did their job well and that he did not lie. Hu Songlai was very pleased with himself. Thanks to his cunning and prudence, he was able to get close to Chu Xingchen. Soon, the new secretary was brought stacks of papers to work on. Hu muttered dissatisfiedly that there was too much paperwork for one person. In response, the girls informed him that this was only for half a day of work. The girls also promised that if Hu Songlai wanted to quit their job, they would roast him like a pig, since he stole their place from them. Frightened, Songlai plunged headlong into his work, but they kept bringing him new papers and their number only increased. The poor spy was being pulled from all sides, and everyone needed something from him. Hu Songlai thought that he didn't want so much paperwork after all. He just needed to look after Chu Xingchen. At this time, Chu thanked his assistants for playing along with him and helping him eliminate the annoying Hu. Chu Xingchen growled so that Songlai would not dare blame him if he died at this work. After all, no one forced him. He asked for it himself. Soon, how Gung ran up to the guy with the joyful news that they managed to grow a variety of rice that was resistant to poor soils. Chu Xingchen was also happy because if the school had its own rice, they would not need money to buy food for the school. The guy said that with the money he earned from rice, he should buy a photo stone to start advertising. The princess, smiling sweetly, went about her daily work. But suddenly, unexpectedly, she cut her hand. Blood sprayed in all directions. The beauty became worried and said why Her Majesty was so inattentive. The girl with blue hair hurried to get a jar of wound-healing pills from the magical swamp. The pills were made according to the secret recipe of the Jia Lan family and contained a large number of medicinal herbs. The beauty added that even if someone's head falls off, these pills can stop the bleeding. 
Soon, the cheerful face of the princess appeared. She showed off her quickly healing hand. The princess said cheerfully that these pills would protect everyone's life. And the beauty whispered that these pills were recommended by the princess herself. Chu Xingchen looked at the result of the work done on the photo stone. The girls were ashamed of their work in advertising. The rest were enjoying themselves to the fullest. But in the end, this advertising campaign ended, and some people breathed a sigh of relief. At this time, an interesting conversation took place in the Imperial City, in the house of the Jia family. The head of the academy called Mo Dai to his place and asked how she was doing. The girl replied that she was focused on training. The old man told his granddaughter that she should not think only about training. She needs to talk to Yishan more often since he is her fiancé. The leader also noted that when the Wujin school goes bankrupt, the noble children will return to study at their academy and Mo Dai will need to spend time with them as well. The granddaughter objected to the old man that this school would not go bankrupt anytime soon. Things are not going badly for them now. All the shops in the nearest city sold black swamp pills. The pills advertised by the princess herself sold like hotcakes. Her majesty definitely had many talents that no one had suspected before. True, as always, a successful business also had its ill-wishers. But trade was quite brisk. And most importantly, it brought good income to the school's treasury. Someone said that it was outrageous that the princess was engaged in filming instead of training, which corresponds to her high position. Others said that the pills did not help at all, and they only cause harm. But despite the idle talk, the Wujin school was counting profits. It turned out that the guys managed to earn 158,000. Everyone was very pleased with these results. Chu Xingqin reminded that all questions regarding finances should be directed to his personal secretary. The guy had new ideas and was going to introduce new products to the market. The system asked Chu Xingqin where he got all these recipes from to which the guy replied that he studied a lot of things while he was on the mountain. Chu Xingqin decided to take advantage of the turmoil and earn some money for school using these recipes. At that moment, one of the students ran up and reported that the neighboring school had come and started bullying them. One student has already suffered quite a bit from uninvited guests. Hulu tried to support the wounded guy while the others ran to help. Meanwhile, a guy from a neighboring school wrinkled his nose contemptuously and said that the smell of the poor was everywhere here. Wujin students said that fighting between schools is prohibited, so there is no point in getting into fights. A guy from another school said that his brother bought pills, and after taking them, he started bleeding even more. He stated that the Wujin school was selling poison under the guise of a great medicine. The guys started shouting that it was all a lie and that their pills were not poison at all. A small scuffle ensued. An arrogant guy from another school said that he was not going to believe their unfounded claim and that he needs proof of the pill's effectiveness. One guy shouted that students from another school needed a secret recipe. An arrogant student from another school grabbed him by the hair and said, how dare he open his poor and stinking mouth? He shouted to the frightened guy that if they didn't bring him the prescription right away, the guy would be beaten to death. The next moment, a confident hand hit the arrogant guy right on the nose. The guy leaned back, blood poured from his nose, and he started shouting, who dared to hit him? Chu Xingchen said that he himself asked to be beaten to death. So Chu hit him. Then, being merciful, Chu Xingchen offered the pill to the arrogant guy. The blood immediately stopped flowing and the guy praised the medicine. Chu Xingchen said that he was very happy that his opponent had recovered. The next moment, Chu again shot the arrogant guy in the nose. In response to his puzzled expression, Chu Xingchen said, If the medicine is good, why did you dare to say that it is bad? The arrogant guy began to roar and said that Chu Xingchen should not dare to hit him. After all, he does not even suspect his high position. Then the princess stepped forward and asked the arrogant guy if he suspected her situation. The arrogant guy apologized to the princess and said that their pill had been causing a lot of controversy lately because there had been adverse reactions after taking it. A guy from another school said it looked like something was being mixed into their medicine without their knowledge. He told the princess that the Zhu family's hospital had already accepted patients who used their pills. The arrogant guy then said that the second prince had sent him to investigate this suspicious matter. Moreover, there had been a ship accident earlier. The arrogant guy also added that the ministry was going to inspect their school soon and then close it. The students whispered in fear and indignation, digesting what they heard. Chu Xingqin decided that he would not allow such a development, but then a mentor appeared. Moreover, he had fresh news from the ministry. 
Master Lu said that he had agreed that if they took third place in the competition, their school would not be touched. The mentor added that the prince was ready to vouch for their school. The princess remembered her older brother with warmth. The arrogant guy only laughed at Wujin's school's plans. He said that there was no way for them to take third place because they didn't even qualify. The guy added that if they shared the secret recipe with him, the second prince would be lenient towards them. He also turned to the princess and said that this stinking poor school was not at all worthy of her. The arrogant guy also gave the princess a message from the second prince. She is harming the family with her behavior. It would be better for her to go to the Star Academy. Otherwise, she won't live long. The princess answered the guy that she was sick of two types of people. And the first type is the second prince. Her majesty added that the second type were pig-headed scoundrels like this guy. Very soon, the guy realized that there was no point in angering the princess. He realized this while he was hanging suspended by the ropes that the princess had tied with her own hands. Her majesty said that threatening her was the last thing. Chu Xingxin praised the princess that she had learned his rope-tying lessons well. Hao Geng was shocked by what the guy was teaching the princess. Behind Chu Xingqin's back, conversations began that he was so cool only because the princess supported her. The students also suggested that it was better to give the recipe to the Zhu family because anyway they would not be able to take third place in the competition. Now the princess directed her anger at the careless students. She said they are trying their best to help them and save their school. And in return, they only get dissatisfied grumbling. The poor students said they were helped today. But when the rich kids leave, their school will be bullied even more. The annoyed princess couldn't even find the words to call the grumblers and crybabies. But then the mentor turned to her majesty and asked her not to be angry. He also said that he had a thing for her and her friends. Master Lu asked the guys if they would like to participate in the tournament. The princess said that of course they would participate, and they would win in order to wipe that dirty grin off the arrogant guy's face. The mentor said that this was very good, since the school students did not show interest in competitions. He also added that he will take charge of training new guys for competitions. And he offered them a training plan that he developed himself. The guys were surprised that training would take place even in the middle of the night. While the mentor was talking about the format of the competition, Chu Xingqin was sleeping soundly. The system tried to slow down the guy so that he would not miss important information, but it was all useless. Finally, the system called the guy a sloth and began taking notes itself. Master Lu added that he doesn't just expect the guys to take third place in the competition, he wants them to win. Only then will the Wujin school be respected. The mentor added that the team that takes first place will be allowed to visit the sword's grave this year. Shu Zuo Wu immediately became wary. The greatest masters visited the grave of the sword and left their treasures in the grave for future generations. Shu Zuo Wu shouted that if he managed to get into the sword's grave, then he would not live this life in vain. Master Lu also said that there is a prize of 5 million for first place in the competition. This news woke up Chu Xingchen. The guys promised the master that they would certainly take first place. Next, the mentor informed the children that they must definitely increase their level of cultivation in order to keep up with other contenders for victory in the competition. Master Lu explained that they were at a disadvantage because they had few good martial arts skills. Chu Xingchen asked the system why it didn't give him martial arts skills. The system objected that the guy has two skills. The first is a bluff, which has a cooldown of three years. The second skill is enchanted voice. Cooldown is only one day. Chu Xingchen objected that while waiting for the bluff skill to recharge, you could become old. The system advised the guy to train more to get to the great martial arts master. Then the reload time would be reduced. The mentor told the boys that he had studied agriculture and came to the conclusion that it would help the kids develop their bodies and improve their cultivation level. For training, the master suggested cultivating 50 acres of land. This puzzled even Chu Xingchen. Although he was very seasoned in agriculture, even for him it was a lot. The kids from the water group were asked to catch a thousand fish using spiritual power, and the other kids were asked to build a dormitory using spiritual power. Pasha on the ground until he sweated, Chu Xingchen thought that the mentor wanted to kill them. Here, the system also inserted its two cents. She asked the guy if he didn't like farming. Chu Xingqin looked at the strong Shi Zuo Wu and envied the guy. He thought that while farming was his hobby, he enjoyed doing it. Now that it had become hard work, it was a burden. A mentor approached Chu Xingqin and reminded him to take pills to replenish his spiritual strength. 
The mentor also advised the children to keep their bodies constantly in a state of high stress. This is how endurance is strengthened. Master Lu also had some advice for those who tried to build a building using spiritual power. Everyone greeted the end of this difficult day with great relief. Chu Xingqin literally slept while walking. He no longer wanted to eat or anything else. The princess was also unhappy that she had to catch so many fish in one day. And then listen to a boring theory. The beauty noticed that the gaps between them and other schools are huge, so they have to push harder. She added that the school does not have enough teachers, and it is also not easy for a mentor. The girl with blue hair said that she was not sure that Master Lu could withstand such a load for long. Chu Xingqin no longer paid attention to his friend's words. He was too tired not only to object, but even to simply listen. The guys weren't the only ones awake at this late hour. Their mentor also worked hard that night. He was also depressed by the heavy burden that he placed on the shoulders of his charges, but they needed to train to catch up with other schools in strength. True, the lack of strength can be compensated with the help of tactical strategies. The mentor was very tired, but he wanted to solve this problem so that representatives of his school would win an award and thus save the school from closure. Master Lu continued to work on a new training strategy for the guys. Later, he had some idea, but it needed to be developed. The teacher remembered that Chu Xingqin was sleeping in class and thought that the guy was very secretive. But sometimes, Chu is capable of much. Gradually, a new plan matured in Mentor Lu's head, which could easily be implemented under existing conditions. The mentor gathered the students who were supposed to participate in competitions near the training hall. Master Lu said that this year they have enough money to launch an illusory formation for training. The students liked this news. The simulation made it possible to train as during a real battle, but there was no possibility of injury. The mentor divided the training participants into two teams. For killing an enemy, one point was added to the team, and for the death of an ally, one point was deducted. Then the guys drew lots to decide who would be on the same team with whom. Chu Hingchen found himself on the same team as Hu Songai and Hu Lu, while all his comrades ended up on the other team. Chu Qingchen told Master Lu that they had no chance of winning, since all the strongest players were on the other team. Master Lu smiled and said that he believed in him and his victory. His friend Shi Zuo Wu also did not fail to tease Chu Xingchen. Then, all training participants were asked to enter the formation one by one. The guys lined up in a circle around the entrance to the formation. The mentor began the countdown until they could enter. Chu Xingqin looked with mixed feelings at his comrades, who became his opponents in this training. Then the guys began to enter the formation and disappeared from sight. The mentor was thinking about Chu Xingqin at this time. He understood that compared to other schools, they were much weaker. Therefore, he deliberately assigned the guy to a weak team so that he would learn to fight with a superior enemy. Master Lu saw leadership qualities in Chu Xingqin, and he wanted them to manifest themselves even more in the guy. The mentor wanted to see if the guy could win, being in an initially worse position. It was so dark inside the formation it would be eye-opening. Chu Xingqin looked around, but saw nothing except blackness and vague shadows. The guy tried to move by touch and soon came across something. It turned out that Chu Xingqin had bumped into his teammate. The guys were very scared and were afraid to make a sound or even move. Chu Xingqin told the guys not to shine too much so as not to give away their location. Chu himself said that he would go on reconnaissance and check if there was an enemy team nearby. Using his magic eye, the guy examined the surrounding forest and realized that there was no threat yet. Then, Chu Xingqin gathered the guys around him and said that he had come up with a good plan. The guys whined that it would be better to hide and wait until the end of the training. Chu Xingqin stated that the challenge has battle flags that give extra points. Since they do not have the strength to fight the other team, they need to try to get at least a few points. Suddenly, a column of fire appeared in front of Chu Xingqin. The guy barely had time to jump back. Shu Zou sat nearby and brandished his lightsaber. He greeted Chu Xingqin happily. The guy immediately grabbed his teammates and started running. But soon, another column of fire blocked the path of the fugitives. Moreover, this time it is much more than before. The princess was waiting for the guys. As always during the fight, she was amazing. Previously, Chu's team of friends had a war council. They rightly decided that the guy was the central link of the other team and unanimously decided to kill Chu Xingqin. The princess expressed doubts whether they had the strength to kill the guy. Shu Zuo Wu whispered something in the princess's ear, and it seemed that her majesty's doubts had left her. She stepped forward and said, Let's look for Chu Xingqin. And now, the guy was running away from his friends, saving his own life. 
A strange object appeared in the middle of the road, and Chu Xingchen automatically looked at what it was, hoping for a miracle that could save him. But it turned out to be no miracle. It was a sly fox who was waiting in ambush for the guy. The fox looked very menacing and determined and was about to attack the guy. But Chu Xingchen easily waved her aside and ran on. The fox growled after the guy that he had again sucked all her energy. The noble Shizuo Wu ran past, and he promised the fox that he would avenge her. Friends ran after Chu Xingchen and asked him to wait for them. The guy at that time thought that he would not succumb to these insidious bastards. They will still see who will defeat whom. Meanwhile, Chu Xingchen's team sat in the bushes and watched as their commander was being chased. The girl with blue hair thought that everything looked very suspicious. She made several smooth movements with her fingers near the ground. As a result, she created a protective zone that would protect her and her teammates. The protective zone moved with the beauty, which was very convenient. All of her boys who were chasing Chu Xingchen were protected. In difficult times, it became clear that the foresight of the girl with blue hair saved their lives. Thanks to the protective zone, the unexpected attack on their team ended in nothing. Previously, Chu Xingchen explained to his team that they would run to kill him first. He will lure his pursuers into an ambush. And there, the guys from his team will finish off the enemy. The plan indeed looked quite successful and promised victory even with much weaker forces. But something went wrong during the process. The entire power of the attackers was repulsed without even reaching the enemy. Chu Xingchen quickly understood the situation on the battlefield. He said that it was urgent to eliminate the beauty, since she not only protects others, but also heals. The guys took Chu Xingchen's advice and began to attack the girl with blue hair. Soon, they managed to achieve their goal. It seemed that now it would be easier to deal with the enemy. But Shizuo Wu and the princess were serious opponents even separately. And together, they were practically invincible. These two were swinging their powerful weapons in all directions, and there was no way to approach them. Hu Song Lai was seriously injured. The representatives of Chu Xingqin's team were becoming fewer and fewer every minute. Song Lai muttered that he could no longer withstand such powerful attacks. At the last moment, Chu Xingqin pulled the wounded guy out from under another blow. The guys managed to take cover behind a large boulder and catch their breath. Hu Song Lai said that he could no longer run and added that Chu Xingqin should leave him. The guy replied that Hu Song Lai was probably joking since Chu Xingqin never abandoned his team members. True, the guy missed another powerful attack. For the most part, it fell precisely on the half insensible Hu Song Lai. He was almost torn out of Chu Xingqin's hands. In addition, a pumped up shooter from the other team started aiming at the guys. Chu Xingqin began to run away with his heavy burden. A whole swarm of arrows flew after them. The princess shouted that it was time to catch up with Chu and finish with him. But the shooter from their team was against it. The shooter said the pursuit could lead them into another ambush. Since they took the flag, they have an advantage in points, and therefore there is no point in taking any more risks. But the guys did not listen to the shooter's words, but rushed to catch up with Chu Xingchen. By this time, the fox had recovered and swore that she would take revenge on the vile Chu Xingchen. Just in time, the guy was running in her direction with a heavy burden on his shoulders. Chu Xingchen smiled happily at the fox and shouted that she was just in time. The fox was confused and missed the moment when the guy grabbed her by the scruff of the neck. The next moment, Chu Xingchen used the fox as a shield to cover himself and his burden from the back. The princess shouted so that Xiaoxi would not be killed by accident. She asked that they aim specifically at Chu Xingchen. The fox hung behind the guy's back and called him all the offensive words that she could remember in such an uncomfortable position. Chu Xingchen growled that they needed to break through to the west. There is a river there, and they can take the flag there. At this time, the attackers killed the fox, which was a human shield for the guy and Hu Song Lai. Chu Xingchen realized that the fox was killed because the flow of curses on his head stopped abruptly. Shuzo Wu and the princess were also greatly surprised by the death of the fox. It turned out that the fox was killed by a shooter, which had already caused a lot of problems for Chu Xingchen and his team. The guy did not expect that the guys from the other team were capable of killing their own man. Already taking her last breath, the fox showed Chu Xingchen her middle finger. The guy thought how much she hated him. The princess took the archer's girl by the breasts and said why she killed the fox, because her majesty could try to go and save her. The shooter replied that that was why she had to kill the fox, so that the princess would not risk herself in vain. The shooter added that most of their losses occurred while they were pursuing Chu Xingchen. The girl with glasses gave several more arguments in favor of the fact that the fox should have been killed. 
The princess objected that the fox was one of them, and it was necessary to do everything to save her man, and not cynically count points. Chu Xingqin was glad that quarrels had started in the opposing team. This played into the hands of their team. The guys asked Chu Xingqin if it was time for them to retreat. But the guy objected that it was more interesting to watch the show. And indeed, passions in the other team became even more intense. Shizuo Wu himself shouted that it was worth stopping this mess and not fooling around anymore. But the girls had already bitten the bit and carried it off. So it was no longer possible to stop them. Shi Tzu Wu got tired of all this and went to Chu Xingqin. At this time, the mentor who was watching the training became sad. A serious feud broke out in one of the teams. The girls were so upset that they were ready to kill each other. At this time, the other team, along with Shi Zuo Wu, were watching the quarrel and spitting seeds. The mentor decided that personal motives won out over team ones. It was time to stop this disgrace. As a master, Lu was not bitter to admit it, but the training stopped and the guys learned nothing. The guys didn't understand what was happening with the formation. Why did she suddenly start to crawl apart before our eyes? Soon, they found themselves in ordinary reality. They didn't understand why the illusion ended. We thought that the formation might have broken, and then the guys saw the master who had fallen on the floor and ran up to him. Master Lu was carried from the training hall to his home and placed on a comfortable bed. The girl with blue hair reported that the mentor lost consciousness due to overexertion. She added that Master Lu could become ill for a long time and would need time to regain his strength. The guys were saddened by the condition of their mentor, but they didn't know how to help him. Moreover, there is only one month left before the competition between schools. There were already not enough teachers at the school, and the only one who could train them fell ill. Chu Hingchen looked at the fox thoughtfully. The suspicious girl asked why he was staring at her. Chu Xingqin thought that the gray fox could take care of their preparations for the competition. The guy turned to the fox with a request to train their team for the competition. But the stubborn old man didn't even want to hear about helping people. Chu Xingqin continued to convince the fox. He told him that the winners of the competition would gain access to the sword tomb, and it is closely adjacent to the Valley of Repentance, where the foxes are located. The gray fox could get with the guys as a coach to the grave of the sword and try to save his people from the Valley of Remorse. Chu Xingqin said that not all people are bad. And he said that in their school, no one hurts the fox. Xiaoxi confirmed this. The guy continued to convince the old fox. He said that individually they are worth little, but together they can move mountains. True, the old fox did not appreciate Chu Xingqin's eloquence and kicked him out the door. At school at that time, someone was whittling thin sticks. It turned out to be Shooter Li Mu. One girl came up to talk to her. The girl said that the shooter was too rough with the princess. Li Mu responded by saying that she cannot stand complacent aristocracy. She said that even though they made a lot of money for the school, they were not allowed to treat the simulation as a game. Mentor Lu gave his all to make them a team, and they play games. The girl objected to the shooter that rich children are strong and can win competitions. Then their school will have a lot of money. And there will even be money to cure Li Mu's sister. The next day, the students gathered in the classroom for classes. But there was no one to teach them. The teacher was still ill. Chu Hingchen muttered that if there was no one to teach them, then he would have to take on this matter himself. Then the system appeared and said that it was too early for the guy to take on the difficult work of a teacher. It is better for him to engage in cultivation in order to gain more strength and experience. Then, Li Mu approached the fox and apologized for killing it during training. Lisa said everything was fine. <laughs> she doesn't hold a grudge. Li Mu said that she would do it again if she had to. The princess in the back row was simply indignant with anger. When the shooter girl finally left, the princess made a face at her. Soon, the still ill teacher appeared in the class. He waited until the students, who had perked up after his appearance, calmed down again. Master Lu announced that there was very little time left before the competition, and he found a new teacher for the children. Everyone froze in surprise and watched with bated breath as a stranger entered the classroom with a firm, springy step. The mentor introduced the new teacher as Mr. Wu Fu, the three-star martial arts emperor. Although all the guys saw this man for the first time, for some, his identity was known. Chu Xingqin and the fox easily recognized the new teacher as the gray fox, who had just recently kicked them out the door. The guys didn't have to relax. Training began on the same day. The guys had been running for quite a long time, 
and therefore were puffing like locomotives at full speed. The new coach reported that he had seen their team battle simulation, and Wu Fu immediately began to reprimand the offenders. The trainer reported that someone immediately after the start of the simulation decided to turn dead and not take an active part in the activities. Wu Fu added that another member left his team at a difficult time. The coach noticed that some even deliberately kill their teammates. Wu Fu added that if their comrade had not been used as a shield, they would have lost. Even Chu Xingqin was surprised by this analysis. The coach said that everything was terrible and gave the guys the task of running 10 times around the island without using spiritual energy. The island was large, and the guys were afraid of such training. But there was nothing to do. Everyone had to run. True, not everyone understood how running would help them. Some people started to run out of steam already on the first lap. Some even tried to replenish their strength with spiritual energy. The princess asked Chu Xingchen if Wu Fu could train at all. Jogging didn't seem like a workout to the princess. Then, a coach appeared near the guys and told them to stop chatting while running, and that he heard everything. The coach said that in order to teach them not to gossip about the teacher, everyone should run an additional five times around the island. The princess screamed that it was her fault and the punishment should be only for her. But the teacher noticed that everyone's mistakes should be shared among the whole team. Wu Fu added that in a real battle, because of the mistake of one, his comrades suffer. Here too, because of the mistake of one, everyone must be punished. The coach was uncompromising and said that everyone should run extra laps. The girl with blue hair complained that she could no longer run. Shizo Wu took her on his back. The noble guy said that they all need to get there. But no one forbade carrying a comrade on your back. Shizo Wu whispered in the beauty's ear that he could not protect her during the simulation. But he would try to protect her now. Hu Song Lai envied the girl with blue hair. He also could barely stand on his feet and wanted to be carried in his arms. Hu even cried. He spends the whole night doing secretarial work for Chu Xingchen, and the whole day he gets bullied during training. The guy saw the deplorable state of his secretary and began to support him. The mentor saw how the tired children, but all together, ran to the square in front of the school. Master Lu thought that this new trainer seemed to know his stuff. Wu Fu showed up at the school last night and told the teacher that he wanted to teach at their school. The coach stated that he used to know their former director well. This greatly surprised the mentor. Wu Fu added that he knows that their director disappeared 10 years ago, and nothing has been heard from her since then. Master Lu was happy to meet someone who used to know their director. Wu Fu looked at his mentor's training plan and rejected it. He said that in the remaining month before the competition, cultivation cannot be greatly increased. The new coach said it was better to concentrate on improving team cohesion and training their willpower. Wu Fu said that before, the training was too easy for the guys. Now he decided to add loads to them. The new coach said that only blood and sweat can strengthen the will of the guys, and in order to teach the students unity, he was going to become their common enemy. Wu Fu did not forget to mention Chu Xingqin's cunning. He added that all these moments together will make the guys a strong team capable of confronting a powerful opponent. Soon, in a distant city, a letter was approaching its addressee. When the letter dropped lower, it was deftly picked up and eagerly began to be opened. It turned out to be a letter from a spy and, part-time, Chu Xingqin's secretary, Hu Songlai. In the letter, Hu reported that he was never able to test Chu Xingqin's abilities. The guy blamed everything on his position as a secretary, because of which he had no free time at all. The envoys decided to take matters into their own hands. They had gathered to test Chu Xingqin during the academy tournament. Everything had to be prepared for this. It was to the benefit of the envoys that this year the competition between the academies would be held in the Western Isles, in the city of Xiyu. Wu Jin School's vegetable garden continued to be cultivated, despite a group of students preparing for the competition. In the garden, we got used to hearing the screams of the guys every day who were preparing for competitions. But for some reason, it was quiet that day. But then the farmers remembered that on that very day the team was leaving for the competition. They hurried to the pier to see the boys off. There were a lot of people near the airship. His mother even arrived at the school to give her final instructions to her son before the trip. The boy's mother turned to the girl with blue hair and said that she hoped that the girl would take care of her unlucky son. Then, the mother pulled her son's hair and said that she and her father would watch the competition. So she hopes that Shuzua Wu will not disgrace their family. Her sick sister came to see off the shooter, Li Mu. She sincerely believed in her sister's success. It was time for the flying ship to depart. 
and Chu Xingchen called the entire crew on board. The students shouted that they hoped their team would at least pass the team battles and advance to the next stage of the competition. At this time, the mentor performed certain actions and opened a teleportation array. A huge hole began to open right in the sky. The flying ship, which was supposed to take the team to the competition, set off into it. The guys traveled this way for the first time, and they found it very interesting. They tried not to miss anything during the trip, noticed all the details. True, the journey itself was very short. Some were even disappointed. As soon as the stern of the flying ship with the guys disappeared into the teleportation hole, how another hole opened high in the skies above Shiyu City. True, at this time, the sky above the city was very lively. Competitors came from all over the country. From above, the city itself and the area around it looked very beautiful. Even for this landscape alone, it was worth flying here. The boys from Wujin School watched with interest the arrival of their rivals. Soon, the boys saw the Qingshan school team arrive. This school was one of the three strongest in the country. The students of this school were so skilled with their swords that they could use them as a means of transportation. One girl even envied these guys. She said it was very romantic to fly on your own sword, but the guy standing next to her objected to the girl. He said that traveling on a flying ship is much more comfortable and safer. Soon, a whole flying pavilion flew near the Wujin school ship. The pavilion was truly enormous. It was the flying stronghold of the moon gods. The guys tried to estimate how much spiritual energy was needed to make such a colossus fly. The city of Shiyu itself was located on the border of the Sea of Mirrors and the Desert of Madness. The favorable geographical position made this city a large trading center. The city was a key point that connected two distant parts of the country. In the city, Chu Xingchen was immediately approached to place a bet on the victory of one or another school. The guy resolutely refused this. A woman standing nearby said that the participants in the competition could be seen from afar. Chu Xingchen and the fox turned around and looked at the tall young lady who addressed them. The girl said that she represented Shi Yu Academy and that she was responsible for placing the participants in the tournament. The guys became very interested in this flexible and slender beauty. True, for some reason the girls didn't like it, unless the fox appreciated her captivating beauty. The dormitory for the participants looked more than decent, especially after the Wujin school rooms. The girl showed the guys the rooms and purred, so that in case of any problems, those who arrived would contact her directly. Then the beauty almost sang to the guys that they were very glad to see them here. Almost immediately, the system appeared and informed the guy that he had a new task. Chu Xingchen thought that the system was probably a bit of a pervert in his previous life. The beauty began to ask Xiaoxi if she was the fox for whom the great prince himself vouched. Lisa was very surprised that people on the other side of the country knew about her. The girl told the amazed fox that she must know her opponents in the tournament. The girl immediately recognized Chu Xingchen. Although it was not difficult to identify him as a plant lover, the girl smiled sweetly at the guy which the princess immediately did not like. The beauty whispered in Chu Xingchen's ear to be careful because he was being watched. The fox came to the princess on a small errand. True, she was still impressed by the beautiful girl. The princess began to revive the fox. She said that you shouldn't look at southern beauties. They are wrapped in rags, but their butts are visible, which is not good. This information was also heard by Chu Xingchen, who arrived. He asked the princess if she knew the people here well enough. Her Majesty said that she had to deal with them. She spent some time here in the Western Isles, but then a gong sounded, calling everyone to dinner, and the hungry guy's eyes lit up. All conversations had to stop. Meanwhile, interesting things were happening at the CU City Academy. Two girls grabbed their teeth tightly into one small strawberry. A crowd gathered around them, cheering and cheering them on. Finally, the girls each took a bite of the strawberry on their side, leaving a small, thin slice. The presenter announced that this was the thinnest slice and these girls won the competition. The other girls thought they could have done it even more subtly and started fighting. But at this time, a recent beauty appeared and called the girls a bunch of stupid bitches. She said that she works as hard as she can, meeting other schools, and here they are having fun with each other. But soon the girl calmed down a little and asked where Feng Yin had gone. She was told that she had gone to eat. Evening slowly fell on the city. There were even more people on the streets. Some were having dinner in a street cafe, while others were rushing to an important meeting. The city looked like a big anthill. The princess was enthusiastically telling something to Chu Xingchen. At this time, prying eyes were vigilantly watching the guy. From the balcony, a specified woman waved her hand to the guys. 
Chu Xingchen and the princess smiled happily back at her. The woman muttered to herself, When will she play with them? The tables for the competition participants were laden with delicious dishes. At Wuzan school, they rarely served meat for lunch. That's why the guys decided to have a blast here. They simply could not be taken away from the table. The students were glad that they had come to such a wonderful place as the city of Shi Yu. It is much easier to enjoy life with a full stomach than with an empty one. Chu Xingchen devoured the meat in large pieces. Fat ran down his arms, but the guy didn't pay attention to it. The guys from the Misty Flower Pavilion watched Chu. Their teacher told them to keep an eye on this guy. The guys from Misty Flower were surprised that Chu Xingchen and his friends ate so much food, as if they had not eaten for half a year before. One of the guys glanced at the piece of paper that stated that Chu Xingchen was a mystery guy and should not be discounted despite his low level as a five-star martial artist. The guys also discussed that Chu Xingchen's group was trained by the martial arts emperor Wu Fu. There weren't many martial arts emperors in China, and the guys from Misty Flower knew them. But they had not heard anything about Wu Fu. They decided to collect information about him. At this time, Wu Fu remembered this city where he had been before. To the west of Xiyu City, there was one place that the martial arts emperor had not visited for a very long time. Suddenly, the old man felt several curious glances that were turned towards him. Wu Fu realized that two more cultivators were interested in his special one. Such attention irritated him. He thought that 500 years ago, there were many more martial arts emperors, and they did not attract as much attention back then. Wu Fu's thoughts were interrupted by the mentor, who said that the draw had already taken place. It was clear that Master Lu was excited about the results of the draw. 74 teams determined their opponents by lot and were divided into examination rooms. Six teams per room. The mentor muttered that they got a room with seven teams. Already at the very beginning of the tournament, unforeseen difficulties appeared. The guys had to be prepared for further strong challenges. Hong Yun's school, which ended up sharing a room with Chu Xingchen's school, was very unhappy. Their representative noted that there were only five Class A schools in the entire country, and three of them happened to be in the same room as them. The representative shouted that this was a gross injustice. The man with the goatee told him to calm down. He said that this is a tournament where the weak are eliminated and the strongest remain. He added that the competition should first get rid of rubbish like Wujin Academy. As always, before serious competitions, bookmakers became more active. Bets were accepted. Bets were made. The players also discussed the team's chances of winning. The young guy said that three A-class teams got into one room as well as one team with no rating at all. Betters chose one of the A-class teams that had a great chance of winning the tournament. Someone noted that it is stupid for a team without a rating to take part in competitions of such a high level. Wu Fu heard all these unpleasant conversations about his charges. There were so many people crowding into the waiting area for the tournament participants that there was nowhere for an apple to fall. The crowd discussed that this year the strongest participants came to the competition. Chu Qingchen noticed that indeed everyone at the competition was strong, except their school. The guys were offended to hear conversations behind their backs that they were the weakest and poorest here. The fact that the representatives of the Wujin school were told in their backs that they were losers was the lightest insult that the guys had ever heard. Finally, the princess could not stand it anymore and screamed that she was annoyed by the fact that they were constantly pointing fingers at them and calling them names. The guy from the Misty Flower Pavilion answered the princess that, Unfortunately, not everyone likes to look for treasures in a pile of garbage as much as Her Highness. The princess began to boil and told the guy to repeat his words again. Chu Hingchen tried to cool the princess's ardor. At this time, an ancient old woman addressed them. Grandmother's name was Kong Lao. She was the dean of Shi Yu Academy. She was so old that she looked like grandfather. Kong Lao told the boys that they were young and had a lot of energy. But you should not direct her to respond to insults. Chu Xingchen wondered why a person with a beard was called a grandmother. The princess replied that she was indeed a woman. The guy was indignant that his grandmother had a beard. But the princess noticed that it was normal for women to have a beard. Xu Wu also confirmed that it is normal for women to have beards. And the fox added that Chu Xingchen seemed to have come from another planet, which surprised him. The guy was simply shocked by such statements. He always believed that a beard is a distinctive feature of men, not women. The old lady began to announce the rules of the competition. She said that it is forbidden to take pills, food, etc. with you. She also informed the participants that each team was given 30 points. 
For killing an enemy, one point is given, and one point is subtracted if a team member is killed. Kong Lao also informed the girls that the duration of the competition was seven days. And for killing an enemy, they give you supplies directly from the air. Squinting, the old woman reminded that despite all the measures taken, participants can die during the competition, and everyone should remember this. Kong Lao also reported on this year's innovations. An eye will be placed in each room. The competition will be broadcast live. In addition, it appeared that issues would be decided on a case-by-case -case basis by external judges. Everyone was surprised by these innovations. But the envoy grinned and whispered that all this was being done to make it more convenient for him to observe the participants. The long-awaited day has finally arrived. The sun was shining brightly in the sky and everyone was looking forward to the start of the competition. There was no shortage of inviting inscriptions. It was clear that there would be no empty seats left. Everyone wanted to watch competitions of such a high level, in which the strongest teams in the country took part. Soon, the well-choreographed voice of the presenter echoed through the crowded arena, and people's conversations began to fade away. To begin with, the guy introduced himself. It turned out that his name was Yu Bin, he said this year's competition can be viewed through arrays or viewing stones, and those who came to the Central Shiyu Arena can watch the competition on a huge scoreboard. The audience was very happy to be able to watch the students struggle live. Shuzo Wu's mother called his father to the screen so as not to miss if their son was suddenly shown. The judges this year were also top-notch. Therefore, one could hope for fair competitions and quality judging. The mentor knew that 74 people were participating in the competition, and understood that it would not be easy for his guys to even make it to the finals. Therefore, Master Lu mentally wished them good luck and the opportunity to show what they were capable of. 500 years ago, a mysterious curse broke out in the Far North. The curse quickly affected the entire plane of the Far North and turned many creatures into wandering souls. Since that time, the name of this territory has changed. It began to be called the Plain of Wandering Souls. Now the children had to experience the difficulties of this area. Already at the very beginning of the competition, a snowstorm began, which caused additional difficulties for some participants. The guys understood that their main task was not to run into soul eaters. And the second problem was not to freeze from the cold. True, one guy thought that the threat was not very big. He said that the most that threatens them is a few low-level ghosts. The guy also added that he knows the starting positions of other teams. It turned out that his distant relative was among the organizers of the competition. And so it was easy for the guy to get valuable information. The guys had a plan to first destroy the Wujin team and then hide and watch the tiger fight. Therefore, the guys did not want to waste time. They moved forward to meet Team Wujian, despite the snowstorm. Even in such a harsh area, there were animals that were cute and defenseless at first glance. True, it didn't take long for the rabbit to jump in the snow and tear apart the tasty roots. The girls started arguing about whether they would eat rabbit for dinner. But Xiao Tuzi, who caught the rabbit, did not want it to be eaten. Another girl from the same team stated that she wanted to go and play with Wu Jin. Xiao Tuzi really liked the rabbit. She rocked him like a child. But the other girl didn't like this fuss. She told Xiao to throw the rabbit away immediately. But the girl didn't want to do this, and almost immediately I regretted it. Something strange began to happen to Xiao Tuda, and the rabbit disappeared into her hands. Soon, the beautiful girl began to look not like a person, but like a ragdoll. One of the girls shouted that this was a spell to transform into a puppet from the Misty Flower Pavilion. The puppet did not stand still. It began waving its arms, threatening to hit one of the girls. Someone shouted in a timely manner that now Xiao Tuda was no longer one of them, and she needed to be dealt with. Sister Xiao, who was on the same team with her, began to cry. She felt sorry for her sister. And in such a difficult test, I wanted to have a kindred spirit next to me. But the other team members did not stand on ceremony with the unfortunate Xiao Tuzi. The doll was immediately hit in the teeth, and one of the girls said that it was very shameful to let yourself be caught in such a stupid trap. She threatened to deal with the girl in the real world. The northern village greeted the travelers lifelessly. There was no one in the village. There were only gaping, empty openings for windows and doors. The guys had come a long way in bad weather and were disappointed that there was no one in the village. The village was very gloomy and creepy. And one of the guys inappropriately remembered that it was not far from this village that the curse broke out. The guys assumed that all the villagers had been turned into wandering souls 
although they did not understand where these souls had gone. The guy with green hair suggested that the wandering souls in this village were killed by previous competitors. But it soon turned out that the guys in the village were not alone. They saw movement among the buildings and began to run after the enemy. The guy with green hair shouted as he ran that there was no point in running away from them, since they would die anyway. Chu Xingqin clearly saw the crowd of approaching opponents. The guy informed all members of his team that enemies had appeared on the horizon. The princess said that they were in complete order and everything was ready to meet the enemy. The other guys said that they had taken their positions and were only waiting for the command. The third group stated that the camouflage and arrows were ready. Chu Xingqin chose the right moment and ordered his guys to attack the enemy. Loopholes with already loaded weapons opened from different sides, and arrows and stones flew at the team that had just arrived in the village from all sides. The guys couldn't even immediately understand what was happening around them. They did not see the enemy and did not understand where the attack was coming from. Then the guy with green hair realized that they were ambushed. The guy saw flames bursting out of the loophole closest to him. He came closer to see who was hiding inside and extended his hand. The weak flame quickly turned into a fiery sword and severely burned the guy. The heartbreaking cry of a guy with green hair echoed throughout the village and died down among the snow-covered snowdrifts around. The guys from Wujin school were well-prepared and well-disguised. So the first battle went without losses for them. An hour earlier, completely different events were taking place in the village. The Wujian school team then screamed in horror, and there really was something to be horrified about. The guys, almost immediately upon arriving at the location, met wandering souls. The guys didn't know where to run. Ghosts surrounded them on all sides. It seemed that this would be the end of their participation in the competition, but they still didn't want to give up without a fight. They were going to at least sell their lives dearly. The girl shooter took aim at the enemy closest to her and was ready to release the bowstring. Suddenly, the ghost screamed with such a disgusting scream that the guys had to cover their ears because listening to such a cacophony was unbearable. Chu Xingqin yelled that this might be a sound attack. True, the system corrected the guy. She said that this was no attack, but the usual curses of wandering souls. Chu Xingqin asked the system, since it is so versed in the curses of ghosts, to translate to him word for word what they mean. Soon, the guy realized that one of the ghosts was yelling not to hurt his child. Another of the ghosts shouted that people were too scary, and his eye fell out of horror. The third wondered why people came to them again. Chu Xingqin realized that the ghost did not threaten the guys and did not even intend to attack them. The guy asked the system to tell the ghost that people are not going to kill them. The system said that it would make it so that Chu Xingqin could talk to them himself. The guy waved to his friends so that they would not attack first. And then he told the ghosts that they were not their enemies. The ghosts talked to each other in surprise. For the first time, they met a person who understood their language and even more so, could speak it. Chu Xingqin also apologized for screaming when he saw the ghosts. He explained that he was frightened by their appearance. The guy also told the wandering souls that he would do everything to help them, but Chu Xingqin added that other teams would still kill them. So they should be careful. The guy suggested that the wandering souls unite and deal with other teams. When the ghosts expressed their disbelief at Chu Xingqin's words, the guy said that Shi Zuo Wu could vouch for him. Shizuo Wu's noble posture and regular facial features inspired confidence in everyone. The wandering souls also believed in the sincerity of the guys. They consulted among themselves and accepted Chu Xingqin's offer of cooperation. Chu Xingqin was delighted, but his team still could not understand what his plan was and why he again decided to enter into an alliance with the next monsters. The ghosts were glad that this year they would have help and would not have to drill holes in the ground. Chu Xingqin was surprised and asked the wandering souls why they were making these holes in the ground. The ghosts explained to the children that under the village there is a system of tunnels where they hide when people arrive. One of the wandering souls said that every year there are fewer and fewer of them, and they try to avoid battles with people. But Chu Xingqin had his own plans to meet people from other teams. The guys used all the capabilities of the surrounding buildings to create a good trap. Moreover, they already had experience in construction and digging from the Black Swamp. The guys got to work together. They didn't really have much time, and they needed to expand and modify the tunnels that were dug by dead souls. The guys worked quickly and smoothly like clockwork. Every second of delay could bring their team a loss. Everyone worked hard, moving huge boulders and removing tons of earth from the tunnels. A preliminary map of underground structures was drawn up, 
and all work was carried out strictly according to plan. Even the most powerful enemy in this village was in for surprises. There were traps and hidden weapons everywhere. Soon everyone was ready to repel the attack, and the village itself turned into a fortress. True, this was not immediately clear. The enemy realized that something had gone wrong when it was too late to retreat, and from every hole and every window a weapon was pointed at them. Therefore, the enemies could only whine about how vilely they were treated. The guys tried to find shelter to save at least part of the team. The main thing for them was to cover the doctor, because without him they would not have lasted long. But the girl doctor, trying to hide, just fell into the clutches of monsters. Teammates rushed to save their doctor and did not particularly make out the roads. When the enemies began to realize that something was wrong, there was no longer any way to retreat. They were firmly and securely stuck in the trap. While the enemies were feverishly trying to find a way out of the stalemate, they were hit even harder. They were surrounded by teams from Wujin School. True, the guys were disguised and their eyes glowed. This brought even more terror to the enemy. Chu Xingqin politely thanked the wandering souls for helping them trap the other team. Meanwhile, the enemy was trying to gather his strength to break through the encirclement into which they had so thoughtlessly ended up. While the enemy was solving pressing problems, the princess quietly appeared from behind. Her majesty took out her formidable weapon and began to destroy opponents left and right. The princess remembered Chu Xingqin's advice when he said that the strongest cultivators should take the initiative during battle. Also, before the fight, the guys agreed that the enemy doctor was their first priority. Without a doctor, they will not be able to get treatment. They will lose morale and become easy prey. The princess was just carrying out one of these initiative raids when the enemy decided to kill her. The opponents were constantly showered with a hail of arrows, which greatly thinned their ranks. In the end, the enemies decided to remove the Wujin school archer from the tower. They needed to try to regain the advantage they had lost in the village. Soon, a literal threat loomed over the girl with glasses, who accurately planted arrows into the unprotected backs and chests of her opponents. But the archer was covered by a fox, and the one who attempted to kill the archer soon turned into a victim himself. In the close embrace of the fox, the enemy could not resist for long. And soon, darkness covered his eyes, and the archer continued to fire her arrows, hitting more and more opponents. Hu Songlai was waiting in ambush for the right moment. Soon he also had the opportunity to pluck the enemy's feathers. The scout reported to Songlai that it was time to start the fireworks, since the enemy had already waited too long. The guy didn't have to be asked twice. He happily pressed the button. The opponents found themselves at the very epicenter of the explosion. They danced like crazy, not knowing which way to run. The guy with green hair muttered that now explosive charms had been used. His man ran up to Master Zhu and said that it was time to retreat because their losses were too heavy. The master replied that he forbade retreat and would kill anyone who dared to do so. The guys quickly moved around the village through a system of tunnels, and the enemy never knew where they would be attacked from next moment. True, the fox was too short, and it was not always convenient for her to climb stairs and tunnels. The leader of the opponents shouted that they were simply attacked by a bunch of rats, and his team was afraid of them. Master Zhu gave the order to attack the ground to inflict maximum damage on the enemy. He yelled that if rats liked to dig tunnels so much, then he was going to bury them in these tunnels. The blows were really powerful. To be more effective, they were brought down from a height. All hell broke loose in the tunnels. Now the representatives of the Wujin school did not know where to run or how to escape. Even the wandering souls became worried as they hid in these tunnels for a long time. The guys somehow caught their breath, but they had to leave because everything was shaking and the tunnels could collapse. But Chu Xingqin said that it was not worth leaving the tunnels. He ordered the doctors to attend to the wounded, and he himself took up Plan B. Before the battle, the system developed 17 battle scenarios for the guy. Now Chu Xingqin decided to use the second one. Vine branches were used to strengthen the walls of the tunnels. Now the command has come to concentrate spiritual energy on strengthening the great branches. The entire team went to work with the exception of the seriously wounded. The spiritual energy of a group of people is a great force. If the energy is concentrated by friends or loved ones, the power is even greater. Soon, the branches strengthening the walls of the tunnels were restored, and the threat of the tunnels collapsed past. True, due to the superior strength of the enemy, the entire structure could not withstand it for long. Therefore, Chu Xingqin yelled for the rune team to speed up. Hu Songlai was in a hurry, but large formations required a lot of preparation time. 
But in the end, the guy coped with the difficult task. Everything was ready. The magic was over. The enemy found themselves in a ring of fire, with explosions constantly occurring around them. Master Zhu did not understand what this new attack was. Moreover, he did not understand from which direction the attack was coming. Suddenly, the boys fell to the ground, still not understanding why. The enemy team's magician explained to the master that this is how the Imperial Band formation works. He added that now half of their techniques will not work. True, this wasn't the worst news. Tentacles of unknown origin appeared from underground and began to approach the fallen children. Soon the victims were entangled either in vines or tentacles along their arms and legs. Meanwhile, in the central arena, the noise was incredible. The first sensation of the competition occurred. The audience couldn't believe their eyes. But the incredible happened. People in front of the screens rubbed their eyes. It seemed to them that they were imagining everything that was happening. But then the host announced that the Wujin school team defeated the Hunyun Academy team. And indeed, the Hunyun representatives lay helplessly on the ground. And the Wujin team walked between them. There were even small fights in the stands. Many people bet money on the team, which is now defeated. People couldn't understand how an unrated academy could take over a B-class academy. Representatives of other schools were already thinking about how they could recruit an archer from Wujin. But then the judges received their first complaint. Everyone looked back in surprise towards the person who filed the complaint. The man shouted that Chu Xingchen was manipulating wandering souls to deceive the Hong Yun team. Wu Fu stood up for the guys. He said that there is no rule that prohibits entering into alliances with wandering souls. The coach, in turn, asked the representative of the competing team how they knew where to look for the Wujin school team. He couldn't answer. He only said that it was not Wu Fu's business, but that it was their own matter. Meanwhile, Chu Xingchen and his friends were discussing something with the wandering souls. One ghost woman roared that through the battle her house was destroyed to the ground. The wandering soul cried that she now did not know where to live. Chu Xingchen asked why she didn't then turn to the skilled builders of the Wujin school. Among their guys, there were truly skilled builders who could build a house of any complexity. Moreover, it was almost impossible to destroy such a house later. Wujin school unanimously raised their fingers and said that they invite everyone to order home renovation services from them. It turned out that the guys were advertising their services all over the city. Some people muttered indignantly that such impudence had never happened at a competition before. The mentor was ashamed and covered his face with his hands. Wu Fu sat next to him with a stony face. But Chu Xingchen and his team continued to promote their services to an audience of thousands. And right after the fight, when the attention of all spectators was focused on them, even the envoy turned his attention to this episode, he motioned to his assistant. Then the messenger whispered something in the assistant's ear and he obediently nodded his head. At this time, Chu Xingchen and his team were already working at full capacity. They carried heavy boulders and cleared the area. The wandering souls were very grateful to Team Wujin. This was the first time in their lives that people helped them rebuild destroyed buildings. Among the rubble of the house, Chu Xingchen discovered a well-preserved package. The guy unfolded it and saw a cheerfully smiling woman in the photo. At this time, one of the wandering souls approached Chu Xingchen. She looked over the guy's shoulder and, also smiling, said that this was one of her old portraits. The events associated with this portrait took place in a northern village 500 years ago. The mother said that her daughter is so beautiful that there will be no end to those who want to woo her. The young beauty's name was Ma Hal. She was cheerful and loved to have a good time with friends. Soon, Ma Ha's father returned from hunting. They had a successful hunt, and their party received a lot of things. The father asked Ma Ha that she and her brother take these things to a distant northern city. Over the past 500 years, the northern village has not changed much. All the same small, huddled buildings and snow-covered streets. The children secured the load well on the sleigh and set off on a long journey. The brother asked his sister what the distant northern city of Beivang was like. The girl replied that soon he would see everything for himself and form his own opinion about the city. The brother was so impatient that he began to peer into the city as soon as it appeared on the horizon. Up close, the city looked even more majestic and beautiful. He was even more beautiful because the cold, lifeless desert stretched around him. The northernmost city of Beihai was one of the wonders of the world. It was built by countless craftsmen. The sister told her brother that she had heard that their young master could turn a person into a puppet. She added that the master had already reached the martial arts emperor level. 
the brother shouted that he also wanted to be a puppeteer. His sister just laughed at him. The brother got angry and shouted at his sister that she shouldn't think that he doesn't have strength. He said he would curse her and she would never marry. At this time, the children saw in the distance, where the city should have been, a strange crimson glow. Brother and sister were surprised by the strange phenomenon and even more frightened. The crimson glow gradually increased and soon covered half the sky. And in place of the city, a strange formation appeared. The children watched with bated breath. It seemed to them that a strange thing, which consisted of red threads, began to grow. Then they became very scared, and the children started screaming. Something began to approach them. It was an incomprehensible red thing that was difficult to describe in words. Soon, the red threads from which the thing was made appeared near the guys and turned into a crimson fog. Red threads of fog on all sides. My brother started coughing a lot. The sister saw that her brother was getting worse every minute. She decided not to waste time, turned the sleigh towards the house, and drove forward. True, the reindeer that were harnessed to the sleigh remained standing in place. The girl approached the reindeer to see why they refused to carry the sleigh. Her cheek itched, the girl wanted to scratch it, and the skin began to peel off her face. My sister was very scared. She had no idea what was happening to her. My brother was also getting worse and worse. The situation seemed desperate. The boy developed dark discharge from his nose and mouth. He looked at his sister with a frightened look. But the girl couldn't do anything either. She was scared to death herself. She started yelling that this was happening to the district and what they should do next. There were no answers to these questions. It was only clear that something terrible was happening to them. A crimson fog covered a vast area and spread through the streets of their village. At that time, the girl did not know that it was not just fog, but a curse. The curse of the wandering spirit was embedded in the human body. It spared neither the elderly nor children. Really terrible things happened to people. No one understood the reasons for what happened and how to deal with it. Gradually, people began to be less and less like other people. Eventually, they all became mindless evil spirits. They were angry at their fate, at themselves, at God. They did not understand why they were given such punishment. For many weeks and months, there were screams and groans in the village. But the terrible evil did not go away and continued to absorb the souls of people in order to torment them later. Before such an insidious supernatural enemy, ordinary people were powerless. They couldn't fight it with ordinary swords and arrows. True, glimmers of hope soon appeared that everything could change. The girl met a stranger who told her that she should not be afraid and sad. Otherwise, the curse would act even stronger. The child asked who this man was and why he knew so much. After that, something began to break out from the mysterious man's backpack. It turned out to be a scary and bulky doll in multicolored clothes. The mysterious stranger said it would all be over soon and that their torment will be over. Meanwhile, the scary doll came to life, which greatly frightened the girl. The puppet's eyes lit up and its terrible mouth curled into a grin. Then the doll began to suck in the crimson fog, which covered the village and brought with it misfortunes and curses. The red mist began to leave the girl's body and her health began to change. Also, the crimson mist left the bodies of other villagers. There was also much less of it in the air. The stranger explained that his doll was called the bearer of the curse. She can take the curse of others for herself. People were surprised to find that their health improved dramatically. They lost the constant pain that had tormented them for a long time. The stranger added that the doll would not take away the curse from those whom it had already completely consumed. The stranger was about to leave. People thanked him with all their hearts for saving them from terrible torment. Grateful villagers called their benefactor the puppeteer of the city of the far north. As he left, the man turned around and said that he was not a benefactor. It turned out that he was also cursed. Thanks to him, although people became wandering souls, they retained their sanity and humanity. After all these terrible events, people remained in their village and continued to live as usual. The ghost reported that time later cleared the plains of the curse and people repopulated them. And from a piece of the north, they made a secret world. The guys were very sad after they heard the sad story of wandering souls. One of the ghosts said that he had seen births and deaths for five centuries. He added that the curse had corroded his memory, and he had no reason to be sad. The guys became even more upset. Some even began to roar. The wandering souls tried to calm down Chu Xingqin's team, seeing that the guys were very concerned about their fate. One of the ghosts pointed to the little boy and said that this was the brother she had mentioned. The ghosts also told the boys not to tell anyone about their story. 
Chu Xingchen said that wandering souls should not worry. No one will know about their history. Otherwise, why would they listen to ghosts in the toilet? There was a protection in the eye that closed the toilets from prying eyes, so that the competition participants could sit in peace in the toilet. The girls were surprised by this story. They have always heard that the city of the far north is just a beautiful legend. The system reported that this city disappeared 500 years ago, and still no one can find him. Therefore, it is common to consider the city a beautiful fantasy. Chu Xingqin also remembered that one of the old men told him about such a doll. While the guy was working in the garden, the old man explained to him that the cursed doll is one of the most complex dolls. The old man added that the materials for creating a doll are rare and the techniques are complex. In addition, unusually high demands are placed on its creator. Chu Xingqin was busy with his vegetables and did not listen to the old man very carefully. The guy heard out of the corner of his ear that the doll was being made from a living person. In addition, the higher the level of the person, the more complex the doll, and the more curses it can withstand. When Chu Xingqin asked whether it was really necessary to sacrifice a person to create a doll, the old man began to beat the guy for not listening to the story carefully. The beaten guy stated that art that sacrifices a person is pure evil. The old man replied that this is not done under compulsion. The person voluntarily agrees to become a doll. As he was leaving, the teacher said that he hoped that the guy would never have to make such a doll. Chu Xingqin asked the old man if he had ever made such a doll. But the guy never received an answer. Chu Xingqin consulted the system whether his old man could be the mysterious stranger who saved the villagers. True, the stranger was young and handsome, but the old man was of mature age, and besides, he relieved himself wherever he could. Chu Xingqin asked the ghosts if they knew where their benefactor had gone. One of the ghosts said that he probably went on to save other people. The ghost added that the secret place was only a small part of the northern plain. In order for the guys to learn more about ancient events, they had to go to northern Jalan. At this time, the presenter announced that poisonous fog was being released into the 11th room. The area over which the poisonous fog was released was huge, and this action affected many teams. True, there was a space free of fog in the middle. The girls' team was very unhappy because they did not expect the additional condition to come into effect so soon. The fog also threatened other teams. It spread from the edges of the world, and the middle was quite safe. Apparently, in this way, they tried to bring the teams closer to each other. This event caused excitement among the teams. Chu Xingqin became very angry. They had settled well in the village, strengthened it, and now they had to leave. True, there were other participants who were not particularly worried about the presence of toxic fog. For example, Xuanqi Academy believed that the time had come. One of their girls asked if all the dark lines were connected. The envoy watched the approaching events with great interest. Chu Xingqin's team also included people who were going to act according to their only known plan. One such person was Hu Songlai. The guy waited in the wings for a very long time to deal with Chu Xingqin. When the boys left the village, the wandering souls loaded them with so much food that they could barely carry it. But this seemed not enough to the ghosts, and they still wanted to offer it to the guys. After all, these were the only people who treated wandering souls humanely. The ghosts simply overwhelmed the Wujin school team with provisions. But the guys couldn't fight them because they were offered a lot of food. The ghosts said that they were used to the guys, and they were very sorry that they had to leave so quickly. The guys, in turn, asked if the ghosts wanted to leave this place. After all, they are not aggressive and not dangerous to people. The wandering souls replied that they were not welcome anywhere and no one would want to have anything to do with them. Chu Xingqin's team felt very sorry for such kind creatures who were better than many people. The ghost told the guys not to worry about them. Now they have many tunnels and their life will only get better. As the poisonous fog approached, Team Wujin left the village, but they still looked back for a long time. The wandering souls waved their hands goodbye and shouted kind words after them. The guys were so loaded with provisions that they could not move very quickly. In addition, not only the spectators were watching the Wujin team with their eyes, someone else was watching them. This was someone who was very secretive and hungry. In addition, he had several trump cards up his sleeve. To reach a safe place, Chu Xingqin's team had to cross the river and take refuge in the forest. There, they had much more options than fighting strong teams in open areas. Chu Xingqin understood that they released the poisonous fog specifically to remove the Wujin school from the competition. The guys were already quite tired, 
but they had not yet managed to reach the saving forest. Chu Xingqin began to look around the snowy area. The guy suspected that they might have gone astray. Even in the distance, there were no trees visible. Then a familiar voice whispered something strange in the guy's ear. At first, Chu Xingqin didn't understand where he knew this characteristic hissing voice from. Then the guy remembered the swamp demons and looked around in a daze. The demon said that they really missed their instructor. Soon, other demons appeared. They informed Chu Xingqin that they had managed to develop new varieties of potatoes. The swamp demons invited the guy with them to boast to him about their successes in agriculture. Xu Xingqin wondered where in this secret world a crowd of swamp demons from another secret world could appear. Meanwhile, the swamp demons showed the guy a large village and said that they built everything here themselves. Chu Xingqin finally realized that he was in an illusion. Moreover, the illusion was so masterfully made that he did not understand when he found himself in it. The guy started wandering around and trying to find members of his team. Chu Xingqin sincerely hoped that this illusion was not brought upon them by their competitors. Otherwise, the other team could kill them one by one while they were in captivity of the illusion. Suddenly, someone gently touched the guy's shoulder. But Chu Xingqin felt as if he had been electrocuted or scalded with boiling water, so he twitched. It turned out to be that nasty guy. He licked his lips with his tongue and told Chu Xingqin that he missed him very much. The girl with blue hair was also in the grip of an illusion. She wandered through the foggy forest and could not meet anyone. She, too, did not immediately understand where the secret world ended and where the illusion began. In addition, the girl with blue hair did not immediately notice that someone was near her. At first, she saw the blurry silhouette of a tall man and was afraid that it was someone from the other team. But then the beauty recognized her good friend, Shizuo Wu, an artifact of the past and future. In fact, the illusions were caused by the refraction of light from the snow and not by the machinations of the other teams. The victims of such illusions are either dominated by the most terrible memories or have visions of the future in which they would like to find themselves. The illusions were also accompanied by an unconscious loss of perception of the environment. These were competitions of the highest level. That is why the challenges here were the most serious. True, not all competition participants were equally susceptible to illusions. The girl from Schwanke Academy was not only not subject to illusions, but she was also interested in Chu Xingqian. The girl muttered under her breath that for some reason many people consider this mediocre piece of shit to be the chosen one. She added that even if Chu Xingqian was truly the chosen one, his connection with God was severed through an illusion. Therefore, the girl believed that no one could help the guy, and she really wanted to know all the secrets of Chu Xingqian. True, the guy was not inclined to share his secrets. He was vomiting heavily. The girl from Shuangqi Academy also suffered quite a bit. Just at this time, the system contacted Chu Xingqian. True, he still continued to vomit. The system complained that she was locked in a dark room. She found herself cut off from the outside world and from Chu Xingqin. Then the system asked how the guy was feeling. He really didn't look important. Chu Xingqin began to hug the system. She was already glad that the guy missed her so much. But Chu Xingqin, as always, attacked the system with reproaches. He asked where she had been for so long. The guy said that he called for the system for so long that he became hoarse, but it never appeared. At this time, the competition spectators saw that Chu Xingqin had destroyed the illusion. They were delighted that the guy managed to cope with the illusion so quickly. True, some said that the guy cries too much. This does not suit a good warrior at all. The interlocutor replied that a real warrior can allow himself to cry. Chu Xingqin was confessing to the system at this time. He reported that he saw that nasty guy in an illusion. He touched him and was going to abuse him. The system told the guy that this was not an ordinary illusion because then she would have stayed with the guy. The system stated that a powerful artifact was used that could eliminate even her. The system also added that this was apparently the work of fake systems, although they hid their scent so as not to be discovered. Meanwhile, Chu Xingqin was trying to gather his team, which was still in the grip of illusions. True, the guy was surprised that he managed to find only the pitiful remnants of the team. The rest of the guys were nowhere to be found. The system stated that people in captivity of illusions can move unconsciously. Therefore, Chu Xingqin took the fox and Hulu with him and set off on a journey to find the others. Chu Xingqin remembered that when he woke up, he saw large breasts. The guy wondered if he had really imagined it too. 
The girl who was hiding behind the rock could shed some light on whether Chu Xingqin really saw big breasts or if it was just his imagination. And in front of the girl with blue hair, Shizua Wu really stood. She asked her friend why his hair suddenly turned white. The beauty gazed intently at Shizua Wu, but for some reason he seemed different to her. A girl with blue hair asked the guy why he was crying. Shizua Wu answered something to the girl, but she did not understand his words. She touched the guy's cheek, but she felt like she was receiving an electric shock. The noble guy spoke again, but the blue-haired girl couldn't make out a single word. On the one hand, the girl understood that in front of her was her old acquaintance Xu Zuo Wu. But on the other hand, he seemed somehow not himself. Soon, the girl with blue hair began to suspect that something bad was happening. Xu Zuo Wu again muttered something incomprehensible. Therefore, the guy extended his hand to the beauty's face. Everything seemed somehow unusual, strange, as if covered with a whitish fog. Finally, the girl with blue hair realized that this was a real illusion. She was even surprised why she couldn't figure it out right away. When the beauty realized that she was in an illusion, she immediately woke up. She rushed towards the still-dreaming Shu Zuo Wu. The girl began to bother the guy, trying to wake him up. She asked him if he had seen the other guys. The girl with blue hair thought why in the vision Shu Zuo Wu's hair was white, because red suits him better. The beauty wondered what this vision could mean. The girl wondered if this vision could foreshadow future events or was just an illusion. Suddenly, the beauty felt the first weak blow, a harbinger of an enemy attack. Without wasting a second, she immediately put up a good defense. The girl did not have time to see who was attacking them. But the defense worked very well and they were safe for a while. Nevertheless, the enemy was approaching from above. He admired the fact that the beauty destroyed the illusion so quickly. But the attacker added that this would not help her because she was just a healer. Then the enemy shouts, die, powerfully attacked the guys. But the girl with blue hair managed to escape from the attack at the last moment, along with the unconscious Shizua Wu. The girl used all her skills to protect her friend and stay alive herself. The enemy shouted after them in rage. He believed that this couple was already in his hands. What followed was a tedious pursuit, and only the beauty's frantic reaction helped the guys avoid enemy attacks. But soon the enemy overtook the fugitives. He told the girl to leave her companion and play cat and mouse with him. The girl did not respond to his proposal, but she cupped her palms. The next moment, a protective screen appeared in front of the enemy, which the beauty placed, and the enemy slammed his face into the screen with all his might. After the enemy hit his head well, his orientation in space was disrupted. It seemed to him that now there were protective screens everywhere. But he was unable to see the fugitives. Moreover, it turned out that protective screens can attack. The beauty untwisted them and directed them towards the enemy. The audience was completely delighted. They had never seen a healer be able to attack an enemy, much less inflict damage on him. As a result, the guys managed to evade their pursuer for a very long time, although Shizuo Wu never lifted a finger. The judges noted the skills of the girl from the Shui family. They knew that she had not been capable of such a thing before. It looks like she learned new tricks from the Wujin school. But the mentor and coach were pleased to see how their ward was leading a strong opponent by the nose. The enemy was furious. He believed that he was an easy prey. Now the guy was out of breath, but he failed to catch up and destroy the healer with her limp load. The enemy called for help because he alone could not deal with the harmful healer. For the best effect for the blow, the guys decided to use an artifact to kill the couple completely. The girl with blue hair was still trying to escape, using a protective shield to fly. But she saw that the enemy had stopped pursuing. The girl looked around and realized that the enemies were preparing something terrible. One of the opponents was holding something in his hand and was preparing to strike. The girl with blue hair realized that they would soon have a hard time. But there was little time left to do anything. This attack reminded the girl of the guy with spots on his face who attacked them in the black swamp. He did similar tricks. The enemy took good aim. He now knew that the victims would not escape him. Then the enemy struck a powerful blow that could crush almost any enemy. A large explosion occurred in the place where the impact occurred. The sound waves diverged in different directions. The enemies waited for the smoke to clear so they could see their fallen victims. But it turned out that the guys were still alive. Although the beauty was seriously injured, blood was oozing from her forehead. Now the enemies already understood that the girl with blue hair was easy prey. They, full of enthusiasm, rushed to the attack. But it seems that a powerful explosion woke up Shu Zuo Wu. 
The guy finally left the treacherous world of illusions. While the opponents approached the guys, they were already met by a noble guy with his sword of light in his strong hand. Previously, the girl with blue hair protected the guy. Now they have switched places. The beauty was glad that she received such unexpected help. After all, she already thought that it was all over for them. True, the wound on the girl's forehead was quite deep and caused her pain. True, now the girl with blue hair no longer needed to think about protecting and saving them. These responsibilities were taken over by Shizuo Wu. At this time, Chu Xingchen and Hu Songlai were making another advertisement, while their friends had a serious fight. A few moments ago, the guys were literally on the verge of death. The opponents greeted Shizuo Wu rushing towards them with curses. True, they still had some artifacts that could turn the tide of the battle. In addition, the enemies themselves had become much more numerous. And there was only one Shizuo Wu capable of fighting. It must be said that the guy, after a long stay in the illusion, missed a good fight. Therefore, Shizuo Wu was even glad that there were many opponents. He had room to stretch his muscles after a long period of non-existence. Anticipating a good fight, the guy began to spin the sword around himself. Shizuo Wu was again in his favorite element. At the same time, the guy was holding his favorite weapon in his hands. The two of them with a sword were capable of much. Just in time, the enemy came to hand. By the way, for the guy himself, for his opponent's good was not enough. The guys from the enemy team tried to counterattack, but the girl with blue hair, who had already recovered a little of her strength, put up protection for Shizuo Wu. The opponents realized that they could no longer attack this couple head on. Therefore, they decided to use cunning to stop the healer. It was lucky that Shizuo Wu saw the danger that threatened the girl in time. The noble guy was not going to offend his faithful companion. Shizuo Wu pointed his sword at the enemies who were creeping up behind the beauty, and they were thrown a fair distance away, so they no longer posed a danger. The noble guy wanted to run after the enemy, but his partner stopped his impulse. She said that the two of them were too few, and they could fall into a trap. Therefore, the girl with blue hair suggested that they first find their comrades and only then get involved in fights. All this time, while the guys were in an illusion and fighting, Hu Song Lai was chilling in the snow. Apparently, he was having fun and was not at all worried about the fate of his teammates. But it was not very comfortable to enjoy lying on your back for a long time. Therefore, Hu Song Lai sat down and shouted that Chu Wu Xingchen and the three wicked women were under the influence of illusions and that they would soon be killed. Hu Song Lai seemed to go crazy with joy. He muttered that he just had to wait for his colleagues to confirm Chu Xingchen's identity. After this, his difficult mission will be over. To celebrate, Hu began to sculpt a fox figure from the snow. He muttered that after this mission was over, he would take a long vacation. With pleasure, Hu Song Lai kicked the newly made snowman and shouted that Chu Xingchen would soon die. Hu was still yelling all sorts of nasty things about Chu Xingchen when the guy called out to him from behind. Chu Xingchen stuffed Song Lai's throat and yelled at him that he would attract enemies with his crazy screams and they would all be killed. Song Lai was surprised. He believed that once Chu Xingchen's identity was established, he would be expelled from the tournament. But the guy didn't go anywhere, but covered his mouth with his hand. Chu Xingchen yelled at Hu that he had to do hard work while Song Lai was having fun making snowmen. The guy put his unconscious comrades next to each other and barked at Hu Song Lai to help him wake them up. Chu Xingchen began his difficult task with the fox. He always wanted to beat the fox, but she did not give him a reason to do it. Now an opportune opportunity has arisen. True, the fox quickly began to regain consciousness, and the ashamed Chu Xingchen asked how she was feeling. The fox was still rather lethargic and muttered something incomprehensible. Chu Xingchen realized that the fox was saying something about him and using curse words. At this time, neither the guy nor Hu Song Lai noticed that the enemy had appeared behind them. When the guys realized that there was a threat, it was already too late. A girl from the opposing team landed with all her might on Chu Xingchen's back. The guy spat out a fountain of bloody saliva. True, the girl got away almost immediately, without finishing off the guys who were taken by surprise. Then the girl started beating the huge doll and swearing terribly. She furiously attacked the doll and called it every offensive word that came to her mind. The girl was almost foaming at the mouth. There was so much anger in her. She screamed why the doll was persistently following them. A guy from another team yelled that he too had fallen for the Ziyanqiu school's trick. And now, neither he nor the girls will live. A serious fight ensued between the two opposing teams. 
The girl was screaming that they would win and that the guys didn't have a chance. But soon, the guys tied up their teammates and the girl was left alone. She screamed, scared for her girls, but she herself was also being chased. The girl had to urgently escape from her pursuer. At this time, another player came to the girl's rescue. The guy protected the girl from a crushing attack by hiding her behind his back. She cast a grateful glance at her savior. Thanks to him, the girl was not killed. She only received a few scratches. The savior smiled radiantly at the girl in response. It seems he was saving not so much her as her beauty. The battle was truly large scale. Three academies clashed, and some of the strongest. Chu Xingqin noticed that the battle was going well. He also added that although Shi Yu and Misty Pavilion are strong, they will not be able to hold out for long. Some girls were especially good during the fight. Hu Songlai did not fail to note this. Chu Xingqin asked him where he was staring, but soon the big breasted beauty was injured. Everyone was very surprised that the fox was most worried about her. She even started screaming in fright. It must be said that the girl really had something to look at. So there was nothing strange in the fact that many were concerned about her fate. Chu Xingqin was surprised to notice that everyone around him was worried about the health of the big-breasted girl. And immediately a system appeared and invited Chu Xingqin to carry out the heroic rescue mission in order to take such a valuable girl into his harem. The guy became furious. The system snapped that Chu Xingqin should follow the example of the fox, who was ready to sacrifice her life just to save her sister. The guy decided that it was really time to join the fight. He managed to save a girl with large breasts from certain death. Chu Hingchen smiled sweetly at the girl and asked if she needed help. True, the next moment the guy was pushed away by the fox, who said that she herself would save her sister. Soon, the fox embraced the surprised girl in a tight hug. Meanwhile, the fierce battle continued, although some had already begun to lose ground. Chu Xingqin found himself in the thick of battle. Opponents were pressing on him. The Wujian school team was also threatened below. There was no place left on the battlefield that wasn't hot. Chu Xingqin eliminated one of the opponents with a well-aimed blow. But there were still a lot of them. A guy from the other team grabbed Chu Xingqin by the chest and yelled that he was an idiot and would now say goodbye to his life. Chu Xingqin used his bluff skill. It was just the right time for this. The guy whispered that the enemy's wife cheated on him with his comrade. The skill immediately began to take effect, and the attack on Chu Xingqin was stopped. But the enemy, roaring and screaming, attacked his teammate, whom Chu Xingqin pointed at when he used the bluff. Teammates attacked the crazed enemy, and they shouted why he was trying to kill a member of his own team. The victim of the surprise attack hissed, missing several teeth, that his comrade had never had a wife. The guy remembered that he really wasn't married. But it was too late. He had already beaten his comrade. In addition, the insidious enemy managed to escape while the guys were sorting it out among themselves. Chu Xingqin led the big-breasted beauty out of the thick of the battle. And now the girl was no longer in danger. She thanked the guy for his help. He tried to answer that there was nothing to thank him for, but the system immediately shut his mouth. The system reported that the girl Long Tian had a difficult childhood and was treated poorly. Therefore, she cannot be offended. The system added that Chu Xingqin needed to treat the girl with consideration. The system insisted that the guy treat Long Tian well and replenish his harem. Chu Xingqin thought that something didn't add up here, but he could not immediately understand the situation. The system continued to stick to its line that Chu Xingqin must complete tasks in order to increase his level and skills. At this time, the old man whispered into the girl's ear that Chu Xingqin seemed to have mental problems because he was talking to himself. True, some people had a question about how Grandpa got into the Academy for Girls. An academy with young girls, it was not at all a suitable place for a decrepit old man. The guy bluntly asked the old man what he was doing at the Academy for Girls. Perhaps the guy felt jealous because his grandfather was surrounded by beautiful girls. At some point, it seemed that the old man was confused and did not know what to answer. The guy thought that he had managed to pin the cunning old man against the wall. He thought that a couple more questions would bring his grandfather to clean water. But then the old man got angry and shouted at the guy whom he dared to call grandfather. The guys were even scared. They thought that maybe the old man, a martial arts master, would beat them badly. But the grandfather didn't try to fight with the guys at all. The old man said that in fact he was an ordinary girl. All the guys were very surprised. Chu Xingqin had been in a similar situation before. The guy yelled, What kind of news is this? that on this island girls have beards and possibly other male attachments. 
In response, the old man shouted that this was not his body. He used to be a girl. Bursting with tears, the old man said that he would now tell the guys what was happening. He muttered that he hated this ugly male body. He missed his own body as a young girl. The old man poured some kind of magical liquid from a yellow jug. He announced that now everyone will be able to see his real body, and they will be convinced that he had a very cute and slender body. Soon the image of a young, beautiful girl actually appeared in front of the guys. They stood there stunned. They had never seen anything like this before. Then the old man took the girl from the vision into his arms and began to roar more than ever. He whined that he couldn't wait to return to his body. The girl who was saved by Chu Xingchen put her hand on the old man's head and said that this was her little sister. She explained that her sister was under a soul-altering spell. As a result, the girl's soul exchanged bodies with the corpse doll of an old man. This happened during the battle with the Misty Flower Pavilion. True, the girls managed to catch the sorcerer of the enemy team, who was directing spells at them. They had not yet decided what to do with him, but everyone understood that nothing good awaited him. The girl in the body of an old man hated the sorcerer with all her heart. She started hitting him with all her might. Her sister had to stand up for the enemy sorcerer so that he would not be killed ahead of time. As a result, the old man threw himself on his sister's chest in tears. He was not yet quite accustomed to his new body and could not accurately calculate his strength. As a result, her sister's thin blouse tore and the girl covered herself with her hands so that others would not see her nakedness. The old man began to apologize terribly for his carelessness. Chu Xingqin continued to look at the girl's naked back in shock. He even called up a system that knew the answers to almost all of his questions. The guy's hopes were justified. The system informed him that he saw a high-level artifact on the girl's bare shoulder. The system clarified that this is an earthly artifact called a traveler. The system also said that artifacts come in different shapes. And the higher the level of the artifact, the more hidden it is. Chu Xingqin also learned that the artifacts of the system are divided into five levels, heavenly, earthly, shuan, advanced, and normal. The system reported that it looked like they wanted to kill the girl. It turned out that the traveler artifact can make a person mediocre, destroying all his qualities. Chu Xingqin asked the system how he could rid the girl of this vile thing. The system informed the guy that the artifact was very difficult to remove. To do this, you need a device to draw out curses. The system added that there are also similar artifacts on two other people. Apparently, these things were put into people's bodies during the battle. The system believed that there were traitors on the team. She said that such artifacts are very, very expensive. The system also said that it knows what people will do with a fake system. At this time, the other part of the Wujin school team was hiding from the superior numbers of the enemy. The gunslinger girl went on reconnaissance. At this time, the opponents were wandering through the snow, trying to find traces of the other team. The guys quietly talked to each other so that they could study everything carefully and not miss anything. The gunner girl returned to her teammates and said that they were safe for now and that they needed to continue digging the tunnel. Limu was the first to wake up after the guys fell into the illusion. She saw that the enemy was approaching and something urgently needed to be done to save both herself and her comrades. The guys began to dig an underground tunnel and it turned out to be very timely. The tunnel helped them escape from Shuanqi Academy, but it was too early to relax. After the illusion, only 13 people gathered. They didn't know where the rest of their team's strongest members were. If the princess or Shizua Wu had been with them, things would have been different, at this time on the same plane, but in a different place. Faithful Hao Gang carried the princess on her shoulders, who was still in the world of illusions. The wind made it difficult to move forward, but the girl did not give up. Although her legs were weak, she had no intention of abandoning her precious burden, her princess. It should be noted that Her Majesty knew how to win people over. Out of the corner of her eye, Hao Gang saw movement to her right. Someone was quickly approaching her. There was very little hope that these were their friends. In fact, they turned out to be guys from the opposing team. Moreover, they were more than aggressive. Hao Gang realized that there was no time to waste. The girl started running as fast as she could, not making out the road in front of her. 
but the burden was too heavy for her to be able to run away from her pursuers for a long time. Hao Geng came up with a good idea. She decided to use a rope to deceive the guys from the opposing team. This could give some kind of advantage over enemies. The girl threw the rope onto a strong tree trunk and managed to lift herself into the air along with the unconscious princess. For a moment, Hao Geng even thought that they were safe, but a strong blow from the enemies overtook the girls even in the air. Hao Geng realized that it was all over. Wounded, she could not hold the rope, especially with Her Majesty on her shoulders. As a result of this attack, the girls began to fall to the ground. Even while flying, Hao Geng tried to cover the princess's helpless body. But it was also not easy for her, who was wounded. As a result, Hao Geng hit her head on the ground, taking the full force of the blow onto herself. The girl managed to soften her mistress's fall at the cost of her own body. Besides the boys, there were also girls among the opponents. But their clothes were not too different from men's clothes. True, the bloodied Hao Geng was already indifferent. From the conversations of the enemy team, it became clear that only the princess was important to them, and they were going to kill Hao Geng. In addition, the enemies talked about the need to have time to put an artifact into the body. The girl realized that the enemies with her mistress wanted to do something bad. She reproached herself for not being able to save the princess. Hao Geng tried to gather her will into a fist. The girl gathered her last strength and crawled to Her Majesty. It seemed that the princess was sleeping soundly. Hao Geng began to bother her mistress, still hoping to tear her out of the world of illusions. A girl from the opposing team called Hao Geng, a devoted dog who protects her owner until her last breath. She growled that she would now deal with the restless dog. Driven by the chase, the girl screamed at the top of her lungs that she would now release life from the mortal body of the maid. Hao Geng realized that her last minute had come, but the enemy's cry woke up the princess. She immediately realized that Hao Geng was in mortal danger. Therefore, the princess immediately pulled out her formidable weapon and struck. Her majesty's powerful blow threw the enemy far to the side, and the faithful Hao Geng was saved. The awakening of the princess radically changed the entire picture of the battle. The princess was so furious that she seemed possessed. Her eyes, usually red during battle, this time glowed with devilish fire. No one wanted to fall under her hot hand. The enraged princess was perhaps the most formidable weapon in the whole country, and nothing good was in store for her enemies. With one blow, Her Majesty drove the enemy deep into the ground. All that was left of the opponents was a wet spot, and at the sight of the impact, a deep crater formed from the princess's powerful hammer. Bright scarlet blood sprayed in all directions. Hao Ging! And the surviving opponents looked in amazement at what the princess was doing. No one suspected that the fragile, gentle body of the young princess could contain so much anger. Hao Gung, who was still dripping blood from her mouth, looked at her mistress in awe and fear. Although the girl had known Her Majesty for many years, she had never seen her in such a state. The princess growled through her teeth that these people had driven her mother to death, and they would pay dearly for it. Burning hatred ran through every word of the highborn girl. Her majesty's eyes still glowed red. A stingy tear rolled down the girl's cheek. It seemed as if her very soul had turned black. And the next moment, the princess exploded. Like a hurricane, her majesty attacked her stunned opponents. They didn't even understand how to defend themselves from such a fierce attack. However, the burning hammer was approaching them. But one of the opponents, seeing that soon there would be nothing left of them, remembered a way that could stop the princess. The guy drew a circle in the air with his index finger. As a result of his actions, the princess was bound hand and foot with sparkling chains. Indeed, only witchcraft could stop such a powerful attack. Her majesty could not free her arms or legs. She could only dangle in the air and look around, trying to notice the approaching enemy. True, the enemy turned out to be too insidious. The ground beneath where the princess was hanging began to crack and crumble. The girl looked at her feet in surprise. Soon she saw a sneaky magician from the opposing team crawling out of the ground. The enemy rushed towards the princess, shouting that the last hour of her life had come. True, her majesty was not going to give up so easily. She let her opponent get closer and then powerfully hit him with her head. 
the only part of her body not bound. The princess became furious again. Her eyes glowed with fire, and her body was filled with otherworldly power. Her majesty pulled with all her might the chains that held her in the air. The magician who kept the princess in chains began to experience great strain. He was simply unable to hold back the enraged girl, although he did everything he could. But in the end, the princess broke her shackles and scattered their pieces in different directions. There seemed to be no limits to her anger. The enemies realized that now they would have a hard time. The magician tried to stop her majesty with a new attack. He understood that the princess would not spare him. Therefore, the sorcerer put all his strength into the attack to stop the angry girl. It seemed that the princess did not even pay attention to the magician's attempts to defend herself. She continued to approach him, no matter what. Her majesty raised her hammer above her head. Then the girl made several sharp blows, and the magician's entire defense was smashed to smithereens. Now nothing separated the offender and his former victim. The hour of reckoning has arrived. The princess once again swung her formidable weapon, and the magician began to pray to all the gods whose names he could remember. But the ominous gleam in Her Majesty's eyes did not promise salvation for the enemy. Finally, the princess struck. It seemed that after this blow, the magician of the enemy team had no chance of surviving. Everyone thought that he would be finished. True, other members of the enemy team watched the battle from the sidelines. And one of the guys tried to save his friend. He didn't know whether his idea would succeed, but he still decided to try. As a result of his actions, the princess's hammer stopped just a few inches from the magician's face. The sorcerer looked with horror and awe at the burning hammer that hung above his head. A teammate bound the princess's weapon with magical chains and thereby saved his comrade from imminent death. Everyone watching the battle froze in silent amazement. The comrade shouted to the magician to run away since he would not be able to hold back the mad pressure of the princess for long. Time was counted in seconds. The princess saw that her victim remained safe and sound. She began to approach her opponent, this time with bare hands, because she could not free the hammer from its grip. Then, still with her bare hands, her majesty pushed the head of a magician from the enemy team straight into the flames of the hammer. At that moment, the princess's face completely lost its human appearance. Continuing to hold her opponent's face with her hand, the princess waited until the face burned to the ground. The magician was dying in terrible pain, and his teammates did not know how to help him. The princess did not even pay attention to the pain from the burns. She burned more than just her hand. She also had burnt spots on her face, but the worst thing was her eyes burning with hatred. The guys from the opposing team were speechless and froze. They had never seen such cruelty before. Moreover, they could not imagine that the princess was capable of such atrocity. Hao Gung was also numb from horror and excess of feelings. She had no idea what the princess was capable of. Hao Gang always considered her owner to be a gentle, loving, and sweet girl. Amazed spectators also whispered about the princess's obsession. Some paid attention to her burning eyes. Others were struck by the mask of hatred that shackled Her Majesty's face. The mentor and coach of the Wujin school team were also amazed at what the princess had just done. They could not explain to themselves the reason for what happened, but the mentor of the Divine Moon Academy knew something. He muttered that the mad blood, the legacy left by the late Empress, was making itself known again. The old mentor knew that the higher the talent, the stronger the curse. As a person ages, the curse eats away at a person and makes him insane. When such a person goes crazy, his strength increases many times over, although the power of the soul spontaneously burns and the possessed person can die when he uses up all his energy. The director of the Moon Academy knew that only demons had red pupils. He warned his majesty to cleanse the princess's body after the empress's family was exterminated. True, the emperor did not listen to the smart old man. Now the whole world has seen what a monster the princess is turning into. Nobody wanted to have a crazy princess over them. However, her majesty continued to smash with her hammer, destroying everything around her and not looking around. From the tremors after the blows of the burning hammer, Hao Geng was thrown to the ground. The girl was very afraid of everything that was happening. But she absolutely did not understand what could be done in such a difficult situation. She could not and did not want to fight her mistress. 
Meanwhile, the princess raised a fire hammer over Hao Geng's head and shouted that the girl must die. Spectators of the competition have never seen a crazier act. Everyone held their breath and waited for the outcome of this drama. You can understand how painful it was for the princess's loved ones to watch her actions. But no one could fix this situation. The bearded old lady Kong Lao's eyes widened. The face of the Wujin school coach turned to stone, and the teacher turned completely white and bit his own lip until it bled. With a deafening roar of flame, the princess delivered a powerful blow to the place where her faithful assistant, Hao Geng, had recently stood. The hammer sank deep into the ground, which cracked from the impact. The truth turned out that Hao Geng was saved. Moreover, everything happened so quickly and unexpectedly that almost everyone thought that the girl was already finished. Help came from unexpected places. The girl suspended in the air reproached the princess. She quietly said that there was no point in trying to kill your teammates. Such actions are not typical for people. How? Gung looked back at her savior in surprise. Kong Feng hung next to her. The girl, as always, looked elegant in her light and beautiful clothes. True, the appearance of this girl affected her majesty like a red rag on a bull. The princess said the girl's name with hatred. Her look again did not bode well. Kong Feng was a girl from West Island Academy. Despite her young age, she was already a martial artist. The girl had long been known outside her academy. Kong Feng, along with Wen Mao from Qinshan Academy, were the most likely contenders to join the emperor's kingdom in the new generation. The bearded granny muttered that Kong Feng always kept a low profile, and she didn't think that this girl would have to clash with a princess who had lost her mind. Granny muttered that Kong Feng was apparently no less crazy than the princess. Otherwise, she wouldn't have bothered. The princess, in a fit of rage, has already killed a dozen people. True, the girl did not even think about retreating. She was even touched that the princess, even in such a frenzied state, remembered her person. Kong Feng muttered that she was valuable. True, the princess did not appreciate Kong Feng's calm speech and friendly address. Her majesty began to yell at the newcomer to shut her mouth and remember her place. True, apparently Kong Feng was not going to hide in a corner and silently wait for Her Majesty to take out her hammer and slam her down like a pathetic insect. Instead, Kong Feng whispered that if the princess killed anyone else, then her mother's death would have been in vain. It seems Her Majesty listened to the girl's words. At least the princess's expression softened. The bestial features that so frightened all the spectators, and especially Hao Geng, disappeared. Her Majesty thought about it. It must be said that Kong Feng acted quite insidiously. She lulled Her Majesty's vigilance and then dealt her a blow, albeit quite softly, one might even say gentle. Kong Feng muttered that she would not stoop to fight with crazy people. Therefore, she poisoned the princess to clear her head a little and realize her actions with the remnants of her mind. True, Kong Feng gradually began to speed up the princess's flight. The girl laughed and declared that this piece of flame, which is called Her Majesty, should be cooled in the strong wind. The princess grew faster and faster, prompted by the actions of the girl from the West Island Academy. Soon the flight reached such a speed that Her Majesty screamed in horror. Then, Kong Feng began throwing the princess from side to side like a ball. One could only imagine what Her Majesty had to endure during such rapid somersaults. Hao Gong watched in amazement as the girl from the Western Island twirled her owner in the air from side to side. She screamed that enough was enough, and it was better to lower the princess to the ground. True, Kong Feng did not take much care in gently lowering the princess to the ground. She simply dropped it. The princess splashed loudly on the frozen ground. It seemed that the princess lost consciousness or even lost her life. She looked simply terrible. Foam came out of the mouth, and the face was first burned and then frostbitten. Hao Gung rushed to her mistress and tried to bring her to her senses. True, the princess's body dangled like a rag doll, and no glimmer of consciousness appeared in her eyes. But gradually her majesty came to her senses. She was very surprised why her hands were burned. The princess did not remember anything of what had happened to her recently. Kong Feng said that she was glad that the princess had finally recovered. True, Her Majesty, apparently, did not have any warm feelings for her unexpected benefactor. Hao Gung stood up for the girl. 
and she said that she helped them a lot. The princess angrily replied that she had not asked for any help. Her majesty glared at Kong Feng. The girl muttered offendedly why the princess was always so rude to her. She was simply trying to help her majesty in a difficult situation. The princess didn't want to hear anything. Hao Gung began to thank the girl herself on behalf of herself and the princess. From which her majesty began to get angry again and called her subordinate a traitor and defector. Hao Gung, with tears in her eyes, threw herself at the princess's feet and began to beg her to forgive her. But the princess continued to be angry and tried to shake the crying girl off her leg. Then, the princess decided to check whether the sound transmission spell worked. She began calling other team members, hoping that someone would eventually get in touch with her. For some time, Her Majesty could not contact anyone. It looked like the transmitter was working, though. The princess even began to suspect that the rest of the team had already been killed. When Her Majesty began to summon Chu Xingqin, her face lit up with a radiant smile. And everyone was again surprised how just recently, the bestial grin had now turned into a sweet smile. Chu Xingqin was also happy to hear from the other team members. He suspected that many were no longer alive. The princess's sweet voice immediately lifted the guy's mood and morale. Chu Xingqin called other team members. He gave everyone an order to take care of each other and gradually get closer to the rest of the Wujin school. The guy asked if the princess and Shi Zuo Wu were really attacked by representatives of Shu Yanqi Academy. The guys were surprised how Chu Xingqin knew about this circumstance. The guy muttered that he had some guesses. Then, Chu Xingqin cursed. Although the guys did not understand yet, the guy believed that the situation was more than serious. Chu Xingqin added that Suyanki Academy is attacking all young masters and trying to put certain artifacts into them. Those present were very surprised by this fact. The guy once again asked all team members to take care of themselves and not take unnecessary risks. He especially asked for the princess since she is the strongest member of their team. Chu Xingqin also told the princess that they were collaborating with Shi Yu Academy, so there was no point in trying to kill them. Kong Feng said that it turns out that they are now partners with the princess. Her majesty only snapped that no one would want to work with Kong Feng anyway. She then informed Chu Xingqin that they were south of a small bridge. The other guys reported that they were attacked by Yuling Academy, and they really needed help. They added that they had no way of moving towards other members of the Wujin school team. The guys also reported that due to the numerical superiority of the enemy, they were forced to hide underground. They suffered losses and killed and captured prisoners. It turned out that Li Mu, who was with this part of the team, was captured by the enemy. The girl was seriously wounded and could not fend for herself at all. Li Mu's situation was critical. Without outside help, Part of the team that was with the girl was not able to recapture her from the enemy. But something had to be done urgently. But even in such a deplorable state, the girl tried to think about some possibilities of escape. She toyed with various possibilities in her head, but had to reject them all. Moreover, even the injured Li Mu was not left alone. The enemy beat the girl, hoping to get valuable information from her. But despite the torture, she continued to remain silent. They kicked Li Mu in the face and even stood on her head. The enemy really wanted to know where her teammates were hiding. The enemies did not pay attention to the fact that she was already wounded. The guys from Yuling Academy took competition very seriously. Therefore, they were not going to let anyone down. They didn't know if it was a guy or a girl, whether he was healthy or wounded. True, Li Mu not only did not succumb to torture, she still managed to make fun of her enemies. She said that they were not capable of anything and that they would not be able to get information from her. One of the Yuling Academy team members even admired the girl's courage and dedication. But he also said that he has ways to get even such stubborn girls to talk. The guy said that his uncle was a prison guard and he taught him some tricks. Then the enemy fished out a red hot needle from somewhere and laughed ominously. When the guy started poking the hot needle under the girl's nails, she screamed loudly. She had never experienced such pain before. She understood that she would not stand it for long. At the same time, the guy added that he still has tools from his uncle's arsenal that will allow him to loosen the tongue of any opponent. Even the sight of tongs made the girl tremble. While performing his manipulations with the girl's fingers, 
the enemy said that these were special torture needles that had the ability to double the pain and maintain it for a long time. The guy told Li Mu that he had no personal grudge against their school, but his training depends on the Zhu family, and so he is forced to do dirty and menial work for them. While telling his story, the guy continued to torture the girl's fingers. He worked methodically, remembering to hurt her as much as possible, and didn't miss a single finger. Even the guys from the opposing team were horrified to see Li Mu's suffering. But no one dared to interfere with the torture procedure. It seems that everyone listened to the opinion of the sadist who tormented the girl. The guy continued to bully. He also told the girl that it was not a problem that she was so intractable. It will only make things worse for her. He pulled something else out of his pocket. He showed Li Mu a small pocket knife. The guy asked the girl what she thought her comrades on her team would do when they heard her heartbreaking screams. The girl was severely wounded and was bleeding. More wounds were added to her during the torture. But the guy managed to cause her such severe pain that she screamed heartrendingly with all her might. One of the girls wanted to come to Li Mu's aid, but her friends dissuaded her. They said that it was a trap, that the girl was deliberately forced to scream in order to lure them out of hiding. True. Hearing the screams of a captive teammate was unbearable. The Wujin team members hoped that their comrades would come soon and help rescue Li Mu and kill the enemies. But the wait was unbearable. In addition, the guy still did not have confirmation that they were already coming to their aid. Therefore, for now, they could only rely on themselves. Suddenly, Li Mu's screams stopped. The guys began to talk among themselves, making assumptions about why the girl fell silent. Still, the guys didn't want to think about the worst. At this time, a girl from their team was lying on the floor, bloodied. Various objects were stuffed into her body. The bleeding did not stop for a minute. It seemed like she wasn't breathing. The guys from Yuling Academy thought that perhaps they had overdone it and accidentally killed the girl. In the end, she could simply die from loss of blood. This could also happen. Li Mu, truly bloodied, writhed on the floor and froze. She may have already taken her last breath and finished the competition. One of the guys looked at the girl closer. It turned out that Li Mu was breathing and her eyes were open. But she clenched her teeth tightly so as not to make any more sound. She did not want to give her enemies the slightest reason for satisfaction. One of the guys muttered that he couldn't believe her comrades left her to die alone and didn't come to her aid. It seems that the Yuling Academy team's plan failed to pay off. The guys were never able to lure the Wujin team members out of hiding. At this time, Li Mu thought that she was not worth saving. She believed that she herself deserved her fate and torture. The opponents looked at the girl's mutilated body. Some felt pity for her, but others were not against further aggravating her torment. It's good that she was still alive. Li Mu blamed herself for everything. In early childhood, her mother abandoned her, and her father betrayed her. Therefore, she got used to enduring suffering and only clenched her teeth even tighter so as not to scream in pain. She was left alone with her little brother in her arms. She had no one to rely on. And at such a young age, the girl learned to take responsibility and solve her problems. Therefore, even in this critical situation, she believed that she did not need the sympathy or pity of other people. She was sure that she got what she deserved. But soon the silence was broken by the roar of flames that quickly cut through the air. The sound was quite familiar to all members of the Wujin school team. This was the sound of one formidable weapon. Soon the scream of the owner of the weapon was heard. So spectacularly the princess appeared in the enemy camp in person. The two red coals burning in her eyes inspired fear. The enemies did not have time to come to their senses and react to the sudden attack, as her majesty was already hovering over them, raising her hammer. The spectacle was truly breathtaking. True, it was exciting for observers from the outside, whereas for the members of Yuling's team, everything was quite tragic. The princess smashed and threw the hammer in all directions. Those opponents who managed to survive had to urgently retreat so that they could lose their lives. The princess really didn't particularly chase the enemy, who turned on the rear one. Her majesty picked up Li Mu's bleeding and carried her onto her shoulder. The princess growled menacingly towards her opponents, but apparently did not intend to finish them off. This gave the Yuling Academy team some time to breathe. They regrouped and decided to attack, 
seeing that this time they had caught a very large fish in their net. Moreover, the princess was constrained by the weight of Li Mu's body, which hung limply on Her Majesty's shoulder. But it seemed that the princess was not at all concerned about the return of her opponents. Li Mu began to whisper to the princess to leave her and save herself. The girl added that she did not have a high rank, and Her Majesty should not risk her life for her. The princess did not tolerate being contradicted, especially when they also teach her. Therefore, she threateningly barked at Limu to keep quiet and not interfere with her work with her nonsense. An hour before the princess, like a tornado, flew into the Yuling school team, a small military council was held in the forest nearby. Its main participant was, Hey, hey, princess! She didn't want to take Hao Geng with her. Her Majesty believed that there would be enough fighting for her subordinate for now. But the girl was afraid to let Her Majesty go alone. The princess said that Li Mu was being tortured very nearby and she was going to go and find out everything. Her Majesty ordered Kong Feng to take her assistant to Chu Xingchen. How? Gung still resisted. But the princess resolutely declared that she would do as she said. She added that she was not going to expose herself to unnecessary danger but was simply scouting. Her Majesty looked at her subordinate and at Kong Feng. Seeing that the girls were still hesitating, she told them not to worry, because she was not an idiot and would not get into trouble. True, an hour later, in the heat of battle, the princess was screaming at the top of her lungs that she was an idiot and that the enemy should save himself while there was such an opportunity. Everyone was wary of the enraged princess. The Yuling Academy team surrounded the princess almost in full force. At least everyone who was alive at that time was present. A terrible massacre was planned. Limu again began to irritate the princess with statements that she should not have come for her and needlessly put her life in danger. Instead of answering, the princess growled. True, Her Majesty soon missed a strong blow directly to the head. The princess tried to hold the wounded Limu with one hand and repel the attack with her free hand. The opponents shouted that no matter how good the princess was, she would not be able to defeat their entire team. She was asked to give up in order to save her life. But there was no answer. But almost immediately there was a blow from the princess's fiery hammer. Her Majesty burned several arrogant but unwary opponents. But this was only a small tactical success. Li Mu again began to complain that because of her, the princess got into trouble. The girl again invited Her Majesty to leave her and get out as quickly as possible. Li Mu added that the princess is the most powerful attacker on the Wujin school team, and without her heavy burden, she would not only be more effective, but would also score a lot of points. One of Yuling's team managed to approach the princess unnoticed. The big guy raised his hands up to gain momentum and hit the princess well. Her Majesty listened to Li Mu's endless whining and therefore did not immediately notice the threat that loomed over her. True, in such a situation, it would be difficult for her to dodge. As a result, the enemy managed to make a blow of crushing force that would have knocked anyone down. It seemed to observers that there was no wet spot left from the girls. Li Mu, barely alive, saw what was happening to the princess. Flames roared deafeningly all around. The ring of enemies became closer every minute. The princess still stood on her feet and held off the furious attack of a strong opponent. Flames swirled around her majesty, but she tried to survive at all costs. The enemy struck again, this time even stronger than the previous one. The enemy understood that the girls were almost completely at his mercy, and it was only a matter of time before the princess's protection fell. Academy team member Yuling continued to throw blow after blow. Each time the princess's defenses became weaker. Moreover, she had to cover instead of one, two people. Meanwhile, other people from the enemy team were getting closer. The girls continued to sit under the shield unable to regroup and retaliate. It seemed that every next blow would be the last for the girls. But they continued to cover themselves with a shield. At some point, it even seemed to the enemy that the princess's power was inexhaustible. But soon everyone saw that blood was pouring out of the princess's eyes. Her Majesty herself understood that such tension could not be withstood indefinitely. And in the end, she will have to pay for it. The guys from the opposing team started laughing that the princess wanted to become a hero so much that she let the team down. Someone said that because of the princess's stupidity, they would have a lot of points. The princess shouted that she might be stupid, but as long as she was on the team, she was not going to sit idly by 
and watch her team members being cut into little pieces. Limu heard Her Majesty's evil speech with surprise and awe. She understood that the princess was made of a different cloth than herself, and this made itself felt. The princess further growled that even if it was a trap and she fell into it, she might be considered stupid. Her Majesty added that the finale of the battle would put everything in place. Then the princess yelled that if it was about the team, then soon no one would have any questions about her team. She added that there simply would be no one left to ask questions. Amazed by everything that was happening around her, Limu saw a circle of light around her. In the first moments, the girl did not understand what this meant. She was too stunned. At this time, Her Majesty managed to wriggle free, and she jumped high into the air, spinning her heavy hammer in her hand. The next moment, the princess sat down next to the stunned Lie Mu. As soon as the immediate threat disappeared, the princess immediately used her fire hammer, scattering her hated enemies in different directions. The nature of the battle has changed dramatically. Her majesty seemed to have almost regained her strength. She tore and tossed. The representatives of the Yuling Academy team scattered in different directions, like a flock of crows at the sight of an eagle. The princess roared even louder than before. She shouted that the opponent had started counting his points early. After all, everyone knows that points should be counted only after the end of the battle. Limu was simply delighted with the princess. Her courage, dedication, courage, endurance, faith in her strength. And Her Majesty had many other qualities. The princess threw Limu to stay where she was. She herself rushed after the retreating enemies. She shouted that thanks to their trap, she would be able to score a lot of points. Her Majesty rushed on the battlefield in different directions and struck at enemies who had numerical superiority. But despite their advantage, they could not catch the princess. When the enemy thought that they had already squeezed the princess in a vice, the girl always managed to dodge and escape. And her counterattacks were explosive and unexpected. In the excitement of the battle, the princess even lifted large stones into the air. At least it might be more accurate to call them small rocks. Her Majesty used them as weapons. Since there were a lot of opponents, the princess did not hesitate to use any available materials. The main thing for her was to inflict maximum damage on the enemy. So the boulders that came to the princess's hand came in very handy. They bruised and crushed several people from the enemy team. Her Majesty was quite pleased with herself. Soon, the ranks of the Yuling Academy team were greatly thinned. The remaining guys tried to crawl away from the princess, who was striking in all directions. It seemed that everything was over for them. The princess was clearly in shock. Nothing could stop her. Although she only fought alone, her blows were very powerful, and agility allowed him to dodge a counterattack. For a long time, Yuling Academy could not do anything about the raging princess. In panic, they scattered in different directions and only prevented each other from taking cover or attacking. Finally, one guy from Yuling shouted for the guys to remember the training and start working harmoniously and methodically as they were taught. He recalled that they still had the advantage. The change in tactics had its effect. Soon the blows began to overtake the princess. It wasn't easy for her. When the opponents began to attack all together, it became difficult to dodge. Blood appeared on the princess's face again. She realized that the tension was too great and there were too many opponents. Something urgently needed to be done to change the situation. The wounded Limu again began to lament that it was all her fault. Without her, the princess would have been able to score much more points. Besides, Her Majesty would not expose herself to such a risk. It was unbearably hard for the girl to watch how the princess fought with all her might, but was still doomed to defeat. Only a miracle could save Her Majesty, but where could it come from? During the battle, the princess shouted to Li Mu that it was too early to write her off and that she would demonstrate the real art of fighting to Yuling Academy. At least she wasn't going to give up. A guy from the opposing team started yelling that the princess was trying to act like a hero. He also added that she does not care about the interests of the team. She puts her interests above all else. The princess held on with all her might. From the outside, it seemed as if it was made of iron. She silently endured enormous loads and tried not to succumb to the provocations of her opponents. She made a decision for herself that although she was not destined to survive in this battle, she must score maximum points for the team. 
the princess was going to kill ten more people. True, soon not tears flowed from Her Majesty's eyes, but real blood. Now it was really all over. There was no way to retreat, and there was no strength to continue the battle. The princess's blood fell on the face of one guy from Yuling Academy. He jumped back in fright, but it was already useless. He even tried to run away, but the guy's face began to burn with a strange burgundy flame. He was shocked by what was happening. The representatives of his team recoiled from the guy in fear. Soon, this guy began to burn with the same burgundy flame. In fact, he turned into a living torch. The guy screamed heartrendingly, trying to put out the flames with his own hands. His teammates looked at him in horror. They were surprised that a few drops of the princess's blood could do such a terrible thing. Friends could not help the guy. He glowed even brighter, screamed even louder. But soon his cry was cut off at the highest note. His now lifeless body fell onto the frozen ground, but continued to burn. It was even scary to look at the princess. She resembled a terrible demon rising from hell. Her face turned into two huge eyes, blazing with scarlet fire. The princess touched another enemy with her hand, and he also burned brightly, like a pine torch. Meanwhile, the princess kept count of the opponents she was killing. She once again extended her burning hand forward, and already the third enemy turned into a crimson pillar of fire. True, the guy managed to strike the princess with a strong blow with his sword, trying to pierce her. Although the enemy was aiming at Her Majesty's heart, his hand trembled, and the sharp blade of the sword pierced the girl's body below the shoulder. Nevertheless, the wound was very dangerous. At this time, the princess remembered the coach's words. He said that they are a team, and their mistakes are shared by everyone, and Her Majesty is dragging the team down. The princess became furious again. She pulled the shining sword from the wound with her bare hand. Despite the enormous pain, the princess did not even wince. She thought not for herself, but for working for the benefit of the Wujin school team. Then the princess, shouting that she was not going to pull the team down, rushed into another attack. It seems she no longer had any strength left. Her majesty used only her will. Here is another member of the Yuling Academy team who received a fatal blow and was eliminated from the game. The princess no longer looked much like a person. Her body was heating up more and more. Seeing the monster that the princess had turned into, the guys from the opposing team got ready to retreat. They were not afraid to fight against humans, but now it was not a human being in front of them. The judges again exchanged comments. The Divine Moon's mentor noticed that the princess's mad blood had activated again. Old Lady Kong Lao added that it is even worse now. The bearded old lady whispered that the uncontrolled combustion of soul power was burning the life of the princess. Even in illusion, Her Majesty managed to cause herself harm that was significant in real life. The prince shouted that it was urgent to stop the competition and remove the princess from there in order to calm her down. It was unbearable for him to look at the crazy actions of the girl dear to him. True, a representative of the Divine Moon Academy stated that such a decision would not be fair to other participants in the competition. They listened to the old man's voice. The old man muttered that the prince was trying to use his position to influence the outcome of the competition, to which he replied that he was simply worried about his sister, whose health was at risk. The princess was truly in a very terrible state. Blood was oozing from her mouth, nose, and eyes. The wounded shoulder burned with fire. The girl literally fell off her feet from fatigue, but Her Majesty was by no means going to give up. She believed that as long as her heart kept beating, she must continue to fight for herself and her comrades. The princess took a fighting stance and was about to send several more people to the next world. Desperate blows flew in her direction, but she repelled them with a wall of purple fire. Then Her Majesty again rushed to the attack. She also wanted to kill a couple of enemies to get a few more points for the team. That was all the princess could think about. She just needed to destroy a few more opponents. And the princess tried to squeeze the last juices out of her collapsing body. Thoughts were confused in her head. The wide blade of a long, sharp sword. The blade was covered in blood. It continued to glisten with metal, but it also had the crimson bloody reflections of human blood on it. The princess's eyes became almost human, although they still retained that terrible red hue of hell. 
in the eyes of Her Majesty, one could read one feeling. Surprise? The members of the Yuling school team opened their mouths and widened their eyes in amazement. It seemed to them that this was not real. The guys couldn't believe what happened to Her Majesty. Nevertheless, a long sword stuck out from the princess's chest like a stake. It looks like Her Majesty has been stabbed in the back. The tip of the sword pierced right through her body and came out at the top of her chest. Then, the smartly dressed guy silently pulled his sword from the princess's body. Her bloody body fell to the ground and convulsed for the last time. There was deathly silence. The sharp-dressed guy muttered that the princess couldn't even control the power of her soul. The guy added that at this rate, the princess would burn her soul. For some time, the guy stood silently, apparently thinking about something. None of the Yuling school team dared to break the silence. Silence hung in the air like an axe. Then, the guy dressed to the nines looked back at the motionless body of the princess and muttered that someone needed to do this. He added that the princess needed to leave the competition and rest. The princess opened her eyes. The remnants of life still glimmered in her body. The thought that she had let the team down was running through her mind again. The girl continued to reproach herself for the points for the team. An image of Chu Xingqin appeared in the princess's fevered brain, saying that Her Majesty was the most powerful attacker of the entire team, so she should not risk herself. The rapid patter of feet could be heard nearby in the snowy area. Therefore, a group of people did not have to fear that other commands would hear them and try to attack. It was rushing towards the rest of the Wujian school team, some of the people who were with Li Mu. The girl was carried because her injuries were too serious. The guys called Chu Xingqin and reported that the princess was no longer alive. They added that it was an unequal fight and Her Majesty had no chance. It was a difficult loss. The guys explained to Chu Xingqin that they could not save the princess. There were too many opponents. They only managed to pick up Li Mu during the confusion. Out of the corner of his eye, Chu Xingqin saw a strange expression on Hu Songlai's face. The guy looked back at Chu Xingqin warily, and he seemed to have a guilty expression on his face. Meanwhile, the guys reported to Chu Xingqin that the enemies seemed to know everything about their movements, and they could not manage to escape from the enemy team. This raised some questions. The guys also said that their pursuers had finally left them behind. The enemy switched to confrontation with Chinshan Academy. This gave them the opportunity to escape. The person who killed the princess was Wen Mao who just happened to represent Qingshan Academy. True, the guy did not appear alone. He came with part of his team. The Yulin school officials started yelling at Wen Mao that he had stolen their glasses. They fought with the princess for a long time. They had a lot of dead, and Wen Mao took the glasses for himself. Wen Mao didn't like this kind of talk. He said that the guys from Yuling school are just talking to him and trying to stall for time. The guy added that it was time to end things with them. Her teammates supported Wen Mao's thoughts. They began vying with each other to shout that it was time to end Yuolin Academy. The guys got very excited and were ready to fight. The representatives of Chinshan Academy looked quite menacing, and their very appearance alone caused fear in the enemy. Moreover, the guys got close and already wanted to start the attack. The guys from Yuling Academy realized that things were bad. It was not at all like fighting a whole crowd against one princess. Now they were confronted by quite serious opponents. Yuling Academy began to retreat, or rather, simply run away. Seeing this, one of the guys on the opposing team showed one characteristic gesture that was well known in his team. Soon, swords with red hilts appeared near the retreating Yuling boys. Swords were flying from above, and there were a lot of them. They quickly approached the fleeing people. Soon, the representatives of Yuling's team were literally trapped surrounded by huge swords that closed all opportunities for retreat. The audience was delighted that the huge sword was installed in almost a few seconds. The spectators shouted greetings to Murong Ji, who was a disciple of the great Qingshan. Spectators prepared for an entertaining spectacle. The Yueling Academy team was surrounded. They could not retreat, which means they would have to fight to the last to save lives. The public knew that Qingshan Academy specialized in swordsmanship. The guys used all the fighting spirits as swords. Everyone hoped to enjoy their swordsmanship. It is clear that Yuling Academy could not do anything against such guys. Already before the battle, it was clear that they would have huge losses, and maybe no one would survive. 
Soon, Chinchin Academy began to descend over the place where the guys from the other team were trapped. Wen Mao was the first to open the hunting season for the Yueling Academy team. Qingshan Academy was gradually surrounded by the enemy. The ring was shrinking every minute. It was already clear to many how this unequal battle would end. It seemed that the last minutes of participation in the competition had come for the guys from Yueling Academy. They couldn't even come up with any battle tactics. The guys from Qinshan were too confident. But fortunately for Yueling, the host announced that the dangerous poison zone was getting larger. Therefore, he advised the participants in the 11th room to move to a safe place. Indeed, most of the map, which until this time was still a safe zone, was now painted in a poisonous dark purple danger color. A small area near the river was still safe, and the villages and surrounding forests would soon be filled with a poisonous fog, killing all living things. All the participants in the competition who were still alive listened to the words of the presenter. And Yulin's team was so lucky, they miraculously escaped inevitable death. But the host also revealed that in the final save zone, there is a bonus item called Thousand Year Ice. The team that finds it was promised 20 points. Chu Xingqin and the remnants of his team were one of the first to flee. 20 points were not too many for anyone, and for the weaker Wujin school team, they were especially important. But the swordsmen from Qinshan Academy were not going to be left behind either. Moreover, the guys considered themselves the right to take whatever they liked. These were really dashing guys. Other academies also heard the words of the competition leader. Nobody was going to miss the chance to get 20 points. Apparently, the safe zone will soon be very crowded. Chu Xingqin shouted into the intercom to his team members. The guy announced that everyone who heard him should head to the eastern mode of the city and take the thousand-year ice. The cry was heard by a noble guy with red hair. The guys who were with Limu also heard it. If someone was closer to the right spot, there was a chance to score 20 points. It must be said that at this time there were already several strange people in the safe zone near the eastern ravine. The guys stayed together and were wrapped in black cloaks. The guys used the artifact. Someone reported that all targets had been implanted, and now they were all heading to the safe zone. It looks like everything was going according to plan. The mysterious persons continued talking among themselves for some time, consulting about something. Then, one of them said that the right time had come, and it was time to get to work. Almost immediately, the artifact was launched. It was clear from its appearance that it was a fairly powerful and expensive artifact. It was also clear that the guys knew how to handle it skillfully. Soon, the people in black retreated some distance from the artifact. It glowed with a pale green glow. Large cracks began to spread out from it in different directions. Meanwhile, not far from this place, someone was running, deeply crushing the snow as they ran. Judging by the large steps, similar to jumps, the man was quite tall. True, the man did not run on his own. A wounded girl with blue hair was hanging on his back. It cannot be said that it was unpleasant for the guy to carry such a beautiful girl. Suddenly, ahead of them, Shuzuo Wu and the girl saw a strange greenish glow. Reflections of an incomprehensible light reflected on the sparkling snow and fell on the faces of the children. The noble guy looked in amazement at all the different shimmers of green light. He had never seen anything like it. Shuzuo Wu was also disturbed by black dots in the distance. The green glow was getting closer and soon more details could be seen. Apparently, several people were running away from this radiance, and black objects were moving behind them. Gradually, the fugitives themselves and the green light approached the guys. Shuzuo Wu and the girl with blue hair did not understand what to do, whether to run away or help others. Soon, the fleeing people were already near the boy and girl. They screamed heart-rendingly, and they were chased by terrible green skulls, which were filled with radiance. The picture was truly terrifying. People screamed in horror and begged for help. The skulls passed through their body and filled the bodies of the unfortunate people with a terrible, ominous light. It was very scary to see this. Before these creatures living in the emerald light, people were completely defenseless. The scream of horror of the unfortunate victims merged with the scream of glee from the terrible green skulls. Monsters from the other world did whatever they wanted with people's bodies. The human body was nothing to them. Such eerie pictures could frighten anyone. 
the heart-rending cries of helpless people rang in the air. There was also a characteristic smell of ozone, which apparently emanated from the green glow. It seemed like there would be no end to this horror. Shizuo Wu and the blue-haired girl looked at everything happening around them in silent amazement. The guys realized that they had now lost the opportunity to escape from this. True, you still had to be able to fight these creatures. It was obvious that conventional weapons could not do anything to them. This time the enemy was incorporeal and simply disgusting. Those running away shouted at the boys to hide, because these were evil spirits that fed on souls and took over the body. They shouted that the soul would be damaged in the real world. The escapees also reported that they were the first to reach the safe zone. But it turned out that evil spirits were floating on the ice in the eastern ravine. People had no chance of salvation. The beauty remembered that in the village it was said that many wandering souls from the far north froze to death in the lake east of the village. But why did these souls become active now? People in black cloaks knew much more about wandering spirits. The weaker the person, the more effectively the wandering spirit will absorb the soul. This was an unbreakable rule. The people in black cloaks came to the decision that the soul eaters at the bottom of the river were a good opportunity to weaken everyone. Evil spirits quickly overtook their victims, and there was almost no way to escape. One of the black hooded men muttered that Chu Xingchen would not be able to escape this time. No matter how cunning and nimble this guy is, he cannot cope with such a task. Meanwhile, a turquoise glow spread in all directions throughout the secret world. From a distance, the green skulls seemed like clouds of black specks. The glow was accompanied by the smell of ozone. Soon, Chu Xingchen and his companions saw a strange phenomenon. True, the guy still had no idea what kind of green glow it was, and what a huge threat it poses to everyone. Observers of the competition clearly saw everything that was happening in the secret world. And they were shocked by the green skulls. Almost no one knew what it was. People thought it was a test. True, the smartest declared that these were wandering ghosts that fed on souls. But it seemed impossible to see such a thing in a controlled secret world designed for teams. The coaches of the Wujin school team were also amazed and excited. They understood that something out of the ordinary was happening, and therefore feared for the fate of their guys. The mentor of the Divine Moon Academy said that we need to contact high-ranking masters to stop the tournament before things go too far. The old man understood something. Soon, a terrible cry was heard among the crowd of spectators that soul eaters had appeared in the secret world. Many understood that this posed a direct threat to life and health for the participants. Shizuo Wu's mother began to cry in horror. She screamed for the stupid boy to quickly get away from the ghosts and look for a safe place to hide. But Shizuo Wu certainly didn't hear her. Then the noble guy's mother yelled at her husband to raise his connections and do something to save their son. Shizuo Wu's father rose from his seat and walked towards his people. All this time, an emerald fog, smelling of ozone, spread over more and more territory of the secret world. Soon guys from all teams could watch him. True, everyone reacted to the appearance of a strange fog in their own way. In one team, some of the participants immediately announced that wandering ghosts, soul eaters, had appeared in the safe zone. Some guys literally lost their human appearance out of fright. Who ran away headlong, it is unclear where. There were people who simply watched the alarmists. The Chinchan Academy team had the fastest and most correct reaction. One of the leaders shouted that wandering ghosts had appeared, and therefore everyone was urgently retreating. Chu Xingchen wondered why wandering souls that had been resting at the bottom of the lake for hundreds of years appeared at this time. The guy considered everything that was happening suspicious. The system only confirmed his assumption. She pointed out that only the villagers and the Wujian school team who interacted with the villagers knew about the ghosts at the bottom of the lake. Chu Xingchen's suspicions grew stronger and formed a coherent picture. The guy realized that Hu Songlai had something to do with this matter. The guy waited a long time for his time to do some mischief. Chu Xingchen also wondered why the crazy guys from Shuangqi Academy were not at all afraid of being devoured by soul eaters. The system explained that they apparently have protection from ghosts. The system added that their fake system is probably capable of anything to stop the younger generation. Chu Xingchen muttered to himself that things were very bad. Soon the beauty reported that they encountered soul eaters. 
She wanted to retreat, but Shizuowu resolutely refused. The noble guy decided to stop the dangerous ghosts. Shizuo Wu stood in front of a huge wall of green glow and hordes of wandering ghosts devouring souls. The guy used his lightsaber to hold off the eaters. Quick swings of the sword created something vaguely reminiscent of a cage of light. Only the bars of this peculiar cage sparkled with bright fire, blocking the path. As a result, Shizuo Wu managed to identify both the soul eaters and the creeping green fog. The guy seemed to fence himself off from them with a wall of light, which he created with the help of a sword. The noble guy said that if they retreat, the soul eaters will spread throughout the world. Then it will be much more difficult to deal with them. The guy didn't have a plan. Shizuo Wu stood resolutely in front of the seething turquoise cloud of soul eaters. He wasn't about to back down an inch. True, the guy still had no idea what it would cost him. Observers looked in horror at what the noble guy was doing. He actually managed to hold back the spread of the green fog and its inhabitants for some time. Seeing this, Chu Xingqin screamed at his comrade with all his might. He shouted that Shizuo Wu needed to stop fooling around and get out of there immediately to save his stupid head. In response, Shizuo Wu stated that he could escape, but what would then happen to those people from the village who helped them fight, and then also gave them a lot of supplies for the road? Indeed, by this time, the greenish glow had already reached the outskirts of the village and its residents could observe it. They understood perfectly well what it was and how it threatened them. The villagers also understood that no one would help them cope with this disaster. They thought that they had probably not suffered enough yet because the suffering for them would only increase. Therefore, Shuzo Wu said that he would fight for the villagers, for each of them. The noble guy said that we need to remain human until our last convulsive breath. Chu Xingqin listened to his comrade and contacted other team members. The guy was greatly impressed by Shizuo Wu's words. So he came up with one plan that could work. Chu Xingqin ordered all his team members to immediately retreat to the edge of the safe zone to save their lives and prevent the ghosts from devouring their souls. The order was not specified. The guys listened to Chu Xingqin's words in surprise. They understood that the guy apparently was not going to retreat with them but they did not understand at all what he was planning and why. The guy told the guys to leave immediately, since every second of delay could cost them their lives in the future. The fox directly asked Chu Xingqin what he was going to do. Suddenly, the guy grabbed Hu Songlai, who was blithely standing next to him, into his arms. None of those watching understood what was happening to Chu Xingqin. Someone thought he was crazy. The guy muttered to the fox that it was time to get even with someone. At this time, Chu Xingqin was thinking about the mysterious people in black cloaks. Well, it was not for nothing that he kept Hu Songlai under his arm. Someone tried to bandage his wounded hand on his own. Teeth turned out to be quite reliable assistance in this matter. After all, there was no time to waste. Every minute was valuable. An emerald fog was approaching, in which hordes of terrible creatures were hiding. It was necessary to get myself in order so that I could withstand a good forced march. The girl had no one to rely on. She could only rely on herself. In such an extreme situation, it was very difficult for the wounded person. But it was necessary to go further away. Shizuo Wu at this time was also fighting alone against an outnumbered enemy. The guy had a hard time. But he knew how to endure hardships, especially for a just cause. The green mist, filled with countless hordes of monsters, brought out hidden qualities in many people. Some turned out to be brave, while others began to tremble at the slightest danger. The fox shouted after Chu Xingqin. She wanted to go with a guy. The girl remembered very well that he had once saved her from a painful death. Now he himself was in danger. The girl from the other team shouted to the fox that Chu Xingqin seemed to know what he was doing, and any assistance would only interfere with him and constrain his actions. It made sense. In addition, the fox liked this girl, and she always listened to her words. But the fox also really didn't want to let Chu Xingqin go to his inevitable death, as it seemed to her. During this time, the people in black cloaks continued to control the spread of wandering ghosts. These were indeed the guys from the Shuangqi Academy team. Soon, they received news that the spread of ghosts devouring souls had been stopped. The black cloaks analyzed the situation and realized that it was because of Shizuo Wu 
someone from Shuangqi's team muttered that it was already clear that the stupid guy would try to stop the inevitable. But then they added that since Shizuo Wu was going to die, well, true, soon a bomb, in the form of a flying Hu Songlai, hit the people in black cloaks. This was quite unexpected, not only for Songlai himself, but also for the entire Shuangqi team. Hu Songlai, in the best traditions of air combat, flew in from the side that was not being watched. The guy had a fairly strong forehead and turned out to be quite useful as a battering ram. The Zhuangqi Academy team was very surprised that they were completely attacked. They knew that all the teams rushed into the scattered space, running away from the spreading green infection. But it seems that no one was afraid of the wandering ghosts' devouring souls. Moreover, this man apparently understood who was behind this. Without exaggeration. Catastrophe. This person was, of course, the incomparable Chu Xingchen. He was very angry and generously treated the people in black robes with strong blows. Representatives of the Yuanqi Academy were surprised by the guy's courage, or even arrogance. They saw that he dared to challenge them alone, and he wasn't even afraid of ghosts. Moreover, Chu Xingqin immediately rushed into battle. Hatred for the enemy fueled the guy, but despite the feelings that overwhelmed him, Chu Xingqin did not lose his vigilance for a minute. The stunned people in black cloaks had to fight. Apparently, Chu Xingqin was in a determined mood, and only a proper rebuff or even his murder could stop the guy. To the surprise of the Zhuangqi Academy team representatives, Chu Xingqin turned out to be quite a strong opponent. It turned out that in a normal fight, it was very difficult to defeat him. But the people in black cloaks were not simple at all. They decided to use a little magic to equalize the forces. Moreover, it was necessary to urgently solve the problem with Shizuo Wu. In a word, Chu Xingqin was definitely disturbing the guys from Zhuangqi Academy. Therefore, quite strong energy charges soon flew at him. True, the guy defended himself against the enemy. Moreover, Chu Xingqin managed to kill one of the representatives of the Shuangqi Academy. It really seemed that the death of their comrade was not at all important to the people in black cloaks. But they wanted to destroy Chu Xingqin at all costs. The guy himself came to them, and at the most crucial moment, which interfered with the plans of the guys from Shuangqi Academy. The guy dodged the enemy's attack and almost immediately found himself behind him. Chu Xingqin thought that he needed to hit the people in black cloaks harder so that he wouldn't have to finish them off. With the next blow, the guy drove another enemy deep into the ground. The blast wave from the impact spread in circles. The people in black cloaks even swayed a little in the wind. One female person in a black cloak stated that she could not believe that Chu Xingqin himself had come into her arms. She added that the guy saw her even when she was invisible. Chu Xingqin looked at the girl in the black cloak, but did not understand what she meant when she said that he could see her, even when she was invisible. The guy was waiting for the continuation. True, the continuation unexpectedly followed from Hu Songlai. Still wallowing in the mud, Hu Songlai muttered that Chu Xingqin was indeed the chosen one, that there was no doubt about it. Apparently, Hu Songlai was very impressed by Chu Xingqin. But to track Song Lai's train of thought, it is necessary to go back in time a few minutes ago. After Chu Xingqin grabbed the traitor, he began to run. At first, Hu Song Lai did not understand at all why Chu Xingqin decided to carry him when he could move on his own. But the traitor soon realized that something was wrong. He began to beg and beg Chu Xingqin to let him go. Hu Song Lai also said that you should not run towards ghosts. It was difficult for Chu Xingqin to escape while holding the fluttering Hu Song Lai. Besides, I'm tired of his endless whining. Therefore, the guy decided to use one cunning, but quite reliable trick. Chu Xingqin put his index finger and thumb together and quickly pressed several points on Hu Songlai's back. The movements were light and very fast, but the effect was amazing. Hu Songlai was paralyzed. He could neither move nor speak. Now the traitor could only lie there like a log. True he could still reflect on everything that was happening to him. Chu Xingqin then asked the system if it could track Xuanqi's location using Hu Songlai's communication system. The system said that she could be discovered, but she would try. At this time, Shizuo Wu, like a titan, alone held back huge hordes of the forces of darkness. Everyone understood that the noble guy could not withstand such tension for long. Chu Xingqin was also aware of this. 
He also saw the cracks in the wall created by Shizuo Wu. The guy understood that he needed to find a fake system and fix the cracks. There was one more problem. After the invasion of wandering ghosts, communication with the outside world disappeared. And the guys did not have the opportunity to report what happened and get help. Chu Xingqin understood that he needed to act as quickly as possible and correct the situation. Otherwise, it would be bad not only for Shizuo Wu, but also for the rest of humanity. At this time, the system asked the guy to weaken the girl from the other team, and the system would try to deprive her of her powers by removing her system and also destroy the artifacts. At this time, the girl whispered that she now understood why Chu Xingqin was so strong. Indeed, the guy could fight on par with the king of martial arts. It was cool. The girl seemed to read Chu Xingqin's thoughts. She told him not to flatter himself with the hope that she would just throw artifacts left and right. Nevertheless, the enemy girl conceived something and began to put it into action. Energy flashes as well as thin energy threads were visible around her. Soon the girl said that since Chu Xingqin is so strong, he should try to fight with one person. She kept her hand on the shoulder of the copy of Chu Xingqin. Soon, she released this copy in the direction of Chu Xingqin. The girl was grinning wryly at this time. She seemed confident that she could deal with the guy, and he would be in her power. True, Chu Xingqin had a different opinion. Although it must be said that he still needed to figure out what the enemy had come up with, and how he could outwit him, or even better, defeat him. The task was truly difficult. Chu Xingqin not only kept his attention on the enemy, he also kept under control that Shuzuo Wu was holding back the Soul Eaters with enormous value. Meanwhile, huge waves of emerald fog occupied the entire center of the secret world and almost the entire safe zone. Most teams retreated as the fog spread. The Qingshan Academy team found itself on the edge of the safe zone. At the moment, the guys were relatively safe. They decided to wait for further developments. When Mao reported that he noticed signs that the green fog had slowed down and almost stopped. The guy noticed that apparently someone was holding back its spread. Soon, the guys saw that a small, nimble figure was rapidly approaching them. The guys were even wary. They understood that anything could happen at this time. Actually, everything turned out to be not so scary. The boys soon learned that a Wujian school fox was approaching them. The fox seemed to be very excited. But the guys were on alert. The guys from Qinshan Academy asked the fox not to come close to them. They were afraid of a trap. One could expect anything from Chu Xingqin and those sneaks from Wujin school. But the fox said that this was not a trap at all, and that there was no point in gaining points now. Lisa looked very upset and worried. She wanted to ask for a favor. The guys from Qinshan Academy were perplexed. Not only did they not expect cooperation with other teams, but now they were going to be asked for some kind of favor. Chu Xingqin moved very quickly. He used different techniques and stances. Chu changed his position in space so rapidly that it seemed like a meteor was flying. True, Chu Xingqin's trajectory was somewhat broken. So in that sense, it wasn't exactly like a meteor in the night sky. But the speed of his movement was very high. At the same time, Chu Xingqin did not have much of an advantage. Although he put in a lot of effort, the opponent moved and used techniques just as well as he did. The guy deftly parried the enemy's blows, using well-executed blocks. True, it took quite a lot of energy from him. But it was necessary to save strength at the beginning of the battle. Then, Chu Xingqin attacked, and it was the enemy's turn to parry the blows using remarkably well-executed blocks. It was clear that this was a waste of energy, and the enemy was saving his strength. The fight was quite remarkable good high-level fight. It seemed that this enchanting battle was being carried out by two kings of martial arts. The movements were so precise and swift, but the enemy girl just chuckled. She muttered, no matter how strong Chu Xingqin is, his shadow, his exact copy, will not yield to him. It was a very good move. Chu Xingqin himself already understood that in this battle, a frontal attack would not lead to anything good. He cannot reach the enemy and inflict damage on him just as he himself does not miss. Very often, Chu Xingqin and his opponent will perform the same blow or use the same technique at the same time. From the outside, it may seem quite funny. But on the other hand, this greatly complicates the battle itself. In addition, it does not allow either side to gain an advantage. 
It seems that such a battle could last indefinitely, or both sides will fall to the ground at the same time, completely exhausted. But neither one nor the other scenario suited Chu Xingchen. He needed to win. Then the system appeared and started teasing Chu Xingchen. She said he didn't look like himself in this fight, but his opponent is very similar to him. Chu snapped at the system. The guy said that it would be better if the system helped him fight than mocked him. The system stated that it could give valuable advice and suggested that we fight faster while we still have strength. Chu Hingchen pointed at his opponent and said how he could fight him quickly if he was as strong and used the same kung fu techniques as him. It was some kind of paradox. Chu Xingchen's opponent was truly at his best. His movements were smooth and measured. He acted methodically, without forgetting or missing anything, just like Chu Xingchen. Chu Xingchen grimaced and seemed as if he would cry from powerlessness. How could he defeat such an ideal opponent who did not have a single flaw during the battle? The system told Chu Xingchen that in this case, he should use his own weaknesses during the battle. The guy resolutely began to protest that he did not and could not have weaknesses. The system snorted contemptuously. And she said that everyone has weaknesses, even the most ideal ones. Then the insidious system extended a lettuce bush and placed it between the two opponents. The guys did not have time to react to the appearance of such a valuable vegetable. And in the heat of battle, tore the salad to shreds. As soon as the combatants saw what had happened, both rushed to save the salad. But apparently, the salad could no longer be helped. The guys were so upset that they even forgot that they were supposed to fight each other. They cared more about the fate of the vegetables than the outcome of the battle. But the system that controlled the process began to push Chu Xingqin to continue fighting and finally deliver a couple of blows that could break through the enemy's defense. But it must be added that the system also knew some of Chu Xingqin's other weaknesses. Moreover, the weaknesses were so disgusting that they led to involuntary vomiting. It was true that not only Chu Xingqin was vomiting, but his opponent was also vomiting. After all, not only did they have the same strengths, their weaknesses and vices were also very, very similar. That's how, with the help of the system, and thanks to its subtle knowledge of Chu Xingqin and his weaknesses, some advantage over the enemy soon appeared. This could well decide the outcome of the battle. The enemy girl who was watching the battle also realized that the matter smelled of kerosene. She feverishly thought about what actions to take to return the battle to the right direction. At this time, it seemed that Chu Xingchen had already begun to simply mock the enemy. True, he himself did not quite understand how he managed such techniques. He didn't even suspect that this was possible. Chu Xingchen was surprised at himself that he was able to pull off such tricks. The system explained that this is, after all, just a shadow and therefore it can also be used. Chu Hingchen reproached the system for not pointing this out to him at the very beginning of the battle. Then everything would have been over a long time ago. But now Chu understood how to destroy his double. True, just at that very moment, the girl stuck her hand between his ribs and apparently tried to feel something there. After this, Chu Xingchen became numb from a sharp and unexpected pain. The girl whispered to Chu Xingchen that she had always found it strange why he didn't use artifacts. She thought it might have something to do with the fact that he was the chosen one. Hu Song Lai watched everything that was happening with surprise and interest. It seemed that he was just waiting for the last of his strength to leave Chu Xingchen in order to mock him. Chu Xingchen didn't understand what was happening to him at this moment. And the girl continued to say that she believed that Chu did not use artifacts so as not to reveal her identity. Then the girl said that she understood. He doesn't use artifacts because he doesn't want to. Chu Xingqin doesn't use them because his system can't make them. The girl also stated that they were able to thoroughly test Chu Xingqin's system. They carried out this testing a long time ago and were able to establish that Chu Xingqin's system is very weak. The girl even laughed and said that she had not seen such a dilapidated system space for a long time. All this time, she carried out certain manipulations. Finally, she managed to find what she had been looking for for so long. A joyful cry escaped her throat. She muttered that when she presented the system to the Lord, he would be very pleased. Chu Xingqin was writhing in pain at this time, and the system was screaming loudly that they were trying to get her out. The situation was critical, not to mention the ghosts breaking through. Indeed, the girl, with the help of skillful manipulations, 
had already almost captured Chu Xingqin's system. There is nothing left, and the system will be forever removed from his body. But, fortunately, Chu Xingqin managed to react at the very last moment. He managed to grab the tip of the system and tried to hold it. The whole future depended on it. Chu Xingqin also started yelling at the system that she had allowed herself to be deceived by a fake system, and now she had folded her paws and was going to give up. Chu Xingqin was very angry. The upset system replied that she did not expect that they would look into the place where she was hiding. She also added that the girl's system is ten times stronger than that guy's system. The system also asked Chu Xingqin to let her go. Otherwise, there was a huge risk that his soul would be torn into pieces. In addition, the system said that it could not fight the enemy. Chu Qingqin muttered that he could not help the system since he was fighting a shadow. He begged the system in every possible way to pull itself together and try to escape from the clutches of the enemy. The girl knew what she was doing. She deliberately diverted Chu Xingqin's attention to shadow boxing so that she could easily take over his system. Just a little more, and the operation will be completed. True, Chu Xingqin was able to resist for now. He could continue to fight with the shadow, and at the same time not allow the system to be taken away completely. It was all thanks to his spiritual strength. The girl in the black cloak muttered that although Chu Xingqin demonstrated miracles of incredible durability, she would still see whether Xu Zhuowu would be just as resilient. The girl put her artifact to work again, and the wandering ghosts devouring souls became even more active. New hordes of these creatures rushed to attack. Seeing all this army, Chu Xingqin was seriously afraid for the noble Shi Zuo Wu. He knew that his comrade would stand to the last, even in the face of mortal danger. The green skulls with powerful jerks tried to break through the barrier that the noble guy had set up. For now, the barrier held them back, but at any moment everything could change. Shi Zuo Wufu understood that he was not made of iron, and his strength would sooner or later run out. And all this green evil spirits would break through first into the secret world, and then into the outside world. The noble guy held on with all his strength. At the same time, he saw that there were more and more green skulls every minute. He didn't understand where they were coming from. Unexpectedly, someone was able to break through the barrier that Shu Zuo Wu had put up. And this someone managed to hit the noble guy. The impact threw him far back. A girl with blue hair ran up in time to relieve her comrade at the combat post. But the girl had much less strength to hold off such a horde of monsters. At this time, Shu Zuo Wu saw that the flame at the end of his sword had become significantly weaker. This was a very bad sign, and it happened at the worst possible time. The noble guy informed his girlfriend that the sword formation would soon be destroyed. He added that his sword had lost almost all its strength and Shu himself was not in the best shape. The green skulls tried to break through the barrier. The boys wouldn't have cared enough even if only a couple of scary skulls had broken through the wall of light, while the girl with blue hair managed to hold off the advancing creatures alone. It seemed that Zuo Wu would get a little respite and would be able to hold out for a while longer. But Shu Zuo Wu stated that his spiritual power was depleted and the sword formation would be destroyed very soon, so he would not be able to protect his companion. The guy told her to run away. The girl with blue hair said that they should run away together. They will be able to develop enough speed to escape from the Soul Eaters and be able to save themselves. Noble Shu Zuo Wu replied that he could not do that. He will be tormented by remorse. Perrin felt a sense of responsibility towards the villagers who were so kind. The girl with blue hair did not want to leave without her friend. The guys were left alone almost completely exhausted in the face of mortal danger. Help was coming from nowhere. Horrible green skulls reached out to the guys who had been blocking their path for so long. It was clear that when this stream of monsters broke through, the friends would lose their minds or their lives. The picture was truly mesmerizing. The two heroes faced thousands and thousands of enemies. Two young, fragile human beings held the defense with a huge effort of will. But soon, representatives of the Chinshan school appeared on the battlefield. They immediately yelled at the guys to hold on and not let the Sword of Light be destroyed. The help came in very handy. Shu Zuo Wu looked at the guys who had just arrived with great relief and gratitude. But he understood that it was too early to relax, and he continued to hold the line. 
Meanwhile, Wen Mao declared that Shizuo Wu was worthy of his noble name. Only a true warrior can single-handedly resist the hordes of ghosts devouring souls. Shizuo Wu looked tiredly at one of the leaders of the Qingshan team. The noble guy was grateful to him for his good words, but he no longer had the strength to even thank him for his support. Meanwhile, the Qingshan Academy team members became more and more numerous. The guys arrived almost in full force. At least everyone who was still alive came. To understand why Qingshan Academy came to the rescue, we must go back in time to the moment when the fox emerged from the green fog in front of the amazed Qingshan boys. The fox explained to the guys that Shuzua Wu almost single-handedly restrains stray ghosts in order to save the villagers from harm. Their team doesn't have enough strength to hold back the monsters. Therefore, the fox decided to ask for help from the Qingshan, who were rumored to be a strong and noble team. When Mao and his comrades thought for a while, Lisa already thought it was all over. She understood that the guys valued their lives and would not want to go to certain death for those whom they had never known before. That was the end. When Mao muttered that when they were running in fear to save their lives, there was a guy who was not afraid to stand alone against a horde of wandering ghost eaters. The Qingshan always considered themselves the strongest, and they felt ashamed that when another person showed miracles of courage and dedication, they ran away cowardly, like some kind of weaklings. As a result, the guys from Qingshan Academy turned to the fox so that she would tell them where to go to help Shi. For the fox, this was an unexpected but pleasant and promising decision. The guys from Qingshan Academy were very good at fighting. With such help, it was possible to hold back the onslaught of Soul Eaters for quite a long time. This gave everyone hope that everything would be fine. When the guys from the Academy arrived at the scene of the fight, they immediately joined the battle. Despite the fact that there were a lot of enemies, the guys with fresh forces were able to easily push them back. These were real warriors, brave and dexterous. Fighting was their thing. Moreover, they were inspired by Shizuo Wu's noble deed and wanted to demonstrate their strength. Now the scales had swung in the other direction, and there was no need to be afraid that the Soul Eaters would break through the barrier at any moment and greedily pounce on everyone they could meet. Representatives of the Qingshan Academy lined up near the wall and were ready to hold back the wave of wandering ghosts as long as necessary until complete victory. The guys from the girls' team also did not want to stay away from such a glorious battle. And the girl, who was in her grandfather's body, was generally tearing and throwing in all directions. Young energy, imprisoned in such an old body, flowed like a fountain. Therefore, the grandfather girl could well be used as a tank. True, this was not necessary yet. Wen Mao sincerely praised the girls. He said they were a great team, and he wouldn't mind having such allies. True, the girl did not answer the young womanizer. At this time, representatives of Qinshan Academy were shouting at the top of their lungs that the fox from Wuzan Academy was the best. The guys were inspired by the battle into which the fox invited them. The fox really jumped in over his head. She was on time everywhere, motivated everyone, and tried to control everything. The guys from Qinshan Academy praised her energy. But the fox had already rushed towards the somewhat confused Shizuo Wu. The fox yelled why he relaxed. She said that it was better that instead of standing, he started strengthening the sword formation. When the guy tried to explain to the fox that his spiritual power had run out, the fox screamed that he would be filled with spiritual power. She added that the most important thing is that he does his job. Seeing delay or sluggishness, the fox became furious and showed by example how to work Soon things got better, and the situation improved literally before our eyes. Shuzo Wu sincerely thanked the fox for bringing help to the battlefield in such a timely manner. The boy and girl with blue hair thought that inevitable death awaited them. The noble guy also thanked the guys from Qinshan Academy, who showed miracles of courage and valor. Everyone tried to make their significant contribution to the common cause. Without wasting any time, Shuzo Wu began to restore the resource of his sword. Of course, in the company of like-minded people, fighting shoulder to shoulder was much more pleasant and safer. The noble guy already had remarkable willpower and was ready to fight monsters alone. But now that he saw support, he vowed not to take a step back. The girl saw that events on the battlefield did not go according to plan. Not only did Zuo Wu not give up, but he also had assistance. The girl hated such a stupid display of camaraderie. 
she hoped that this rogue from Wujin school would soon say goodbye to his life. They worked so hard to prepare for the disaster, but these guys playing heroes ruined everything. But despite the difficulties with the spread of wandering ghosts, soul eaters, the girl was still happy. She received her main and most valuable prize. Chu Xingqin was at her feet, and he was in a very poor condition. His eyes were closed and blood was coming from his mouth. But the girl only enjoyed it. She enjoyed her victory. She considered Chu Xingqin to be a truly strong opponent, and the fact that she was able to bypass him and defeat him was entirely her merit. Now Chu Xingqin posed no danger. The guy was squeezed like lemon and looks like he will die soon. But for the evil girl now, it did not matter. What made her most happy was that she was able to extract the divine selection system from Chu Xingqin. Now he has become an ordinary mediocre guy, and not the chosen one as before. At this time, Hu Songlai ran up to Chu Xingqin, who was sitting motionless, and asked with excitement whether he was still alive or already dead. It was impossible to tell from Chu Xingqin's appearance, but the girl brought clarity when she said that Chu Xingqin did not want to let go of his system, and in all likelihood, his soul was broken into small pieces during the tug of war. The girl added that there is no need to think about Chu Xingqin's body, because the main thing is that she was able to extract the system from it. The girl said she would seal the system and keep it in a safe. The girl also praised Hu Songlai. She said that this time he did a very good job and she would help him move up the career ladder. The girl added that it was time to break the seal of the soul eaters. She smiled and said that she would then see how long the Sword of Light and its stupid owner could hold out. The girl in the cloak tried to destroy the seal, but something went wrong again. It didn't have the effect she expected. Instead, something strange was happening. The girl in the black cloak continued to clutch the seal in her hand and looked in bewilderment at the body of Chu Xingqian crouched in front of her. She absolutely did not understand what was happening. Hu Songlai realized that his mistress was at a loss. He looked back at the girl and asked her what was going on. But she couldn't answer him anything intelligible to explain everything. The seal in the hands of the girl in the black cloak began to vibrate as if alive. All this was accompanied by a low buzzing sound. Soon, ten human fingers appeared from the seal. The girl released the seal from her hands and looked at what was happening in amazement. Soon, palms emerged from the seal, clenched into fists and began to intensively tear the seal. Then, something absolutely incredible happened. Chu Xingqin, or someone very similar to him, began to emerge from the press. The girls even began to think that she was hallucinating. The girl in the black cloak rubbed her eyes and blinked rapidly. Then she stared at the seal again, but the terrible vision did not disappear. Moreover, Chu Xingqin continued to get out of there. Chu Xingqin looked healthy and full of energy. Energy flashes spread throughout his body. The guy's hands were clenched into fists. It was clear that his whole body was tense. The girl was perplexed how a spiritual body could be in print, but the guy had almost all gotten out and was now pulling the system out with him. The spectacle was truly amazing. Neither the girl in the black cloak nor Hu Songlai understood how this could happen, and now they did not know what to do. Chu Xingqin was also in no hurry to act. He stood silently, then the guy smiled sarcastically and said just one phrase. It was like he had successfully immersed himself in her space. It seemed incredible, and the girl thought that Chu was bluffing. It was quiet and calm on the high ledge. All the fighting took place somewhere far away. Except that an emerald fog could be seen in the distance, and the wind from time to time brought the smell of ozone, but then someone's long-suffering fingers appeared at the top of the ledge. The silent beauty of untouched nature was violated. The grunting and groans of a very exhausted man were heard. Soon the girl's head appeared over the edge of the cliff. She was tired and also quite wounded. Her wounds have not yet fully healed. And the hand was completely bandaged. This girl was Li Mu. And she finally achieved her goal. She found thousand-year-old ice, which will allow her team to gain an additional 20 points, which will affect the result. Appearing from the seal, Chu Xingqin looked relaxed and concentrated. At the same time, a whole storm of emotions floated across the faces of his enemies. Fear, horror, surprise were the most obvious. The girl in the black cloak screamed, How is this even possible? 
she shouted that Chu Xingqin should be completely and irrevocably dead, and his soul should be torn into pieces. Chu Xingqin turned to face his enemies. His hands clenched into fists, and a fierce expression appeared on his face. Next to the guy, there was a system that had not yet been implemented back. Previously, when the girl tried to tear the system away from the guy, he held on to her with his hands and feet. The system was screaming at him to let it go, otherwise he might die. The system told Chu Xingqin that it was already useless and was constantly dragging him down. If Xingqin lets go of the system, he will have a chance to survive and possibly get even with his enemies. Chu Xingqin replied that since the system appeared in his life, they were connected by the same rope, and they will either live or die together. Therefore, the guy was not going to let her go. Chu Xingqin continued to persuade the system to help hold on. He recalled that the system was going to make him a dragon warrior. He also reminded her that she was welcome in her world. Chu Xingqin also told the system that although she was stupid and incompetent, he was very attached to her and would be lonely without her. The system had never heard such speeches from the guy before. The system seems to be very angry. She stuck her tentacles into Chu Xingqin's ears and began to tug on them. The guy screamed in surprise and pain. Tears came to his eyes. The guy yelled at the system. Why was it mocking him? And why was it trying to rip the hair out of his ears? Chu Xingqin thought that in such a situation, when he tried to save her, it was despicable. The system replied that it needed the hair in order to leave the root so that the spirit could return to the body. The system said that this was the only way out, since Chu's soul might be torn apart. The system added that when the enemy takes the system, he will seal it in his space. The system cannot break this seal, but the human soul can cope with the seal quite well. The system said it was time to fuck this impudent girl in a black cloak. The system also told Xingqin to imagine what expression the girl would have on her face when he appeared. The system added that the girl could manipulate the system to attack them. Therefore, the system asked Chu Xingqin to divert the girl's attention to himself and start a fight with her. Chu Xingqin was always happy to have a good fight, so he rushed at his opponent with joy and great enthusiasm. Moreover, he fiercely hated this girl who tried to kill him, but the girl was also no slouch. She folded her fingers as if holding a pinch of salt in her hand. It seemed that such a small and safe movement of the girl's thin fingers could do anything, but Chu Xingqin saw that such a move could cause a lot of harm. A good dozen sharply sharpened nails appeared around him, but the worst thing was that they were huge. The nails were getting closer and closer, and Xingqin began to tingle. He yelled to the system that he had an unexpected problem. Unable to fight with his nails, Chu went on the run. Soon, Chu Xingqin encountered a huge paw, with the help of which a girl in a black cloak was trying to grope and fish out the system from him. At least you could fight with her. Therefore, Chu Xingqin wasted no time in delivering a strong blow to the huge fist. True, it turned out that his hand went into his fist like a knife into butter. Then his body hit hard. Chu Xingqin muttered that the system had cheated him because he couldn't fight the girl at all. All his attacks go in vain, while the girl gets him. The system explained that this was the girl's home territory, so regular attacks would not harm her. It must be attacked with thought. Chu had never had to attack with a thought before. Chu Xingqin began to complain that he had not been taught the type of mental combat. Then the system handed him a book and said that this was its knowledge base. This will help you fight the evil girl. The system explained that Chu Xingqin needed to put his ideas into this book, and the book would materialize them. The system added that this is the best way to fight in the subtle world. At this time, the girl saw that Chu Xingqin was constantly whispering to the system. She muttered that they were two idiots since they were on her territory and there was no way they could defeat her. Then the girl growled that if Chu Xingqin wanted to die, she would do everything in her power to help the guy. The girl in a black cloak looked very menacing and determined. Chu Xingqin realized that their plan had been revealed. He understood that in the girl's world, she had a great advantage over others. Therefore, Chu Xingqin prepared to run away. But the evil girl did not give Chu Xingqin such an opportunity. She ran after him and then began to attack him. Chu Xingqin got it very painfully several times. Chu Xingqin was incredibly angry, 
but the girl continued to attack him and did not give him the opportunity to group and prepare for a counterattack. But Chu remembered something. The girl in the black cloak was very surprised when she saw what kind of weapon Xingqin was going to use. But she said that the guy was just fooling around and nothing would work out for him. Chu Hingqin decided to use the book that the system gave him. He tried to remember what the system had said about attacking with words. It seemed ineffective. However, Chu Xingqin had no other options. So he opened the book and began to study its contents. True, everything written there was too difficult for Chu to understand. Therefore, Chu Xingqin decided not to delve too deeply into the contents of the book, but simply direct the words from it to attack the evil girl. It seemed like a crazy idea, but the words flew into attack. The words rushed in orderly rows towards the girl in the black cloak. It was not clear whether these words would cause harm to the girl, but it was certain that this unprecedented attack took her by surprise. Xingqin held an open book in his hands and sent words from its pages to attack the evil girl. When the page ran out of words, he would turn the page and attack again. The girl in the black cloak kept wondering how it could be that they would attack with words. But nevertheless, she had to put up a shield so as not to be covered with words from head to toe. But there were so many words that the protective screen could not cope with them. Some of the words broke through to the girl and began to hit her in the face. It wasn't that she was scared, but it was unpleasant. Meanwhile, Chu Xingqin, inspired by the fact that his attack with words had broken through the defense of the girl in a black cloak, now began to shout words himself and send them into the attack. Chu Xingqin used words such as evil woman, murderer, get, traitor, selfish, and others. Some words hit especially hard, but these are indecent words. The girl in the black cloak screamed in pain and turned to look at Chu Xingqin, who continued to curse. He used absolutely every curse word he could remember. The evil girl responded by making an abyss under the feet of the guy engaged in a verbal attack. In the heat of battle, Chu Xingqin did not pay attention to what was under his feet. Therefore, Chu Xingqin began to fall. But he held firmly in his right hand the book that the system had handed him. Previously, the guy did not even suspect that words from a book could be a weapon. As he fell, only swear words came out of his throat. The guy simply couldn't put it more mildly, flying headfirst from a great height. The swear words were really three stories high. The fall continued for a very long time, and Chu Xingqin continued to scream and curse at the top of his lungs. He remembered the evil girl, as well as all her relatives, using the worst words. The words were so scary and loud that the letters turned out to be huge enough that Chu Xingqin could even grab them with his hands. This suggested to him a way of salvation. In the end, Chu Xingqin managed to firmly grasp one huge word, and this helped him keep himself from falling further. At least he was able to catch his breath. But soon, an evil girl appeared in front of Chu Xingqin. She spread her arms and spread her fingers, trying to prove something to the guy. Chu Xingqin looked at her actions in surprise. The evil girl said that she is a god in this world, and therefore everything here obeys her. She said she could do whatever she wanted here and people began to appear around her. The people were somehow unreal, but they all chanted in unison that they had come to protect the eldest. Chu Xingqin realized that things had taken a very bad turn. Chu Xingqin let go of the letter he had been holding onto all this time and jumped down to the nearest floor. Strange people created by the evil girl rushed after him from all sides. Chu Xingqin ran as fast as he could through the narrow corridors. But the pursuers did not lag behind. On the contrary, there were more and more of them. It seemed that they were about to catch up with the guy. Then, these people also turned out to be ahead. Chu Xingqin thought that he was being led into a trap. He feverishly began to look for a way out of this deadlock. Luckily, a solution was found. Chu Qingqin turned into a side corridor, and his pursuers were literally stepping on his heels. The guy was surprised how many of these strange people the girl in the black cloak created. In the room, Chu Xingqin saw a black and white painting. In the picture, there was a stool, and on the stool, there was a blue vase. There was absolutely nowhere to hide in this room. Chu Xingqin, without thinking for a long time, rushed straight into this black and white picture. The painting showed a man in a boat in the middle of a large lake. The man was calmly fishing for himself. 
Chu Xingqin appeared in this world right next to the fisherman's nose. Along the way, a transformation occurred to him. His appearance changed so much that he began to correspond to this world. The man on the boat, with surprise and apprehension, asked the guy who he was. Chu Xingqin politely introduced himself, but added that he had no time at all since the chase was behind him. Then, Chu Xingqin opened his book of help and began to urgently draw something in it. He saw that through the breakthrough he created, his pursuers climbed into this world. Chu Qingqin drew a picture of a large machine gun, which almost immediately materialized in this world. Then, Chu Xingqi began, standing on the edge of the boat to pour fire on the advancing enemies. The chatter of the machine gun drowned out all other sounds. The guy with the machine gun looked a lot like Rambo. Then, Chu Xingqin saw that his shooting did not help get rid of the enemies. He decided it was time for Plan B. Plan B always worked when it needed to. B meant run. Chu Xingqin quickly created a motorboat for himself and tried to take off across the wide surface of the lake. But the pursuers stubbornly stayed on their tail. There was an urgent need to come up with something. Chu Xingqin decided to make a night move in order to mislead the enemy. He turned into a small fish and jumped overboard. Chu hoped that it would be more calm in the depths. The guy, who had now turned into a small crucian carp, tried to dive as deep as possible in order to confuse his tracks. At the same time, Chu Xingqin the fish did not release the book from its fins. But such a cute little fish still couldn't escape the evil girl's eyes. She perfectly saw all the maneuvers of Chu Xingqin, who was stubbornly trying to escape his pursuers. The girl in the black cloak whispered that she was very interested in watching the meaningless fuss of the ants. Although she meant not only Chu's crazy escape, but also his comrades, the guys, along with the support of the Chinshun Academy team and girls from the city of Xiyu, continued to hold the line against the hordes of ghosts. Now the situation was much better than before, and Chu Xingqin at this time plunged deeper and deeper into the abyss of the large lake on which the fisherman was fishing. It seemed to the guy that as soon as he reached the bottom, something would happen. Something really happened, although it was not at all what the guy expected. At the bottom of the lake was a huge head of an evil girl. She smiled at Chu and opened her mouth. After the girl in the black cloak opened her huge mouth, a powerful whirlpool formed in the water, and Chu Xingqin's small fish was sucked straight into the evil girl's throat. The girl made an effort to push the reluctant Xingqin into her throat. True, now he had neither arms nor legs to support himself, so Chu the fish slid down. The evil girl took a sip, and Chu Xingqin went down her esophagus. From the importance of victory over her enemy, the girl stuck out her large and beautiful breasts. Then the girl raised her head up and laughed. She almost sang that now almost the entire young generation will be ruined and forgotten over time, and she will be left alone. Then she added that she was the young lady of the Shuangqi house. Jin Yuming would be the first of the new generation. The evil girl added that she will start a new dynasty and a new era. The girl raised her hands up and began to dance and clap her hands. She was glad that she was able to remove all her enemies and achieve her goals, no matter how difficult they were. But at this time, something gurgled and rumbled in her stomach. It was Xing Chen who tried to say with his fish mouth that dreaming is not harmful, but not dreaming is harmful. But a fish's mouth is not designed for words. The evil girl's face became distorted, cracked, and small fragments fell out of it. It was a sad ending for such a capable evil girl with Napoleonic plans. Previously, a meeting took place near one of the countless houses in a large city of the empire. It was already quite late. The stars were shining in the sky, and the moon was shining brightly above. Guests turned to Master Jin. They were delighted with his hospitality and the rich feast. The guests especially liked the beautiful daughter of the owner, who stood next to him. The guests said that Master Jin's daughter had grown up so much and become a real beauty. People also admired that at her fairly young age, she was already a great martial artist. True, people whispered quietly to themselves or behind their backs that this was a very low level, and that the girl was just a slacker. Evil Girl had heard similar conversations several times. People also discussed that their Shuanqi family was slowly but surely going down. The evil girl was beside herself with anger. She worked hard, she believed, but people slandered her. 
The girl harbored in her soul a terrible hatred towards other people. She harbored thoughts that one day a great day would come when all people would pay for their rudeness. At this time, the evil girl was really lucky. She turned out to be the owner of one system, which gave her additional strength, energy, as well as all kinds of artifacts. The girl believed that because she had a system, she was the chosen one of the gods. Therefore, she considered herself free to do whatever she wanted, regardless of other people. But suddenly, life gave a crack. So another one, and another? There were more and more cracks. They grew with a terrible creak. Soon, it became impossible to ignore them. Cracks grew in all directions. After some time, glass flew down, breaking with a loud ringing far below into a thousand large and small fragments. Here, Chu Xingchen tried who by this time had already returned to his true appearance. The guy worked tirelessly. The evil girl was so hateful and disgusting to him. Now, a large hole gaped in the place where the girl's face should have been. Another gaping hole appeared in the area of her heart. Although it seemed to many that she did not have a heart before, this could not be called a fight or a battle. It was an ordinary fight. But Xingqin did not feel a drop of pity for such a selfish person. She deserved the most severe punishment. The girl could not fight and could not answer Chu Xingqin with a single blow. She started screaming about what they had done to her system and why she now couldn't contact it. Chu Xingqin's system answered the girl. She said that the girl's system was weak, that it was just artificial intelligence, a big pile of all kinds of data. Chu Xingqin's system added that while the guy was distracting the girl, the system was deciphering the code of this artificial intelligence, after which it was safely absorbed. Being in shock, the system even managed to snap its fingers. Then she solemnly said that at some point the attack and defense switched places, and that decided everything. Chu stood in front of the evil girl. Anger, or even hatred towards the evil girl, was visible on the guy's face. The system was behind him, and it seemed like it was holding him back. The evil girl screamed that this was bullshit. She shouted that she had never seen one system devour another. Then she said that this simply could not happen. Enraged, the evil girl screamed that Chu Xingqin was a weak loser, and he didn't dare do such tricks to her. Then the girl began to demand from Chu that he return her system back. Chu Xingqin gave the evil girl a hard slap and yelled that he would not let her go. He added that if we return the system to the girl, she will again harm people because of her anger. The blow turned out to be quite powerful. The evil girl's head fell back and Xingqin's blow left a mark on her cheek. But this was only the very beginning. The guy promised to work hard. It's true that Chu Xingqin even put so much strength and energy into this blow that his own hand hurt. But he had to pay for all the people who were harmed by the evil girl. Chu Xingqin hit the girl again and shouted that this was the noble Shizua Wu, whom she was going to vilely destroy. The girl's head was thrown to the side by the impact. The next time, Chu Xingqin struck from the other side. At the same time, he said that he was beating for the villagers, whom the evil girl was going to doom to even greater torment. Then, Chu Xingqin launched a series of powerful punches, using the evil girl like an ordinary punching bag. After the blows, he told the girl what kind of Her Majesty she was. Then the system intervened and said that the evil girl had nothing to do with what was happening to the princess. Xingqin thought and said that these were blows for prevention. But, Chu Xingqin, saved the most important thing for last. The guy collected every single energy he had in order to invest as much as possible into a powerful blow that could knock down a bull. Chu Xingqin said that this blow would be for himself because the evil girl tried to kill him and take the system for herself. Then the guy hit his head so hard that the girl flew off. Moreover, the evil girl flew for a very long time, bouncing off the ground and continuing her flight. It was like throwing flat pebbles into a lake, and they bounced off the water. Chu Qingqin growled that even if the girl was born with flaws, they can be removed over time. But no one gave her the right to maim innocent people because of her shortcomings. Chu Qingqin was about to hit the evil girl again and take a test shot to the head. He hoped that she would eventually understand that people should be treated well and not killed. But the system pulled Xingqin back. She said that if he hit the mean girl again, she would just fly into pieces. The guy was not going to kill even such a spoiled person. The system noticed that the girl could still be useful. 
She added that her system was in her hands, and she was going to study this alien system thoroughly. The system ordered the evil girl's soul to return to her body. It was clear to the naked eye that the soul was wounded. But, based on the circumstances, she got off lightly. Since the evil girl's soul was injured, the process of returning to her body was quite difficult and painful. But for the girl to stay alive, it was absolutely necessary. But there was also one problem. The evil girl did not want to part with her system. The girl understood that without this thing, she was nothing special. The evil girl opened her mouth and growled that her property, her system, should be returned to her. The girl never wanted to part with her system, which made her strong. It turned out to be the same story that could have happened to Xingqin before. When, due to the fact that he did not want to part with his system, his soul could be torn into small pieces. As a result of such actions of the evil girl, her soul slipped like a smoky spot against the background of the blackness of the night. It was a sad ending. Everything was over completely and irrevocably. Enormous amounts of energy were concentrated in the pianist's sleek hands and thin, long fingers. The guys sweated profusely on their foreheads from the exertion, but they did a great job. The four guardians formed a small circle. The entire area of the circle was dotted with powerful runes. In the middle of the circle, there was a large ball in which a secret world was enclosed. The mentor of the Divine Moon School was informed that the spell to close the 11th examination hall was fully prepared. The old man praised the guys, saying that they had worked hard. Nevertheless, the secret world still continued to live according to its own laws. Almost its entire central part was now occupied by green fog, in which ghostly soul eaters were hiding. Hu Song Lai had no idea what vicissitudes were happening in the subtle world. All he could observe were people standing or sitting near him in the same positions. Hu Song Lai first looked at Chu Xingqin and then turned to his mistress. Neither of them moved. The guy did not understand what this could mean and what to do next. Of course, Chu Xingqin's motionless body made Hu Song Lai happy. He hoped that the guy had already left for a better world. Recently, he had suffered a lot of fear from Chu Xingqin. Hu Song Lai then muttered to his mistress. He said that she was going to deprive Chu Xingqin of the system, and he really wanted to know whether the guy died completely or not. Then, Hu Song Lai looked back at Chu again. The guy looked completely dead. Motionless, lifeless body, closed eyes. But Hu Song Lai wondered why the girl was not moving. In the end, Hu picked up Chu Xingqin's motionless body and even spoke a few kind words in his honor. He said that he seemed to like Chu, and it was even a pity that he died so soon. Hu Song Lai continued to say that Chu Xingqin should not blame him for his death. After all, it is his body and his life. Hu didn't notice at all that Chu Xingqin had opened his eyes. The blissful and peaceful expression instantly disappeared from Hu Song Lai's face. Now his face was stained and distorted in a grimace of fear. Hu Song Lai never expected such a gift. Out of great fright, Song Lai threw Chu Xingqin to the ground. His hands were shaking. He began to yell and point his finger at Chu. He asked how Chu could come to life because he saw that he was not breathing. After the shock, when Chu Xingqin fell to the ground, the evil girl fell nearby. Hu Song Lai looked back at his mistress in surprise. At first, she stood motionless. Now she fell silently. Hu Song Lai reached out with shaking hands to the motionless body of his mistress. He didn't want to believe that she could die and leave him alone with that complete scumbag Chu. Standing behind, Chu Xingqin explained to the traitor that he had absorbed the evil girl system. And since she did not want to part with the system, her soul was torn into small pieces. Chu Xingqin added that he hated villains with a fierce hatred. And the fate that befell the evil girl must befall all villains. Chu added that such people have no place in the world. Chu Xingqin held Hu Song Lai's head with his outstretched fingers and whispered that his last hour had come, so he needed to say goodbye to life. Hu Song Lai was scared to death. The traitor looked at Chu Xingqin with a dog-like gaze. He couldn't fight the guy, and he couldn't run away either. He could only await his fate with doggy humility. But Chu Xingqin did a clever trick, and his system helped him with this. He distracted Hu Song Lai with threats to his life, and then, along with his system, deprived him of the system. When Song Lai realized what was happening, he screamed heart-rendingly. He began to beg that they would not take away his system and that they would not kill him. 
he called out to Brother Chu, his Master Chu, and even Mr. Chu. Hu Song Lai began to lament that he personally would never have committed the vile things he did if the evil girl had not forced him. Hu said that she completely suppressed him. Chu Xingqin said that he saw how happy Hu was when he thought that the guy was dead. In response, Hu Song Lai said that his heart was torn with pain when he saw Chu's lifeless body. Hu said that if Chu Xingqin killed him, then his people would understand that the guy was the chosen one after all. Chu then asked what he should do and how he should deal with the traitor, Hu Song Lai. Delighted, Hu said that he should be allowed to live. He added that he would not tell anyone anything about Chu Xingqin. And in general, he was going to start life from scratch. Hu Song Lai also suggested that the organization behind the evil girl is quite powerful. Hu promised to help Chu Xingqin and quietly introduce him into the ranks of his enemies. Chu Xingqin laughed and said that Song Lai is such a smart-ass double agent. Song Lai replied that espionage was over forever and that he would serve Master Chu faithfully. Chu Xingqin said that without a doubt, Song Lai would serve him faithfully. True, for this he will use a heartbreaking pill. Hu looked at the brown pill suspiciously. Chu Xingqin fed the pill to the traitor and explained that if he ever had thoughts of betrayal again, this pill would break his heart. Hu trembled with indescribable horror. Hu Song Lai coughed and began to spit, but by this time the pill had already safely entered his stomach. Chu Xingqin sarcastically asked if Hu liked the taste of the pill. Chu Xingqin cheerfully added that this is a very strong pill that was made from a piece of a demon. It has a pleasant brown color and a delicate taste of bitter chocolate. Chu Xingqin also informed the stunned Hu Song Lai that if he tried to contact Xingqin's enemies in any way, the pill would immediately work and break his heart. The system asked Chu where he could get such a useful pill. But Chu Xingqin told the system that these were all lies, and this was not a pill, but a stitched chocolate bean grain. Xingqin said that the traitor Hu Song Lai should be watched with both eyes, and fear for his insignificant life would be an excellent motivation for him to behave more or less well. The system reported that it had implanted a tracking chip in Hu Song Lai. The system also told the guy that since the girl's soul was torn into pieces, her family would come for Chu Xingqin. At this time, a strong roar was heard in the skies of the secret world. Long lightning bolts appeared, concentrating at one point at a great height. Chu Xingqin looked up. The other guys also saw that some kind of movement began in the sky. This could well indicate an early end to the exam, but no one knew this for sure. Li Mu also turned her gaze to the sky. Fortunately, by that time the shooter girl had already managed to collect valuable thousand-year-old ice and get such coveted points for her team. When a circle of light appeared high in the sky, framed by a ring of light, and the rays spread out in all directions, the guys no longer doubted that the spell of the end of the exam had been cast. It was clear that the examination room would soon close. But before that, the children participating in the competition would be teleported to the real world and would be able to see their relatives. Most of the competitors were relieved that their exam with unforeseen challenges had come to an end. But there were people who considered the end of the exam to be a hindrance. Such people primarily included the noble Shi Zuo Wu. The guy knew that as soon as they were teleported into the real world, the Soul Eater ghosts would be released. Shi Zuo Wu was haunted by the fate of the villagers, who treated the children with such kindness and openness. The guy imagined how the Soul Eaters would occupy the village and torture its inhabitants. Shi Zuo Wu contacted Chu Xingqin and explained to him the essence of the problem. Chu, in turn, called the system and asked it to help deal with the wandering ghosts. The system said it had one plan. She added that she had just finished absorbing the evil girl's system. This system had a large supply of powerful artifacts. The system added that from these artifacts, it itself can quickly build something useful and very powerful. At this, the system chuckled strangely, which surprised Chu Xingqin. The guy watched with interest what the system was doing and how it could help deal with hundreds of thousands of wandering ghosts, soul eaters. But the system knew what it was doing. Soon, her creation already took on a certain form. Chu rushed the system because he was afraid that the examination room would close before they could destroy the ghosts. Finally, the system added a tail with feathers to stabilize it in flight. Then the system proudly declared that when using this thing, not even a stain of ghosts would remain. 
By that time, the emerald fog had spread so much that it was already visible even from the village. Now most of the secret world was covered in an insidious green mist. When the old people saw the green fog, they immediately realized that someone had released the Soul Eaters from captivity. They even thought that maybe the students had told someone about their secret. But almost immediately, the old people saw a flash of light in the center of the secret world. Then they heard a distant rumble and the shaking of the earth. In 500 years of life, the old people had not seen such a phenomenon. In fact, a light so bright appeared above the secret world that in the center of the world it seemed like a hundred suns. The light spread around at high speed, burning everything. Shuzo Wu and the blue-haired girl were quite close to the epicenter of this inexplicable light. They were stunned by the power of the explosion that happened nearby. Soon the light reached such brightness that the guys couldn't even tell each other apart. Shizuo Wu and his comrade closed their eyes tightly in amazement and the insane glow. The flash of light also blinded the other guys. No one had ever seen anything like this before in their life. They didn't understand what was happening. This was not at all like teleportation at the end of the exam. Limu also saw this disaster that happened in the secret world. The girl shielded herself with her wounded hand from the bright light and strong hot wind that blew in her face. But the worst thing was definitely for the wandering ghosts, the soul eaters. They found themselves at the very epicenter of the explosion, and the main force of the powerful blow fell directly on them. A huge mushroom cloud of fire and dust rose into the sky. This spectacle vaguely resembled the eruption of a large volcano. In addition, he was visible from all sides of the secret world. The old people from the village also watched everything that was happening. They saw where the epicenter of the explosion was, and therefore saw a large mushroom cloud that expanded in different directions. Then a wave of hot, dry air covered the villagers. They talked among themselves, wondering who could have caused such a powerful explosion, and for what purpose. One of the villagers shouted that this explosion would not only destroy the wandering ghosts, the soul eaters, but also wipe out the entire village, destroying its inhabitants. But soon the old people saw something amazing. Plumes of smoke and fire formed in such a way that the word goodbye could be made out. This was more surprising than the explosion itself. Then, the old people understood everything. It turns out that the explosion was caused by students from the Wujin school. Thus, the guys not only managed to deal with the ghosts, but also said goodbye to the old people. The old people said that they always knew that students were wonderful children. Wujian could be relied upon in difficult times. Besides, these guys are not used to leaving their friends. The villagers then shouted cheers for the students in response. Their joint cry spread far across the secret world. So it is likely that the students could hear their farewell thanks. Soon, there was pitch darkness, and the whole world disappeared from sight. Gradually, small luminous dots began to appear on the dark background, which grew constantly. A small gap appeared in the burgundy wall, from which a bright light poured out. At first, it was definitely impossible to see anything. But then there was more light, and something appeared. Soon, familiar faces appeared. But for some reason, Chu Xingqin could not remember their names. People leaned towards the guy with concern and concern. Then Chu remembered that this was the school's mentor and coach. They attacked the guys from all sides with a lot of questions. But it took them some more time to come to their senses after the teleportation, as well as after the explosion that happened before it. While the students and their relatives rejoiced at their successful return from the exam, Xing Chen began to understand something. And he was almost speechless from the realization of what had just happened. Finally, Chu Xingqin gave vent to his rage. He started calling his system a bastard. Chu then added that the system dared to detonate a nuclear bomb without consulting him. Chu Xingqin continued to yell that such an explosion could have killed team members or old people. But the system assured Xingqin that it had calculated everything, and the explosion only harmed the ghosts. At this time, Shizuo Wu confidentially told his mentor that they were blown up along with wandering ghosts. The mentor was surprised by this fact. Chu decided to turn away from Sin. Then, one guy approached the guys and said that in the secret world, there had been an explosion of such force that corresponded to the strength of the martial emperor. Everyone listening opened their mouths in surprise. 
The messenger also added that the secret world was so damaged that it could no longer be used for competitions in the future. Xing Chen thought that the old people would finally be left alone. The mentor of the Wujin school exhaled with relief and muttered that fortunately all the guys from their school were safe and sound. It was clear that he was very worried about his charges. The guys were informed that several students had been consumed by ghosts. Their souls were damaged by ghosts. Now no one knew whether sanity would ever return to these guys. The guys, out of their minds, shouted various nonsense. Most nodded their heads sympathetically towards these guys. But she really liked their tricks. He shouted that it was cool. Suddenly, Chu Xingqin felt slightly unwell, which, however, quickly spread throughout the body. Xingqin couldn't understand what was happening to him. The system reported that the guy had damage to his soul, which now affects his physical body. But the system advised Chu not to worry and added that it would treat him later. Suddenly, a princess appeared next to Chu Xingqin. The girl saw that Chu was not in her best condition. He was shaking with chills, and sweat appeared on his forehead. Her Majesty asked about his health. The princess started babbling that she would now order that a doctor be brought to Chu Xingqin. She also asked Chu if he had any pain. Her Majesty added that pain should not be ignored. Chu Xingqin gently patted the princess on the head and said that there was no need to worry because he was fine. He also praised the princess for her performance in the competition. Chu said that Her Majesty performed admirably, protecting her teammates to the last. Chu Xingqin added that the princess is a true great martial artist. The rest of the team also praised the princess and noted her character and unbending will to win. Her Majesty was surprised. It seemed to her that she had done everything badly. At this time, the princess's elder brother, the second prince, approached the children. He started laughing because the princess was happy that she was eliminated during the competition. The second prince looked like a smug, boorish man of high standing. He paid little attention to other people. He believed that the whole world should fulfill his whims. When second prince Lan Fen appeared, people immediately began to quietly whisper and bow their heads obediently, so that someone's unwary gaze would not enrage the prince. The second prince continued to bully his sister. He said that she had lost a lot of strength and her life was in vain because the Wujin school team still lost and was eliminated from the competition. The princess was indignant and answered the arrogant brother that why did he decide that they lost? After all, there are no results of the competition yet, but they really scored a lot of points. But Chu Xingqin whispered to the princess that later, when the safe zone began to get smaller, they lost a lot of points. Moreover, they were busy fighting the ghosts and Jin Yuming, so, at some point, the Wujin school team stopped thinking about accumulating points. They were completely absorbed in global problems, how to avoid a catastrophe and great casualties. The guys gathered in a circle and tried to count the points they had scored. Unfortunately, no points were given for the outbreak, which burned many thousands of wandering ghosts, soul eaters. According to rough estimates, the guys from Wujin school counted about 30 points that they managed to earn. Everyone was upset because they thought they had more points. In addition, the girl with blue hair said that as far as she remembers, in previous years, the score to get to the next stage of the competition was at least 60 points. Lisa muttered that it turns out they won't even be able to qualify for the qualifying tournament. This meant that their Wujin school would crash out of the competition as soon as it appeared. The whole team was plunged into sad thoughts. Many felt that their life was over. They had the opportunity to become popular. Their fame could spread throughout the country. At this time, their mentor approached the guys, who was also in a depressed mood. Master Lu tried to calm his charges. He said that nothing is clear yet. But then the mentor muttered who he was trying to deceive, and with a disappointed groan, sank to the floor and covered his face with his hands. This failure even undermined his faith in success. While Xingqin was thinking about agriculture, the system pulled him back. She said, doesn't he really care about general experiences? The system added that the team needed to be reassured. Since Chu Xingqin continued to decide in his mind the questions of where it would be better to locate a pigsty and where to organize a fishery, the system had to slap Chu Xingqin on the back of the head. Here, the second prince again turned to his sister. He told her that she now understands that their team is worthless. And since the princess is on this team, then she is as useless as the rest. Then, Fen leaned down to the princess's ear and whispered 
that she was a lazy, harmful girl. The prince added that if she was going to mingle with commoners, she should be careful. At this time, his elder brother's hand fell on the second prince's hand. The first prince said that he understood his concern about the fate of the princess, but it was better to let her rest. The second prince looked back at his brother. From his look, one could understand that he was not very friendly towards his older brother. The reason for such antipathy towards a loved one was not clear. The second prince angrily told his brother that he was certainly not as worried about his sister as the other prince. From the outside, it might seem that this was a conversation between enemies, but they were brothers. Lanfen whispered in the ear of the first prince that even though he made the princess an obedient dog, this was absolutely not enough to attract commoners to her majesty. The first prince laughed and told his brother that his relationship with the people around him was much worse. Therefore, he has no right to judge the princess's relationship with her friends. When the verbal skirmish between the two representatives of the imperial family ended, they turned away from each other, as if they had never known each other. Strange family relationships. Suddenly, an announcement was heard, and everyone turned their gaze upward. It was reported that examination room 11 was closed early due to the presence of wandering ghosts in it. As a result, it turned out that it was impossible to correctly calculate the points scored by the teams, since due to the appearance of wandering ghosts, the participants did not find themselves in the same conditions. Therefore, to ensure fairness, it was decided that each player who remained to fight the Soul Eaters would receive two additional points for their dedication. This kind of scoring had never happened before during a competition. So many spectators and participants were amazed. True, the team had never had to confront ghosts before. It was announced that when calculating the team's points, two criteria were used, the fight against evil and justice. Each of these criteria was important in its own way and could not be ignored. Finally, the results of the competition appeared on the huge scoreboard. All the spectators and participants were talking excitedly among themselves, trying to find the place that their team occupied. This was perhaps the most exciting moment of each competition, when everyone wanted to know the results. At first, the spectators fell silent, looking for teams on the scoreboard, and then exclamations were heard. At N, Mao was horrified to see his team take second place and screamed in despair. The guy did not consider it possible for his team to take any other place other than first. All members of the Chinshan Academy team began to lament loudly and tear out their hair. These strong guys haven't experienced such shame for a very long time. It was a disaster. At this time, the Wujin team saw that they were ranked 14th. This meant that the guys remained in the tournament. It seemed incredible. Many rubbed their eyes, thinking that they were imagining it. But it turned out that this was indeed the case. The guys started screaming with joy, shouting over each other. They understood that they had accomplished a feat, and had survived the battle against strong teams. But the princess said that they should not have won on points. Even if you count the extra two points for each of the seven remaining team members, they were 20 points short. Li Mu spoke here and said that after the appearance of wandering ghosts and general commotion, she managed to quietly find thousand-year-old ice and earn 20 points. The guys turned to Li Mu with surprise and joy. The girl explained that while some were running away from the soul eaters and others were fighting them, she managed to find thousand-year-old ice. Everyone thanked Li Mu for not forgetting about the team during the difficult trials. The girl replied that she did this in order to thank the princess for her salvation. The princess thought that it turns out that she did not let the team down when she saved Li Mu's valuable life, but rather helped to win. Li Mu turned out to be a key player. The second prince saw how happy the children from Wujin school were and was dissatisfied with the results of the competition. He said that a bunch of losers are happy that the results were rigged for them. He approached Mr. Xiao and asked why some players were given extra points since it was against the rules. The old man replied that it was a common decision of all parties. Mr. Xiao added that if not for these points, three A-class teams would have been eliminated from the tournament, while there were only five teams of this level. This seemed unfair to many. Mr. Xiao didn't say that it was the first prince's idea to give extra points. Perhaps he had his own game. Now the prince walked up to Chu Xingqin and asked him something. From the outside, it looked as if two old acquaintances were chatting happily. Mr. Xiao thought about what the two might have in common. 
He had no plausible answer to this question, but the old man decided that he should keep an eye on this upstart Chu Xingqin, who came from nowhere, and then suddenly made a lot of noise and became friends with the princess and her family. Chu Xingqin was truly in seventh heaven. He had long since given up hope that they would be able to pass this stage of the competition. Everything that was happening now seemed like a magical dream, but someone's heavy hand fell on Chu Xingqin's shoulder when he was in the midst of fun. This did not bode well, so the guy stopped rejoicing almost immediately. The stranger asked if it was true that he was Chu Xingqin from the Wujin school. The surprised and wary guy nodded affirmatively. He absolutely did not understand what was required of him. Still not understanding who he was talking to, Chu Xingqin asked the man who he was and what he needed. However, standing behind the man was his servant with the unconscious body of a young girl. Then the man leaned over to the guy and growled at what he had done to his daughter. Chu Xingqin felt great fear. He knew this moment would come, but he didn't think it would be so soon. Chu Xingqin was already thinking about a joint photo of the whole team with their mentor and coach. He was already anticipating the pleasure they would receive during a quick lunch. But the man made adjustments to Chu Xingqin's plans and dreams. The guy was feverishly trying to figure out a way out of this very difficult situation. But it was impossible to come up with anything quickly. Luckily for Chu Xingqin, the evil girl's father's hand was intercepted. Chu didn't expect support to come so quickly. This gave him a chance to catch his breath and collect his thoughts. It turned out that Chu Xingqin's coach came to the aid of his student. He was still holding Jin Yuming's father's hand and asking how he dared to grab his disciple so brazenly. The old man somehow managed to free his hand from the trainer's tenacious grip. He shouted who dared to grab his hand. The coach calmly explained that he was the new teacher of Wujin school. The old man said it was even better. He explained that after the competition, his daughter was unconscious. The inconsolable father added that he has no idea where his daughter's soul went. The old man added that before the competition, Jin Yuming said that her greatest enemy was Chu Xingqin. Therefore, the father said that Chu Xingqin was responsible for his daughter's illness. The representatives of Shuang Qi's team shouted that they recognized this guy and that they were sure that he was to blame for the fact that Lady Jin was left without a soul. The guys wanted to throw Chu in prison. The fox realized that Chu Xingqin then ran to find this woman who was the culprit of everything. And apparently, Chu also made the final explosion. Lisa was thinking about how to help her friend. But then Chu Xingqin roared loudly that he was being unfairly accused. This guy's reaction came as a shock to everyone present. Both Chu Xingqin's friends and his enemies were surprised. Chu Xingqin continued to cry and wipe away his tears. He said that they were slandering him and that he spent all his time with his secretary Hu and they fought with wandering ghosts. Then Chu Xingqin turned to Hu to confirm his words. Hu, remembering that Chu had fed him a pill that could explode his heart, happily confirmed every word of Xingqin. To roar more convincingly, Xingqin used a fox. He yelled that his level was low and there was no way he could handle an opponent as strong as Jin Yuming. Chu Hingchen told the enemy that after the surveillance system was turned off, it was easy to slander the guys. He also asked the other team if they were the ones who released the ghosts. The enemy team whispered among themselves that they needed to deny their relationship to the wandering ghosts, because if everyone knew about it, it would cast a shadow on the ancient house of Shuangqi. Chu, in turn, muttered that if they try to blame him for the misfortune that happened to the girl, he will tell everyone that it was the guys from Shuangqi who released the demons. The people from Shuangqi's house began to look at each other. They didn't want to be exposed. But on the other hand, their hands were itching to deal with the cunning Chu Xingqin. For a while, Chu Xingqin thought that he would have to reveal the secret of the Shuangqi house to the public. He saw that the enemy was hesitating and could not make a final decision. But soon the people from Shuangqi's house turned on the rear. They decided to retreat but it was clear that they were burning with hatred towards Chu Xingqin. And now they knew that the guy owned their secret. Finally, they said that the Zhuangqi house remembered Chu Xingqin well, and that they will get even with him at the first opportunity. Chu thought that at least they would leave him alone for a while. Chu Xingqin was finally able to exhale when the representatives of the Zhuangqi house turned around to leave. The great tension Chu was experiencing gradually subsided, 
This time, it passed. Chu Xingqin complained to the system that he now had serious enemies. The system replied that there is no need to worry. It knows how to easily correct this situation. The system added that at the moment there are more important things to do, and invited Chu Xingqin to visit. It was quite unexpected. The system did not often open its world to Xingqin. Chu was surprised that the system had a new background. She boasted that she inherited this from the fake system. She said she could model anything from it. Chu Xingqin immediately saw what was happening and putting his hands together, began to ask the system to model a beautiful pig farm for him. But the system only grunted with displeasure. She added that there is no time to have fun. She needs to take care of business. First of all, she congratulated Chu Xingqin for passing the first stage of the competition. Even though it was difficult, the system also said that the guy's fighting spirit had risen to a new level. He had now reached the rank of a great master. The system added that for such merits, it would grant him a new skill. The system boasted that it had been working on the skill for a long time and now considers it its great achievement. Chu Xingqian was impatient. He really wanted to see the new skill. The system proudly announced that Chu was receiving the advanced artifact Mirror Shadow. It turned out that now the guy could create a mirror image of himself using spiritual power. The system reported that all the guy's attributes and abilities would also be present in his mirror copy. At this time, Chu declared to his face on the card that it was very beautiful. Then, Chu Xingqin figured that his copy could do all the hard work in the garden, as well as clear the land and remove manure. This was a very valuable skill. The system muttered that Chu Xingqin was only thinking about one vegetable garden. However, serious issues had to be addressed. The system pulled the guy back from his fantasies and plans. Then the system stated that, although it was not able to collect all the parts of the girl's soul, it was still able to collect consciousness from several fragments of the soul, as well as various parts of artifacts. The system added that the result was a completely new consciousness, a completely different person. She noted that such a consciousness is not entirely suitable for work, but they have no other. Chu Xingqin looked at what the system had collected with doubt. He was afraid that as a result of various manipulations of the system, something terrible could result, something similar to Frankenstein. The system replied to Chu Xingqin to calm down, nothing terrible will happen. The system told the guy to just put this soul into his body and stop asking stupid questions. At this time in the real world, it was warm and sunny. The birds sang merrily, and the soothing sound of the sea could be heard from afar. The large and beautiful city continued to live its own life. It was announced over the loudspeaker that the 73rd qualifying tournament had ended. We thanked everyone for their participation and support. Then, they announced that the teams would receive a joint photograph as a souvenir. When Chu Xingqin heard this, he was incredibly happy. He had long dreamed of a big good photo with all his friends. Now the tournament organizers have promised to do this. Xingqin immediately rushed to where everyone was gathering for the photo. And the princess was worried that she was dressed inappropriately and ran in the other direction to put on something more decent. On the way, Chu Xingqin caught a running fox. He told the fox that she was part of the team, so she had to take pictures with everyone. But the fox did not want to be photographed and wanted to bite Chu. Shuzo Wu was asking the blue-haired girl if he should raise his lightsaber while taking photos. The girl replied that this was a bad idea because the sword would light everything up. A couple of guys bent over Hu Songlai's secretary, saying that he was too tall to be photographed standing. The guys suggested that the traitor bend down or lower himself closer to the ground. At the same time, the coach of the Wujin Academy advised the team coach to smile in order to look less stern and more charming in the photo. But the coach didn't particularly like photographs. Finally, the whole team was assembled and ready to take pictures. True, Chu Xingqin had to forcefully restrain the disgruntled fox, which was trying to bite the guy. The joint photo turned out simply luxurious. Everyone fit into the frame, the guys looked cheerful and happy, except for the fox, who was afraid to be photographed. That evening, the guest house of Wujin school was quite crowded. The guys celebrated the opportunity to get into the next round of the competition almost as much as winning the whole tournament. Shuzuo Wu was incredibly happy when his parents appeared on the doorstep. The guy missed them a lot, despite the fact that he was with his best friends all the time. 
Shuzo Wu cheerfully addressed his parents. I asked my father that he even quit his job at the border to see him, but the mother pulled her son back and told him not to approach them. Shira's mother was very angry. She started yelling that she told her son not to risk his life in vain. She said how to understand that he was the first to fight with ghosts. Shizuo Wu's mother even gave him a few ringing slaps. She said that she and her father were worried because of his stupidity and selfishness. His mother said that he would soon drive his parents to their graves. At this time, the guys watch Shizuo Wu being scolded by his parents. Lisa thought how wonderful it was to have a real family that worries about you, cares, and even scolds you sometimes. The princess was also jealous of Shai. For her, the word family was also not an empty phrase. She kept in her heart the memory of her unfortunate mother and was also tenderly attached to her brother. The princess asked the fox who happened to be handy if she had seen Master Chu after lunch. The fox replied that he said that he had some urgent business and disappeared somewhere. Her Highness thought this was very suspicious. It was already such a late hour, and she couldn't contact Xingqin. The princess also remembered that the guy looked bad today. The princess knew that in such a big city something bad could happen. She also remembered that the Shuangqi house harbored a grudge against their master. Therefore, Her Majesty ordered everyone to look for Chu. At the same time, there were also many people in Shuangqi guest house. But there were completely different moods and conversations than in the guest house occupied by the Wujin school team. A small candle burned alone on the table. Its weak flame cast vague reflections on the faces of the people gathered around, as well as on the walls of the small room where the small council was taking place. The fact that Jin Yuming had managed to release wandering ghosts of soul eaters into the secret world was quietly discussed. No one had any idea why the girl did this. Someone added that Jin tried to control almost the entire tournament in that room. Those present were surprised where such strength came from in a rather mediocre girl. The girl's father added that no matter what she does, she will always remain his daughter, and he must do everything to protect her. And if you fail to protect, then take full revenge for her. The father gently hugged his daughter's head and whispered bitterly that he would do everything humanly possible to return her soul to her body. He promised to do it, even if it took years. Yu Ming's father told his brother that they urgently needed to kidnap Chu Xing Chen, then skin him alive, gouge out his eyes, and tear out his spine, so that he suffers until his daughter wakes up. If the people from Shuangqi's house knew that Chu Xingqin was only a few meters away from them at this time, they would be amazed and overjoyed. But Chu had no intention of making them happy. Soon people rose from the small table and prepared to leave. The war council was over, the main topic of which was in what order to torture Chu Xingqin. Soon the small candle in the room was extinguished, and the last of the meeting participants left the room. Complete peace and silence finally reigned in the room. All that was left in the room was the unconscious evil girl. But she wasn't just unconscious. Her body was without a soul, so she couldn't wake up anyway. Soon, after making sure that everyone had left, Chu Xingqin appeared in the room. He jumped down from above, where he had an observation post, and from where he could hear all the conversations of the enemies. Chu Xingqin complained to the system that his whole body was numb while he squatted for half a day and listened to how they were going to torture him and in what order they would rip off his skin. The system said they didn't have enough time to listen to Chu's whining. She asked the guy to introduce a soul into the girl's body, which the system itself collected bit by bit. The system instructed the guy that he must first open acupuncture points with the help of his spiritual power in order for the soul to be implanted successfully. I had to expose the girl. Then, Chu Xingqin gently pressed several points on the girl's back, and the system that was nearby held the soul, completely ready for implementation. Everything was going quite well. Soon, Chu Xingqin very carefully brought the soul to the girl's body and began the reunification process. He really expressed fears that the father might understand that it would no longer be his daughter in front of him. The system said that in order for Chu Xingqin not to drift, the girl should retain her old memory, so that the father should not suspect anything. True, there will be changes in the girl's character. These changes were precisely what confused Chu Xingqin. Meanwhile, loud, persistent knocking and screams were heard at the door. Chu Xingqin realized that their stay had been discovered, and it was time to leave. 
the evil princess was screaming furiously under the doors. She suspected that Xingqin was being forcibly held captive and skinned alive. She screamed that she would break down the door if they didn't let her in. Soon the girl's father appeared and said that the princess was mistaken and that they were not holding Chu and that only his daughter was in the room who was unconscious. The princess had not yet calmed down. She rudely interrupted the old man and said that she was just going to visit his daughter. No one could stop Her Majesty if she was up to something. Her Majesty did not bother to open the doors softly. She kicked them open. Her impatience and fear for Master Chu were too great. But what she saw behind the door excited her even more. The first thing that caught your eye was the unconscious girl who was lying with her back bare. Everyone who entered the room gasped in amazement. But this was far from the complete picture. The bedding that was supposed to cover Jin Yuming's nakedness had been partially torn off and was hanging on the floor. But the most amazing thing was not even this hanging blanket. Next to the naked girl's bed, everyone saw Chu Xingchen hiding, who pretended to be looking for something under the bed. Such a sight was too much for the princess's vulnerable soul. The princess's eyes widened in surprise. Jin Yuming's father, who stood next to the princess, was no less surprised. But unlike Her Majesty, he did not have warm feelings for Chu. Chu Xingqin saw his friends and the girl's father in the room and shouted that this was not at all what they all thought. Chu Xingqin tried to explain that he simply slipped and fell. But who was he trying to deceive with such a childish trick? At this time, Jin stirred and turned over on her side. The cover slipped further, revealing the girl's bare breasts. This fact, far from improving Chu Xingqin's situation, even worsened the situation. Chu Xingqin wanted to close his eyes in horror, but he was afraid that Jin Yuming's father would attack him. At this time, the girl sat down on the bed, not really trying to cover her bare chest. She looked towards Chu Xingqin, who was trembling with fear, and uttered only one word. Master. At this time, this dirty slut appeared in the princess's imagination, who did not hesitate to flash her bare breasts in the presence of men. A man's hand touched the girl's full lips, but the princess's imagination carried even further. She imagined how, in the secret world, Chu Xingqin tried to take his own life when he saw that the soul eaters had broken free. On the way, the half-naked Chu Xingqin met Jin Yuming. Chu shouted that he was going to take out his anger on the defenseless girl. Chu Xingqin held a large leather whip in his hands. Then, a picture appeared in the princess's mind of Chu Xingqin beating Jin Yuming with a whip. The girl yells that she doesn't like the spanking and wants to take a break. But Chu is not going to back down. Jin, Yuming begs Chu Xingqin to let her go and stop torturing her. She calls him master and says that she will do anything for him as long as he leaves her alone. Chu Xingqin shouted that this was all a lie a girl's sick fantasy. He vehemently argued that this had never happened and could not have happened. True, for some reason they didn't really believe Chu Xingqin. Hao Gung grimaced in disgust and muttered that she didn't think Chu Xingqin was such a dirty pervert and did such disgusting things. Chu swore that this was all fiction. The princess was generally in complete shock. She said that Chu Xingqin was doing disgusting things, and now Her Majesty was very disappointed in her master Chu. Jin Yuming's father was speechless at first when he heard what pictures the girl's imaginations imagined. He couldn't believe that this asshole could bully his daughter like that. But then, when the girl's father came to his senses a little, he roared that he would skin Chu Xingqin alive and tear out his spine by the roots. The daughter rushed between her father and Xingqin. Jin Yuming fervently asked her father to stop because he didn't know anything. She said that his careless actions could ruin his daughter's reputation for life. The old man remained excited, but calmed down a little, intending to listen to what his beloved only daughter was going to tell him. The others also listened. Chu Xingqin realized that the procedure of skinning him and uprooting his ridge had been postponed for some time. During this time, the guy was going to figure out a way to escape from here. The father sat menacingly on a chair in front of the children. Jin Yuming knelt in front of him, and Chu Xingqin sat next to him. The guy tried to be as inconspicuous as possible. Jin Yuming told her father that it was time to reveal her secret to him. She said that she had known Chu Xingqin for a long time. Moreover, she had even been secretly dating him for a long time. 
The girl added that it was Chu Xingqin who saved her soul after the ghost soul eaters attacked her and were going to deprive her of her soul. It was only thanks to Chu Xingqin that she remained alive. Xingqin himself listened to the story of Jin Yuming. It turned out that the girl was very prudent. The way she was now couldn't be compared to the way she used to be. The girl turned out to be devoted to Chu Xingqin. And now, without a twinge of conscience, she told her father fairy tales in order to calm him down and get Chu Xingqin out of harm's way. Chu was grateful to her. The old man asked why his daughter didn't tell him about her relationship with Chu Xingqin earlier. He was also surprised that since they had been together for a long time, why was Chu Xingqin sitting on tenterhooks next to her? To prove the truth of her words, Jin Yuming suddenly pulled Chu Xingqin's head towards her and placed it on her full, round breasts. Chu almost lost consciousness. The girl repented. She said she was afraid to tell her father because she suspected he would be against it. Therefore, she initially pretended that she did not know who Chu Xingqin was. Jin Yuming's father muttered that this story does not change anything and it would be worth flaying Xingqin anyway. The old man added that he would never allow his daughter to be with Chu. As the old man imagined what Xingqin could do to his daughter, his eyes became bloodshot, his hands clenched into fists, and an almost bestial roar escaped from his throat. Chu has gray hairs. Jin Yuming said that although he will always remain a father to her, she sees her future life together with Chu Xingqin and therefore will not allow him to be offended or tormented. At this time, tears suddenly flowed from the old man's eyes. He muttered that she hadn't called him father since puberty. And now, in front of Chu, she called him father again. Chu thought that the threat had already disappeared. But Father Jin said that before his daughter called him old man, but now in front of Chu Xingqin, she started calling him father. It was too much. The old man let out a heart-rending cry and set off to catch up with Chu Xingqin, shouting that he was going to kill him for spoiling his daughter. Jin Yuming tried to reason with her father. But the girl's father became even more angry. He said how dare his daughter fight against her father, against her blood, while supporting that dirty farmer Chu Xingqin. The old man shouted that this was a disgrace for their family, a real disaster. He added that he would never allow his noble daughter to be together with such a dirty ragamuffin as Chu. After these words, Jin Yuming's father finally left the room and the guys breathed a sigh of relief. Chu Xingqin still continued to tremble. It was quite tiring and scary. Jin Yuming turned to Chu Xingqin and said that the problem had now been resolved. She also apologized that she may have scared Chu Xingqin, but she wanted to save him from her father's wrath. Then, Jin Yuming lowered her head in front of Chu Xingqin and said that she was his servant and he was free to order her to do whatever he wanted. The astonished Chu muttered that she no longer called him master. Chu realized that these were tricks of the system and asked her directly what she had done with the girl. The system said she had such a nasty character that they had to do some tweaking. Chu Xingqin yelled that such changes in the girl's behavior are a disaster. After all, her father will sooner or later suspect that his real daughter could not behave like a lady. The system responded that Jin Yuming was not close to her father, but she was constantly looked after. Therefore, her character often changed. Therefore, the system believed that the old man would not notice the substitution. The girl, in turn, affectionately said that she had no experience of life in this world, but she would try to become good and sweet to Jin Yuming. Chu thought what nonsense. Jin Yuming said that she would resolve all issues with her father herself, so that he could not harm Chu Xingqin. And for Chu himself, she is ready for anything and will do whatever he wants. Jin Yuming's last words were heard by Chu Xingqin's friends, who out of curiosity could not stay in the corridor for long and stuck their naughty heads through the door. What she heard again became a blow to the princess. She muttered that no one could have expected this from Chu Xingqin. It turns out that he and Jin Yuming are much more than friends. Her majesty was beginning to get angry. Everyone saw the princess as evil, and everyone feared this more than the plague or wandering ghosts, eaters of souls. It was impossible to cope with the princess. The princess literally hissed that she did not expect Chu Xingqin to associate with such dysfunctional women. The princess's faithful assistant, Hao Geng, standing nearby, half-drawn her sword. Chu Xingqin immediately shouted that everything they heard was not true. 
that all this was invented only to deceive the girl's father, but Her Majesty did not seem to believe it. She asked Chu what kind of relationship he had with this jinn. Chu Qingchen frantically searched for a way out of the sticky situation. The princess was no easier to deal with than Yumin's father, but soon Chu Qingchen had a brilliant idea. He pointed his finger at his secretary and said that it was all Hu Songlai's fault, not his. And Miss Jin is in love with his faithful secretary. Chu added that because of unrequited love for Hu Songlai, the girl went crazy and released wandering ghosts. Standing next to her, Jin nodded her head in confirmation. Chu Xingchen added that back in the secret world, when he told everyone to run away but took Hu with him, he was going to take him on a date with Jin, who was yearning for her lover. In the end, Chu Xingchen added that Jin had been engaged to Hu Songlai for a long time. Now Hu Songlai howled in horror. He saw Jin Yuming's father fiercely protecting his daughter from the boys. Xingchen glanced sideways at his careless secretary and he immediately remembered that Chu had fed him a magic pill that threatened to explode his heart if he went against Chu. Hu Songlai, fearing the pill, dutifully confirmed everything. True, he did not know that the pill was actually a stitched bean grain, which threatened him not with an explosion of the heart, but with diarrhea. The girls were glad that Chu Xingchen did not turn out to be as vicious as they thought at first. And now, they directed all the rage that had accumulated in them towards the poor secretary Hu Songlai. Chu Xingchen himself was surprised at how he managed to deftly resolve the situation and regain the favor of the girls. But the system reported that the girls did not believe in all this as much as they wanted to believe. Chu muttered that all these problems were due to the stupid ideas of the system. The system said that it had ensured that the beautiful girl obeyed Chu Xingchen in everything, and he was again dissatisfied with everything. The system said that it rummaged through the memories of the evil girl, but there was very little useful information there. She, as well as Hu, were just small pawns in the organization. Although Jin and Hu were the lowest ranks in the organization, they had very powerful requisites to complete their tasks. It turned out that the organization was using a fake system to influence people. The system added that the head of the organization is named Xian Jian. Using a fake system, this organization looks for executors for themselves, who then do their dirty work. The system reminded me of a guy with spots on his face who got so played with the fake system that he managed to lose his life. Moreover, he did not even suspect the existence of the organization. The system also told Chu that she would like to know what was on this Xianjian's mind. Apparently, he was quite strong. It was not clear then why he didn't just kill Chu. Xingqin said that Xianjian might suspect that he has a real system and is therefore apprehensive. The system considered this option but replied that this did not explain everything. Chu Xingqin became so involved in discussing with the system of the secret organization that was trying to kill him that he ended up in the system's space, where it was easier to communicate. In its space, the system could immediately demonstrate its ideas to the guy and show the arrays of information that it possessed. Whereas in the real world, they communicated through messages. Meanwhile, interesting events were happening in the city. They began, as always, with the search for the lost Chu Xingqin but then someone came and reported that the guy was already there. Lisa said that she was glad that Chu had been found. She added that he is already a big boy and there is no need to announce searches for him twice a day. The fox was tired of digging through the trash for half a day. One man offered to bring some snacks before they returned from searching for the missing guy. Everyone was quite exhausted and hungry, so they happily accepted this offer. In anticipation of the delicious food, the fox even began to gesticulate in joy. True, she did not see that behind her back. Tenacious, terrible hands were reaching out to her from the darkness. The living house of the CU City Academy team was very lively as always. Don't let the girls eat, but let them chat. Moreover, there really was something to talk about. Their unfortunate friend still remained in the body of the scary bearded old man. She had already cried her eyes out. The girl's beard could have been wrung out, it was so wet from bitter tears. The girl strongly sympathized with their now bearded friend. Her sister looked at her with great sympathy, but none of the girls knew how to help their unfortunate friend. Tears streamed down the face of the bearded girl. She asked for the thousandth time when she would have the opportunity to return to her own sweet and beautiful body. The girls told their friend that since the secret world was closed ahead of schedule, the spell did not reset her physical status. 
but the girls contacted high-level craftsmen to solve the problem. Still crying, the bearded girl asked her sister for permission to hug her. But the sister responded with a decisive refusal. She said she was too disgusted to hug the old man. The other part of the girls from Xiyu's team was more worried about the fact that they placed so low in the qualifying tournament. This was a real shame for their elite academy. It was doubly embarrassing because the competition was held in their hometown. It was unacceptable to be in second to last place. And in two weeks, the second stage of the competition will begin. The girl was torn from her bitter thoughts by Kong Funk, who reported that guests had visited their academy. These were guys from another academy, and apparently they needed help. The girls were very surprised by the guests. Although they were extraordinarily good-looking, they did not often receive guests. Since they were an all-girls academy, it would be rude for them to accept boys all the time. But this time, the guys from the Wujin school came to them, and they came together with their mentor. It was immediately clear that they came not just to look at the girls, but for business. It turned out that Wujian's fox was lost. The guys had already searched half the city, but could not find any traces of the loss anywhere. With each passing hour, their anxiety increased and reached its peak. Even though the fox was from an ancient race, it was a fairly defenseless creature. It was especially difficult for her in a big human city, where there was a lot of bad things. Therefore, the Wujin school feared that the fox could be kidnapped and then sold on the slave market. She could also have been locked up somewhere, starved and abused. In any case, it was necessary to take decisive steps to find the missing team member. Since the girls from Xi Yu's team were local, it was a sensible decision to contact them. The girls had many connections in the city. They used word of mouth to find the missing fox. With its help, the message about the fox was transmitted from person to person, personally. The girls also used a network of agents who posted notices about the missing fox throughout the city. It was also an effective way to find a missing person, or fox. Among other things, there was even an announcement about the lost fox on large boards in the city center. After so much action, information about the fox was bound to emerge. City residents were sympathetic to the problem of the Wujin school team. The information quickly spread throughout the city, and most residents wanted to help the guys find the fox. Some people said that children's disappearances had become more frequent, and they feared for their own children. The old people said that in their times, it was safer. There was no such disgrace. Despite all the announcements, the guys themselves also wandered around the city, trying to find traces of the missing fox. But while all efforts were in vain, the fox seemed to fall through the ground. Soon, demonstrations began to take place in the city to search for the missing fox. Crowds of sympathizers gathered at them, who loved to speak in squares and talk about their kindness. Meanwhile, in the guest house of the Wujin school, a sad Chu Xingqin was sitting and wondering how he could find the harmful fox, which, even having disappeared, managed to create so much trouble. But Chu Xingqin was approached by Hu Lu, who said that he remembered something about the fox. It turned out that they and the fox were looking for Chu, and then they were attacked on the corner and the fox disappeared. Hu Lu added that his eyes became red when he was hit on the head. Then his memory blacked out. Now the guy remembered everything about himself and about the missing fox. It turned out that the stick was firmly stuck in the dent on Hu Lu's skull. This dent was left by the claws of a huge ant from a distant island. This affected Hu's mental abilities. Hulu also reported that the kidnappers acted extremely professionally, which could indicate a long-standing plan to kidnap the fox. This made Chu think hard. The princess suggested that they could prepare to kidnap the fox and then sell it. Hao Geng added that these days the price of foxes is very high because there are very few of them. Hao Geng added that the body of foxes is excellent for alchemical furnaces. She said foxes have now become very scarce and are sold on the black market for at least a million. Hao Geng also reported that foxes were in great demand among monks and nobles. Her Majesty asked Hao how she knew so much about foxes on the black market. Hao just bit her lip. Chu Xingqin was very afraid for the life and health of the fox. He could not allow this sweet, although sometimes unbearable girl to be used to fuel an alchemical furnace. Her Highness was already starting to get angry and began to shake Hao Geng, asking what she knew about the missing fox. But this time, the fit of rage did not happen to the princess, 
but to Chu Xingchen. Therefore, the girls had to stop sorting things out and take care of Chu Xingchen, who looked like a demon from hell. Chu shouted that he would destroy those bastards who stole his fox. At this time, a girl from Xi Yu appeared at the door and said that they were able to find traces of the fox through their channels. He was very surprised at the perverted game being played in Wujin. Meanwhile, Chu Xingchen heard the news about the fox and stopped struggling. But just in case, the princess, Hao Gung, and Hu Lu held him a little longer so that he finally came to his senses. Soon, representatives of the Wujin school team arrived at the compact residence of the Xi Yu team. The apartments at this elite academy were luxurious and spacious. Children from the Wujin team and the Xi Yu team gathered in the large hall. The guys knew each other very well after going through such a difficult qualifying tournament with wandering ghosts. The girls reported that the fox was kidnapped for a ghost market. This was the first time Chu Xingchen, the princess and the others, had heard of such a market. So they asked for more information about it. The girls from Xi Yu said that the ghost market was formed at the junction of Jialin, Shinto, and the Western Kingdoms. This market was the largest concentration of illegal trade. Kong Feng reported that her informants reported that a new fox had appeared in the ghost market, which was described as exactly like the fox from the Wujin school. The princess was indignant. Her majesty growled that she would tell her brother to send troops there and destroy the entire market there to hell. But Kong Feng said that such actions could lead to war on the border. Kong Feng added that the market is such a dangerous place that many countries turn a blind eye to it. No one is able to clear it of illegal trade and various scammers, Chu Xingchen said, which means then the Wujin school can only rely on itself. Kong Feng added that since the fox was kidnapped in their city of Xi Yu, then they are obliged to help find the fox. Kong Feng said that she, as a local, would provide Chu's team with escorts to such a hot place. Chu gratefully shook the girl's hand, and the princess could barely contain her anger. Chu Xingchen said that he would go straight to the market and get even with the fox kidnappers. But Kong Feng stopped the hot guy. She noted that it is not so easy to get into this market. Kong Feng added that in order to get into the ghost market, you need a lot of money. Chu Xingchen did not expect that financial problems would arise on their way to save the fox. Kong Feng said that one person needs 100,000 to pay for the entrance ticket to the ghost market. The guys whistled sadly and looked at each other. Then they decided to calculate their finances in order to send at least one Chu Xingchen to the market. But they only had change in their pockets. They didn't even have enough for one ticket to the market. Therefore, the princess decided to take advantage of her position and called the hated Kong to her. Her majesty didn't know why she didn't like this girl, but it didn't matter. The princess told Kong Feng that this was a matter of national importance and she needed the girl's jewelry. Kong began to take off her earrings and her majesty added that she would make up for everything. But then Xing Chen surprised both girls. He told them that he had come up with a great way to get into the market for free. And they don't even have to go there. They will be taken there for free. It was a clear, quiet night. There were not many travelers on the road, but one cart attracted attention. At night, the creaking of poorly oiled wheels of a decrepit cart could be heard quite far. The two people accompanying the cart were quite lost in their hands. On the road, they came across a good catch that could be sold profitably at the market. The men were very happy about their luck. Of course, the guys were dirty and crazy, but some of them were very beautiful, so you could get good money for them. The drivers wanted to arrive at the place as soon as possible. When Chu Jingchen said that he had come up with a way to bring them to the market for free, the princess imagined a trip in a comfortable carriage. But in reality, I had to shake in a stinking cart. At the same time, the thin fingers of a man of high status squeezed the letter with irritation. Apparently, the contents of the letter were not particularly liked by the person who read it carefully. Songlai wrote that Jin's soul was struck by a ghost, so the girl's memory was lost and the system was destroyed. The messengers now understood why the girl did not contact them. It was also clear from the letter that Hu Songlai had so far avoided complete exposure. True, the guy wrote that he never managed to learn anything useful from Chu Xingchen's past. The envoys were already starting to tire of Chu Xingchen's amazing invulnerability. They supplied Jin with advanced artifacts so that she would destroy the guy, but she herself was almost dead. In addition, the envoys were interested in the question of where the systems of their people had gone. 
After all, even if a person dies, his system must remain. But for some reason, this did not happen. One of the envoys suggested that it was Chu who had somehow managed to destroy the systems they had implanted in their people. If this is true, then Chu was no ordinary chosen one. If things were like this, then the envoys needed to get Chu Xingchen into their hands as quickly as possible. Fortunately, informants reported in a timely manner that Chu was going to the market. One of the envoys uttered a mysterious phrase, which meant that they were not the only ones fighting Chu Xingchen. It turned out that their victim had acquired more enemies. Then the messenger developed his idea that the fox was kidnapped for a reason. Someone needed to lure Xingchen out of the city and send him to the market. True, the logic of these actions is not yet clear. Lisa, meanwhile, was in a very depressed state. She was very afraid of captivity. She knew what was done to foxes in captivity. Now she was next to other captive children. The phantom market was one of the most troubled and troubled areas in the country. The market itself consisted of a large number of caves, both natural and artificial. All these caves were ornately intertwined with each other. Even an experienced and knowledgeable person could get lost in this market. The landscape of the ghost market was quite complex and treacherous. This market has been notorious for a long time. Therefore, he attracted all kinds of swindlers, criminals, thieves, and villains. For them, it was as if it was smeared with honey. You could buy anything at the ghost market for money. So rich perverts and sadists also did not lose the opportunity to visit this place. There were slaves for every taste here. One of the buyers was just checking out a cute girl. She was quite pretty, but for some reason she didn't react to the buyer. She wasn't even afraid of him. It was strange. The buyer looked into the girl's dull eyes and asked the seller if he had drugged her with something. The seller began to assure that she was just a very submissive and obedient girl who agreed to everything. The buyer got angry and said that he would not have any fun interacting with zombies. Soon the rich man turned away and was about to leave. The seller was discouraged. Such a sweet girl, but they refused to buy her. The seller became furious and began to take out his anger on the young girl, who was innocent of anything and did not understand what was happening. Another seller thought that this was not an experienced seller at all. He drugged the girl to make her submissive. But it is almost impossible to find a buyer for such damaged goods. Another seller called a rich buyer to him. He said it was now his turn to show off his wares. Moreover, he had an excellent intake of very young guys. The cunning seller began to praise the product. He suggested looking at them from all sides. The seller showed the buyer how young and healthy they were and how sweetly they smiled. But an unexpected sharp blow wiped the obsequious smile from the cunning face of the seller from the ghost market. This was a big problem, and the rich buyer immediately walked away. The unlucky merchant looked in surprise at the one who hit him. From the blow, he flew back and hit his tailbone painfully on the ground. Now it was difficult for him to get to his feet. Meanwhile, the guys calmly removed the bars and got out of the cart. Chu Xingchen stretched his hands. One blow was not enough for him. The guy wanted to swing his fists in a good fight. The seller tried to say something. He was outraged that his best product was behaving in such a disgraceful manner. But Chu Xingchen kissed the merchant's face once again. This time harder. It looked like Xingchen had broken the salesman's nose, but he didn't really care. Chu added that the seller can only speak when asked. You shouldn't open your mouth over trifles. Xingqin leaned towards the seller, who was now acting more reasonable. Chu explained that they were looking for a fox that had been lost not long ago. He asked the merchant if he had heard of the fox. The frightened merchant babbled that he knew about the fox, because foxes are a rare commodity. He added that one beautiful fox was recently sold at the market. She was bought by a jade watch house. The guys didn't understand what it was. A jade watch house. Then the merchant said that this was one of the most prestigious taverns in the ghost market from the Western Island. Chu Xingqin, as a precaution, once again hit the merchant and morally said that stealing other people's children and then selling them in the ghost market is a very bad, undignified activity. The guys gathered in a group to consult on what to do next. They were very upset that the fox found himself without the support of friends in such a bad and scary place. The guys understood that without a lot of money, no one would let them into an elite tavern. But there was no time to wait. The fox needed to be rescued. 
the friends went through different options for how to get into the tavern. But then the princess turned to Chu Xingqin. She stated that she had some ideas on this issue. Soon Her Majesty told the others about her cunning plan. It was quite late in the evening, but time in such a seedy place as the ghost market did not matter. Here, at any time of the day, you could get everything for good money. The Jade Tower Tavern was as crowded as always. Some visitors came. The thirst for drink and pleasure was written on their faces. Others left, drunk and robbed. Girls from the upper floors shouted to random passers-by to come up to them to have fun together. Some were simply looking around, looking for someone in the crowd. The unsuccessful merchant approached the doors of the Jade Tower. The woman from the tavern asked what happened to his face. The seller replied that there was nothing wrong with it. It just happened to fall. The merchant said that he had brought excellent goods and at a fairly reasonable price. The woman muttered that she needed to look at the product first because she didn't want any freaks. The merchant said that he would not offer freaks to such a prestigious establishment. He added that he had only the highest quality goods, and with these words, he pulled back the canopy of the cart. Inside were two very cute little girls. One is a blue-eyed brunette, and the other with brown eyes and hair of a burning red color. The product was really good. True, the system had to work its magic for quite a long time to turn these cocky guys into nice girls. But there was an important mission to complete, and the system did a great job. The result of the system turned out to be very nice. No one would recognize these cute girls as the two formidable lovers of fighting who used to be called Chu Xingchen and Shizuo Wu. An hour before the guys dressed as girls entered the Jade Tower, an unusual conversation took place in a dark alley nearby. This time the children themselves suggested that they be sold. The merchant was greatly surprised by the strange desire of the children, who had only recently escaped from his tenacious and greedy hands and were now again about to voluntarily fall into slavery. The merchant could not refuse the guys. Moreover, he hoped to earn extra money from this. But he told the guys that only beautiful girls are accepted into the Jade Tower. The guys were upset at first. They already thought that they would have to invent a new way to get inside the elite tavern. But at this time, Chu Xingchen remembered something. Chu Xingchen cheerfully turned to his friend and said that he knew one failed fashion designer who would instantly turn them into first-class seductive beauties. Soon, thanks to a plan that matured in a dark, gloomy alley, the guys were able to get into the Jade Tower and do the thing for which they had come to the market, searching for the fox. The princess boasted to the girls from CU Academy about how smart they were and what a cunning plan they came up with. The girls from the Elite Academy just silently blinked their eyes in amazement. Her Majesty added that their boys were sold to the Jade Tower for 5,000 tails. After this, the guys hastened to rob the loser merchant in order to get some money. The guys from Wujin School also showed the girls from Xiyu photos of the boys when they were already dressed as girls. It turned out that Chu Xingqin and Shu Wu turned into two cute friends. The girls from Xiyu Academy were impressed by such antics. The poet Kong Feng suggested that they go to the Jade Tower Tavern and see the guys there in a new beautiful image. It should be noted that the Jade Tower is very large. The tavern is divided into five levels. Products in the tower are judged by beauty, talent, and race. The more valuable the product, the better it is treated. The woman who bought the new product asked what their name was. It was clear that the woman was powerful and was accustomed to commanding everyone. Therefore, the guys immediately reported the names of Shu Chu and Zhu Wu. The woman began to look at them. She walked around the guys on all sides, looked at their teeth, as if choosing horses. The woman even pulled their hair to check if it was real. Then, she turned to Zhu Wu and said that he was quite handsome and perhaps he would have many clients. True, the woman noted that Zhu Wu's voice was rude and disgusting. The woman told her subordinates to assign Zhu Wu to the orange level, where wealthy clients usually rest. Chu Xingqin did not want to part with another in such a hot place. Chu Xingqin asked the woman whether he should also go to the orange level. The woman did not answer. She just looked askance at her acquisition and clicked her tongue. Chu Qingchen was assigned to the green penultimate level and was told that there were not enough cleaners there. He thought that Her Highness had come up with a lousy plan. She should come here to wash the floors herself. Finally, Chu Xingchen freaked out and said that he was not hired to wash the floors here. 
The guy shouted that with characteristics like his, he should manage everything here and not wash the floors. Then the system appeared and informed Chu Xingchen that Shu Zuo Wu was in much better shape than him. To this, Chu replied that beauty is a relative concept and that he too is as beautiful as a girl in his own way. When Chu got tired of washing the floors, he looked down. According to his calculations, the fox should have been at the red level. It was necessary to quietly get there, free the fox and let it run. Chu Xingqin carefully looked around. He felt it necessary to make sure that no one was following him. Apparently it was quiet on his floor. Clients didn't come here. Chu Xingqin thought that customers were losing a lot by not going to this floor. All the floors on the green floor were sparkling clean. So Chu stopped thinking about clients and started thinking about the fox. The guy tried to use the sound transmission technique, but it didn't work. It was strange. Therefore, Chu decided to use one of his skills, but to no avail. Chu Xingqin complained to the system about his failures. She told him that this place was somehow strange. Apparently, there was a magnetic field in the tower that suppressed spiritual power. Chu Xingqin was afraid for his friend. After all, if spiritual forces do not work in the tower, then Shu Zuo Wu will not be able to defend himself, and he will then have to sell his body at the request of the old woman. Frightened Chu hid in a corner and tried to think of a way to rescue his comrade. But as luck would have it, nothing came to mind. Chu just realized that beauty only brings problems. Chu Xingqin saw terrible pictures of what was happening within the walls of the Jade Tower. Just the thought of such things made the hair on Chu's head stand on end. In this terrible place, the girls were completely defenseless. Nobody asked their opinions and desires, but anyone here could offend them. It was a truly scary place. Beatings and assault were considered commonplace in the Jade Tower. One could imagine what the girls who had been working in such a disadvantaged place for many years would experience. Soon, one of the old acquaintances appeared in the tavern. This guy took part in competitions. Now the guy with green hair was yelling that he needed a beautiful girl. The young man was very impatient. He shouted that he had to wait for his own money. But he didn't have to yell for long. They heard him, heard his request, and the crunch of his money. Already drunk, Ju slammed his mug on the table and growled that he was sick of the fucking Chu Xingqin and his fucking Wujin school. Alcohol only made the guy even more angry. The green-haired guy kept growling that that stupid Shizuo Wu had slapped him in the face in front of so many people. The understanding girl tried to calm the dissatisfied Ju. She added that losing is not scary. After all, there is always a second chance to deal with the enemy. Suddenly, Ju became quiet, and the girl thought that she managed to calm him down. Then, the guy with green hair turned his face distorted with hatred towards the girl, and quietly whispered who could tell her such nonsense that he supposedly lost to the Wujin school. Then Ju threw up his hands and started yelling at the girl that she was a stupid fool and didn't know anything. So she shouldn't teach him how to lose. The offended guy went wild. A completely enraged guy with green hair threw the girl on the floor and began to trample her under his feet and yell that it was none of her business to come to him with advice. She must know her place. Ju yelled that he would never forgive the girl for letting him down when she said he lost. He growled that he had never lost in his life, and he had no intention of losing in the future. At this time, the doors opened and Chu Xingqin, who was still in his female form, was thrown into the room. Besides him, another fragile, unhappy girl flew into the room. Hearing that there was someone else in the room, Chu Xingqin turned around cautiously. He was very surprised when he saw that there was a guy with green hair in the room. Meanwhile, Zhu looked closely at the confused Chu Xingqin. It even seemed to him that the guy with green hair saw right through him and realized who he really was. Finally, the guy took Chu Xingqin's pretty face in his hand and muttered that such a terrible beauty was just for his taste. Chu Xingqin was speechless for a while, but Zhu shouted that he liked shy girls and pulled Xingqin along with him. Chu Xingqin tried to prove that he was a cleaning lady and that he did not sell his valuable body to clients. But the blue-haired guy didn't pay attention to Chu Xingqin's words. He threw him forcefully onto the bed. Chu Xingqin fell painfully and almost burst into tears. But Zhu did not back down. He said that the fact that the girl resisted was even better. This will give him more pleasure. 
The guy hovered over Chu Xingqin and pinned him to the bed. Then the guy with green hair cooed that he really liked his flat body. He told Chu Xingqin that he had been looking for a beauty with a flat body for a long time and could not find one. Chu Xingqin saw that the situation was critical. He could not use his spiritual power to defend or attack at all. So the guy called the system, praying that at least this time it would deign to come. The system really appeared. Moreover, she came at the right moment because the guy with green hair was about to kiss Chu Xingqin, and he almost vomited in his face. The system told Chu Xingqin that he did not need to thank it for its help. The system also noticed that similar situations happen to Chu Xingqin for some reason suspiciously often. Therefore, Chu Xingqin asked the system how it managed to neutralize the loving guy. The system reported that it used an illusory artifact to do this. The system boasted that it first wanted to use the past and future, but without the blessing of the heavenly path, the effect was weak. Therefore, she used an illusory artifact. Chu Xingqin was very surprised that Zhu could use his spiritual power while he himself could not. The system assumed that Zhu was a guest here, and maybe he had something with him. Chu Xingqin began to search the guy to find the thing that allowed him to use spiritual power in the Jade Tower Tavern. Suddenly, there was a gentle knock on the door of the room. Chu Xingqin was afraid that he would be discovered. Something had to be done urgently, but it was necessary to act quickly. While the guy was rushing back and forth around the room, the door began to open. Mother Chen's smiling head poked her head through the door. She asked if everything was okay because she was told that the gentleman expressed a desire to hire an ordinary, ugly cleaning lady. But in the room, Mother Chen was in for a great shock. She saw a rich gentleman stretched out and half-naked. The old woman screamed that the cleaning lady had escaped and needed to be caught urgently. Chu Qingchen was glad that he had his own shadow, which was just right for such a situation. It was urgent to get rid of Mother Chen and the other persecutors. When the guards ran out into the hotel corridor, they immediately saw the shadow of Chu Xingqin. After that, shouting, If you don't leave, we will catch you. They rushed to chase Chu Xingqin's shadow. Chu Xingqin was even partly glad that he had the opportunity to test the shadow so quickly in conditions close to combat. Saving my own ass was a big deal. Xingqin's mirror shadow bypassed his opponents with a few deft movements without even getting out of breath. The surprised and discouraged guards could only watch after her. Chu Xingqin's shadow was holding his original in his arms. Chu Xingqin himself shouted with unexpected joy that the restriction on the use of spiritual power did not apply to his shadow. It was quite nice to go through a mission with a mirror shadow doing all the dirty work for you. Chu Xingqin felt inspired and empowered by being carried in his arms, but the joy did not last long. Something suspicious began to happen around. For the first time in his life, Chu Xingqin saw such metamorphoses that began to occur around him. Soon, the corridor along which Chu Xingqin was carried by his mirror shadow lost its usual shape. Moreover, it even lost its solid structure and turned into something viscous. This viscous substance increased in size and surrounded Chu Xingqin and his mirror shadow on all sides. The guy was not ready for such a turn of events. There was no way to get out, and the viscous mass continued to expand and crush Chu Xingqin from all sides. Soon the guy was unable to make a single movement. Moreover, even simple breathing was difficult for him. Soon, the viscous thing swelled so much that only Chu's hand remained on the surface. The guy had absolutely no idea how to save himself. He didn't even manage to show his middle finger. Soon after absorbing Chu Xingqin and his shadow, the viscous mass began to slowly decrease. And soon, only two small bumps pointed to the place where Chu Xingqin and his shadow disappeared. Soon, even these bumps smoothed out, and only small ripples remained on the smooth fabric that covered the floor of the corridor. Two guards watched silently. The guards just laughed at the stupid cleaning lady. They knew that she had no chance of escaping punishment, much less hiding or escaping from the Jade Tower Tavern. And in front of the entrance to the Elite Tavern, there was again a crowd of people wanting to taste unusual pleasures and pleasures. But in the motley, motley crowd, several bright people stood out. These were girls from Wujin School and Shiyu Academy. Upon entering, they were immediately asked which floor they preferred. 
the girls answered without hesitation that they were used to the red floor. Immediately at the entrance, the girls were offered wine. Her Majesty was indignant. She said that she had never touched such poison. But the princess was told that it was tradition to drink wine. The brave and experienced Kong Feng demonstrated to the princess that this was not at all scary, but even a little pleasant. The girl added that the princess should try it, because it is not poison. The princess looked doubtfully at the swill offered to her. She wasn't eager to try it. The color was blood red and the smell was unusual. Her Majesty asked what it was. She was told that this was a welcome drink. There is a special field in the Jade Tower that limits spiritual power. And this drink allows you to neutralize the effect of the field. The princess then said in amazement that Chu Xingqin and Chu Zhuo Wu would not be able to use their spiritual powers. Kong Feng confirmed that this was the case in the Jade Tower. The princess growled that this was a lousy place. You just need to defeat him and leave no stone unturned here. Kong Feng noticed that even the strongest would not be able to cope with the dark forces of this place. Kong Feng added that the owner of this place is a rather unpleasant person. Everyone who tried to interfere with business in the Jade Tower never left this place alive. Now, Kong Feng leaned very close to the princess's ear. She asked the princess if she knew what happened to them. Seeing the princess's questioning look, the girl said that they were swallowed up by the building. Chu Xingqin was also almost swallowed up by the Jade Tower building. The only thing that saved the guy at the moment was his shadow, which held a free piece of space. The system appeared and asked Chu Xingqin how he felt in such an unexpected place. The guy replied that it was difficult for him to move, and there was not enough oxygen to breathe. Chu Xingqin asked the system what kind of place this was. She replied that they were now inside the building that had swallowed them. Inside, this building is constantly absorbing spiritual power. The system also reported that the shadow would not be able to contain the walls of the building for too long. Therefore, it was urgent to come up with a way to escape from this treacherous place. Chu noticed that the building seemed to have a kind of consciousness. He also stated that he felt a very hot feeling in his stomach. Chu was afraid of being sick because he needed to look for a way out. Chu Xingqin's stomach hurt so much that he had to artificially induce vomiting to relieve his suffering. Chu put two fingers into his mouth and pressed the root of his tongue several times. Imagine Chu Xingqin's surprise when a small turquoise ring appeared from his mouth. At that moment, the guy immediately remembered everything. This happened at the entrance to the tavern. Upon entering, the incoming goods were searched, and Chu Xingqin quickly swallowed the ring so that it would not be taken away. But then things moved so fast that Chu Xingqin forgot about the ring. But the ring remained very hot and still burned Chu Xingqin's hand. The guy extended the ring to his mirror shadow so that it would support him while Chu Xingqin's hands rested. Suddenly, instead of a ring, the fox's grandmother's stone appeared in the hand of the mirror shadow, breaking the seals. Chu received this stone from the imperial treasury. Then the stone itself called him. Chu Xingqin thought that all this was very interesting, but not timely. He urgently needed to come up with a way to get out of this trap, and he had to be distracted by the stones. But after some time, the incredible began to happen. The huge vibrating masses that surrounded Chu Xingqin and his mirror shadow on all sides began to move. Chu Xingqin watched the movement of these huge masses with amazement and fear. It seemed to Chu Xingqin that at first the building swallowed them, and now it was going to digest them. But gradually, an empty space formed around Chu Xingqin and his mirror shadow. Now there was no pressure on the guy from all sides, and it became much easier to breathe. The system was also surprised by what was happening. She asked Chu Xingqin what he did to get them released, but Chu could not answer anything because he did nothing. Then the system drew Chu Xingqin's attention to the seal breaking stone. It was heating up. Chu Xingqin suggested that perhaps the stone could control this place, and it helped expand the space. Chu Xingqin also remembered that the old men told him that the six stones were connected to each other. Stones can sense each other if there is not a very large distance between them. Based on this, Chu Xingqin logically assumed that if this stone senses another stone, it means that it can be found somewhere nearby, probably in the Jade Tower itself. Another stone was indeed nearby. Although he was not exactly in the building, to put it bluntly, he was still located within the Jade Tower Tavern. 
In general, everything was not easy. The second stone was in the body of a person and in the body of a living person. It was located approximately in the middle of the chest and the body was connected to it through processes. The stone shone brightly. This man with a stone in his chest was well aware of the presence of Chu Xingqin in the Jade Tower. This man knew and understood a lot of things that others did not know and did not understand. Meanwhile, Chu Xingqin was moving around in the bowels of the building. With the stone in his hand, he felt much more confident. Now the walls did not attack him from all sides, wanting to digest him. At this time, the man with the stone in his chest smiled at the fact that only women could enter the Jade Tower building. But here, Chu Xingqin ended up, even though he was a guy. The smile disappeared from the face of the man with the stone. He plunged into distant memories. He had been here for a very long time and remembered many strange and mysterious phenomena that happened here. Chu Xingqin, meanwhile, had already become quite comfortable in the bowels of the building. He moved freely where he needed to. He was followed by his faithful assistants, the system and the mirror shadow. Chu Xingqin began to methodically study the space in which he found himself. The guy was also interested in what effect the seal-breaking stone had on this living and obstinate building. Chu Xingqin began to feel the walls of space. They seemed alive to the touch, slightly elastic, and also had a persistent smell of mushrooms. The material looked like mushrooms to Chu Xingqin. It must be said that Chu was pretty hungry by then. So the guy decided to taste the living walls. This way, he could not only explore the space, but also refresh himself. But uh, Chu was pulled back by the system. She yelled that Chu Xingqin shouldn't taste any rubbish. Chu replied that he could smell the mushrooms from the wall, and it reminded him of the food he had as a child. The system was surprised by this turn of events. She asked Chu Xingqin to tell him more about this because she was not familiar with this part of Chu Xingqin's biography. Chu Xingqin told the system that when he was very small, he almost died of hunger. For many days, there was not a crumb of bread or a drop of milk in his mouth. He might not survive. The old people didn't need food and didn't cook anything. Therefore, when they found Chu Xingqin, they were faced with a task. They absolutely did not know what to feed the hungry child. They had no food for mere mortals. But the child could not feed solely on spiritual energy. The old people began to fear that Xingqin would not survive and someone would have to bury him. But suddenly the old people heard shouts for them to disperse, otherwise someone might be doused with boiling water. The surprised old people quickly stepped aside to see what had happened. It turned out that one of them, apparently the smartest, prepared a real strong broth, which was quite suitable for feeding a small person. The old men asked where he managed to find meat for the broth. Grandfather boasted that he cut up a white doll and then chopped its flesh into a saucepan and cooked it for a couple of hours. While some old people were wondering whether the meat of a white doll was safe for a child, the red-haired old man began to feed the child. He figured that by the time the others finished arguing, the child would die. But they immediately heard advice that you shouldn't plunge the child's head into the pan. The old man was told that this is not how children are fed. After all, a child can either choke or get burned. Chu Xingqin told the system that the strong, nasty taste of this soup would stay with him for the rest of his life. Chu Xingqin added that such broth could hardly be called food, but it saved his life. Chu Xingqin felt like one sip of this soup made him want to vomit all the time. Soup made from white grandpa doll meat. It was just terrible. The system sympathized with Chu and his difficult childhood. Chu Xingqin continued to think out loud. He said that the texture, taste, and smell of this building flesh was very similar to the meat of a white doll. But her meat was white, and here the meat is brown. The white doll was a mixture of mushroom and meat. It did not have a fixed shape. It could absorb everything and grow. But in the mountains, the size of the white doll did not exceed half the height of a person. But this mushroom became very large and turned into a building. Xingqin was very interested in understanding this issue. He even forgot for a while that he was supposed to save the fox. Chu Xingqin suggested that this mushroom did not appear in this place by chance. There was some kind of terrible secret in all this but so far the guy could not solve it. At this time, the system informed Chu Xingqin that the mirror shadow did not waste time on useless thoughts, and it managed to find a way out of this disastrous and strange place. 
Meanwhile, on the floors of the Jade Tower Tavern, the usual routine was going on. The tables were laden with all kinds of food and strong drinks. The girls were generously treated to all of this. Zhu Wu also had the honor of tasting various delicious dishes. Despite the fact that the guy was in the form of a girl, he ate and drank for three. The mission is the mission, and lunch is on schedule. The fat old man constantly poured alcohol into Xu Zhuo Wu's glass. He also said that he would punish him if he refused to drink. The other girls looked at this attention with envy. Finally, Shu Zhuo Wu had already eaten and drunk to his fullest. And now, he did not like the old man's increased attention to his person. But the fat man was persistent and continued to drink the guy in the guise of a girl. One of the local beauties turned to the old man and suggested that they get her drunk. She noticed that this redhead was already drunk until a pig squealed and didn't want anything else. The old man got angry and called the girl a fool. Then he started yelling that he was not interested in these old sluts who had been living here for many years. He wanted to have fun with the new girl. He grabbed Shizua Wu's face with his fingers and began to say what a wonderful face and what a bright, beautiful color the luxurious hair was. The old man added that it was all beautiful. Then he said that he really wanted to play with such a cutie. Shizua Wu screamed in fear. The fat man was even more delighted. He really liked it when girls were afraid of him. The old man muttered that this fear was charming, whereas other girls here are not afraid of anything. Moreover, if you happen to see them in the morning without makeup, you might get scared yourself. The fat man attacked Shu Zhuo Wu and said that his voice was very seductive. Shu tried to fight back, but what could he do in this place without spiritual power? He felt scared. It is unknown how all this would have ended if the unexpected savior had not dealt the loving fat man a good blow to his stupid head. This was an unexpected rescue for Zhuo Wu. In the room, Chu Xingqin appeared directly from the wall. He was still in the form of a girl, but was holding a massive club in his hands. Chu Xingqin shouted that he was personally protecting this guy. Shu Zhuo Wu was very happy to see his friend appear. Moreover, Chu Xingqin came at such a necessary moment. Xingqin asked if Shu Zhuo Wu was okay and if he had any problems. The guys exchanged a firm handshake and greeted each other with loud shouts. They were glad that in this dangerous place they were together again and could support each other. Shu Zhuo Wu complained that he could not fight. He had no spiritual power. He also noted that it was good that they did not send girls to this terrible place, but ended up here themselves. Shu Zhuo Wu secretly told Chu that very dirty and terrible things were happening here. Therefore, it is better not to waste time, look for the fox, and get out of this place as quickly as possible. Chu Xingqin was also quite tired of the perverted customs here, and he agreed that he needed to go look for the fox. And the guys immediately hurried to the exit, but one of the girls called out to them. The girl was amazed that Chu Xingqin had just crawled out of the wall of the building. She added that since he managed to get out of such an insidious trap, she wanted to ask Chu something. Chu Xingqin stopped to find out what this girl wanted. He was not used to refusing girls, unless, of course, they demanded too much from him, like some. And at this time, Shi Zhuo Wu was already anticipating in his thoughts a meeting with a girl with blue hair. The guy really missed her in this place. But salvation was still far away. At this time, at the other end of the Jade Tower building in the dark basement, outreach work was carried out with children who dared to escape, a large guard stood over them, but the children mostly got it not from him, but from the evil old woman Mother Chen. She screamed that they were constantly running away from her, and it was terribly infuriating. She promised to get even with them. She squealed that every day they spend a lot of money to feed and water these children. In general, their maintenance is very expensive, and instead of gratitude, they try to escape. One girl asked Mother Chen to let her go. She said that she had just recently been kidnapped and brought here. At the same time, the girl has parents who need to be taken care of. Mother Chen angrily said that she was not doing charity work. She was running a brothel. Therefore, she should behave accordingly. She also wanted this from the fugitives. Mother Chen added that since the girl could not perform her duties, the guard would teach her a good lesson. And let others take a look so they don't mind. The girl screamed the words, Help! Save! But the guard just laughed and said that no one would help her here, and that he would give her a good spanking that she would remember for a long time. Suddenly, out of nowhere, 
Chu Xingqin's mirror shadow appeared and kicked the guard well with such force that he was thrown against the wall and punched a large hole in it. It was clear that the guard would remember this blow for the rest of his life. If only his memory is restored, and he will remember at least something. Shadow Chu was also not averse to exercising. Enraged, Mother Chen screamed at what kind of figure had appeared. She started screaming, Who is this? And why did he appear here and spoil her people? The old woman ordered to seize Xingqin's shadow. This was all Chu Xingqin's mirror shadow needed. With all these problems, she also missed a good fight. Just like Chu Xingqin himself, it's time to wave your fists. Mother Chen's people rushed towards the mirror shadow. She scattered them all with one left hand. Only the sounds of precise blows were heard. A shadow quickly moved across the room, and bodies fell. From amazement and hatred overwhelming her, Mother Chen was speechless for some time. She could only glare fiercely and furrow her plucked thin eyebrows terribly. Then she found her speech and began to cry out what was happening in the world. In her hotel, cultivators cannot use spiritual power and fight with her staff. Now everything has turned upside down. At this time, Xingqin appeared right from the floor and shouted at the old woman. Why was she yelling like that? Preventing normal people from working. He also asked how she liked his shadow. The shadow knelt down to help Chu Xingqin get out of the floor. Nearby, the heads of the noble Shizuo Wu also appeared from the floor, as well as the girl who had asked something earlier. When this girl got out of the floor and shook herself off the dust, she immediately called out to one little girl. A child in red pajamas and red hair turned around at the scream. When she recognized her own sister in the girl who had emerged from the floor, she rushed towards her with a loud squeal and hung on her neck. Everyone watched this meeting of sisters with admiration. The girl explained to Chu Xingqin that she and her sister used to live in the Western Islands. But a year ago, she was kidnapped and sold to the Jade Tower Tavern to please the customers. The crying girl said that just two days ago, she found out that her sister was kidnapped and she was in this building. But the girl could neither escape herself nor help her sister. The girl knelt down in front of Chu Xingqin and babbled that he was her benefactor and she would be grateful to him for the rest of her life. Xingqin tried to lift the girl from her knees and calm her down. The guy thought about the fact that both sisters were kidnapped very far away and in the same place. Apparently, human trafficking was very well established in this region. Mother Chen, who was being held by the mirror shadow, shouted that Chu Xingqin and his friends were already dead. She shouted that doesn't he know who the owner of this tavern is and who they went against. Xingqin said that he doesn't care who the owner of this almshouse is, and he doesn't care at all. He added that if it weren't for business, he would never have gone to such a disgusting place. Chu Xingqin informed Mother Chen that a fox had been kidnapped from him, and he had information that it was being held in the Jade Tower. He asked the old woman where he could find his fox. With the help of the shadow, Chu Xingqin could see through the walls, and thanks to this, he was able to find Shizuo Wu but the guy didn't manage to even get on the fox's trail, and that worried him. Mother smiled sarcastically. She said that it turns out that they came for a magnificent fox. The old woman added that she had to disappoint them because they came too late. Chu Xingqin and Shu Zuo Wu looked at each other in surprise, and then looked at the old hag again. The guy's eyes showed excitement and concern for the fate of their little friend, and Mother Chen fully enjoyed the fear of the boys, which she herself had caused and continued. The old woman said that the fox ended up in the tavern owner's private collection. The guys clearly imagined how the fox was sitting in beautiful clothes in a luxurious apartment. Then maybe they force her to dance wildly or sing funny songs. But the fox's eyes always remain sad. She misses her school, her friends, and all this luxury is alien, and maybe even disgusting to the fox. It was difficult to imagine this. The frightened Xingqin took the old hag by the breasts and began to yell at her to immediately lay out everything she knew about the owner's private collection. He also asked how to find the owner. Mother Chen said that Xingqin seems to be a fool because he does not understand that the fox has now become the slave of the owner of the Jade Tower Tavern, and now no one can save her. The old woman began to yell that spiritual power could not be used in this building. She said, does Xingqin really hope to fight the owner alone? and defeat him within his own walls? Mother Chen got very excited and started yelling that this building was the embodiment of the tavern owner. 
Chu Xingchen got tired of listening to her screams, and he gave her a good punch in the teeth. Chu Xingchen said that whether the building is the incarnation of the owner or not, in any case, it will be very bad for both of them. He pulled noble Shi Zuo Wu behind him, but Shi Zuo Wu was in no hurry to leave. He looked back at the girls and said that they couldn't leave them like that. After all, soon the guards from the tavern will appear here, and Mother Chen will recover. At this time, on the first floor of the tavern, the most elite, a feast was in full swing. The tables on the red floor of the Jade Tower were laden with delicious treats, and sparkling wine was poured into glasses. But the princess didn't like all this very much. She was yelling at one girl who was trying to feed her. The princess screamed in disgust that the girl should not touch her, because she did not like women. The sweet girl sat on the same chair with her majesty and offered her food. The princess tore and tore. She did not tolerate such closeness and familiarity. She could barely contain herself. At this time, Kong Feng was happily chatting with another girl and drinking wine. She whispered to the princess that she was behaving unnaturally, and they might be suspected of something or even discovered. The princess thought Kong was having a good time, and the impudent girl shoved her face right into the princess's face. Her majesty could hardly restrain herself from hitting the molester. At this time, somewhere in the depths of the huge body of the mushroom building, a line of people was moving. It seemed strange, but the mushroom did not cause any harm to people. This was the first time this happened here. This group of people was led by Xing Chen, followed by his comrade and right-hand man, Shi Zuo Wu. Thanks to Chu's possession of the stone, the mushroom obediently allowed them to go where they needed to go. The system asked Chu why they were bringing all these freed girls with them. Chu replied that they could not abandon them. The boys were going to take them to the princess, into her care. On the way, Chu Xingqin was thinking about how to find the owner of the Jade Tower Tavern. But that was only half the story. Then he had to be defeated, and the fox had to be freed. What Chu Xingqin didn't like the most was that it was impossible to use spiritual power in this place. This put him at an unequal position with the owner, who controlled everything here. Xingqin was just thinking about his mother's words that the building is the embodiment of the owner. Although it seemed meaningless at first, it seemed that this was the key to unraveling everything. Just at this moment, Chu Xingqin's mirror shadow stopped, and Chu almost ran into it. The shadow made room and pointed the guy somewhere ahead. Chu rushed forward impatiently. Ahead, Chu Xingqin saw some strange field with many runes glowing on it. The ghostly shadow was precisely pointing to these runes. Apparently, it was dangerous to go further. Soon, the mirror shadow was already standing at its full height, and not only Chu Xingqin, but also Shu Zuo Wu and others were looking out from the hole. This place was special. It was felt immediately. Chu Xingqin felt unusual energy fluctuations in this place. The mirror shadow tried to explain something, but it was difficult to understand. Then Chu Xingchen decided that he would figure it out himself. The guy decided to take a closer look at the mysterious glowing runes. A thought appeared in Chu Xingchen's mind that perhaps because of these runes, spiritual power cannot be used in this place. Therefore, Chu Xingchen turned to his mirror shadow and asked it to try to destroy the glowing runes. At that time, this seemed like a completely reasonable decision to Chu Xingchen. Shadow didn't have to be asked twice. She hit the runes with all her might with her right hand. At first it seemed to Chu that nothing had happened, and the blow was in vain. But then everything changed. But soon the guys saw that everything was in motion. It looks like the blow hit the target. A vibration appeared under the guy's feet. The roof of the tunnel along which they were moving began to move in waves. Chu Xingqin and the noble Shi Zuo Wu began to scream in fear. It seemed to them that soon everything here would collapse and bury them under thousands of tons of flesh of a giant mutant mushroom. While the guys were afraid of the collapse and were trying to figure out where to run, Chu Xingqin, out of the corner of his eye, saw someone behind him who very much resembled a fox. At the first second, he couldn't believe his eyes. But then Chu Xingqin thought and decided that even if there was even the slightest chance that it could be a fox, this opportunity should not be missed. Try and find her later in these wilds. Therefore, Chu Xingqin shouted the fox's name with all his might and ran in the direction where he thought he saw her. 
Chu Xingqin tried very hard not to fall behind completely. The guy continued to pursue the invisible fugitive, and at some point, he again managed to see a shoulder and hair that could belong to his fox. Chu continued the pursuit. Finally, around the next bend, Chu Xingqin was able to clearly see the fox. It was really her. Chu Xingqin loudly shouted the fox's name to attract its attention to him. In response, Xingqin heard his name. This means it was still his fox, and not a shadow, not a hallucination, not a mirage, and not a manifestation of a sick imagination. Chu was very lucky to find the fox. Lisa smiled at the guy. Then she called him by name again. After that, the fox continued to leave and call Chu Xingqin. She even shouted to him that she really needed his help. So, Chu Xingqin continued to run further and further into the body of the giant mushroom, prompted by the call of the fox. Trying to help Xiao Xi, the guy didn't even look around much. As a result of this chase, Chu Xingqin ended up in some strange, incomprehensible place. He didn't really remember how he got here, and now he didn't know how to get out of here. But Chu understood that it was dangerous here. While the guy was trying to navigate the area and take control of the situation, a hole appeared under his feet. Chu Xingqin could not resist and quickly flew down. Chu Xingqin tried to grab the walls of the hole as he fell, but he failed. The guy just tore his hands up and got a few bruises on the way down. The hole was deep, and the fall stopped unexpectedly for Chu Xingqin and was quite painful. The guy hit his head on the ground. The blow even stunned him for some time, and blood poured from his nose. Now, Xingqin found himself in an even stranger place. Thick living columns towered around, with red splashes visible on them. And terrible red eyes looked from above. Chu Xingqin tried to contact his mirror shadow. The system said that as long as it was in place, Chu Xingqin would always have a connection with his shadow. The guy understood that he couldn't get out of here quickly. Therefore, Chu Xingqin told the mirror shadow to take Shi Zuo Wu and the others to the princess. In this situation, this was the best option. Her Majesty knows what to do. Having solved one problem, Chu Xingqin again became preoccupied with where he ended up. He was also annoyed that the fox eventually disappeared from sight. It turns out that the whole chase was in vain. Chu Xingqin even contacted the system, asking if it had seen a fox somewhere nearby. Although at this time the fox was very close, almost behind Chu Xingqin's back. Moreover, the fox sneaked up and tore Xingqin's back with its nails. The surprised guy did not understand what was happening. He did not notice the fox, and now he did not understand where the sharp pain came from. The wounds on Chu Xingqin's back were quite deep, and blood sprayed out in all directions. But now, Chu Xingqin managed to see a fox out of the corner of his eye, which quickly jumped away. The fox was at a safe distance where Chu Xingqin could not reach her, and took a fighting stance. The fox's eyes glowed red, she didn't look like herself. Xingqin looked in horror at what the fox had become. The system noted that the fox had her own will suppressed. At this time, the fox was completely under someone else's control. Chu screamed about what had been done to the fox. He shouted for the fox to cover up, since her fluffy clothes didn't really cover her chest. The system said that these comments were out of time. Then the system informed Chu Xingqin that it seemed that the fox had deliberately lured him to this place. Moreover, the fox could use spiritual power, whereas Chu could not. The system added that without spiritual power, Chu Xingqin is no match for the fox. Therefore, the system offered the guy a grenade so that he could do something to counter the belligerent fox. The grenade explosion was quite effective. At least Chu got a break and was able to think about the situation he found himself in. It must be said that he didn't come up with anything worthwhile. But the system did not waste time. She provided Chu Xingqin with an armful of grenades. Moreover, these were both smoke grenades and explosive ones. Chu wondered why the fox would be blown up. The system replied that if Chu loses, then it will all be over not only for him, but also for the fox. It was also not known then what would happen to their friends in this evil place. As a result, Chu Xingqin threw a smoke grenade at the fox in order to at least slightly reduce its fighting spirit. The fox coughed violently, but continued to advance on Chu Xingqin, and from above, terrible red eyes watched the battle. If Chu could read their thoughts, 
he would hear that they were surprised and interested that he was strong even without spiritual power. And Chu Xingqin, you know, activated the grenades and tried to suppress the wild fox with them. It's good that the system did its best, and Chu Xingqin did not need to save ammunition. At this time, a voice thundered from the ceiling that Chu Xingqin was relying too much on his system items. Then the voice continued that this would not help Chu Xingqin win. Then, the voice continued to assure Chu Xingqin in every way that he had no chance of winning, and it was better for him to give up. It seemed that the voice was going to suppress Chu Xingqin's will and gain a psychological victory over him. Xingqin looked up in surprise and alarm. He didn't know how to perceive the voice, who it belonged to, or what to say in response. Something amazing was happening above. One of the terrible red eyes began to stretch downwards. There was a white bump at the end of the eye. Chu Xingqin watched this process in amazement. For a while, he forgot even about the fox. Soon, the top of the eye cracked, and a pink dough-like mass poured down from there. It all looked quite disgusting, but Chu Xingqin watched it as if spellbound. The viscous, pasty substance continued to flow from the red eye. Gradually, it began to harden a little. In some places, thickenings have formed on it. Then the picture became completely creepy. This viscous mass gradually accumulated below, hardened and changed shape, gradually turning into a person. Chu almost vomited from what he saw. Chu Xingqin could hardly restrain himself from running away from this terrible thing. The viscous dough turned into a human body, and then this body came to life and even spoke. It was tough. Then the dough man, constantly glaring at Chu Xingqin, introduced himself solemnly. He said that his name was Liu Teng Yun, and he was the owner of the Jade Tower Inn. Chu Xingqin moved away from this strange man. He held a grenade in his hands in case this freak decided to attack him. And the fox didn't seem very surprised by Liu's appearance. Chu Xingqin muttered what kind of creepy appearance this is. He also asked the tavern owner what he had done with the fox. In addition, the guy asked what the tavern owner was up to. In response, Liu Teng Yun asked Chu Xingqin how he dared to come to his tavern without having any idea about him. Liu Teng also stated that he needed the Chu system and would take it. Chu Xingqin was amazed and excited. On the one hand, he did not understand how the owner of the Jade Tower Tavern knew about his system. On the other hand, he was simply afraid for her. Terrible red eyes continued to look at everything that was happening from above. There was no way to hide from them in this strange place. Chu felt like they could see right through him. Chu Xingqin asked Liu Teng Yun what system he was talking about. Chu added that he didn't quite understand what the owner of the Jade Tower Inn was asking him. True, it was a desperate bluff. But Liu Teng Yun didn't buy it. He said that Chu Xingqin had no need to play dumb. He also stated that he knew a lot about systems, and even said that he knew that two systems had recently disappeared. The Chu system said in confusion that it was likely that Liu Teng Yun also possessed the system. But she wondered why she didn't feel it. And Chu at this time thought about the stone in Liu's chest. Chu thought some more and came to the conclusion that the stone in Liu Teng Yun's body senses the fox grandmother's stone that Xing Chen has. This was a completely reasonable explanation of what was happening. Chu had long known that there was a connection between the stones, and he now knew for sure that Liu Teng Yun had the smoker's grandfather's stone. But it was not clear how the stone for breaking the seal got to him. It was as if the tavern owner had read Chu's thoughts. He asked him if he was interested in what was in his chest. He added that it may look creepy, but it helps him live. Liu Teng Yun told Chu that he would never understand how a person feels when their body collapses while exchanging items. To survive, Liu had to dissolve into a puppet. The tavern owner added that this is why he needed the Chu system. Carried away by the story, Xing Chen did not notice that the fox crept up close to him and tried to sink its strong teeth into his body. The guy managed to dodge at the last moment, and the fox's hand, which ended in claws, convulsively squeezed the empty space several times. The fox's face was twisted with anger and hatred. However, Liu Tung Yun continued to speak. He informed Xing Chen that if he voluntarily gave up his system, the tavern owner would free the fox and allow her to leave with the guy. The tavern owner added that Chu Xingqin didn't want anything to happen to the fox. 
Chu became angry and growled back at Liu Tengyun that he was in vain trying to threaten or blackmail. Then, Chu Qingqin became angry with the fox for interfering with his conversation and grabbed it tightly by the throat. The fox hissed with anger and sprayed saliva, but could not escape. Chu Xingqin continued to hold the fox and explained to Liu Tengyun that he and the fox were related. Therefore, even though Chu Xingqin could not use his spiritual power, he pumped it out of the fox. When Chu Xingqin felt that spiritual power was returning to him, he shouted to the tavern owner that he no longer dared to threaten or try to blackmail him. Now the fox seemed as if it were not alive. Chu Xingqin drained almost all the energy from her. On the one hand, he became stronger, and on the other hand, he got rid of the fox that attacked him. Chu Xingqin lifted the fox by the scruff of his neck with one hand and looked menacingly at Liu Tengyun, who seemed discouraged. Siphoning the energy from the fox was the right and timely decision. Now, Xingqin realized that control over the situation was gradually returning to him. But it was too early to celebrate the victory. He was confronted by a strong and cunning opponent. Moreover, Liu Tengyun had no intention of giving up. He told Chu Xingqin that even if the fox was exhausted when it woke up, it would still remain under the control of the tavern owner. Then, crooked hands with hooks at the end reached out to Chu Xingqin. These hands appeared straight from the floor. And Liu Tengyun laughed and told Chu that he controls absolutely everything here. Liu Tengyun also reminded Chu Xingqin that he had comrades in this building. He said that even if Chu could take care of himself, he would not be able to get them all out of here safely. Chu Xingqin hugged the fox to himself to protect him from the gnarled hands that were reaching out to them from all sides. But this was a temporary measure. There was nowhere to retreat, and there were more and more hands. But one amazing thing happened. Just when Chu thought it was all over, the tentacle's hands came close to him, and the fox, one of the hands, turned back without causing harm. This event did not escape Liu Teng Yun's attention either. Moreover, he attached even more importance to this than Chu Xingchen. The tavern owner continued to watch the developments. Soon, another one of the tentacles almost touched Chu Xingchen, but turned around at the last moment. Liu Teng Yun constantly controlled the puppet, but it stubbornly avoided attacking Chu Xingchen. The tavern owner thought further. He guessed that it was precisely because of this strange behavior of the puppet that he was unable to catch either the harmful Chu Xingchen or his mirror shadow. Chu Xingchen also analyzed what was happening. He came to the conclusion that the white doll has its own consciousness, and apparently it has a special relationship with Chu Xingchen and his shadow. Chu then noted that Liu Teng Yun had merged with the white puppet and was able to partially control it. Chu Xingchen wondered how this knowledge could help him defeat the enemy. When the plan more or less took on real shape, Chu asked the system to throw him a weapon. This time, the guy asked for a smoke grenade. He had to act carefully. Then, Chu Xingchen activated a smoke grenade and everything was covered in a thick, pungent-smelling fog. You couldn't see beyond your own nose. For Chu, it was time to act. It must be said that the owner of the Jade Tower Tavern also did not see anything in this fog. It really seemed to him that something was moving in the fog, but he knew that this was a deceptive feeling. Moreover, Liu Tung Yun felt completely safe within his own walls. He still had not realized that Chu Xingchen was a serious opponent to be feared. Under the cover of a thick, acrid fog, Chu Xingchen managed to get close to the tavern owner. The guy tried to pull the stone out of the man's body, but it was not an easy task. Chu Xingqin understood that the white puppet was closely connected with the stone. He just needed to pull it out of the body of the owner of the Jade Tower Inn. But that was easier said than done. Moreover, at some point, Xingqin felt that the tendrils from Liu Tengyun's body that were holding the stone on his chest were tightly wrapped around Chu's arm. The guy suddenly found himself trapped. The tentacle shoots continued to rise up Chu Xingqin's arm. One has even touched his neck. But Chu Xingqin could neither reach the tight-fitting stone nor pull his hand back. Liu Tengyun said that Chu Xingqin dare not touch his priceless treasure. But then the tavern owner smiled and said that Chu Xingqin's brazen stupidity would even speed things up. The innkeeper said that if he absorbed Chu Xingqin into his body, the Chu system would automatically be in him. Liu Tengyun remarked that this was a brilliant and feasible idea. Now, even more shoots reached towards Chu Xingchen's body. 
the situation was critical, and the tavern owner said that Chu Xingchen became his flesh and blood. It was terrible. The appendages were already touching Chu Xingchen's face, which frightened the guy very much. But the situation was hopeless. He didn't have enough strength to fight the white puppet. Gradually, the white puppet's tentacles touched Xingchen's brain. It was an amazing, incomparable feeling. Moreover, it did not turn out to be as scary as it had previously seemed. Chu Xingchen's consciousness merged with that of the white puppet. The puppet gained access to his memory, and at that time, he could use the memory of the white puppet. It was interesting. Chu Xingchen delved further and further into the jungle of the white puppet's memory. He was literally rocked on the warm waves of her consciousness, and a film of her memories floated before his eyes. Pictures floated before Chu Xingchen's eyes one after another. At some point, he was able to recognize familiar figures. The guy had no doubt that the back of his grandfather flashed before him. The area was quite unusual. Chu Xingchen even thought that the events were taking place among the clouds, although this, of course, was stupidity. Just Xingchen's imagination. Soon, Chu Xingchen could see a distant figure that was quickly approaching. It was very strange, but when she came close, Chu Xingchen could not see anything except her feet in leather boots. Soon the man bent low and Chu Xingchen could see the man's face. The guy was filled with curiosity. He really wanted to see what would happen next, but Chu Xingchen was not destined to see this. His entire field of vision was covered with glowing blue runes. Somewhere deep in his brain, Chu Xingchen heard someone calling him intensely. Gradually, Chu Xingchen emerged from the depths of the white puppet's mind. He remembered who he really was and heard his name spoken many times by the worried system. When Chu Xingchen returned to reality, the agitated system asked him why he suddenly stopped moving and his eyes closed. Chu Xingchen replied that he had seen the white puppet's memories. The system explained to Chu that something happened while he was away. It turned out that halfway there, the puppet stopped devouring him and turned back to fight against Liu Teng's control. The owner of the Jade Tower Tavern yelled at the puppet in every possible way. He ordered her to absorb Chu Xingchen and then became indignant at why she suddenly refused to obey him. Liu Tengun gathered all his strength and energy to bring the white puppet back under control. The stone in his chest glowed brightly from streams of energy that moved in different directions. Chu Qingchen took advantage of the confusion and moved away from the tavern owner. The guy took the still unconscious body of the fox with him. But this was not an escape yet. But by this time, Chu Xingchen realized that the stone was the core of a white puppet. Therefore, as long as the stone remained in Liu Tengyun's hands, the white puppet continued to obey him. In the process of merging consciousnesses with the white puppet, Chu Xingchen learned a lot of valuable information. He now knew that the stone controlled the white puppet through the blue runes. Chu now also knew that the shadow was unable to harm the puppet because it had two defense circuits and the shadow attacked one circuit. Then the system asked where the second circuit was. Chu Xingchen replied that the second circuit of protection is located in Liu Tengyun's chest. This was the key to victory in this battle, as well as the opportunity to destroy this dirty and depraved place. On the ground floor, on the red level of the Jade Tower, no one suspected what passions were raging inside the building. Here the tables were still laden with all kinds of delicacies. It cannot be said that the princess enjoyed what was happening on the red floor. Therefore, she was very happy when she saw her friends, who appeared right in the middle of the floor of the room. Seeing Chu Xingchen's mirror shadow, the princess initially thought that something had happened to him. But then Her Majesty realized that it was just a mirror shadow of Chu Xingchen. While the guys were getting out of the floor, the princess asked where her master had gone. She really wanted to see Chu Xingchen, but he was not among the friends who appeared. Shu Zhuo Wu replied that Chu Xingchen saw the fox and left after it, and told them to find the princess. The noble guy added that Chu can be contacted using his mirror shadow. At Her Majesty's request, the mirror shadow attempted to contact Chu Xingchen. But for some reason the guy didn't answer. Apparently, he was busy at that moment, or could not talk. Shu Zhuo Wu and the princess began to worry. They thought that perhaps Chu Xingchen was in trouble, and needed to go to the rescue but they had no idea where he had gone, or how to find him now. At this time, Chu Xingchen was indeed in a very difficult situation. He continued to fight Liu Tengyun. 
he held a grenade in his right hand and activated the trigger with his teeth. Chu Xingqin threw the grenade away. The wave from the explosion showered him with heat and small fragments. The guy still had hope of harming the tavern owner with grenades, but it didn't seem to harm Liu Teng Yun much. He noticed that Chu Xingqin was interested in the stone in his chest. He asked the guy if he hoped to destroy this stone. Chu Xingqin replied that he had no desire to destroy the stone. Then he had to jump to the side as Liu Teng Yun tried to reach Xingqin with his tentacles. Chu Xingqin, in turn, asked the tavern owner why he needed the Chu system. During the conversation, the guy had to constantly change his position so as not to be caught in a trap. Liu Teng Yun tried to charm Chu Xingqin's teeth, while he himself wanted to get closer to him. But Chu Xingqin was not so easy to catch. He did not forget to control the situation. In addition, the guy used a lot of grenades, which the system generously supplied him with. At first glance, it seemed that this weapon did not cause any harm to the tavern owner. At some point, Chu Xingqin managed to throw almost half a dozen grenades towards Liu Teng Yun's chest. The tavern owner just glanced at the grenades and snorted contemptuously and impatiently. The explosion was stunning. Clouds of smoke and dust clouded everything around. Such an explosion even shook the ground under his feet, and Chu Xingqin swayed from side to side several times. When the clouds of smoke cleared, Liu Teng Yun remained standing in place. He wearily told Chu Xingqin that he was trying in vain. He couldn't be defeated with such a simple and cheap weapon. But while Liu Teng Yun was boasting, he felt some movement in his chest area. He looked down and was amazed to see that the stone had activated and pushed forward. More to come. Soon the tavern owner felt unwell. A dense, aching pain spread throughout his body. In addition, purple blood flowed from Liu Teng Yun's nose. He roared terribly, fearing for his life. Literally, visually, it was already noticeable that his body began to collapse and the stone continued to separate more and more from his strange body. Liu Teng Yun looked at his chest again in amazement and horror. Now the stone was almost free. The formation that held it was destroyed almost completely. The blue stone seemed to come to life. It shone. The runes around it glowed. Looking at all this was terrible for Liu Teng Yun, because this stone had been part of his body for a long time. Xingqin noticed that the runes creating this space were a double formation. He said that normal attacks are not effective against the double formation. But he had one trick. Chu Xingqin contacted his mirror shadow and asked it to attack the runes. And at this time, the guy himself attacked another part of the formation, which was located in the chest of the tavern owner. The mirror shadow fulfilled Chu Xingqin's request with great willingness and zeal. When it came to battle, Shadow Chu did not need to be asked twice. Therefore, the runes received a powerful beating, and Liu Teng Yun's body continued to deteriorate. It looks like it itself was nothing without the stone. The tavern owner screamed and howled in horror and pain, but Chu did not feel sorry for him. Chu Xingqin silently waited until the owner of the Jade Tower Tavern was so weak that he could simply take the stone from him. And it looks like the guy won't have to wait much at all. Soon, the seal stone almost fell out of Liu Teng Yun's body on its own. Chu Xingqin could only stretch out his hand and take it for himself, but not everything turned out to be as simple as one might think. Chu Xingqin grabbed the stone tightly with both hands. He shouted that it was time for Liu Teng Yun to return to Chu Xingqin, the thing that once belonged to his old man. The tavern owner yelled that Chu Xingqin was an idiot, because as soon as he took the stone out of Liu Teng Yun's body, the Jade Tower building would collapse and Chu Xingqin's comrades would die. Chu Xingqin replied that he was not worried about his comrades, because when he contacted the shadow, he ordered it to notify everyone and begin evacuating people from the tavern building. It should be noted that the building began to shake even earlier. When Chu Xingqin exploded entire clusters of grenades, the Jade Tower shook from the base to the top. The visitors were scared. They came to the Jade Palace Tavern to have fun. But suddenly there was a threat to their lives. The visitors did not know what to do or where to run to escape. But fortunately, by this time, Chu Xingqin's friends already knew what was happening. They dispersed to all floors of the tavern and began evacuating visitors and staff of the Jade Tower. True, not all the employees of the Jade Tower Tavern trusted the new guys. Some girls tried to contact the owner of the tavern, or at least their mother. 
but no one answered them. Mother Chen could not answer the girl, since she and her closest assistants were tied up on the floor of the basement at the far end of the Jade Tower. Meanwhile, the guys from the Wujian school launched a vigorous activity to get all the people out of the collapsing building. True, the princess continued to worry about her master Chu. Her majesty didn't even want to leave the Nafrate Tower without Chu Xingchen. But time was getting shorter and shorter every minute, and the path to the exit was not close. Soon, the Jade Tower building shook violently several times. Large and small pieces began to break off from the walls. Behind the girls, two blocks fell from somewhere above. The guys took a good look at how it fell so dark. Imagine their surprise when they saw human skulls, as well as a skeleton. It was very strange. The guys had no idea where these human bones came from. It was a rather grim find, especially since the Jade Tower Tavern was collapsing. Kong Feng, who was not as suspicious as the others, shouted that it was time to leave. With every passing second, staying in the Jade Tower becomes more and more dangerous. People from all sides rush to the stairwells and exits. A crush and confusion began. It was extremely dangerous to be in such an excited and frightened crowd. At this time, Chu Xingqin's shadow was returning back. While all the people were running towards the exit, Chu Xingqin's mirror shadow was returning back into the bowels of the strange building of the Jade Tower Tavern. In the farthest corner of the mirror shadow tavern, we managed to find Chu Xingqin, who was still clutching the blue stone in his hands. There was no time to waste. The mirror shadow quickly grabbed Chu Xingqin as well as the unconscious fox, and her arms tightly wrapped around the guy's neck. After that, the shadow rushed straight to the exit. The guys who managed to run out into the street in a timely manner watched with fear and curiosity as the Jade Tower Tavern collapsed. At the last moment, people jumped out of it. The destruction of the building was accompanied by a loud crash and rumble. Clouds of dust erupted from the windows and walls. The spectacle was quite scary, but at the same time somehow fascinating. The people who were the last to jump out of the tavern began to run as fast as they could to get further away from the falling building. The debris flew in different directions and could have injured someone. The kids from Wujin school managed to escape from the tavern at the last moment. Just a little more, and they would have no chance of surviving. But the joy of salvation was darkened by one thought. The guys didn't see that Chu Xingqin also ran out of the Jade Tower Tavern. At this time, there was great turmoil. Some shouted that they needed to run away. Others did not understand what had happened. At a distance, a small group of onlookers stood, attracted by the noise of the collapsing building. These were passers-by who were going about their business, and then decided to see what was happening. Towards the general fall, at the site of the fall of the Jade Tower, there was a whole warehouse of human bones. It looked like the tavern was full of human bones. The kids from Wujin's school continued to look around, trying to find Chu Xingqin. They asked the survivors if they had seen the guy. We also looked among the ruins of the tavern. Soon the guys saw the mirror shadow of Chu, who was carrying their master in his arms. From a distance, it was not clear whether Chu Xingqin was dead or alive. Therefore, the guys hurried to the shadow to find out more. The shadow held the motionless Chu in his arms. The guy still had the blue stone in his hands, which he had obtained with such difficulty. There was a fox nearby. She was still holding onto Chu's neck. The frightened guys surrounded the mirror shadow on all sides. They started calling Chu Xingqin and also vying with each other to ask the shadow what happened. But the shadow could not speak. The princess assumed that Chu lost consciousness due to the enemy's curse. But the beauty standing next to him said that most likely Chu lost consciousness because of the fox, which squeezed his neck. The idea was quite clever. It was necessary to simply unstick the fox from Chu Xingqin's neck. True, the fox attached itself in such a sophisticated way that it was not at all easy to implement. But with everyone's efforts, they finally managed to separate the guys and free Chu Xingqin's neck. Everyone fervently prayed that it would not be too late to bring Chu Xingqin back to life. Quite a long time had already passed, but neither Chu Xingqin nor the fox showed any signs of life. The guys were very worried and at a loss as to what was happening and what to do. The motionless Chu Xingqin continued to clutch the blue stone in his right hand. The stone glowed, it was activated, and it directly affected the brain of the unconscious Chu Xingqin. At first, the guy's eyes were covered with a black veil. 
Then a white dot appeared in the middle, which grew larger and finally turned into a white square. So far, there was only snow on it. But soon, Chu Xingqin's surprised face appeared in the light square. The guy was quite aware of himself, but he did not understand where he was. Xingqin wasn't at all sure whether he was alive or dead. Soon, Xingqin heard someone calling out to his master. The employee said that a man came to them. Chu Xingqin thought that they meant himself and hurried to cover his nakedness. The gentleman was doing important work. He was making a doll. And his servant said that a friend had come to him. The master didn't really want to break away from his work. Errors in his work were unacceptable. The master barely took his head off the doll and asked the servant what business his friend had come for. Is this an important matter or some trifle? He didn't want to waste time on trifles. Chu Xingqin watched with interest the events that were right in front of him. The guy understood that he was seeing something very important, but so far he had not been able to understand the essence of what was happening. The master continued to ask the servant what kind of friend had come to him and on what issue. And Chu was quite surprised that the puppet master turned out to be such a young age. Indeed, the puppeteer was quite young, if not young. In addition, he was short and quite handsome. Chu felt that puppeteers should be different. Chu Hingchen continued to observe what was happening. The master did not greet his comrade very warmly. He recognized him, but was surprised why he was wrapped in clothes so tightly. The newcomer really looked strange. His face was not visible. His forehead and eyes were bandaged, and his clothes were somehow casually thrown over his shoulders and hanging down. This mysterious guy muttered something, but Chu Xingqin couldn't hear what he said. Perhaps he spoke a language Chu did not know. The stranger's face was disfigured. Chu looked with all his eyes. He was interested to see what kind of person he was, and also to know his story. He seemed to have either been damaged by a fire or had not recovered from an illness. The master puppeteer asked his comrade what happened to him and why he was in such a deplorable state. Then he showed hospitality and invited his friend to come into the house. The house was not big, but it was enough for the master to live. He had everything he needed in his house, and he doesn't need much. But the house was always clean, warm, and comfortable, although there was no woman there. The master asked his friend what was happening to him. What causes the body to rot? After the newcomer took off his clothes and exposed his shoulders, a terrible picture appeared before the eyes of the puppeteer and Chu. The master asked his comrade that this curse of the demon race was corroding his body and mind. This curse was a rather serious illness, for which there was no cure. The puppeteer noticed that the curse was destroying his friend's body too quickly, but he assured his comrade that he would help him. The master told his friend that he has a doll that removes all curses. The puppeteer promised to remove the curse from his friend the next day. Chu Xingqin gradually began to understand what was happening in front of him and what events preceded it. When Chu Xingqin fully realized what was happening, he almost jumped out of himself. He wanted to stop it so much. But what could the guy do? Because he was not a participant in these events. In fact, Chu Xingqin was only observing events that happened in the distant past. But nevertheless, Chu Xingqin continued to silently shout to the master not to save his friend. Chu Xingqin then saw the reddish mist that he had seen once before. It was a fog of horror and pain that threatened all living things. And to see its source was terrible. The red fog grew more and more. Chu Xingqin continued to observe the puppet master's actions. If only he had stopped. If only he had refused to help his friend. But it was all in vain. The master puppeteer continued to do his job, which he had done all his life. Now the entire space around the two people was filled with a crimson fog. But gradually the master began to realize that he was faced with something terrifying that he had no idea about before. The master whispered in horror that the spell could not be so powerful. The puppet master turned to his friend and said that he had lied to him, meanly deceived him, and used him. But his former comrade only looked at the puppeteer indifferently. Spell puppets are created from people. The higher the level of the person from whom the doll was made, the more curses such a puppet doll can take on. The master used a puppet to lift the curse. This puppet was made by his mother. This doll turned out to be so strong 
that it could withstand the curses of the martial emperor. But the curse with which his friend came to the master turned out to be a thousand times stronger than even such a strong puppet could withstand. In his career as a puppeteer, the master has never seen anything like this. The comrade had not an ordinary curse, but a heavenly one. He was cursed by heaven itself. No one could bear such a curse, and also no one could deliver a person from such a curse. The puppet master was twisted into three deaths. He began vomiting blood, and his nose began to run. He got in touch with something that shouldn't have been touched, but he found out about it too late. The young master faced a curse so powerful that even Emperor Wu could not lift it. The master's body continued to deteriorate, wounds appeared on his hands, and his body shivered. Tenacious hands reached out to the sick master from all sides. They tried to grab him, but by that time, he was so exhausted and depressed that he did not pay attention to it. These were patients. Soon they came to the master and began to whine and moan that they were seriously ill. Their bodies were being eaten away by ulcers. The young puppet maker looked back at them in horror. Trembling hands were reaching out to him from all sides. Sick people came to him with hope, knowing that the master could remove even the most terrible curse. But this time he couldn't. The puppet master could not help them in any way. He urged them to run, to run away from this place. He asked them not to pay attention to the disease, but to rejoice that they were alive. But the hands of people, hungry for healing, reached out for the master with even greater persistence. They tried to touch his clothes or body, hoping that this would help them get rid of their torment. The master could not do anything in this situation. He only begged people for forgiveness. He said he didn't want to do this. The master admitted that he had made the biggest mistake. Then the puppet master appeared before his father, who taught him everything and passed on the craft to him. The master also began to ask for forgiveness from his father and declare that he had brought trouble. The master told his father that he could not justify his high trust in him. He failed to continue his father's work at a decent level and help those in need to heal. The young master also showed the broken doll to the old man. He said that this was also his fault. Now the doll cannot be repaired. His father squatted down to examine the doll. The old man carefully examined the wreckage of the doll and realized that it really could not be restored. And the young master continues to moan and blame himself for everything that happened. His father said that a new doll needed to be made. The old man's words were interrupted by the young master's sobs. The father added that if there is no doll to absorb the curses, they will die. The father also stated that he has a high level and will be able to withstand many curses when he turns into a puppet. He also asked his son if he remembered how to make a new doll. The puppet master was amazed at the proposal his father made. He said that although the father is old, he should not sacrifice his life because of the terrible mistakes of his son. The father objected in response that the guy was really stupid. He said that without a new strong doll, no one would survive so it's better to sacrifice one person and save the rest. In the end, the father added that they are responsible for the lives of other people and they need to fully justify their responsibility. The young master listened to his father's words with humble awe. At this moment, Chu Xingqin heard his name several times. It seemed strange to him that who could know his name here? Later, the call was repeated and with even greater insistence. Chu Xingqin finally opened his eyes after a long period of nothingness. His worried friends gathered around him, and the fox sat next to him and probably slapped Chu Xingqin on the cheeks. At least Chu's cheeks were burning. He quickly stood up and placed a block with his hands, as if he was going to defend himself. The princess nearby chirped that apparently everything was fine with Xingqin. Chu Xingqin held his burning cheeks with both hands, and the fox behind him squealed cheerfully saying that slaps in the face would help Chu come to his senses faster. She also added that he taught her this trick himself. When the white puppet collapsed along with the tavern, Chu used the golden eye while his spiritual power was limited. Chu Xingqin managed to see something possessed in the stone. Chu Xingqin told the system that thanks to the power of the two stones at once, he was able to see one of his old men. The guy added that the story was very scary and sad. But it was the past and could not be changed. But it could be analyzed and the knowledge gained used in the future. Like, for example, 
the fact that a friend of the master had an earring in the shape of a snake. Chu informed the system that the man with the earring was close to his smoker grandfather and was a martial arts emperor. He tricked his grandfather into helping him lift the heavenly curse. The system wondered what a person could do to receive the curse of the heavenly path. Chu Xingchen just shrugged. He could not imagine such a terrible act. It was true that Chu Xingchen had a suspicion that his Aunt Fox had fallen in love with this treacherous man who had so cruelly used his smoker grandfather in his younger years. The system estimated that these events must have taken place 500 years ago when the Heavenly Path existed. Therefore, the system asked what happened to the man with the earring. Chu Hingchen replied that this is exactly the most amazing thing in the whole story. All information about this person has been deleted. Even the words he spoke were deleted, every single one. Chu Xingchen also remembered that on the mountain, the old people did not talk about their past. Now the guy thought that maybe someone had also removed and sealed the old people's memories. The system told Chu Xingchen that they needed to gather as much information as possible about the strange man with the snake-shaped earring in his ear. At this moment, the princess loudly called out to Chu Xingchen. Chu Xingchen had to tear himself away from an interesting discussion with a system that helped remove the veil of secrecy from the events of the distant past, as well as from the past of his elders. The princess reported that they had a small problem that required Chu Xingchen's attention. Then the princess pointed to the freed girls and asked Chu what to do with them. One of the girls stated that she was sold to a tavern when she was nine years old. She had spent her entire life within the walls of the Jade Tower and now had no idea what to do next. Many girls have been in a similar situation. They were confused, did not know what to do, and what future awaited them. Some of them were planning to move to another similar institution. Xingqin approached the girls and asked what was going on here. The girls were discouraged. They didn't want to cause anyone any trouble. But on the other hand, they had no idea what to do. Having seen so many girls experienced in caresses, the system declared that now Chu was in trouble and he would not be able to get away. In response, the guy tried to bend the system screen so that it would shut up. When Xingqian stepped back to reason with the concerned system, a whole crowd of girls rushed to their knees before Her Majesty. They wanted the princess to help them get back on their feet. The princess wondered why all these girls were pestering her. She had no idea what she could do. The girls said that the princess was born rich and had the power to help them. Chu Xingqian always believed that farming solved any problem. Chu would be glad for the girls to work in the field. But in this hole, in the phantom market, there was no sunlight. The system slapped Chu Xingqin on the back of the head. She stated that the world is very big and diverse, and Chu constantly thinks only about farming, believing that this is a panacea for everything. Then, Chu Xingqin told the girls that he had an idea. He added that if the girls agree to trust him, he has one good way to help them get on their feet. A large eagle soared high in the sky. The sky was cloudless. The day was sunny. But this was not an ordinary eagle that was trying to track down its prey and then fall on it from a height. The eagle had just flown to the big shining city. The city had luxurious palaces, huge swimming pools, as well as flowering and fragrant gardens. It was a big city. A narrow white gap appeared in the dark space of one of the city's palaces. The sound of unhurried steps was heard, as well as the quiet creak of the door being opened, and the gap began to widen. One of the messengers appeared on the threshold. He walked slowly, but all his movements betrayed his nervousness. It looked like he was waiting for something, or maybe he was afraid of something. Soon the envoy went out into the street and turned the corner of the building. His steps were clearly imprinted in the silence of the night. There were no more sounds around, except for the rare hooting of an owl. Soon the envoy headed to the place to receive the letter. It was sealed with a special seal. Apparently, this letter was recently dropped by an eagle flying high above the city. The envoy received the letter and quickly read it. But it was impossible to say whether he liked the contents of the letter or not, since his face was constantly hidden under a half mask. Then, the messenger came to his master, who had an earring in the shape of a snake sticking out of his ear, and said in a breaking, excited voice that another system had suddenly disappeared. This time, it was the system of Jade Tower Inn owner Liu Teng Yun. The owner said displeasedly that this was the third or fourth system that had been lost. The messenger dared to say that it was no accident that so many systems were lost. 
Finally, a system appeared that could evolve on its own. The owner stood silently in front of a huge shelf on which there was data on all systems. He looked at the place where he had just turned off the space of the Liu Teng Yun system. Then, the owner slowly raised his head up and turned to the heavens with the question that it seemed like they wanted to lure him into a trap. He looked up for a moment, as if waiting for an answer. Then, the owner spread his arms to the sides and looked up again, this time at the myriad stars in the night sky. He whispered that 500 years had passed, but now he had found a way out of the impasse. Then, the owner turned to the envoy and said to continue to monitor Chu Xingchen. He also added that special attention should be paid to the fact that Chu was unable to collect information about them. Then, the owner looked at the clear starry sky again and muttered that it was time to speed up the intervention in the heavenly path. He waited a little again, as if he was waiting for an answer. Then, a huge map of the lands appeared in the owner's hands. He twisted it from all sides, trying to find the place he needed. Soon, the object that interested the owner so much was found. Then, the owner ran his fingers over the map for a while. He looked at different lands, looked at what cities were located on them, and then said that Kanglin greatly surprised him. At the ghost market, everything was as before. Everything went on as usual. There was still no daylight there, but there were many different establishments where wealthy clients came. But something new has appeared on the market. If you walked along the central streets, you could hear people conveying the news that a new establishment had appeared on the market. This new establishment turned out to be the Jade Pill House. People looked at the sign with interest and distrust and wondered whether it was worth going inside to get acquainted with the goods. Passers-by were surprised that a new building appeared so quickly. Everyone knew that the Jade Tower had collapsed with a great roar, and the visitors barely managed to save their own lives. One of the former employees of the Jade Tower reported that the new building was built by a special engineering team. Moreover, it was built in the time it takes for one stick of incense to burn. A sweet girl beckoned the man to come inside and see everything with his own eyes. They don't charge you money to look at it. Or maybe he even wants to buy some pills. Inside, Chu Xingqin personally explained that the Jade Pill House offers pills, beautiful designs, as well as delicious food. In the future, the range of goods and services will expand. Chu and Shizuo Wu turned out to be very skilled barkers. Their sincere smiles encouraged visitors to come inside and have a good time. Moreover, Hu Songlai himself was sitting at the cash register. Shizuo Wu showed a small jar and said that it contained a hundred nightly pills. These pills make anyone feel like a real knight. One of the girls demonstrated Western divine oil that cured any skin disease. The girl smiled sweetly and winked at the visitors. So they bought oil. Whole crowds of men stood in line to get the divine oil that was advertised by such a sweet and even seductive girl. Everyone understood that the oil was excellent. Hu Song Lai simply did not have enough hands to place orders for everyone who wanted to receive Western divine oil. The poor guy, as always, had too much hard work to do. At this time, a charming girl, from whom oil was bought in great demand, attacked Shi Zuo Wu. She told him to learn how to sell from her. Shei replied that guys can't wink at customers. Chu Xingqin was pleased to see that everyone had something to do to their liking. Although Hu Song Lai was not very happy with the large flow of customers. But Chu didn't care about Hu's feelings. Chu Xingqin smiled cheerfully. He now considered himself not only a genius in agriculture, but also a genius in trade. Large families suppressed their original school business. The families had a monopoly and they blocked the distribution channels for the pills. Here in the ghost market, large families could not influence the pill business in any way. In addition, the production of pills required labor, and the girls from the Jade Tower were excellent saleswomen. They could even sell snow in the far north. On all issues that the girls did not yet understand, they could be advised by a beauty who was excellent in medicine and all kinds of potions. Everything was under control, but the beauty was very surprised that Shu Zuo Wu continued to wear a woman's dress. In response, the guy explained that he was advised to sell in women's clothing, and his sales increased. The girl with blue hair could not stand the new image of a noble guy and took him to change clothes and the princess also found work. He was great at giving orders. Chu Xingqin encouraged Hu Songlai, 
who was already dizzy from the number. Chu Xingchen asked Song Lai in surprise if he was not happy that their company had such a large turnover. Chu Xingchen became very interested in entrepreneurship. Apparently, in addition to the craving for farming, he had another craving for trading. Chu was going to solve the financial difficulties of Wujin's school. But as always, at the most joyful moment, some news comes that upsets you. This time, the bearer of bad news was a fox. She pulled Chu away from counting her profits. On the screen that the fox was holding in his hands, the angry face of the coach appeared, who told Chu Xingqin that they were completely irresponsible and had completely forgotten about the existence of the tournament. Chu Xingqin looked around sadly. He had to admit that the coach was right, as he always was. It was very tempting to sell with such nice girls. But it was also necessary to fulfill obligations to the Wujin school. Since the guys came to the tournament, they should put training and competition first and not fool around. The coach harshly reminded that Chu Xingqin promised to return back to the city as soon as he found the missing fox. It was for this reason that the coach let the guys go alone. He believed them. The coach also reminded Chu that in order to enter the Valley of the Buried Sword, one must qualify. The guy was deep in thought. Although the coach scolded him, it was for the job. Therefore, Chu Xingqin prepared to return to the city with his team. Chu Xingqin decided to leave Hu Lu as the eldest, so to speak, head of the House of Jade Pills. The guy protested. He reminded Chu Xingqin that his headaches were not over yet. But Chu Xingqin countered that Hu Lu was still the best merchant in the ghost market. Chu Xingqin also did not miss the opportunity to share his knowledge of entrepreneurship with Hu Lu. It was very convenient to write the necessary formulas on a stick that stuck out of Hu's head. While the formulas were pouring into the brain of the unfortunate guy, Chu Xingqin gave him his last verbal instructions. He informed Hu Lu that they would return as soon as they had free time. The responsibility for all the girls fell on Hu Lu's shoulders, which Chu Xingqin left with great relief. Hu undertook to pay them their salaries on time and keep all the books. Several days passed. It was still very warm. The weather was clear and the sun was shining. But in the city of Shi Yu, not everyone was in a good mood. Preparations for the competition were underway. There was no time to rest at the Wujin School Rest House. The guys were also preparing for the next stage of the competition. Since their coach was demanding, it was necessary to settle all the issues. The coach showed the children the list of teams that will participate in the elite matches. The guys carefully read the list with interest and some fear. They knew many of them personally. During the previous stage of the competition, the children from Wujin School had to deal with some of the strong teams. They fought against some, collaborated with others. The coach did not fail to sternly remind the guys that their level was unusually low, so they would have to work hard to get even a little closer to the level of other teams. Then the coach ordered everyone to pack up to set off on the journey to the kingdom of God. Chu Xingqin asked in surprise why they suddenly needed to go to this place. The coach was never famous for his eloquence, but this time he outdid himself. Already leaving the guy's room, he muttered irritably that this was a requirement of the competition organizers. Previously, the bearded grandmother Kong Lao was also surprised that the order came to send to the kingdom of God. She said that Jialan and Shi Yu City were well prepared for the competition. The envoy replied that recently there had been problems in Jialan involving competition participants. Therefore, it was decided to move the competition to another location. The messenger decisively announced that the kingdom of God promised to fully assist in holding the tournament, and therefore everything would be held at the highest level. Kanglin will not be able to refuse this. Grandmother apparently did not like these statements. This could be understood by the way she knitted her eyebrows, moved her nodules, and shook her thin goatee. The weather was great again. Although this time the sky was covered with dense clouds, the travelers flew above the clouds. And, as always lately, the gentle sun shone brightly for them. This time the flight was much more comfortable. The imperial family provided a huge flying palace. There was so much space here that sometimes we had to look for each other. But the guys often gathered near the fenced sides to gaze at the expanses stretching out in front of them from above. The princess kept looking out for the final destination of the journey. Due to changes in the schedule and location of the competition, the guys had to hit the road so as not to be late. But they weren't against air travel either. 
Moreover, the journey took place in the best conditions in such a large and beautiful flying palace. There was also plenty of delicious food and rooms for relaxation and entertainment. So, the guys didn't have to get bored, but they mainly liked to look at the terrain passing beneath them. Just she pointed Chu Xingqin to the famous Juxian Mountain. The spectacle was truly magnificent. Chu Xingqin saw the mountain for the first time, and he was surprised why its peak was drowned in a strange purple glow. But this was explained quite simply. Shai told his comrade that there is a lot of spiritual energy in this place. The legend said that it was in this place that immortals lived. Therefore, excess energy causes a violet glow. Chu Hingchen did not understand what kind of immortals he was talking about. He asked the system about this, and in response it reproached him that it was difficult for him to look into the divine encyclopedia himself. Immortals are one of the oldest races in the kingdom. A long time ago, they fought against demons and suffered huge losses. After that, they secluded themselves on Juxian Mountain and rarely interacted with people. Shu Wu added to this information that immortals are born with heavenly eyes and a red dot on their forehead. Shu Wu added that this point helps them understand the path of heaven. At this moment, all the guys clearly felt that the flying palace was slowing down. The princess noted with surprise that the tournament would really continue on Mount Juxian. Soon, all representatives of the Wujin school clearly felt that the flying temple began to descend. They were flying quite high, so landing took some time. Several minutes passed before the guys could notice the surface of the mountain below them, which kept hiding under a veil of clouds. The area seemed truly magical. Soon, the luxurious flying temple landed with great noise and shaking the mountain itself. Clouds of dust rose around the landing site, and at first it was difficult to see anything. But soon the surrounding area began to appear. The temple landed in a very beautiful place. There were beautiful buildings, picturesque gardens, and a pond with turquoise water all around. It was announced over the loudspeaker that the Juxian Mountain of God's Kingdom was happy to welcome the arriving players. The boys were also told that they were in a special place in Juxian Mountain. Also, the children from the Wujin school were shown a complex where training rooms, alchemical rooms, and dormitories were located for each of the teams that arrived at the tournament. The princess noted that good apartments are very important for the team. After all, the possibility of good rest and nutrition directly depends on this, and this in turn affects morale. At this time, one of the local women approached the guys. Her specialty was purple hair. She clarified whether the representatives of the Wujin school were really in front of her. When Chu Xingqin confirmed that they belonged to the Wujin school, the woman said that she would take the boys to their rooms, which were located on the western side of the large campus. On the way, a woman with purple hair told the guys that the training rooms are open all day and the cafeteria is only open during mealtimes. This was par for the course. The woman pointed to a dilapidated house and said that their team would be better off in this separate house. The princess didn't like this at all, and she said how dare they treat them like that. The woman replied that she had seen many weak teams that get into an elite tournament by chance and then imagine themselves to be a cool and strong team. But reality will sober them up. As she left, the woman said that she was sure that they would be eliminated after the first competition. So she advised them that the guys should not unpack a lot of things. The princess was furious. How Gung barely managed to keep the princess from immediate reprisal. The princess could not tolerate such an attitude, but the girl told her that if they start fighting, it will be even worse. One of the girls from Shiyu Academy noticed that the representatives of the Kingdom of God were arrogant and arrogant, as always. The princess muttered that she noticed this and remembered it for the future. Her majesty growled that she would fight for Kanglan and knock out all the teeth of the representatives of the Kingdom of God. But the experienced Kong Feng answered the princess that not everything is so simple. She added that the kingdom of God has enormous resources and wealth. Many important people of the empire are on their side. Therefore, their resources, strength, and capabilities are an order of magnitude higher than others. Kong Feng cited the example of Wen Mao, who was considered the pinnacle of the new generation in Jilan. But at the same time, in the kingdom of God, this guy would be an ordinary average person. Chu Xingqin noted that the strongest team in Jialin is not Qinshan, but the Divine Moon Academy. 
Those present were forced to admit that Chu Xingqin was right. Yes, Divine Moon Academy has always been at its best. These guys took places in the top 10 of any competition year after year. And many times we ended up in first place, or even three. It turned out that it was not in vain that Xingqin remembered the Divine Moon Academy. It must be said that the guy knew Mo Dai better than anyone from this academy. Chu had to deal with her a couple of times. This time, as soon as Chu Xingqin thought about Mo Dai, the girl appeared almost immediately. Xingqin was not particularly happy to meet this buxom beauty. The guy was afraid that she would give him away. Mo Dai looked impressive as always. It seemed that she had come not to compete, but to participate in a fashion show. Her light clothing emphasized her slender figure, but when the girl saw Chu Xingqin, there was no friendly expression on her face, although she had known Chu for a long time. Mo Dai coldly noted that they had not seen Chu Xingqin for a long time. To avoid even more awkwardness, Mo Dai turned to Kong Feng. She said that she knew that the girls from Shi Yu Academy suffered during the group tournament, and she was very sorry. If several beautiful girls gathered together, when Mao would appear there. A short but proud guy came up to them and began to talk about how they might have been lonely without him. The princess informed Chu that she knew these people and it was better to be careful with them. These guys knew their worth, and if they wanted to achieve something, they stopped at nothing. Soon, a tall, handsome guy, the captain of the Divine Moon Academy team, appeared. He announced that they had information about all the teams that would take part in the tournament. The Divine Moon Captain suggested that everyone familiarize themselves with this information. This will help you get to know each other better before the competition begins. Yishan began handing out folders with information. Soon, Yishan approached Chu Xingqin and offered him a folder of information. Chu Xingqin extended his hand to take the folder, but in the meantime he turned his face away so that Yishan would not recognize him. But Yishan seemed to suspect something. He tried to take a closer look at Chu Xingqin and then said that it seemed like he had seen Xingqin somewhere before, but he couldn't remember where or when. But then the wise and beautiful Mo Dai approached the guys, who asked Yishan if everything was fine with him, if there were any difficulties with distributing materials to the competition participants. Yishan turned to the girl and asked if Chu Xingqin seemed familiar to her. The guy added that he was almost sure that he had already seen Chu Xingqin once, but he couldn't remember exactly. Mo Dai quickly found something to answer. She said that Yishan was mistaken. Chu just strongly resembles one girl they met in the House of Spring Sense. Chu Cho's sister was there. Yishan actually remembered Chu Cho's sister, who looked like Chu. The guy realized that he was mistaken. He also asked Chu Xingqin if he had a younger sister. Chu said no. Chu Xingqin experienced several very unpleasant and exciting moments. It was as if the earth was burning underneath him. It seemed to him that he had been discovered. Everything was literally hanging by one thread. When Yishan left, Mo Dai told Chu Xingqin not to worry. He wouldn't be recognized. She added that on that memorable mountain, Yishan hit his head and damaged his brain. Mo Dai added that after this, some events were erased from Yishan's memory. The girl added that Chu Xingqin need not worry about it at all. No one will know his secret. Chu Xingqin felt extremely relieved. He was very pleased with the girl's words. But on the other hand, he was surprised why she didn't expose him, since she remembered him perfectly. Mo Dai noted that contrary to her grandfather's opinion, she does not think Xingqin is a bad person. She also added that Chu once saved her life, but she has already repaid him in full for that. Then, Mo Dai said that Chu Xingqin does not change over time. He again puts himself and everyone around him in danger. The guy looked at the sensible Mo Dai in bewilderment. Chu Xingqin replied that he was not planning anything bad. His only desire is to engage in agriculture in peace and harmony. And he doesn't care about everything else. Mo Dai didn't say anything to this. She turned around and was about to leave. But on the way, she turned to Chu and said that entering an elite tournament is much easier than staying in it. The blue-haired girl and Xu Zua Wu studied the papers with enthusiasm. The beauty noted that it was quite kind of the Divine Moon Academy to share the information, but the master of the Wujin school did not seem to be so complacent after studying these papers. He told the guys that he was going to hold a meeting and everyone should be present. The weather was excellent at the top of Juxian Mountain. 
although it was not as hot here as on the plain, there were more sunny days here. Some of the clouds were below the top of the mountain, but in the house the Kingdom of God teams were not so much concerned about the weather conditions as they were solving pressing issues. Due to the transfer of the tournament to them, they have new responsibilities. These people began every meeting, no matter what issues it concerned, with prayer. They thanked the higher powers for giving them food, as well as for wealth. The God's Kingdom team was very disciplined. The guys knew their worth very well, understood the power they had, and tried not to just squander this power. Soon their leader solemnly announced the beginning of the meeting. One of his first questions was whether the guys had completed their homework. For a moment, there was silence. Then, the students began to report. They did not take their missions lightly, so they were able to collect a lot of information that interested their leader. Indeed, the guys from the Kingdom of God collected a lot of information about most of the teams that participated in the tournament. But their leader was still not satisfied. The God Realm team was scolded for collecting too little information about Wujin's small school. The guys saw their low level and did not consider it important to take them into account. But their leader objected. She said that the Wujin school's coordination and tactics are very good, and they often defeat weak opponents. And special attention should be paid to Xingqin. Then, the leader pointed out to the guys some secret documents that dealt specifically with Xingqin. It turned out that this guy is far from simple, and you need to keep an eye on him. Representatives of the Academy of the Kingdom of God began to whisper among themselves. The point was that the mysterious they want their academy to take care of the Wujin school. At this time, Chu was learning information about other teams participating in the tournament so much that he even had wrinkles on his forehead. But Chu was unable to read anything positive. Seeing the levels of the God Realm team members, the princess grabbed her head. Her majesty absolutely did not understand how one could fight with them. There was no talk of victory. Shuzo Wu Melancholy noted that the weakest player from the God Realm team was above the level of the strongest player from the Wujin school team. It was something incredible. The Fox noticed that even the rules of this tournament work against them, although they are already the weakest team here. In general, the guys were not in the most fighting mood before the start of the tournament. The first stage of the tournament will take place in Tianxian Cave in Banzhou. It was quite a dark and dangerous place in itself but the conditions of the competition made it even more difficult to pass this stage. Each team was required to have five people who went into the cave and searched for the mark for three days. The stage was considered successfully completed if two conditions were met. The first condition was that at least four people from the team must reach the finish line. The second condition was that the guys must have one or more tags. The guys were very surprised when they read that the percentage of people who passed the first round of elite competitions is only one in 10. The coaches thought about it. As a result, the meeting lasted several hours. All available information about the tasks, as well as about the team's competitors, was carefully studied. Plans were prepared for various occasions. Finally, the day came when the competition began. It was the first day of the first stage of the elite tournament. Most of the teams were in a fighting mood and the guys themselves were rested, but this did not apply to the Wujin school team at all. The guys were not just sleepy, they were dozing as they walked. Their mouths practically did not close, so they had to yawn. Wen Mao was surprised at the deplorable state of the Wujin team. Zuo Wu explained to the guy that they had hardly slept for the last two days. They were either practicing tactics or discussing strategy. Wen Mao replied that there was no need to worry so much. He noted that during the first round, there will be several teams from the same country. Therefore, it would be logical to start collaborating. At this time, contemptuous remarks were heard directed at Wen Mao. The proud guy lazily looked around and looked at his ill-wishers. But he was too lazy to argue with them. But the guys continued to persist. They said that Wen Mao still has enough time to take care of others. The guys noted that this year Kang Lan seemed to be well prepared. At this time, the other guys from Chinshan Academy responded to the opponents that they needed to work on the battlefield, and the Luoyan Academy team was used to working only with their long tongues. Shuzo Wu was surprised that even such a strong team in the tournament had sworn enemies. Wen lazily explained that too many teams had noticed him at the last tournament. The short, proud guy added that in this tournament, his Wen Mao was chosen as a target. 
he was attacked by different teams, trying to drive him into a blind corner and then destroy him. Wen shuddered from these memories. He lifted his cloak and showed his legs. Then Wen added that he had so many enemies that his legs were ruined, and then it took him a long time to recover. Wen Mao growled that because of a bunch of vile assholes, his legs took a long time to heal. The proud guy added that his pride was seriously hurt at that last tournament. Then, Wen Mao added that he never forgets anything and does not forgive anyone for anything. So anyone who has ever offended him or opposed him needs to be on guard. Then, Wen Mao turned away from the Luoyan Academy team and told the guys that they shouldn't pay attention to the stinking bastards, much less waste even verbal energy on them. The guys from the Luoyan Academy team only snorted contemptuously in response to the evil Wen Mao's remark. But after his fit of anger, they no longer tried to hurt the Qingshan team. At this time, Chu noticed that a person from Luoyan Academy was staring at him. The guy didn't understand why he aroused the interest of these vile guys. But Chu decided to keep an eye on them. When Luo Yan's team turned around and left, all the guys breathed a sigh of relief. None of them liked these people, and no one wanted them to sniff out anything. Chu wondered why Wen Mao's legs were hurt. Chu asked if Wen wasn't in a state of mind during the tournament. In this case, it would not affect his physical body in any way. Wen Mao informed Chu Xingchen that in elite competitions, they do not use spirit substitution, so all attacks will be more than real. This news literally stunned Chu Xingchen. But Wen assured the Wujin school team captain that before the competition began, everyone was given the opportunity to withdraw at the last minute. After all, it happens that someone unexpectedly gets sick. Just at this time, the start of the first stage was announced. The team members were asked over the loudspeaker to take their positions. Each detachment had to be in the zone of its own country. All the guys from different teams hurried to take their places. After Chu Xingqin found his guys, he began to look at the sign that he was given just before the start of the tournament. The organizers did not forget to mention before the start of the competition that food, elixirs, and other items that give participants an advantage over others are not allowed at the tournament. Soon, the teleportation began. Five people from the Wujin school team took their place. Teleportation was not an entirely pleasant thing, although this was not the first time the guys had experienced it. The first impression upon teleportation is that it is immediately covered by blackness, which seems to settle not only in front of the eyes, but in the brain itself. Then you can already discern something. Usually, after teleportation, all feelings and sensations intensify, as if from a good shakeup. This is how Chu Xing Chen, after this procedure, was able to see how a drop of water grows. Then, the drop, which had reached its maximum size, broke away and fell down. Chu Xingqin very clearly heard the sound of a single drop falling and saw circles on the water from it. But now, there was no time to immerse myself in contemplation of the world or practice meditation. In this place, Chu Xingqin needed to survive first, and this was not an easy task. Chu Xingqin did not see his teammates nearby. He noted that after teleportation, they were separated again. True, Chu hoped that this time his comrades were not too far away. Chu Xingqin gathered his will into a fist and decided to shout in order to attract the attention of his faithful friends, if, of course, they were at such a distance that they could hear him. True, Chu Xingqin did not hear an answer from his friends, but he managed to attract the attention of one evil creature which immediately grabbed his shoe. Chu Xingqin kicked his leg a little. Then the guy began to wave his leg with all his might, trying to shake off the toothy fish from sticking. But the creature was very tenacious and hungry and was not going to part with Chu's boot. Chu Xingqin got tired of shaking his leg and grabbed the fish with both hands, trying to tear it off the shoe that she liked. Finally, the guy managed to get rid of this evil creature. Chu Xingqin was about to start celebrating his victory, when out of the corner of his eye, he saw a whole school of monster fish behind him. A school of such fish could easily gnaw his body to the bone. Therefore, Chu Xingqin decided not to tempt fate and started to run. The fish were very hungry. They literally jumped out of the shallow water, trying to grab Chu Xingqin's heel. Soon, Chu Xingqin saw a fox being chased by another school of these groupers. The frightened fox screamed with all his might, 
trying to break away from the chase, but the fish did not lag behind. Chu picked up the fox and began to run even faster than before. The fish continued to chase the guys. They even grabbed their clothes in flight in order to get closer to the body with the help of their fins. But soon the fox and Chu Xingchen received reinforcements. The lightsaber, like a laser beam, cut the fish in half right in flight. Chu was glad that the team gradually began to gather. Noble Shizuo Wu invited the guys to run forward. The guy himself was going to cover them from behind with a lightsaber. This weapon turned out to be effective against fish. But Chu Xingqin did not like his comrade's idea at all, and he unceremoniously pulled him back to retreat. Chu remarked that it was not worth wasting valuable spiritual power on these little freaks. In such a case, Xingqin had his own plan. The guy summoned his mirror shadow, which unquestioningly carried out his commands. Using shadow energy was not as bad as using Xi's power. Indeed, the mirror shadow turned out to be an excellent shield from small toothy fish. And now the guys got the opportunity to take a breath and greet each other. But for now, there was no time to rest for long. We urgently needed to find the rest of our guys, because they might need their help. And to go further, you need at least four people. But soon the guys on the way met a monster even worse than fish monsters. This freak with a horn on his forehead was sitting right on the ceiling and prepared to attack the confused guys. The fox and Chu Xingqin screamed together as the monster tried to get them. Chu Xingqin jumped back in time, and the cuckold rushed past. But soon he began to prepare for a new attack. The fox was covering Chu Xingqin from behind. She released her claws and prepared to repel the cuckold's attack. In response, the terrible creature growled angrily, dousing the fox with its foul breath. But the next moment, when the fox was ready to grab the enemy, the cuckold received a strong blow with a club right on his gnarled teeth. The fox had a surprised expression on his face. This time, help came from unexpected places. The peerless Wen Mao came to the aid of the other team. The proud guy used his stick to throw the monster away from the guys. When the guys began to joyfully shout his name, Wen Mao waved for them to shut up and then put his index finger to his lips, thus demanding deathly silence. Chu Xingqin and the fox looked at the cuckold in surprise, who seemed to have lost his orientation in space. The guys stared in bewilderment at the monster, which just recently had been so formidable. Now the cuckold shook his head from side to side like a greyhound that had lost its track. Now the guys have time to look at this monster more carefully. Meanwhile, Wen Mao showed the children from Wujin school in sign language that the monster is as blind as a mole, but has unique hearing. This was very valuable and timely information. The guys now understood why Wen Mao immediately urged them not to make a sound. In this cunning way, we managed to avoid a protracted and exhausting fight with this peculiar monster. Then the guys, one after another, tiptoed away from the blind cuckold. It was good that there were constantly more of them, and now they could repel more serious attacks. Soon, they were seen by other children from Chinshin Academy, who were snacking on ripe bananas in a secluded place. The guys called out to the fox whom they respected from the previous test. Xingqin was very surprised where the bananas came from here. He remembered very well that the rules did not allow him to bring food with him. The rest did not stand on ceremony and began to eat. One of the guys from Chinshan Academy explained that it was he who created the bananas here with the help of his fighting spirit. The guy dissatisfiedly noted that no one forces Chu Xingqin to eat. The guys from Chinshan directed all their attention to the fox, which was popular with them. The fox didn't need to be asked twice. She began to busily munch on the free bananas. At this time, Wen, who was busy with more global issues than feeding the fox, noticed that he sensed other people in the cave nearby, but could not yet identify them. Chu noticed that in this cave, it was difficult to look for markers that would lead the guys to the finish line. Wen said that, first of all, we need to find the others, and then start tagging. Indeed, not far from the group of children, consisting of two academies, there were other people. And these people were not happy with where they were and what they saw at that time. Take the girl with blue hair, for example. She was literally numb with horror. She covered her nose, although she should have closed her eyes so as not to see the terrible picture of what was happening. Right in front of the girl with blue hair, several terrible creatures were greedily eating someone's flesh. It was impossible to say for sure 
whether these creatures found a corpse or killed someone. But it didn't really matter. In any case, these were very scary and dangerous creatures that should not be messed with, under any circumstances. But what was the girl to do? The girl with blue hair really wanted to run away and never see the terrible sight again. But she was afraid that if she moved, she would attract the attention of these monstrous creatures. But the beauty couldn't stay still either. Sooner or later, the flesh eaters might look back and notice her, even if she sits still. It was necessary to run away. True, when the girl crawled on all fours, tearing her knees until they bled, a pebble moved under her foot, and this faint sound was heard by one of the creatures. The monster immediately looked back. The monster saw the girl and immediately rushed to her. The girl with blue hair thought that this would be the end of her participation in the tournament. What could an ordinary healer do to a monster? The flesh eater came close to the girl and already extended his dirty paw to the chest of the girl with blue hair. She stopped in place, realizing that she could not escape. But in the next moment, a force field formed between her and the monster, and the flesh eater began to evaporate before her eyes. At least he stopped being dangerous to others. Someone's imperious and impudent voice loudly said that beautiful and helpless healers should not be mocked. The girl with blue hair turned her head towards her savior. In front of the girl stood two tall guys, confident in themselves and in their abilities. They had the expression of masters of life on their faces. The girl could not remember which academy they were from. The tall blonde extended his hand to the blue-haired girl and asked her if she was really from Wujin Academy. This guy scared the beauty no less than the monsters. But the blonde said in a calm voice that he was a gentleman and it was not in his rules to beat an unarmed healer. The girl with blue hair wasn't sure if she could trust this man. Meanwhile, the flesh eaters, attracted by the noise from several people at once, were getting closer and closer. The tall blonde man looked back warily at the bloody mouths of the monsters. Every minute there were more and more flesh eaters. And there were very few guys. Moreover, one of them was a healer, who could not help either in attack or defense. At some point, it seemed that even the confident tall blonde was afraid of the influx of monsters. At least he made a face and shouted loudly that there were too many of these creatures. Meanwhile, Limu, who was walking alone through the dark, damp tunnels, heard a loud noise. The girl realized that there was a battle going on nearby, and perhaps someone needed help. If the girl hesitated for a while, it wasn't for long. She remembered how, not long ago, the princess sacrificed her life in order to get her out of the enemy's clutches. In general, Limu rushed to run as fast as she could towards the noise of the battle. It was dark in the cave, but the girl believed that any second of delay could cost someone's innocent life. But suddenly, the archer's girl was attacked by someone's hand from behind. Limu was in such a hurry to get to the battlefield that she completely lost her vigilance for a while and became someone's easy prey. It was difficult to see anything in the darkness of the cave, but after the attack, Limu lost her coordination and almost fell. She heard perfectly well that the enemy was right behind her. Limu tried to counterattack the one behind her. The fox also fought tooth and nail, not seeing what kind of opponent was opposing her. This could have ended sadly. At some point, the girls could have killed each other. They froze when their weapons were literally a few centimeters from each other's throats. A little more, and a fatal mistake would have been made. But at this moment, the guys from Wujin school realized their mistake and called out to the girls. Li Mu heard familiar voices and stopped. The fox also took no action. Chu Xingqin sincerely apologized to Li Mu. He said that the tunnels were too dark, and so they sent a fox ahead, who had the best vision in such conditions. Li Mu drew the guy's attention to the noise of the fight that had recently died down. Xingqin said that they also heard this fight and were just about to head there to understand what was happening. Soon, all the guys together approached the place from where not long ago they could hear fuss and terrible screams of the dying. Everyone involuntarily tensed, not knowing what they would see soon. Soon, the children from Wujin school saw a real massacre. Severed limbs and bodies cut in half lay scattered around. Almost the entire floor area was covered in green blood. The sight was quite gloomy. After a good fight, there were always mountains of corpses left, and there was no escape from it. True, Chu Xingqin noticed that the blood is not human, and neither are the bodies. 
Chu Xingqin picked up the candle and bent low over one of the corpses. It really turned out to be not a person, but some kind of terrible demon. Chu Xingqin even recoiled from his scary face. At this time, Chu Xingqin heard a familiar voice calling out to him. The guy didn't even know whether to be more happy or surprised. He did not expect to meet an acquaintance at this place. Near the wall of the cave in a secluded corner, the guy saw a familiar slender figure. It turned out to be their old friend, who was also happy to see them under such circumstances. A girl with blue hair emerged from a dark corner. She was both upset and happy to see her teammates. The monster's face stuck out behind her. The guys shouted to the girl with blue hair that she was surrounded by a whole crowd of ugly monsters. The guys advised the girl to get out of there. They wanted to cover her retreat. The beauty replied that these monsters are not dangerous at all, but even cute. She added that just recently, people from the kingdom of God here cruelly dealt with these creatures. The girl with blue hair described the battle that took place, which resembled the beating of unfortunate creatures. The God's Kingdom team had no mercy. They destroyed everyone. The guys from God's Kingdom had great power, and these creatures turned out to be easy prey for them. At this stage of the tournament, there was no need to score points for kills, and these guys were just having fun. The tall blonde man flew into a rage and yelled that he would destroy every single one of them. He also complained to the creatures about why they dared to run away from him, since it was so difficult for him to kill them. Seeing the massacre taking place before her eyes, the girl with blue hair hid in a dark niche where she felt safer. But it turned out that she was not the only one hiding. Not far away, the girl was discovered by several monsters. True, they didn't look aggressive at all. They were even scared. They were also hiding in a dark niche. The girl with blue eyes took a closer look at the monsters and at some point realized that they were more afraid of her than she was of them. This discovery immediately added courage to the girl. The girl with blue eyes was naturally curious. That is why she decided to devote herself to healing. Now curiosity pushed her to better study these strange monsters. Beauty saw that although the monsters were not like humans, they did not feel any hostility towards the human race. True, they were afraid of people, and there had to be a reason for this. The girl realized that earlier, when she thought that the monster was trying to attack her, he did not have such aggressive intentions. He was simply trying to determine the source of the sound. Chu Xingqin asked that it was the people from the God Realm who made so much noise while they were dealing with the helpless monsters. The girl with blue hair confirmed this. Then, the system appeared and shared its observations of monsters with Chu Xinan. She reported that their body structure is more human-like than that of a monster. Then the system added that these monsters are very similar to people who had to live in caves for a long time and succumb to negative influences. Chu thought about it. It must be said that Wen Mao was not particularly concerned about the fate of the strange freaks they met in the caves. The guy was purposeful, he had a task, and he was going to solve it. On the contrary, Chu Xingqin was very concerned about the fate of these unfortunate creatures. He asked the system in disbelief how people could survive for many years in caves, and why. Neither the system nor Chu had an answer to this question. The system only suggested that they might be hiding from something. But what exactly could frighten them so much? It had no idea. Xingqin then asked the girl where the people from Luoyan Academy from the God Realm were now. The beauty shrugged. She said they killed everyone they found, and then disappeared. Chu Qingqin squatted down next to one of the frightened creatures, and thought deeply. In the end, the guy came to the conclusion that there was some kind of terrible mystery hidden in this place. But Wen Mao, who was trying to keep everything under control, called out to the guys and said that it was time to reel in fishing rods and go to another place. Mao saw the puzzled looks of the guys. The proud guy impatiently explained that apparently they were not the only ones who heard the noise of the battle, and soon various carrion eaters and other seekers of easy prey would flock here. There were indeed other people nearby. They were not particularly afraid of attracting unnecessary attention to themselves, and therefore they talked quite loudly. Someone called Von Shu Sithan. The partner began to yell at the blonde Ven Shu Sitan why he disappeared after the battle and did not capture the girl. The blonde countered that he had a better plan for how to arrange everything. He added that if they have to do dirty work to destroy whoever they need, then it is better to do this job without getting their hands dirty. 
Then Von Chi asked his friend, what is the most dangerous thing in the caves? The guy certainly knew about the creature that lived in the caves and terrified all living things. But he was literally speechless at the thought that his comrade had come up with such an insidious plan. Vanshi added that it is very likely that this creature was attracted by the noise of the battle and is rushing at full speed to the place where there was so much dead unnecessary flesh. The plan was daring, but wise. When she Sitan calculated that her friends would just approach the girl to help her. And then this will appear. In such a cunning way, the guy from Luoyan Academy was going to complete the task. Indeed, the guys were just quickly leaving the battlefield when they heard a blood-curdling roar behind them. Everyone looked around in fear, not understanding what kind of creature could roar like that. Behind the guys, a huge vile monster appeared with a large mouth, lined at the edges with two rows of sharp teeth. Such a sight made even the bravest of the company feel uneasy. The fox howled in horror when he saw such a huge thing right above him with an open mouth from which saliva was greedily flowing. If the guys had listened to Wen sooner, they would have avoided this meeting. At this time, Wen Shi burst into a nasty laugh. He muttered that after the meeting with the hundred-eyed worm, not only would there be no traces left of the Wujin school team, but also no wet spot. During his farming career, Chu Xingqin was well-versed in worms. But this was the first time he had seen such a monster. The guy doubted that such a worm could benefit the soil. The guys from Qinshan Academy once again lived up to their good name. They practically did not waste time looking at the monster in amazement, but immediately got involved in the battle with the monster. The attacks followed one after another. First, it was necessary to test the enemy's strength and study his defense capabilities. The guys from Chinshan began, so to speak, reconnaissance in force. The banana lover used his weapon. No matter how funny it seemed, bananas were quite effective for completing the task, and the attack itself was not energy-consuming. Using an attack with bananas, the guys realize that the worm's defense is quite effective, and there are practically no weak points in it. And the worm itself turned out to be at the level of a martial arts king. The guys from Chinshan Academy analyzed all the information collected, studied the damage that was inflicted on the worm using bananas in order to develop a new battle strategy. Finally, Wen Mao made his expert judgment that they could not defeat this worm by any means, and therefore they needed to run as fast as possible and run as far as possible. The most amazing thing about this overgrown worm was the large yellow eye that was located right in the monster's mouth. And the monster opened its mouth so often that the eye was constantly in sight. The monster, with the help of its bestial instincts, found the easiest prey and set off in pursuit. Unfortunately, the worm began to chase a girl with blue hair and a couple of freaks. The beauty tried to find a quiet place to hide and save her charges. The girl had a broad soul, and her years of healing had greatly developed her compassion. As a result, the girl with blue hair found herself trapped, and the huge worm was running towards her at full speed. There was no salvation. Even the guys from Chinchin decided not to mess with the monster. But at the last moment, an obstacle was found for the monster worm, which greatly surprised this creature. It roared in outrage. It seems like no one has ever stood up to him before in his life. But the overgrown worm had never had to deal with Chu Xingqin before. The guy could not allow this monster to devour a member of his team right before his eyes. Even the strong representatives of Qinshin looked at Chu Xingqin's action with their mouths open. They didn't know whether to admire the guy's courage or be saddened by his stupidity. Seeing what kind of giant he attacked, Xingqin himself already considered his act stupid. But if he had to, he would do the same again he could not leave a member of his team in trouble. During the battle, Xingqin realized that he did not have much chance to win this battle. The only thing that could change the course of the battle in his favor was only a miracle or an accident. The guy managed to balance in the open mouth of the monster. Chu Xingqin firmly held the upper jaw of the worm with his hands and rested his feet on the ground to prevent the monster from closing its jaws. But it should be recalled that during previous competitions, the fox found great respect among representatives of the Qinchen school. Therefore, these guys could not stay away. Chu Xingqin was already barely holding the monster's mouth open. He understood that his strength was not endless, and although he had certain secret reserves, sooner or later they would run out. At this time, the familiar whistle of a lightsaber was heard, cutting through the air with a roar. 
Chu realized that the noble Shu Wu had entered the battle. But it was not yet clear how this would help. But in such a critical situation, when every second and every pound of strength was worth its weight in gold, any help was priceless. At the very least, it gave me a chance to catch my breath. Shu Wu, no less brave than Chu Xingchen, jumped into the monster's mouth and began wielding his lightsaber. True, it became clear almost immediately that this was ineffective. Then, Shu Wu began to direct blows directly at the yellow eye, which was located in the monster's mouth. It seemed to the guy that there might be something very important in this strange eye, but then the noble Shu Wu was forced to admit that he could not inflict any significant damage on the monster. The difference in levels between the guy and the beast was too great, but Shu Wu continued to fight, even though he saw that it was a futile task. At least he diverted the monster's attention to himself a little, and Chu could come up with something in the meantime. But at that moment, the overgrown worm managed to sneeze. It looks like Shu Wu was still able to tickle the worm with his sword. The creature's unexpected sneeze blew away the noble guy, and he flew down. Chu Xingchen again had to hold the monster's mouth open himself. From the tension, Chu Xingchen began to yell. He decidedly did not understand what to do. It was too late to retreat. In addition, when the hundred-eyed worm sneezed, he managed to not only blow away Shu Zuowu, but also splatter Chu with mucus. The situation for the guy was critical before, but now it has become hopeless. Chu's entire face was smeared with nasty mucus from the depths of the monster. Not only was the worm's level much higher than Chu Xingqin's, but he had also used dishonest tactics before. Shu Zuowu rose to his feet after falling and began shouting something to Chu Xingqin. Behind the noble guy was Li Mu, who was also shouting something to her commander. But Chu Qingchen's eyes and ears were stained with mucus, and he could not hear or see anything. The situation was unpleasant. The guy's hands were full. He couldn't even wipe himself with his sleeve. Chu Xingchen simply went mad with helplessness and relished spitting into the monster's open mouth. The guy growled that the vile creature thought that she was the only one who knew how to spit. Chu Xingchen decided to use his eye to thoroughly examine the body of a huge worm and perhaps find some kind of flaw or weak point in it. Chu simply did not see any other way out. At this time, light footsteps were heard. Someone was approaching the worm. Although it seemed like a pointless exercise to those present, it was impossible to remain silently on the sidelines. Soon, Wen appeared on the battlefield. Although Chu Xingchen was not one of his team, the proud guy did not want to leave him to be eaten by a worm, especially since they had already cooperated before. The unsurpassed Wen Mao launched a series of powerful blows at the worm's body. The guy moved very quickly and also quickly and accurately delivered his blows, trying to cause maximum damage. Wen Mao's weapon literally rang in his hands. Its owner himself said that his weapon sang a victory song when he heard this ringing. But victory was very far away, if it was possible at all. Wen Mao did not strike aimlessly. He tried to hit the monster's eyes, which were scattered in disarray throughout his body. It seemed to the proud guy that this was a vulnerable place. Soon, other guys from Qinshan Academy shouted a battle cry and joined their leader. The pressure on the huge, monstrous creature increased every minute. Now the battle has become more dynamic. The guys delivered precise, precise blows from different sides, trying to hit vulnerable spots on the worm's body. A worm's roar rang through the air. The guys from Qinshan Academy performed tirelessly. In battle, months and even years of hard training came in handy. If you woke them up in the middle of the night, they would immediately begin to fight well. Although there were a large number of eyes on the monster's body, they had already been amazed by many of the Qingshan Academy team members. After the eye was pierced by the weapon, liquid flowed out of it. Chu Xingchen was still in the monster's mouth, and had both of its jaws under control. This did not give the monster the opportunity to counterattack, and the guys from Qinshen were not afraid of attack. Soon after the guys from another academy joined the battle, Chu Xingchen saw that changes had occurred in the eye of the monster's mouth. Even small cracks appeared on it. Chu Xingchen used his eye to carefully study these changes and came to the conclusion that they were due to Qingshan attacking the eyes located on the monster's body. Therefore, Xingqin shouted to Wen Mao to continue destroying the small eyes, because thanks to this, the protection of the main eye falls. 
The guys had hope of dealing with the enemy. Li Mu also joined the fight. She attacked the huge worm from a distance. But the girl shooter also aimed at the small eyes in order to inflict maximum damage on the enemy. Li Mu unleashed a hail of arrows at the huge worm. Xing Chen continued to hold his mouth open. Therefore, at some point, the girl decided to aim at the main eye in the monster's mouth. A hail of arrows flew straight into the open mouth of a huge worm. Almost all the arrows hit the monster's main eye. It was simply an attack done with great skill. Chu Xingqin peered with surprise and even some trepidation at the large eye that was able to withstand such an attack. But there was still not enough damage to break through the defense. At this moment, Shi Wu approached Li Mu and had an idea. The noble guy did not know whether it would be effective, but decided to try this method anyway. Shi Wu took the arrow into his hands and filled them with the same light that sparkled on the blade of his famous sword. Arrows processed in this way received greater armor-piercing power. Then, Li collected the golden arrows and began to very quickly and methodically launch them into the central eye of the overgrown worm. This seemed to be their last hope to inflict damage on the monster. Apparently, this time, the protection of the central eye began to sag. Spots appeared on the eye, and the arrows continued to fly. The guys now have hope for a positive outcome of the battle. Perhaps, to an outside observer, it might seem that the girl with blue hair and the fox were relaxing and playing games during a terrible battle. But in fact, this was not at all the case. Meanwhile, arrows sparkling with light continued to hit the monster's main eye. Several dark spots on the eye widened and turned into one large brown spot. All the guys watched what was happening with anxiety and hope. But they understood that even their combined strength was not enough to break through the monster's defense, although they managed to weaken it. At this moment, everyone saw with amazement that Chu Xingchen had stopped holding the upper jaw of the huge monster with his hands. No one could understand where Chu Xingchen disappeared so suddenly and Chu Xingqin saw that the eye protection was giving in, but the finishing blow was missing. Therefore, the guy decided to try to break through the eye protection himself. Chu Xingqin had nothing left to lose. Chu Xingqin stood firmly with both feet on the monster's central eye. True, now no one was holding the monster's mouth, and nothing prevented the huge worm from finally closing it. At this time, Chu Xingqin was busy trying to break through the eye protection. Chu pounded the eye with all his might with both hands and also used the arrows that Li Mu shot at the eye. The guys couldn't see any of this from below. They only saw at some point that Chu Xingqin stopped holding the monster's mouth, and then the mouth completely closed with a grinding sound. The only thing the guys could assume was that the worm somehow managed to loosen Chu Xingqin's grip and then swallow him. Noble Shi Wu did not want to lose his friend, but the worm was too huge. When he rose up, his head was at a height of several floors. What could tiny Shi Wu do to him, even using a lightsaber? Against the background of the worm, Shi Wu, as well as the rest of the guys, seemed like just small insects. However, the noble guy was not going to retreat from the battlefield so easily. Shi Wu got under the very belly of the worm and used his famous sword. Li Mu was nearby, but she knew very well that in such a situation, her bow and arrows were useless and Shisusoru continued to press his sword with all his strength on the belly of the giant worm. The noble guy hoped to break through the belly of the monster in this way and try to free Chu Xingqin. At some point, Shi Wu also disappeared from the sight of the other guys. Another unexpected loss. But the most surprising thing was that it was not clear where the guy had gone. When Mao yelled, where could the boys from Wujin school have gone? It was very difficult to see the disappearance of the guys with whom they fought side by side against a common enemy just recently. Surprised and annoyed, Wen approached the worm, trying to find traces of the suddenly disappeared Shi Wu, But nothing could be found. Shu seemed to have disappeared into the ground. At this time, one could see how something began to move in the huge body of the worm. It seemed as if someone was kicking the worm from the inside. It was truly an amazing sight. At some point, the thick skin of the giant worm was torn and a hand emerged from the hole, the palm of which was clenched into a fist. An astonished exclamation was heard among the observers. Representatives from Chinshan Academy, as well as the guys from Wujin School, looked with all their eyes at what was happening in front of them. They thought it was a dream, 
and some even pinched their soft spots. Chu Xingchen appeared on the stage. The guy was not in the best mood. His entire body was covered with thick, foul-smelling mucus. Chu Xingchen spat and muttered that this was a complete abomination. Xingchen could barely stand on his feet from fatigue. He even swayed slightly from side to side. In his hands, he was holding some kind of dark ball from which a faint greenish glow emanated. An exhausted Shu Zhou looked out from the cut belly of the giant worm. The noble guy still managed to save his friend, although it made him experience terrible moments. Amazed people from Qinshan Academy ran up to their friends. Even Wen himself said admiringly that the guys from Wujin school are cool. It was nice to hear praise from a proud guy. Shu Zhou Wu said that he already thought that his sword would die when he pressed on its hilt with all his strength. But just at that moment, he managed to rip open the monster's belly. Thus, the noble guy opened the entrance to the body of a huge worm and saw his commander. Shu Zhuo Wu climbed inside, and there he and Chu Xingchen finished off the vile creature. Wen Mao looked at what Chu Xingchen was holding in his right hand. The proud guy said that this was a mark that had to be found according to the competition conditions in order to advance to the next round. Chu Xingchen was happy that they were able to complete the task although it was very, very difficult. During this grueling battle, Chu Xingchen thought many times that it was already over. Chu Angchen stated that he had no idea that there could be a mark hidden in the big eye. He was simply trying to break through the eye's protection in order to destroy the huge worm. Then, Chu began to attack the huge monster from the inside. The guy used all his strength to achieve results. He realized that if he did not defeat the worm, he would die in his body. But in the end, Chu Xingchen managed to suppress the worm's resistance. After this, the huge eye turned into water and spread, and inside it was a large, glowing black ball. Chu didn't even suspect that this was the black mark he was looking for. In this way, the guys managed to complete the task, and no one was seriously injured. And the beauty will heal minor scratches instantly. When the girl with blue hair offered her help to Chu Xingchen, he proudly refused, and added that he did not have to use much spiritual energy. The enemy was rather weak, but the beauty knew perfectly well about Chu Xingchen's secret. She stated that he consumed so little spiritual power that the fox would have died if the healer had not helped it during the battle. Chu knelt down next to the still weak fox to show her the mark that gave them the opportunity to finish the tournament. It was clear that the fox was not very welcoming to Chu. Chu put his arm around the fox's shoulders. It might have seemed that the guy missed the fox, but he was simply afraid that she might grab his throat. At this time, Wen came over to look at the mark. Xing Chen tried to tighten his grip on the mark. But Wen Mao noticed that he was not going to take the mark from them. He added that the Wujin school earned this mark through hard work and battle. But Wen Mao did not leave until he warned the pouting Chu Xing Chen that other teams would not be so scrupulous and would not miss the opportunity to get a mark by beating a weaker team. For some reason, Chu Xingchen forgot that their mark could simply be taken away from them. It already seemed to him that victory was in their pocket, and they would definitely move on to the next round of the competition. At this time, someone's curious eyes had already noticed everything perfectly. The kids from Wujin school didn't even know they were being watched, and word of getting the mark would spread. If Xingchen's personal secretary and accountant knew what kind of people were watching Chu Xingchen, he would be very happy. After some adventures, Hu harbored a strong hatred for Xingqin. Not far from the place where the Wujin school fought the giant monster, there were guys from the Luoyan Academy team, which represented the kingdom of God at the tournament. The sitting guys reproached Yu Wan for being away for too long. The girl noticed that she was doing an important job while they were slackers and had failed their entire task. Then Yu Wang stunned the guys with the news that the worm not only did not devour the Wujin school team, but these guys defeated the worm and also received a competition tag from the worm. The guys from Luoyan Academy were surprised that these weak poor people from Wuzhen were able to defeat a worm of the level of a martial arts king. The girl said that Qinshan Academy helped them, but Wen Shi Xitong said that Qinshan were losers just like Wujin. He suggested that perhaps Chu Xingchen had some kind of artifact that helped them deal with the worm. Then Yu Wang noted that the guy's plan was terrible, and she was not surprised that the Wujin not only escaped, but also got the mark. 
The girl added that the main losers are standing right in front of her. The guys from Luoyan Academy did not want to admit that they had miscalculated and not only did not destroy Wu Jin, but also helped them get the mark. They were uncomfortable hearing Yu Wan's accusations. But then, to cheer up her comrades, the girl said that the fact that Wu Jin found the mark does not mean that they cannot lose it. She said she knew where to look for them. At this time, the entire team of the Wu Jin school was moving through the gloomy dungeon, trying to find landmarks. By that time, they had already parted ways with the guys from Qinshan Academy. Since Wu Jin had already received their mark, and Qinshan Academy needed to look for a mark for themselves, the guys decided to split up. They said goodbye and went their separate ways. It's good that the Wujin school team made friends with the cave demons. These creatures knew how to navigate the labyrinths of dungeons perfectly. They offered to show the guys the way. Chu Xingqin kept the mark with them, fearing that it might be stolen at the first opportunity. Chu tied the two ends of a large scarf together, hung it over his shoulder, and put a mark in it. But after some time, Chu Xingqin felt that the mark began to become very hot, buzzing and glowing. He stopped in surprise and stared at the mark, not knowing what to do. The guys gathered around Chu Xingqin, who was trying to hold the mark with both hands. No one could understand what was happening and why the mark began to behave this way. Chu began to advise him to stop doing this and turn off the mark. Xingqin yelled back that it was not in his power to stop it, and that he did nothing to activate the mark. Yu Wang, who continued to follow the team from Wujin School, smiled wryly and noted to herself that this year, the mark turned out to be full of surprises. Everything was against the Wujin School. The buzzing and light of the tag could not be stopped in any way. This was done specifically so that the first team to find the mark would demonstrate that they could protect it. Suddenly, Chu Xingqin and the guys seemed to be at the bottom of a huge frying pan, and those who wanted to swallow them began to gather around them, without much chewing and without ceremony. Those wishing to receive the tag for free saw its light and buzzing from a great distance. The guys immediately got excited and took fighting stances. Such an opportunity did not arise often. Soon, they saw the Wujin team far below, who became the lucky winner of the competition tag. The kids from Wujin school huddled together, and Chu held the mark close to him. The kids who had just arrived recognized Wujin school and were even more happy. They studied the theory well before the start of the tournament and knew that they were facing the weakest team. Chu Xingqin used his eye to see his opponent better. He was very angry that these freeloaders were trying to take away what they themselves had worked so hard to obtain. Chu stopped one of the attackers with a powerful blow. He was not going to give up the mark under any circumstances. He didn't care whether strong or weak enemies wanted to take the mark. Chu Xingqin lost too much strength when he earned this mark. And the fox, without the help of the beauty, could have lost his life altogether. Therefore, Chu invested the maximum in striking the enemy. The opponents followed with their eyes their comrade, who after Chu's blow, broke more than one column with his body. The guys were surprised why Wu Jin was considered a weak team. Then the fox added fuel to the fire, growling loudly. Such an animalistic roar, which was not at all expected from a little girl, gave the attacking guys goosebumps. But Chu Xingqin did not allow the fox to run wild. The guy gathered his teammates together and resolutely declared that they needed to get to the exit from the cave at all costs. At this time, Chu Xingqin saw several more attackers who were attracted by the buzzing and glowing of the mark. Chu Xingqin's situation was getting worse by the minute. But he had a couple of trump cards. First, Chu Xingqin summoned his mirror shadow, which loved to fight. A strong opponent was more desirable for the shadow than the best gift. And Chu decided to take advantage of these. Despite the fact that someone was distracted by the mirror shadow, others still continued to press on Xingqin, who wanted to receive the mark. The guys promised to let Chu go if he gave them the mark. But Chu Xingqin was not such a simpleton as to succumb to such persuasion. Moreover, he has not yet used all his capabilities. Xingqin pulled out a bluff card that many people underestimated. Chu waved the card in front of one of the enemies and said that he liked Chu Xingqin and must protect him to the last drop of his blood. At first, it seemed like nothing happened, but after Chu Xingqin's whispers, the enemy seemed somehow bewitched. The guy stopped moving and began to look at one point. But then things got much more interesting. 
a teammate approached him and asked him why he was frozen in anticipation. The comrade impatiently added that you just need to kill Chu Xingqian and take away the competition mark from him. But suddenly the enemy turned to his teammate and shouted that he should not dare to offend his love. The guy turned his weapon against his own and threatened to kill him. Then, the guy who was fooled by Chu Xingqian began yelling that he would defend his love to the end. Apart from Chu Xingqian, no one could understand what happened to this man. A Chu received temporary reinforcements and was thus able to divert the attention of several opponents. It was in vain that he used to be offended by the system for such skills. In battle, this was what was needed. The entire Wujin school team was shocked by what they saw, everyone except Qingchen. He only blew a kiss to the fooled enemy, after which he began to defend Chu even more fiercely. The guy shouted at Chu Xingqin to leave, while the guy would cover his retreat. Xingqin and his friends did not need to be asked twice. They immediately rushed to the exit. Chu Xingqin roared that this was a very cool skill. The guy was going to give his life to save Chu. The system noticed that although it gave Chu good skills, he used them meanly. While running, Xingqin answered the system that in battle all means are good. Moreover, he used the bluff to save the mark for his comrades as well, and did not do it for personal purposes. The exit from the dungeon was already very close. The cave freak confidently showed the way. Xingqin was almost dragging him along with him, since he did not have time to run on his short legs. Then, Chu ordered the guys to all climb up to him. They did not immediately understand what he wanted from them. But Chu impatiently shouted that they should not think, but follow his orders. Xingqin also shouted that the fox was responsible for the girl with blue hair. The fox picked up the beauty, but for the fox, even such a fragile girl turned out to be quite a significant burden. Some time passed before the guys were able to sit astride Chu Xingqin, and the fox actually had to grunt. And then, with a snap of Chu Xingqin's fingers, everyone began to run. From the outside, such leaps might seem quite funny. But the guys were not at all in the mood for jokes, especially Xingqin. He had a plan from which he was not going to retreat one step. But these crazy races did not last long. The guys from Wujin's school were already near the exit of the cave. Soon, they saw the distant lights of the portals. A hundred steps separated them from victory. Soon, the guys were already near the portals. But there were too many of them. The guys had no idea where they all led and which of them was the exit from the dark dungeon. But the cave freak came to the rescue, whom Sinchen, like all the others, dragged on his own shoulders. The tame monster confidently pointed out with its hairy paw that they needed the third portal. Chu Xingqin growled menacingly that they were now in place. The boys were still perplexed as to what their leader was up to. But Xingqin was determination itself. Victory in the tournament depended on his idea. Suddenly, Chu Qingqin began to spin around his axis. The guys who were on his shoulders caught Chu's hands in order to hold on. The guy was spinning faster and faster. At a precisely timed moment, Chu Xingqin let go of his teammates, screaming obscenities. The cave freak remained sitting on Xingqin's shoulders and watched the flight of people. In the next moments, Shu and Li Mu found themselves in the portal. They realized too late what Chu Xingqin had done. If the guys knew his plan, they would not have allowed Chu to carry it out. Chu Xingqin was left alone in the cave with the little freak. The guy warmly thanked the cave dweller for his help in difficult times. Then Chu checked to see if the competition tag was in place. After that, Chu hurried the fox, who was dragging the girl with blue hair with her last strength on wobbly legs. Chu shouted for the fox to speed up, otherwise he would stay here. When the fox with the girl in his arms tangled up with Chu Xingqian, he also gave her a competition tag. Chu Xingqian reminded them to hurry, as if their lives depended on it. Their lives actually depended on it to a certain extent. Because a formidable monster appeared in front of the guys. This was a complete surprise for the fox and the beauty. The girls watched with horror and surprise everything that was happening around them. They realized that they were ambushed and their escape routes were already cut off. And salvation was very close to them. Loud footsteps were heard around. Although there were only a few people approaching, the echo of the cave repeated their steps many times, and it seemed that a whole crowd of people was approaching. At this time, the bloodied Chu Xingqin was already lying on the cold, rocky floor of the cave. 
This sight only added to the despair of the fox and the girl with blue hair. But Yu Wang from Luoyan Academy was jubilant. Her plan came true. She set up an ambush near the exit from the dungeon, and the huge ape eliminated Chu Xingqin with one blow. Now Chu Xingqin was lying unconscious next to the long legs of the God Realm girl. Behind her towered a red monkey, and even further away her comrades hurried. The blue-haired girl and the fox screamed together when they saw the bloody, motionless Chu Xingqin. The girls understood that now everything was over irrevocably. Hearing the girls' screams, the boys from Luo Yan Academy began to attack them. A cloud of blows flew at the girls. The people of God's kingdom were alien to pity, as well as mercy towards the weaker. The girl with blue hair managed to put up a shield, and almost all the blows were reflected. But the forces were too unequal. The beauty could not provide protection for herself and the fox for long, when she admired the actions of the blue-haired girl. The guy said she was a four-star martial artist and asked what she was doing on a team with losers. At the same time, when she Satan tried to attack the beauty, she gathered all her strength to repel the attack of the treacherous guy. The girl knew that she was responsible not only for herself, but also for the fox, when she once again tried to attack the blue-haired girl. He told the beauty that he had nothing personally against her, but since she was bothering him, she would have to leave. At this time, the fox entered the battle. She rushed to protect her friend from the bastard guy. The fox powerfully hit Wenshi Sitan in the side. He did not expect the attack, and therefore flew to the side. Wenshi Sitan trembled with rage. He had not experienced such humiliation for a long time. Everyone knew the people from the kingdom of God very well, and no one dared to beat them so humiliatingly. The guy roared that these were the last moments in the fox's life. When she was going to destroy this little asshole who dared to lay her paw on his perfect body, when she Seaton concentrated energy in his fingers to deliver a powerful blow and literally incinerate the fox. But at that moment, something or someone distracted the furious guy's attention. Another scoundrel dared to touch the sacred body of a representative of God's people. When Shi Sitan was literally speechless from such impudence, he decided that these guys had completely lost their fear. At this time, Li Mu's help with her bow and arrow would be very helpful. During the turmoil, she would eliminate a couple of enemies from a secluded place, thereby equalizing the forces. But at this time, Li Mu had already passed through the portal and could not help her guys in any way. But when Shi Sitan remained in place, and he was literally furious with anger and the desire to kill, but someone stubbornly held his leg, not paying attention either to his belonging to a high race or to his high combat level. When Shi Sitan tried to unhook, but the guy from Luoyan Academy failed to do this, because he was being held by Chu Xingqin, who was also quite angry after being so meanly beaten by the monkey from around the corner. Then, Chu Xingqin pulled Wen Shi Sitang's leg with all his might, and he fell to the floor with a strong crash while relishing his well-groomed face into the rocky soil. Frustrated, Yu Wan screamed, How is this possible? For the umpteenth time, Wen Shi Sitan screws up and thereby exposes not only himself, but also his elite team. As a precaution, Chu Qingqin kissed Wen Shi Sitang's face several more times so that the guy wouldn't lift his nose too high. But besides this fool, there were other opponents. It was much more difficult to cope with a huge monkey than with the stupid, and therefore arrogant, Von Shi. The monkey did not live in his own fantasies, and therefore reacted faster to attacks. But the Chus were ready to fight even with a huge monkey. He did not attach any importance to the fact that he was wounded. Victory at this stage of the tournament, as well as the opportunity to advance further, was at stake. The monkey had monstrous strength. Therefore, Chu Xingqin had a very hard time. In addition, he was injured, which also slowed down his reaction and speed of thinking. But on the other hand, Chu Xingqin was a man and had a human intellect and way of thinking. And the stupid monkey mainly relied on natural instincts. After another attack from a huge monkey, the girls became worried about Chu Xingqin's condition. The fox shouted to the guy that he needed to take care of himself and the beauty that it was time to get treatment. Chu Xingqin looked back at the fox and saw that instead of just one fox, there were three in front of him. Chu was surprised by this. He didn't think there was a cloning laboratory nearby. The system told Chu Xingqin that he was delusional about cloning. 
She explained that Chu was simply seeing double after the monkey hit him hard on the head. The girl with blue hair tried to help Chu Xingchen recover, but at that moment a new attack began, and the girl urgently had to put up a protective shield. By this time, Wen Shi Satan had recovered, and he was angry as ever. He roared that how dare Xing Chen disfigure his holy face. For this, Wen Shi promised to cut Sinen into small pieces. Yu Wan was also excited. She shouted that Chu Xing Chen was better than she had previously imagined, but the girl was still determined to end Chu Xing Chen. The system noticed that Chu Xing Chen was careful. She said that even though he is proficient in the Kanyan technique, the opponent is all one level above him. Then, Xing Chen shouted that it would soon be clear who would defeat whom, and with a loud cry he rushed at the enemy. Since the enemy was outnumbered, this was not a good idea. But the frantic pressure of Xing Chen and his enormous will to win discouraged his opponents, and even forced them to retreat for some time. The enemy had never encountered such resistance before. In such a battle, when the enemy was superior in both quantity and quality, Chu Xingchen had to use his grandfather's doll. Without such help, Xingchen would not have had a chance. The doll had great strength, so it pulled away a significant part of the enemy team. This was the first time the guys from Luoyan Academy had encountered such an opponent. Some of God's kingdom were so afraid that they even wanted to leave the battlefield. But these people carefully watched each other, because they did not trust their comrades. Therefore, Yu Wan immediately understood the guy's intentions and ordered him not to even think about escaping from the battlefield. She added that there was just a little bit left, and Chu Xingqin would be crushed. Yu Wang also said that the healer girl from the Wujin school can barely withstand the stress. Therefore, Luoyan needs to press a little more, and the Wujin school's defense will fall. Chu Xingqin saw that the girl was having a really hard time and shouted out a few encouraging words to them. Chu could not run up to them because he was busy with the enemy. Yu Wan growled that Chu Qingchen still had time to keep an eye on his girls. Then she began to attack the guy even more aggressively with the help of a huge monkey. At that very moment, the protective screen that the girl with blue hair had put up cracked and its fragments flew in different directions. Now nothing protected the girls. The girl with blue hair and the fox huddled closer together to make it easier to protect their bodies together. But after that, another attack came in their direction. Lisa had a good time. She screamed loudly in pain, and blood started coming out of her mouth. The healer girl scraped the remaining spiritual power to heal the wounded fox. Chu Xingqin saw what was happening to the girls and became furious. He was going to crush these guys from Luoyan Academy, from the God Realm. The guy threw a powerful bomb towards the enemy. By luck, Yu Wang managed to dodge the powerful blow. The girl felt a powerful explosion behind her. A wave of hot air washed over her, and the walls of the cave began to tremble. Yu Wan looked back in amazement to see what Chu had exploded. But Chu Xingqin did not stop there. Soon he took out another gift for the Luoyan Academy team. It looks like Chu Xingqin was very concerned about making sure these guys didn't get bored when Shi Xitan shouted in amazement at how many powerful artifacts appeared in the hands of this child. At this time, Yu Wang was yelling that her hair was singed during another attack from Chu Xingqin. While the enemy was in turmoil, Chu Xingqin did not waste time. He grabbed both girls under the arms, saying that the smoke break was over and it was time to keep moving. With this peculiar parting word, Chu Xingqin threw both girls into the portal. After this, the guy felt relieved. Now he only had to take care of himself. When Shi Xitang saw that the girls from Wu Jin school had passed through the portal, and shouted that Chu Xingqin with the competition mark would not be allowed to leave. Chu Xingqin laughed evilly and showed the representatives of the Luoyan Academy another artifact. Now, people from the God Realm were wary of Chu Xingqin's tricks. Yu Wan shouted to the stupid Wen Shi Xitan to be careful and not get too carried away. The proud guy only snapped angrily in response. He took out his artifact, which also looked quite solid. Wen Shi Xitang stated that Chu Xingqin was not the only one who could use artifacts. At this moment, Chu Xingqin's head was already in the portal, and his body was still in the cave. The system tried to pull Chu Xingqin into the portal entirely, but at that moment there was a deafening explosion. Fire and clouds of smoke spread around. It was difficult to see anything in this chaos. The princess waited impatiently for their team to return from the dungeon. 
but mainly the princess was worried about one single person. The weather was beautiful at Juxian Mountain. Only rare whitish clouds floated across the sky. But these clouds soon evaporated in the bright sun. Therefore, there was a large crowd in the waiting area for the tournament participants. The eternal hum of the human anthill hung in the air. People were worried about their loved ones, or made bets. The waiting greatly tired the princess and affected her mood. She really regretted that she was not a member of that five. Fighting is always easier than waiting for friends to return from battle. The princess was yelling why the guys were taking so long to show up from the test. Hu Songlai, standing nearby, tried to calm the princess, but he was not very successful. Her majesty was burning with impatience, and at that moment, whoever turned up under her arm would be unlucky. But then exclamations were heard nearby that someone had appeared in the portal, and indeed the exhausted Shuzuo Wu and Limu appeared from the portal. The guys didn't look in the best shape, but they were alive and had no serious injuries. The princess happily rushed towards her teammates. Her majesty hoped to obtain information about Chu Xingqin firsthand, so to speak. The princess attacked Shuzuo Wu and Li Mu with a bunch of questions. She asked how they were feeling, where Master Chu was now, and whether they managed to get the mark. Shuzuo Wu happily replied that they managed to get the competition mark, and Chu Xingqin threw them through the portal. The noble guy could not say anything else of value. At this time, the portal was activated again. Someone else was crossing from the other side. The guys from Wujin School looked around, hoping to see their leader Chu Xingqin. But at that moment, a screaming fox and a girl with blue hair appeared from the portal. It was clear that they were not prepared to go through the portal. Moreover, the fox was still injured. Shu Zuo Wu was scared because of the girl's appearance. The noble guy asked what happened to them. The girl with blue hair stated that people from Luoyan Academy ambushed them right near the portal. Therefore, they had to fight their way to the exit. Then, the beauty added that they had to enter into an unequal battle with people from God's kingdom. After some time, Chu Xingqin managed to push her and the fox out through the portal. What happened next? The girl with blue hair had no idea. True, at that moment everyone was distracted from her story because the portal was activated again. The guys waited impatiently and with bated breath to see who would appear from the portal. Everyone secretly hoped that Chu Xingqin's smiling face would appear from there in the next second. Soon the guys saw that Chu Xingqin had indeed emerged from the portal, but he didn't smile and didn't even stand on his own two feet. Moreover, his entire body was covered in blood. The guys from Wujin School gathered in a group around Chu Xingqin and began calling him to bring him to his senses. But the guy showed no signs of life. The guys noticed that Chu Xingqin's whole body was covered in blood, so they started shouting to bring a doctor, because Chu needed medical help. But Chu Xingqin himself answered the guys. Now his face was smiling. The guy noticed that there was no need for a doctor, since it was not his own blood on it. Chu Xingqin began to tell his comrades what happened in the cave, after he pushed the fox and the girl with blue hair out of it through the portal. After another attack, which Chu Xingqin successfully carried out, Wen Shi Xitan began to bleed heavily from his mouth and nose. Yu Wan was surprised how this guy got into such a mess again. The girl leaned over the wounded Wen Shi Xitan and declared that he could not die, because he was a great martial artist and could withstand an attack even from a stronger opponent. Another guy from the Luo Yan Academy team whispered that there was clearly something wrong with Chu Xingqin. With his weak level, he cannot do such things. And Yu Wang, in turn, was surprised that Chu Xingqin could absorb their artifacts. She had never seen anyone with such ability before. But in fact, Chu Xingqin was an ordinary guy who really loved farming. The only thing that distinguished him from others was that he had a system. It was very crowded near the portals from which the competition participants appeared. It was very easy to get lost here, but it was difficult to find someone. The guys really needed a doctor. The truth is not for Chu Xingqin, who was in excellent health, but for the fox. But finally, even in this dense crowd, the guys managed to find a doctor. The doctor reassured them. He said the fox was fine. She just lost a lot of strength. He added that the fox needed peace for a while, and then she would wake up. Soon, the doctors hurried on, announcing their movements and offering their services along the way. During competitions of such a high level, Medical attention was often required. 
Finally, the princess's mood improved. When she realized that all the members of their team had returned and were also in good health, Her Majesty was delighted. Chu Xingchen, on the contrary, for some reason was not pleased with the victory of their team and a ticket to the next stage of the competition. The guy was interested in why the Luoyan Academy team did not appear for a long time. Then a system appeared that told Chu Xingchen that it could explain some of what happened to Wen Shi Xitong. The system began to outline how events unfolded. Wen Shi Xitong was approaching with the artifact, and decisive action had to be taken. Then, the system stated that it had swallowed the enemy's artifact, and also deprived him of the system, at the moment when he was seriously injured. The system added that everything happened quite quickly, but still, Wen Shi Xitan's teammates could see something. Chu Xingchen asked if all three guys from Luo Yan Academy had systems. In response, his own system nodded affirmatively. Later, the system reported that the systems of the people from the God Realm were deeply hidden, so she could only sense them for a moment. But that was enough. Chu Xingchen began to think. He noted that it could not be an ordinary coincidence that three guys from the Luo Yan Academy team had systems at once. Chu Xingchen's system arrogantly said that these were trifles and that it was capable of absorbing even ten such systems as the people from the God Realm had. At this time, the guys from Luo Yan Academy appeared. They were very surprised that the Wujin school team had already left the cave. They were even more surprised that they were all healthy and unharmed. People from God's kingdom wondered how this happened. According to their plans, the Wujin school was to remain in the dark caves forever. Then, representatives of the Luo Yan Academy team began to discuss the situation with Wen Shi Sitan. As it turned out, Chu Xingchen seriously injured Wen Shi Sitan. And all of them at Luo Yan Academy thought that Chu Xingchen was a very easy target. Their miscalculations cost Wan Shi dearly. Later, people from the God Realm began to discuss Wen Shi Sitan's excessive arrogance and how it greatly harmed him during the battle. The girl noticed that because of her recklessness, Wen Shi Sitan often gets into some kind of trouble. She added that he did not deserve to be their captain. At this time, at some distance from the competition site, but on the same Juzian mountain, an important conversation took place. The envoy was eagerly awaiting news of the results of the competition. They did a simply titanic job to move the tournament to the kingdom of God. Soon, the speaker came and announced, with his head bowed low, that Luo Yan Academy had lost this round of the competition. The envoy was very dissatisfied with what happened. He was accustomed to relying on reliable people who carried out his orders very carefully and who never misfired. The envoy sank heavily into a chair and leaned his elbows on the table. At some point, he felt despair and asked, why don't they just invite Chu Xingqin to their place? But he was told that this would contradict the decision of His Holiness, therefore such a development of events is unacceptable. The messenger noticed what His Holiness was thinking about. Then he asked if everything was ready for Kanglan. He was informed that everything was done in the best possible way. The messenger thought that there was at least one positive news on this day. At this time, an even more important meeting and conversation took place in the Kanglan Palace than the envoy had. The Kingdom of God has done a lot at the request of His Highness, but the time always came to pay others for the services they provided. But the second prince had tasks that were more important than reckoning with God's kingdom. The second prince was in a hurry to attend a meeting. He didn't even look around and didn't pay attention to the people making way in front of him, who bowed their heads in respectful bow. Finally, the second prince saw a man, not yet very old, but extremely powerful. The man's eyes showed a load of fatigue and melancholy. The prince uttered only one word, Father. 